I'm sitting on trillions of dollars of wealth, but I can't spend a single penny, but when the evil ghosts are rampant, the weird post-apocalyptic world is coming, and countless people are still struggling to survive in the post-apocalyptic world. You have started the unlimited purchasing mode, the Dark Knight High School, buy, the Hospital of the Dead, buy, Evil Ghost Mall, buy, even the King of Hades also bought as a little brother. In your last life, you were tortured crazy by one weird scene after another. Just when you decided to rob a wave of underworld banks to try your luck, you didn't expect to startle the bank organs when you did it. In an instant, countless hellfire will swallow you up. See the end of the road. So the heart of a cross actually will be the entire underworld bank sucked into the ring. So you did not expect is that you are reborn. More unexpected is reborn when the ring is also in. Inside the billions of wealth is also randomly transferred. The opening of the trillions of plutonium. At this time, a scream suddenly came from the classroom. A girl who was just chatting with her deskmate. But at this moment, her eyes were horrified, pointing at her desk with a trembling finger, only to see a blood-red note appear on the desk, which read, Creepy Mission, Midnight Cafeteria. At the same time, the same note appeared on the desks of the other two students in the classroom. The appearance of such a note meant that they had unfortunately been selected by the bizarre mission and needed to go to the bizarre scene to complete the mission. The same note also appeared on your table. And contrary to the panic of the other few, you were not only not panicked, but instead showed a hint of excitement, only to see the blood-red note clearly written on the mission description. There exists a cafeteria that opens at midnight in the late-night campus. When the clock strikes midnight, a gust of fishy smell wafts out from the back kitchen of the cafeteria. Plates of red dishes are placed on the table, and dim candlelight flickers in the dining room, waiting for a group of strange guests. You are a waiter in the midnight cafeteria. Please arrive at the school cafeteria before 12 midnight, as a qualified waiter. Being late is a fault that cannot be forgiven. You look up at the time. It's 9.30 p.m., two and a half hours before the mission starts, and the way to the cafeteria is only 10 minutes, which is more than enough time to make it to the cafeteria. Your table mates pitying glance at you, eyes mixed with a trace of schadenfreude, at the same time quietly move to the side, for fear of staining your bad luck, to which you have long been accustomed to because this is human nature. With the school bell ringing, less and less students in the school, the lights in the classroom went out one by one, and finally only the classroom where you are still lighted. Several students who received the mission gathered together, each holding a note in their hands, compared to the others, with panic and despair on their faces. You, however, were calculating in your mind how to buy the midnight cafeteria. If you remember correctly, the midnight cafeteria is a potential stock with a lot of appreciation. In the later stages of the end of the end of the world, the Midnight Cafeteria recruited a lot of high-level ghost chefs, and it became a high-level hotel that shook the party with a great deal of fame. And countless evil ghosts came to the cafeteria in admiration of you. They were even willing to act as fighters for the Midnight Canteen for a meal. Therefore, if you intend to run through the weird post-apocalyptic world, you should start by buying the Midnight Cafeteria. The cafeteria is located across the street from the school playground and several people went to the entrance of the cafeteria to wait in advance so as not to be late. The cafeteria was dark and quiet at night, and there was no sign of any living presence to be seen. Time passed minute by minute, with three dull bells. Midnight came. The dark cafeteria suddenly had a few candles flickering. Vaguely can see ghostly shadows flashing by. At the same time, a if not the same smell of blood from the door of the cafeteria diffuse out. Several young waiters, welcome to the midnight cafeteria. A uniformed figure stepped out of the cafeteria's door. It's time for work. New waiters. I am the manager of the midnight cafeteria. In order to ensure the smoothness of your work, I need to explain to you the rules of the midnight canteen. 1. The orders of the canteen manager cannot be disobeyed, and you must faithfully carry out my orders. 2. The people who come to consume are the guests, so you must treat them politely, and satisfy them unconditionally no matter what they ask for. 3. The working time is two hours, and you're not allowed to leave the canteen during that time, and you can't damage the canteen's goods, otherwise you will be punished, otherwise, you will be punished. After saying the rules, the manager beckoned to a few people, signaling a group of people to enter the cafeteria. Entering the door of the cafeteria, the smell of blood inside intensified. The female ghost manager said to the few of you, you have three minutes to change into your waiter's uniform. After saying that, then pointed to the side of a written locker room room. You calmly nodded, without the slightest appearance of fear, pushed open the door of the locker room and walked in. A few girls looked at each other, 
They were scared straight shivering, gritted their teeth and followed you. Just a minute or so, a few people changed their uniforms. Seeing the several people who had put on their work clothes, the female ghost manager nodded, satisfied with your speed. Immediately after that, she brought a few people to the door of a private room and said, there is a guest in the private room. For the next one hour, you guys as waiters need to fulfill the guest's needs. After saying that, the manager opened the door and signaled you several people to enter the box, only to see a round table in the middle of the box. At this moment, Creepy is eating with his head down, and the smell of decay is emanating from his body. Creepy is holding a spoon and is pouring a bowl of slimy soup through his shattered mouth, and part of the soup flows out onto the table. You help me wipe up the soup that flowed out. Creepy reached out and pointed his finger, only half of which was left, at one of the girls. After the girl came to Creepy's side, she found that there was no rag around, in order not to violate Creepy's order. He could only use the sleeve of his uniform to wipe up the spilled soup on the table a little bit. The cold soup soaked the cuff of the sleeve, emitting an unpleasant stench that made the girl almost didn't vomit, forcibly holding back her nausea. She finally wiped the table clean. Creepy seems to be very satisfied then pulled out a plutonium coin from his pocket and handed it to the girl. At once the girl's eyes lit up. Creepy end times descended for a month. She had naturally heard rumors about plutonium coins. She had heard that plutonium coins were an extremely powerful prop in bizarre quests. As long as one had plutonium coins, one could solve a lot of trouble in bizarre quests. However, it was extremely difficult to obtain plutonium coins, leading to an extreme scarcity of plutonium coins. The girl looked at the 10 plutonium coins in her hand as if she had gotten a talisman, and an excited smile appeared at the corners of her mouth. Yet you still had a calm demeanor, as if you had seen through everything. There is no free lunch in the spooky quest, only to see the bazaar on the dining table suddenly picked up an empty plate and said to the girl, I'm done with this dish, help me remove the plate out. In the excited state of the girl did not hesitate, one hand held the plutonium, one hand took the plate, took the plate and went out. But she didn't notice that weird feet came out from under the table and blocked her feet. Just two steps away, the girl tripped over the creepy foot and stumbled and fell to the floor, only to hear a clattering sound as the plate fell to pieces on the floor. A few seconds later, the door of the private room opened from the outside. The female ghost manager who heard the commotion walked in. When she saw the plates falling into pieces on the floor, she said in an angry tone, Who broke the plates? Destroying the restaurant's plates is punishable. The girl's face turned pale with a swish. When a teasing expression appeared on half of the guest's face, it was obvious that this creepy guest was not a good person. He was deliberately tripping over the girl, wanting to see a good show. Suddenly she thought of something, panicked and rummaged through her pockets, pulling out a 10 pluton tip from inside, raising the 10 pluton tip in her hand and shouting at the ghostly manageress, I have plutonium, I'll pay for the broken plate. Seeing the plutonium in the girl's hand, the female ghost manager said, are you sure you want to use the plutonium in your hand to pay for the restaurant's plates? The girl nodded repeatedly, fearing that the female ghost manager backtracked, panicked and handed over the plutonium in her hand to the female ghost manager. After getting the plutonium, the female ghost manager nodded. The girl saw this as finally relieved, thinking that she can survive. At this time you shook your head, because you know that the girl misses the last way to live. This time the girl is bound to die. Sure enough, before she can celebrate for a few seconds, the female ghost manager's tone becomes angry again. But you don't have enough plutonium. This plate needs 20 plutonium. You only gave me 10 plutonium. If you don't have enough plutonium, I need to use half of your body to cover the debt. At those words, the girl's eyes widened as fear and despair flooded her heart. She didn't even think that 10 plutonium was not enough to compensate for the cost of the plate. And that creepy eater was simply teasing her, wanting her to die. She collapsed to the ground in a flash a puddle of steaming liquid flowing out. It was obvious that she had been scared to pee. Seeing this, Creepy at the table clapped his hands in satisfaction. He was intrigued by the scene in front of him. He enjoyed seeing the waitress go from fear to joy to despair. The other few girls all looked scared. They could see that the creepy eater was dangerous and was trying to get the waiter killed. And the cafeteria was extremely biased towards its guests. Even if it was a guest who intentionally tripped and broke a plate, these waiters were still required to pay for it. The unlucky one was Zhao Meng Meng. If the few of them were chosen by the creepy eater, they would end up in the same situation as Zhao Meng Meng. This was simply an unsolvable dead end. Would the creepy eater still make a move? Will they really survive until the end of the mission? The pressure of despair came. Powerlessness and fear surrounded everyone. Except you. At this moment, you are still so calm. 
A look of confidence. As if you have already seen through everything, the creepy eater licks half of his lips, seeming a bit underwhelmed. The desperate collapse of a waiter isn't enough to satisfy him, he wants to see more. Suddenly, the creepy diner points at you and pulls out ten medallions from his pocket, placing them in your hand without a second thought. This is for your tip. Several of the girls all sucked in a breath of cold air. They could see that the creepy diner had no intention of stopping. As the crowd watched, the creepy diner picked up another plate and clattered it to the floor, smashing it into pieces, pointing to the broken plate. Creepy spoke to the restaurant manager and said, This plate is broken. I want this waiter to pay for this plate. This waiter in Creepy's mouth naturally refers to you, seeing Creepy Diner's rogue look. One girl, under the pressure of fear and anger, finally couldn't help but shout, This plate is not Chen Mu decline. Let him pay for it. It's not fair. However the female ghost manager didn't listen to Yi Chu Xue's argument. She looked at you and said, The waiter needs to follow all the orders of the guest. The guest broke the plate and he asked you to pay for it. Then you have to pay for it. What makes the female ghost manager a bit surprised is that not only did you not argue, but you calmly nodded your head. Of course, I have 10 medieval coins in my hand. 10 medieval coins are not enough to cover the cost of the plate. I know, but I never said I was going to pay for the plate. You say slowly. A few of the girls face each other. They are a bit puzzled by your words. Not wanting to pay for the plate. This is ready to openly confront the female ghost manager? Has Chen Mu gone mad? The female ghost manager frowned. Bright red blood oozing out from the corner of her mouth, as if she was ready to tear Chen Mu into pieces. If you don't want to pay for the plate, then you'll have to die. I know you're in a hurry, but hold your horses. Revealing a bright smile, he waved the ten medieval coins in his hand and said to the female ghost manager, Bring me your menu, I want to order a dish to try. For your words, a few other girls are still confused. They even thought you were scared silly. This is what time. Still think of ordering a dish to taste. But look at your chest is ready to look. They are not sure what you want to do in the end. The female ghost manager's face changed slightly. It was as if she understood something. And there was more than a hint of surprise and scorn in her eyes as she looked at you. You continue to talk about the life path of the mission. Which is actually hidden at the beginning of the mission. Manager. You said that among the rules. The second rule of the rules to come to consume is the guest. Treat the guest with courtesy. No matter what requirements the guest puts forward. You need to unconditionally satisfy the guest. Even if it is the manager who also needs to satisfy the guest. The guest only gave me a tip of 10 plutonium. The plate needs 20 plutonium. Is not enough to compensate for the cost of the plate. It seems to be an unsolvable deadlock. If you directly compensate the plate with 10 plutonium. Then just wait for death. So the key to breaking the game is to think outside the box. Out of the box you are a waiter. Who says you can't change your identity in a spooky scene? Thinking about the second rule of the rule, if I'm not a waiter but a guest, then that means you can make any request you want, including refusing to compensate for a plate. So how do you become a guest? So at this point the proper use of the plutonium is not to compensate for the plate, but to spend it. Manager, serve me a plate of peanuts and rice for 10 plutonium. As a guest, I demand that I refuse to compensate for the plate. After saying that, he handed the 10 medals to the female ghost manager. How could the female ghost manager not expect that such a young man could see through the hidden life with a single glance? Just as the female ghost manager was about to leave, you suddenly called out to her. Don't leave in a hurry. I still have something to do. What else? The female ghost manager stopped and spoke to you in a much gentler tone than before. Call your boss here. I have something I want to discuss with him. Boss? The female ghost manager had a difficult expression on her face. Our boss won't come out easily. If you have any request. You can tell me and I will fulfill your request. Then what if I want to buy your cafeteria? When these words came out, the female ghost manager was shocked once again. He couldn't imagine that this man would actually be so bold. The moment he opened his mouth he wanted to buy the midnight cafeteria. It's simply delusional. If other people said this, the female ghost manager would have long ago cursed a stupidity and left without turning his head back. However, your performance just now made her have some admiration for you. So she patiently explained. The rules say that I have to fulfill all the requirements of the guests, but I don't have the authority to buy and sell this kind of thing of the midnight canteen. In the female ghost manager's opinion, you are trying to use the rules to take the midnight canteen with empty gloves, so that the female ghost manager can give the canteen to you for nothing, which is obviously impossible. The female ghost manager is also just a part-time worker. She doesn't have this kind of authority. However, your next sentence made her even more shocked. Right. I know you don't have this authority. 
That's why I asked you to call your boss over ah. I didn't say I want to whore out a midnight eatery for nothing. You're misunderstanding me. What I mean is to buy this eatery with plutonium that your boss won't refuse. The female ghost manager looked you up and down. He admitted that you're very smart. But how could she not believe that you'd have the strength to buy a midnight eatery? Even though the midnight eatery is poorly run right now, and is on the verge of closure. But if you want to buy this eatery, it would be obviously without tens of millions of plutonium it's hard to do. Tens of millions of plutonium. This is simply an astronomical figure. In front of this young man has millions of plutonium. Set out no one will believe. Put this fooling ghosts? You touched the ring in your hand and slowly pulled out a stack of metals from it. That's right. You are going to use your supernatural power. See you take out a large stack of medieval money. The female ghost manager first froze for a moment, and then incredibly carefully look at the medieval money. The ground wrapped in a strong ghost sob. A look is the actual medieval money. This large stack of medieval money at least 100, 000, casually took out 100, 000. He actually really so rich? Looking at your calm demeanor, the female ghost manager believed that the man in front of her, perhaps really wanted to buy the cafeteria. Recently, the midnight cafeteria is in trouble. The boss is so poor that he can't even pay his salary. The female ghost manager's salary has been owed for half a year. And the other creepy staff chef's salary has been owed for most of the year. The 100, 000 plutonium coins that you casually took out was the salary that the female ghost manager could only earn in more than two years. And the female ghost manager's attitude towards you has become respectful, even with a hint of pleasing humility. The opposite of her previous icy attitude. Respected Mr. Chun, I am the cafeteria manager Li Xiao Xiao. Please wait a moment. I will call our boss here. After saying that, Li Xiao Xiao pulled out the chair by the dining table, respectfully helped you to sit down, bowed to you again, and hurriedly left to shout for the boss. When Li Xiao Xiao left, a silence fell within the private room, and the bizarre diners who had deliberately made things difficult for you earlier also became extremely constricted at this time. Midnight cafeteria now specification is not high energy. Come here to eat bizarre or poor people. Pocket not much money. See you so rich. Bizarre diners cannot help but fear up. Worried that you will spend money to buy his life. If so that he will be finished. Fought here bizarre from the pocket touched. Found a treasured for a long time smoke. Well handed to your eyes. Mr. Chun. I am a gangster scoundrel. Before the matter also hope that you have a large number of adults. Roll. Your mouth slowly spit out a word. Creepy as if amnestied while constantly giving you an apology. While the ass fled. You do not intend to let him go. Just because now there is no strength. Worried about pushing too hard. The other side of the dog jumped over the wall. You will be in danger. And so on you bought the midnight eatery. Casually sent an employee to kill this head of creepy. Eliminate the roots. Several other girls in the booth. At this time. There is still a kind of unreal feeling. What is the situation? Everyone is not in the bizarre mission? The dangerous and trembling is treading on thin ice to find a way out of the bizarre task. Why do you hear the wind suddenly changed? The ghost manager is fawning. The creepy diner is scared shitless. So it seems like you and creepy have switched identities. And you're creepy. Creepy is like being scared half to death. Waiting for about five minutes. The door of the private room opened from the outside. Li Xiao Xiao walked in behind him was the owner of the midnight canteen. Only to see the owner walked up and said to you. Sir. I am the owner of the Midnight Canteen. Is it you want to buy the Midnight Canteen? See you nodded. The boss showed a hint of shrewd expression. Began to fool you. Mr. Chun. You can see. Although my canteen is now operating encountered some difficulties. But you can rest assured that my Midnight Canteen location is very good. You buy absolutely no loss. You think ah. Such a good location. If you find a few more powerful chef. This business is not a crash on the do up. Skeleton boss belongs to the big yo-yo. Ghost story. Is to let you take over the disc as a big injustice. But as a born again you know. Skeleton boss of these words in fact said the right. In the last life of the skeleton boss did not find the receiver. Had to struggle to support it. I did not expect a year after the weird end of the world. With more and more weird. The location of this cafeteria just in a good location. Plus later found a few powerful chef. Midnight cafeteria bigger and bigger and eventually became a huge force that shook the party. Midnight Hotel. Underworld Bank. These are the superpower in the weird end of the world. Relying on novelty dishes and delicious food. As well as Midnight Hotel original dishes. So that countless weird tend to rush to the world. The world's largest. Extremely delicious. Only Midnight Hotel is unique. There is no other store. Once the Midnight Hotel to do activities. 
Extract the qualification of the top buffet. In order to be able to obtain the free qualification, 10 Ghost General Level Bazaar together. Willingly for the Midnight Hotel to do the hit. The Midnight Hotel with it is also nonchalant. Directly to the ghost will be used as a disposable consumables. I heard that also fell a ghost general. Someone has done a statistic. If you let you go back to the beginning of the weird end of the world, what is the thing you want to do the most? 9 out of 10 people would answer like this. Dump all my money to buy the Midnight Canteen. The Midnight Canteen's development prospect is very good. I'm very optimistic about it. You nodded with satisfaction. Skeleton Boss Face was delighted. Thought Chen Mu was fooled by him on the head. Rushed to say, Mr. Chun, just this Midnight Canteen is a bit expensive ah. I do not know if you have the strength. He was worried that you cannot afford the money. You say a number. You said with a calm face, 800. No, 7 million. 7 million medieval money. Skeleton Boss said tentatively. In fact, generally speaking, although the Midnight Canteen is not well run, but it is also worth 10 million medieval dollars. Only the Midnight Canteen is now losing a lot of money. In order to get rid of this hot potato as soon as possible, the skeleton boss to bear the pain of cutting meat, directly down 3 million, which is already very close to the skeleton boss's bottom line price, a minimum of 6, 5 million, or else I won't be able to sell it. I will add another 500, 000, I offer 7, 5 million medals to buy the midnight cafeteria. You said, another half a million cheaper, and you know it. The skeleton boss suddenly stopped in the middle of his sentence. He thought he heard wrong. What? Another 500? 000 yuan. The buyer took the initiative to raise the money. He thought you want to drop another 500? 000 yuan. Did not expect you to take the initiative to add 500? 000 yuan. This time the skeleton boss hole will not be. You nodded your head and said. That's right. I will give you an additional 500? 000 yuan. But I have a small request. The midnight cafeteria in the staff to stay all. You cannot take away. This time the skeleton boss again confused. Midnight cafeteria business is not good. Employee wages have been owed for half a year. You cannot want these employees. So that you do not have to pay the wages owed. The skeleton boss naturally will not want to employees. Directly rolled up and ran away. As for the wages owed to the employees. That would not care about it. Let them become a lonely ghosts of their own. But now you actually take the initiative to leave these employees. Take the initiative to take over this hot potato. Which means that you need to at least make up for the employees or owed wages. Which is 500, 000 medieval money. First of all, take the initiative to pay more than 500, 000 yuan price. But also to take over these employees. A go 1 million on the gone. This is what the rare big wrong species are. Skeleton boss looked at you that is the more you look at the more eyes. Mr. Chun. Your vision is really impeccable. I dare to assure you. By the midnight canteen is definitely the most correct decision you have made. Skeleton boss bragged madly about you. However, only you yourself know that you are not the wrong kind of person. The reason why more than 500, 000 to the skull boss. Not you have more money no place to spend. Mainly because of the original 10 million things. They bought 7 million. Picked up a big bargain. They earn a lot of money. But also to give others to leave a mouth soup to drink. Give an extra 500, 000. The skeleton boss can also be in a good mood. Otherwise the skeleton boss feel reluctant. Deliberately delayed for a month or two. A month or two of time. The bizarre end of the world is developing rapidly. It's already enough for the midnight cafeteria to turn a loss into a profit. By the time the skeleton boss backtracked and didn't sell it to himself. Then you'll lose a lot. As for taking the initiative to take over the staff. For one thing. There are potential stocks in the staff. And there are two current chefs among the five chefs of the future hotel. Secondly, you do not have to re-recruit staff, saving a lot of things. When you do the math like this, the extra one million dollars spent is simply blood money. Mr. Chun, when do you see your payment? The skeleton boss asked carefully. In his eyes, you have become the big wrong seed that took over the business. You must be well entertained. You must not make you angry. And so a peculiar painting style appeared in the bizarre mission. As the biggest boss of the weird mission, the skeleton boss is looking at you with a pleasing face, as if you are the big boss. He is a waiter who is careful not to break the rules, and will pay you seven, five million now. You caress the ring on your hand, and with a thought, large stacks of underworld banknotes appear in the private room, neatly yards against the wall, and a thick ghostly aura radiates out. 
These were all brand new medieval banknotes from the Underworld Bank, exuding an unrivaled allure. The skeleton boss stared in disbelief at so many banknotes. A moment later he looked at you and couldn't help but TSK 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 TSK. Are all humans so rich now? Sign the contract. After signing it all this money will be yours. You faintly said. Well well well. Mr. Chun. Wait a moment. I will take out the contract. Originally. The skeleton boss also intends to drag the time. To sell some things in the midnight cafeteria and then transferred to you. Then you took the initiative to add 500. 000 medieval currency. And out of such a quick. Impressed the skeleton boss. The face of such a quick buyer. Skeleton boss without saying a word. Directly pull out the contract. Signed his name. From the hands of the skeleton boss took over the contract. The contract paper is very peculiar. In the hands of the rich ghost gas. In this ghost gas. Also mixed with irresistible power. The power of the rules. In the bizarre end of the world overriding all the power. Is the power of the rules. If the rules are violated. Even the ghost king will have to pay a huge price. In addition to the rules in the mission. There were many other rules in the bizarre end world. For example. The contract in front of them was a manifestation of the rules. As long as both parties signed the contract, it was equivalent to accepting the rules of the contract. If one party wanted to violate the rules to forcibly take back the midnight eatery, then they would be punished by the power of the rules. The moment you signed your name, a powerful ghostly aura surged into your body, and suddenly you had a marvelous feeling as if you were a monarch who could control the entire midnight canteen. The midnight cafeteria was bought by you. And at this moment you became the biggest boss in the midnight cafeteria. Your words are the rules in this bizarre scene. Feeling this powerful control, Chen Mu was somewhat intoxicated. Now he was the owner of the midnight canteen, and I'm afraid no one knew better than Chen Mu what this meant in the bizarre end world. After Chen Mu bought the midnight canteen, it didn't mean that the midnight canteen would exit the bizarre scenario, in other words, there would be other people in the future who would receive quests from the midnight canteen. After those people entered the midnight canteen, the final decision on what rules to follow and whether or not they had violated the rules would be on Chen Mu. In other words, if Chen Mu wanted him to die, then he would definitely not be able to leave alive. If Chen Mu wanted to preserve someone, then even if he made a big death at the midnight cafeteria, he would not be harmed. In short, Chen Mu was the god of the midnight cafeteria scene. This sense of power control made countless people rush to it. It was conceivable that as the bizarre post-apocalyptic world progressed, there would be more and more people that would receive missions from the midnight cafeteria. Then the life and death of these people would be in Chen Mu's hands. Out of the blue, Chen Mu had a feeling that it was as if he was becoming one with the bizarre end world. If one day, he could buy all the bizarre scenes and hire all the bizarre, then wouldn't that mean that he would become the sole master of the end times? Of course, talking about this was still far away. Chen Mu wasn't overly ambitious, everything had to be taken one step at a time. With the experience of five years in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, Chen Mu had no doubt that he could make Midnight Canteen grow quickly into Midnight Hotel. After signing the contract, the Midnight Canteen had no relationship with the skeleton boss and had completely become Chun Mu's turf. The skeleton boss was very sensible, and after taking the seven and a half million medals, he left in a huff. At this time, in the private room, only Chen Mu, Li Xiaoxiao, and those few girls who participated in the mission were left. As for Zhao Meng Meng, she had died long ago for violating the rules. The few remaining girls looked at each other in disbelief. They only reacted at this time that Chen Mu actually did by the midnight eatery. Wouldn't that mean that Chen Mu, who was a waiter an hour ago, had now become the big boss in the bizarre scene? Such a heaven-defying reversal made them feel extremely shocked. Chen Mu became even more mysterious and powerful in their eyes. Chen Mu opened his mouth and said, Rule number 4 of the midnight cafeteria in this bizarre mission. He paused and looked at the watch on his hand, it was now 1.04 a.m. At 1.04 a.m., all waiters can leave the midnight cafeteria. If they leave the midnight cafeteria, the mission is considered complete. If this rule conflicts with other rules, this rule shall prevail. In a calm tone, Chen Mu announced his first rule and domineeringly declared that his rule would prevail. A few girls hadn't reacted to what was going on when they heard it. A moment later, the class president Yi Chu Xiu carefully asked, Mr. Chen Mu, are a few of us ready to go? Chen Mu nodded, he still had to deal with the midnight cafeteria employees, it was useless for these girls to stay here, so it would be better for them to go back earlier. Thank you, Chen Mu. The few girls thanked Chen Mu in gratitude, and having escaped from death, they left the cafeteria in a state of shock. As expected, after they left the cafeteria, they did not receive any punishment, meaning that Chen Mu had indeed dominated the bizarre scene. At this moment, the employees of the midnight cafeteria also gathered in the cafeteria hall as Chen Mu had intended. 
When Chen Mu walked out of the private room and arrived at the hall, more than 20 heads of bazaar were standing here. The bazaar looks were all sorts of strange, ranging from rotting corpses, to ghosts floating in the air, to humanoids with two heads of elders. Seeing a human walking over, the creeps began to whisper, from time to time sizing up Chen Mu with strange eyes. Li Xiao Xiao, as the manager, said to the employees, This is our new boss, Chen Mu. The boss said that he would pay back our outstanding wages, and as long as everyone follows the boss and does a good job, the boss won't treat everyone poorly. When they heard this, the employees who had been owed wages by their former boss for most of the year, after a short period of shock, they all erupted into cheers. In their eyes, not only had Chen Mu not fired them, but had instead paid them their wages, this was no longer an ordinary great benefactor. Thinking of the harshness of his former boss, in comparison, Chen Mu had treated them simply a hundred times better. Don't call me boss, call me master. Chen Mu preferred the title of master to the business-oriented title of boss. Yes, master. Li Xiaoxiao replied respectfully. Next, Chen Mu held the plutonium in his left hand and the contract in his right hand, and began to sign contracts with the bazaar employees one by one. With each contract signed, Chen Mu possessed control over them, and they were not allowed to violate Chen Mu's orders, not to mention harming Chen Mu. At the same time, Chen Mu gauged the strength of the employees. In the creepy endgame, creepy strength could be roughly categorized into five ranks. Creepy king, creepy general, creepy chief, creepy soldier, and creepy folk. Obviously, since the midnight cafeteria was still in its infancy, the staff's strength was generally not high, basically at the level of guile folk. Out of the entire staff, only Li Xiao Xiao and the other two chefs had managed to reach the level of guile soldier. It's not enough, the strength is still too low. Chen Mu shook his head helplessly, he was originally going to find a guile to sign a contract with, so that he would be able to have a guile to defend himself at all times. Don't look at all the contracts Chen Mu had signed, but a contract was different from a contract. The contract was only limited to this bizarre scenario, in the midnight cafeteria, these employees had to follow Chen Mu's command and could not harm Chen Mu. But outside the midnight cafeteria, the contract doesn't work. The best way to get a creepy to always follow orders was to sign a contract. However, a person could only sign a contract with one creepy, so Chen Mu extraordinarily cherished this opportunity. After buying the midnight eatery, Chen Mu's strength had also increased, which was the buff effect brought to him by the midnight eatery. The current Chen Mu already had strength equivalent to that of a trickster. The strength of the tricksters in front of him was too low, signing the contract was purely a waste, Chen Mu didn't want to waste his chances on a low-level trickster, he had to be at least a trickster general. While signing the contract, Li Xiaoxiao left for a while. Not long after, Li Xiaoxiao returned, but she was carrying a guile in her hand. Chen Mu fixed his eyes on it and realized that the creepy that Li Xiaoxiao was carrying was clearly the creepy guest that had tried to get Chen Mu killed just now. Master, I have captured it back, please dispose of it. Li Xiaoxiao said respectfully. At this moment, the creepy was already scared shitless, it had thought that it would be fine after escaping the midnight eatery, but it never thought that it would be captured back by Li Xiaoxiao. It was only a creepy folk-ranked creepy, its strength was very low, and Li Xiaoxiao dealt with it with ease. It was only until this moment that this creep really regretted it, and it realized that it had gotten into big trouble. Seeing the scared-to-death bazaar, Chen Mu looked at the respectful Li Xiaoxiao and nodded with satisfaction. Li Xiaoxiao was very discerning, knowing that this eerie had offended Chen Mu, and before Chen Mu could give the word, she captured it back. Chen Mu said to the shivering creepy, Don't panic, I'm a generous person and never leave overnight grudges. Hearing Chen Mu's gentle tone, creepy's hanging heart slightly relaxed, and it hastily patted Chen Mu's ass. However, deep inside, the creepy had more than a trace of resentment towards Chen Mu. Even if it didn't dare to harm Chen Mu, it was prepared to find some trouble for Chen Mu when it had the chance in the future. Who would have thought that Chen Mu's next sentence would make it fall into an ice cave? I'm a person who never keeps overnight grudges, so let's kill it tonight, and I hope the world will be without it tomorrow. Learning that it would surely die, Creepy no longer pretended and cursed at Chen Mu. However, before it could say two words, it was taken out and finished off by Li Xiaoxiao. After signing the contract and handing out the money, the time was already late, reaching past two in the morning. In the midst of the midnight cafeteria's employees cheering them on, Chen Mu left the place. The midnight cafeteria was filled with the smell of blood, Chen Mu did not intend to sleep here, he was ready to go home and rest. Now that the bazaar end times had just begun, other than the bazaar scenes, other places were not considered dangerous. The midnight canteen was certainly safe, but Chen Mu could not possibly cower there forever. He needed to take advantage of the time when the creepy end times had just begun to quickly raise his strength. Plutonium was not directly equal to strength, otherwise in the midnight cafeteria mission in the first place, if Chen Mu had the strength, he would have killed the bizarre guest on the spot, where would he need to wait for Li Xiaoxiao to capture it back again? Therefore, for the next month, Chen Mu decided to utilize his previous memories to go to some weird scenes to look for props, improve his strength, and sign a contract with a powerful weird. 
After leaving the midnight cafeteria, the cool evening breeze blew against his face, blowing away Chen Mu's fatigue. In front of Chen Mu was the calm campus. The lights were bright in the distance, and the city was quiet and peaceful at night. And behind Chen Mu was the midnight cafeteria filled with blood, tranquility and fear, separated by a thin line. When most people did not realize it, the bizarre end time slowly descended, the familiar order slowly collapsed, perhaps this is the quiet before the storm. At the school gate, the light in the security room was still on. Seeing Chen Mu leaving the school gate, the old man in the security room said, Young man, studying so hard? Studying in the classroom until 2 o'clock in the middle of the night? Chen Mu smiled, studying? His grades weren't good, before the start of the bizarre apocalypse, Chen Mu's grades weren't at the bottom of the list, but they were by no means at the top of that level. But when the bizarre end world descended, none of this mattered. What academic performance, test scores, in the weird post-apocalyptic world, could not even match the value of one plutonium coin? Survival. Survival was the first goal in the weird post-apocalyptic world. Only after satisfying survival, can we then consider development? Grandpa, open the door for me. Shen Mu said to the grandpa in the security room. All right. Students as hardworking as you are are rare. The security guard lamented and opened the door for Chen Mu. Until Chen Mu went far away, the security master is still lamenting, nowadays students are so rolled up, actually learn to go home at 2 o'clock in the morning. If only his own grandson could be so hardworking. After leaving the school through the gate, Chen Mu was ready to take a taxi back. Chen Mu came to the street and looked around for a cab. The streets were empty in the early morning, most of the people were still asleep, and the sky was still dark. Harm, not having a car is really inconvenient. Gotta find a way to get a car. Chen Mu couldn't help but sigh. After waiting for five minutes, finally, on the dark streets, a cab slowly came. Before Chen Mu could wave, it stopped beside Chen Mu. Chen Mu pulled open the door and sat on the back seat. Master, go to Wang Jiang neighborhood. Wang Jiang subdivision was Chen Mu's home, an old subdivision built over ten years ago, the house was small and old, and he had always lived alone. This time when he went home, apart from sleeping, Chen Mu also planned to pack up the things in his house and take away whatever he could pack. Anyway, Chen Mu had a space ring, it was too convenient to pack something or something. The house at home was old and small, Chen Mu did not intend to live there anymore, the bizarre end of the world came, Chen Mu had trillions of plutonium, naturally he thought of improving the living environment, and choosing a better house for himself. Along the way, the driver appeared to be silent, and did not say a word from beginning to end. Not only that, as time passed, Chen Mu keenly realized that the cab's driving speed was getting faster and faster. Soon, the speed exceeded 120,130. 160. Master, you're driving too fast. Chen Mu voiced out a reminder. However, in response to his reminder, the master driver still did not reply. At this moment, Chen Mu thought of something, and his eyes became sharp. He carefully inhaled his nose and smelled the faint odor of blood. On the window of the back seat, there was also a palm print pressed in blood. Only the blood mark was very faint, plus it was dark, so it was hard to spot. The experience of five years in the bizarre end times told Chen Mu that there was a problem with this car rental. If Chen Mu hadn't guessed correctly, this should be the famous spectral taxi in the bizarre end world. In the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, humans faced three main dangers. First, the bizarre mission. Those who were selected by the bizarre mission would receive a small blood-colored note, and had to complete the mission according to the contents of the note, or else they would die. This kind of bizarre mission would usually have clear rules, and one could find a way to live within the rules. However, the path to life was obscure and difficult to find, and the death rate was very high. The mission that Chen Mu had just participated in was in this category. Secondly, lonely souls and wild weirdness. With the invasion of the creepy end times, many wandering creepy souls would appear in the world. If a person did not violate the rules, then the creepy souls could not harm you. However, the rules of this kind of spooky souls are usually very unclear. Creepy souls won't tell you the rules ahead of time, and can only figure them out on their own, or based on the experience of others. For example, a trickster will disguise itself as an old lady and ask you to help take out the garbage. If you help it, then the creepy can attack you. In this case, unless you are stronger or can successfully escape, you will be killed by the spooky. Third, the spooky scene. In addition to following the instructions of the little note and entering the creepy scene, people will also walk into the creepy scene without realizing it. For example, the store on the side of the road was invaded by the spooky and turned into a spooky scene. If you walk into it, then you have to follow the rules of it, complete the task and leave the place. Another example is this cab right now, which is actually a spooky scene. Chen Mu had inadvertently gotten into the cab, and had entered this bizarre scene. However, Chen Mu did not panic. Five years of experience in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world had allowed him to see a lot of things. In the bizarre scene, as long as one did not violate the rules, it was possible to survive. 
Regarding the spectral taxi, Chen Mu had heard a lot of news. In the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, the Psi taxi was an excellent means of transportation. Sitting in the phantom taxi, as long as one did not get attacked by other bizarre attacks until they reached their destination. It was equivalent to saying that there was a temporary invincibility buff added. As for the rules of the spectral taxi, they were actually quite simple. If you had plutonium, then you only needed to pay according to the price. If you don't have plutonium, then you need to spot the cab's irregularities as soon as possible, and just open the door and jump out to escape before its speed picks up. The starting speed of the underworld taxi is very slow, so if you jump straight out of the car and escape, you will not suffer any major injuries other than some minor injuries. The speed of the phantom taxi, however, will get faster and faster. It will keep accelerating until you reach your destination, and can even break the speed of sound. The speed is so fast that jumping out of the taxi is tantamount to looking for death. In that case, you'll have to sit honestly until you reach your destination and pay. What if you don't have plutonium to pay? You will be killed by the cab driver. In the weird post-apocalyptic world, some people would even take the initiative to find a side taxi in order to get somewhere quickly. When following the rules, a side taxi would make traveling extremely convenient. Still, in the bizarre end world, with or without an underworld coin, it was a completely different experience. At this time, the cab speed had already broken through 190. Soon, it drove to Chen Mu's home, Wanjiang district. Until then, the cab driver finally spoke, we're here, pay up, 10,000 medals, 10,000 plutonium, for many people, was a huge sum of money. Not to mention the fact that the bizarre end of the world had just begun, very few people had medieval coins, and for a passenger to take out 10,000 medieval coins to pay, no one other than Chen Mu could take it out. However, Chen Mu in the back seat did not pay, but continued to sit there calmly. Seeing that Chen Mu had no intention of paying, the cab driver became furious. Its head suddenly turned a hard 180 degrees at a weird angle, staring dead at Chen Mu in the back seat, pay or die. Chen Mu saw the driver's front face, it was the face of a middle-aged man, but the eyes of both eyes had been gouged out, leaving two blood-red holes. Without eyes it's actually still driving so steadily, TSK, you creepy still have some skills. Chen Mu scared inside, he didn't look flustered at all, instead, he carried a hint of a playful smile. Cut the crap, wait for death if you can't pay. The driver suddenly stretched out his hands, about to strangle Chen Mu's neck. Pay up? How do you know I don't have money? Chen Mu laughed and stared at the driver with a gaze that saw through everything. Being stared at by Chen Mu like this, the driver felt very uncomfortable and his movements became even more violent, then pay quickly. 10,000 plutonium. If you don't pay you're breaking the rules, you'll die, I'm going to twist your head off. Chen Mu was still as unhurried as ever, are you in a hurry? Listen to me you're not in a hurry yet, there's more urgency later. I know that even if I pay you 10,000 plutonium, you won't take it. Because, if you take the plutonium, then the one who violates the rules is you. With that, Chen Muzhin took out 10,000 plutonium from his ring, and waved it in front of the driver's eyes. With so many plutonium coins in front of him, the driver revealed an expression of longing. Amidst the longing, there was a hint of scorn mixed in. There was no doubt that 10,000 medals was a great temptation to the driver. But as Chen Mu had said, the cab driver did not dare to collect 10,000 medals. He just looked eagerly but did not dare to move. Chen Mu revealed a familiar smile that he would always reveal when he had insight into everything. Only Chen Mu slowly said, As far as I know, the rule of the underworld taxi is that as long as you pay the fare, you can get off safely. Obviously, a short journey of a few minutes definitely doesn't require 10,000 plutonium. The 10,000 plutonium you mentioned is not money for the fare, it's just something you use to scare customers. If a customer has 100 plutonium in his hand, which is enough to pay the fare, but he is scared by you and thinks that he doesn't have 10,000 plutonium and chooses to forego the payment, then you can kill him. Right, Mr. Driver, playing such tricks with me? You're still young. The real fare is the number displayed on the meter. So, Mr. Driver, please lean your body to the side to reveal the meter that you've covered. Hearing Chen Mu say this, a surprised expression appeared on the driver's face. It looked Chen Mu up and down with its eyeball-less eyes. It realized that the young man in front of it looked harmless, but in reality, he was deeply versed in the rules of the bizarre end world, with an extremely deep city, and was a ruthless character. Just one month into the bizarre end world, he was able to gain insight into the rules of the underworld taxi, this kind of insight was by no means very human. Finally, the driver realized that he had encountered a ruthless character, and it moved its body to the side, revealing the meter that was covered by it. 11. 45 Plutonium. Payment, Collection, Change. After a series of actions, Chen Mu had already paid the fare, and logically, Chen Mu could already get off the bus, but Chen Mu sat in the back seat without moving. You can go now. The driver urged Chen Mu to get off the bus. The 10,000 plutonium in Chen Mu's hand was a huge temptation for the driver. 
When Shen Mu didn't leave for a second, the 10,000 plutonium was dangling in front of the driver, tickling the driver's heart. How much is 10,000 plutonium? Want it? Chen Mu said. Want, definitely want, but you can't possibly give it to me. The driver said coldly. Anyone knew the importance of plutonium, not to mention that for humans, 10,000 plutonium was even more precious and rare, being able to survive many times in bizarre missions. How could the human in front of him give himself such a precious and important plutonium coin? It felt that Chen Mu was showing off or teasing it, so naturally its tone was icy cold. Who said I couldn't possibly give it to you? Chen Mu smiled, not only can I give it to you, but I can also give you more. As long as you are willing to pay some price. The driver was a bit moved, but Reason told it again that this was impossible, it was impossible for a human to be so generous. What price? The driver asked. Work for me as a driver. I'll give you 20,000 plutonium a month. There's even a performance bonus for a good job. The underworld taxi, the bizarre post-apocalyptic world was rare. There was at most one in a city. Chen Mu now lacked an on-call driver, and if he was in a hurry, if he wanted to find an underworld taxi in the city, he wouldn't be able to wait for seven days and seven nights. The driver in front of him had good driving skills, and his strength was at the level of a guile soldier, so he could enjoy the temporary invincibility buff bonus while sitting in the car. If this car was chartered, it was the same as having an on-call driver and a bodyguard with the strength of a guile soldier, which was extremely cost-effective for the current Chen Mu. What did you say? 20,000 medals a month? And a bonus? The driver revealed a shocked expression, he drove the underworld taxi here for just over 3,000 plutonium a month, and was often in arrears. Exhausting himself all year round, it was only more than 30,000 plutonium a year. With a single strike, Chen Mu had raised its wages by almost 10 times. There are also other bonuses. And it doesn't have to work every day, it only needs to serve Chen Mu alone. Is there such a good thing in heaven? The driver would believe it and looked at Chen Mu with a skeptical expression. Chen Mu didn't explain much, and directly took 50,000 plutonium from the ring, plus the 10,000 plutonium from just now, totaling 60,000, and directly handed it to the driver. This is your 3 months salary, I'll pay you in advance. It was only at this point that the creepy driver reacted, this young man in front of him wasn't joking. He was truly this rich. The driver looked at Chen Mu with disbelief, reaching out its hand to accept the 60,000 plutonium coins, and its hand even trembled a little. It couldn't believe that it really had such good luck to run into a tycoon who hired himself as a private driver right out of the gate. Take off the contract, let's both sign a contract. Chen Mu said. The driver came back from his shock and carefully put away the plutonium, then hurriedly took out his own contract and signed his name. Chen Mu also signed his name, and at this moment, the underworld taxi became Chen Mu's exclusive vehicle, and the driver became his personal chauffeur at his beck and call. Boss Chen, this is my phone number, you can call me anytime if you need anything. I will be there within 5 minutes. The driver attentively handed Chen Mu a black cell phone with a blood red button on it. As long as Chen Mu was in the city and pressed the blood red button, within 5 minutes, the ghostly cab that belonged exclusively to Chen Mu would arrive. After collecting his cell phone, Chen Mu was ready to get off and go home. The driver hurriedly got out of the car first, circled around to the side of Chen Mu's car door, eagerly bent down to help Chen Mu open the car door, and blocked his hand on the roof of the car to avoid Chen Mu bumping his head. The driver knew in his heart that if the Sai taxi drivers in other cities knew that they had found such a good errand, they would probably explode with envy in place. Such a generous rich boss, one must serve him well. Chen Mu was contentedly enjoying the driver's service, if other people saw that a stern ghost was eagerly helping Chen Mu to open the door, they would probably be shocked to drop their jaws. Boss Chen, whatever luggage you have, you can look for me to get it, I'll help you carry it down from upstairs. The creepy driver bent over and said curtly. Aha. Chen Mu nodded indifferently, at 10 o'clock in the morning, you'll pick me up here on time. I'm going to run some errands. Good good good, don't worry boss, I've always been reliable. Not long after, under the attentive escort of the driver, Chen Mu returned to his familiar home. During the five years of the bazaar end times, Chen Mu had been hiding, not daring to return to his home for fear of encountering the bazaar. At this moment, when returning home again, the familiar scent hit his face. This long-lost familiarity and coziness made Chen Mu a little intoxicated, he took a shower and comfortably lay on his own bed to recuperate. 9.30 in the morning. Chen Mu woke up from his sleep. The bed at home is comfortable to sleep on, the pillow height is also just right. After a comfortable sleep, Chen Mu felt that his whole body was full of energy. After brushing his teeth and washing his face, Chen Mu took a loaf of bread from the refrigerator and nibbled on it for breakfast while thinking about the next arrangement. At this time, it was the beginning of the bizarre end of the world, and many hidden props in the bizarre scenes had not been taken away by anyone at this time. People nowadays avoided the weird scenes, not to mention actively entering them to look for hidden props. Only after a year, when people found that no props, no strength, sooner or later is a death, 
Then there will be a lot of people risking their lives, specializing in the initiative into the weird scene, looking for a variety of hidden props. In the process, some people found a rare king of the bizarre props, a skyrocket. Chen Mu was an afterthought, and it was only after two years of the weird end of the world that he began to grit his teeth and actively explore various weird scenes. However, it was already too late by then, and a large number of rare props had already been swept away. Reborn back into the bizarre end world for a month, Chen Mu naturally couldn't repeat the same mistake. At this time, the bizarre scenes gradually increased, and the props inside hadn't been taken away, so it could be said that there were treasures buried everywhere. Chen Mu, as a reborn person, knew exactly where these treasures were located and how to obtain them. If he didn't sweep up the king of tricksters props, he would be sorry for having lived again. Therefore, Chen Mu's top priority was to seize the time and enter the weird scenes before everyone could react, to get the rare props and improve his strength. Which bizarre scene is good to go to first? Chen Mu carefully recalled which of the weird scenes in his city had King of Tricksters props that he desperately needed. After thinking for a few moments, Chen Mu suddenly thought of a place the The Misty Museum. This place was originally a museum in the city, but after the end of the bizarre world, it was turned into a bizarre scene called the Misty Museum. The family of the creepy duke resided in the Misty Museum. The family's strength was extremely strong, even the attendants were at the level of creepy soldier, and the butler's strength was even at the level of creepy chief. As for the duke himself, he was a powerful guile general. Apart from the guile king, the guile general was the strongest existence in the guile end times, and the strongest guile in many small cities was the strength of a guile general. With such a powerful boss, one could imagine how dangerous the Misty Museum would be. High risk carries high opportunity, in the Misty Museum, there is also a general level props. Heavy Armor of Death According to the introduction of the weird scene, the duke was originally a strong weird general who had fought countless battles in his life. Now he has left the battlefield and is hidden in the museum. The death heavy armor was the armor that the duke wore back then. The armor of a trickster general level general, the protective effect can be imagined. The death heavy armor was immune to bizarre damage. It was important to know that props that were immune to bizarre damage belonged to the category of rare props. No matter how sturdy the items made by humans were, they could not block bizarre attacks. There were many strong people who didn't have a single defense prop even when they reached the rank of a guile master. Because of the lack of defense, it was not uncommon for a creepy long-ranked human to be killed by a sneak attack by a lone spirit after violating the rules. In the midst of the creepy end times, due to the rules, defense props were more important than attack props. After wearing this armor, one would be immune to the damage of creepy folk and creepy soldiers, and mostly immune to the damage of creepy longs, which meant that it was difficult for normal creepy to injure Chen Mu. Unless he violated the rules in a weird scene, Chen Mu was no longer afraid of encountering lone ghosts. Not only that, the heavy armor also had a counterintuitive effect, which was that it was immune to damage from one rule violation. The cooldown time was one month. It was important to realize that there were many rules in the creepy scene. There was no such thing as walking by the river often without wetting one's shoes. Even the strongest person couldn't always be vigilant, and there would always be times when the rules were violated. At this time, the death heavy armor would be able to save a life, immune to the consequences of violating the rules once. It was this effect that made countless strong people rush for it. A year and a half into the strange end times, countless strongmen came here in admiration, wanting to get their hands on this prop in the Misty Museum. However, even though these strongmen were smart and were able to complete the quest, the rewards for completing the quest were ordinary, and it wasn't the death-heavy armor at all. Some people had tried and gone to the Misty Museum to do even harder quests with nine deaths. However, after the quest was over, the duke still didn't give the death-heavy armor as a reward. In the end, some people couldn't help themselves and went straight to steal or rob it. However, as a trickster general, the duke's strength could not be underestimated, and those who had crooked ideas did not come back alive without exception. In the end, there was still someone who got the death heavy armor. The way this person got it, however, blew everyone away. After completing the bizarre mission and meeting the duke, he directly offered to buy the duke's death heavy armor with plutonium. It wasn't until then that all of them woke up like a dream. The duke turned out to be a downtrodden nobleman who needed money the most. After rereading the introduction of the Misty Museum, some people exclaimed that there was actually a hint of clues implied in the introduction of the bizarre scenes. The duke was once a general and is now retired into seclusion. All these introductions are vaguely hinting that the duke was once brilliant and is now down and out, a fallen aristocrat. A fallen aristocrat needs money the most. This person directly bought a trickster general level item through plutonium, which was known as the most missed deal of that year. Later on, the price of the sneaky general item rose until someone offered 100 million medals and couldn't even buy one. Shenmu immediately decided that the next weird scene to raid was the Misty Museum. 
That said, the duchess was actually quite pretty, a middle-aged woman with a lingering charm, Chen Mu had done the Misty Museum's weird quests before and had seen it once. Thinking of this, Chen Mu decided that he would first go to the mall and buy some gifts or something. It was said that one's mouth was short and one's hands were soft. If he came to the door for no reason, he would definitely not give a good face. But if you bring some gifts or something, they will definitely change their attitude, and then buying the death heavy armor will also be much easier. To buy gifts for the weird, you definitely can't go to an ordinary shopping mall, you have to go to a shopping mall that has been transformed into a weird scene. As for where there is a bizarre scene mall, Chen Mu thought about it for half a day, and was a bit stumped. He had no relevant memories from his previous life. This is quite normal, Chen Mu's last life was so short of money, and like most people, living on thin ice in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, how can he have money to go to the mall? Naturally, he didn't know where there were malls in the bizarre scenario. But this is not a trouble, later the driver will come, just ask it directly, it runs around the city every day, it must know. 10 o'clock in the morning. The ghostly cab driver knocked on Chen Mu's door right on time. Chen Mu opened the door and saw that the driver was looking at himself with a respectful face. In the driver's hand, he was also carrying a food packaging bag. Boss Chen, I've come to pick you up. I thought that you haven't eaten in the morning, so I stopped by and bought some breakfast to bring over for you. The driver said, respectfully handing the bag over. Chen Mu was a bit surprised, he did not expect the driver to be so thoughtful. It seemed that the conditions he had offered were extremely attractive, and the driver did not want to lose the job no matter what. Receiving the bag, he opened it and saw that there were donuts, soy milk and a tea egg inside, and the breakfast inside was still hot. Chen Mu had nibbled on a dry and hard bread in the morning, just when he wanted to eat something hot, it was delivered to his door. Thank you, you have a heart. Chen Mu nodded with satisfaction. Being praised by the boss, the driver was instantly in a good mood, it was happy when the boss was happy, it could only be comfortable when it licked the boss comfortably. However, it didn't tell Chen Mu that when the breakfast stall owner saw a man with his eyes gouged out and said, have a cup of soybean milk, a donut, and a tea egg, what kind of shock did the breakfast stall owner receive in his heart? Eating his breakfast and looking at the driver standing respectfully next to him, Chen Mu asked, right, do you know where there is a mall? Preferably a high-class mall, the more high-class the better, a place for creepy to buy things, I'm not bad with money. The driver believed that the boss really wasn't poor in money, it thought about it and replied seriously. Boss, I know that in the outskirts of the city, there's a fallen mall, where everything is very expensive, it's a large and luxurious mall that just opened not long ago. I heard that in the surrounding several cities, this mall is the most high-end. Fallen mall? Okay, that's it. Go, take me to the mall. Chen Mu finished his breakfast and said to the driver. Before leaving the house, Chen Mu took the things in the house, and after picking some of them, he put them all away in his spatial ring. He had no intention of going back to this old raggedy house, so taking some of the things with him was just a way to keep a memory. A few minutes later, Chen Mu got into the phantom taxi. The driver, wearing white gloves, respectfully closed the door and drove the cab straight to the fallen mall. It had to be said that the Sai taxi was just comfortable to sit in. Not to mention the speed, the key was that it ran exceptionally smoothly. Even if it's smooth, the key is that it's also silent. Outside of the traffic, because of the overtaken and crazy honking sound, the car cannot be heard. Last night when I sat in the car, I could smell a faint smell of blood in the car, and there were bloody handprints on the windows. This morning sat again, the smell of blood is no longer, replaced by a faint fragrance of flowers. The bloody handprints on the windows were also wiped clean. Private exclusive service is good. Chen Wu finally understood why in the last bizarre post-apocalyptic world, rich people specialized in finding ghostly cabs to sit in. As long as one gave enough money, it was so damn comfortable. It was a pity that the only underworld taxi in this city had been chartered by himself, and it would be difficult for others to enjoy this feeling even if they were rich. In less than 10 minutes, the cab steadily stopped at its destination. After getting out of the car, Chen Mu looked up, and in front of him was a six-story rotten building. Only then did Chen Mu remember that there was indeed such a rotten building on the outskirts of the city. When it was first constructed, it was intended to be used as a large-scale shopping center. It was a pity that later on, with the city's development plans, as well as other reasons, this shopping center rotted away. I didn't expect that after the bazaar end times, this place would actually turn into a bazaar scene. Just stay here and watch the car, I'll go in and buy something and come out. Chen Mu told the driver to stay in the car and approached the rotten building himself. The driver had thought about going in to protect the boss, but after careful thought, he realized that the boss had a high mind. The driver left the cab, at best, he was at the guile soldier level of strength, and was still useless if he really encountered a problem. Letting the driver stay in the car, even if something happens to the boss, the driver can still drive in to save the boss, in the cab that is a temporary invincible counterintuitive buff -a. The boss deserved to be a boss, his mind was more delicate than even ordinary shenanigans. 
The moment he entered the fallen mall, Chen Mu clearly felt that the temperature around him instantly lowered. It was the height of summer, but the temperature in the mall was exceptionally low. Looking around, the surroundings were a gray and black tone. On the entrance door of the mall, there was a layer of blood-red handprints. The handprints were overlapping and interlaced, like there were countless people who wanted to escape from this place, but were pulled back hard, only leaving behind handprints that kept flapping. It was at this moment that a cold aura approached, and Chen Mu could not help but shiver. Following the direction of the arrival of the cold air, he only saw a woman wearing a red uniform, walking towards himself with a smile on her face. Her smile was a bit terrifying, and upon closer inspection, the corners of her mouth split to the base of her ears, and she was looking at Chen Mu with a frightening smile. This gentleman, welcome to the fallen mall. Is there anything you need to purchase? The red-robed uniformed woman said, the corners of her mouth leaking out threads of blood, looking exceptionally terrifying. If it was an ordinary person, they would have been scared out of their wits at this moment, but Chen Mu still had a calm look on his face. The woman thought that Chen Mu was scared silly and was worried that Chen Mu would turn his head and run. So the woman directly took two steps forward and enthusiastically pulled Chen Mu's arm to prevent Chen Mu from escaping. Sir, don't think about running away oh. After purchasing something in the mall, you can naturally leave here. The woman stared at Chen Mu like a lamb to be slaughtered. Hee hee, there's no need to play this kind of trick with me. Chen Mu flashed a smile towards the woman, if I'm not wrong, this is the first rule of the fallen mall, customers who purchase things are free to leave. You're so smart, sir, come and buy something, you can leave when you're done. The woman said in a seductive tone, urging Chen Mu to buy something. No need to rush me. Your rules are quite interesting, let me ponder over them. If I'm not wrong, a person can also leave safely if they don't buy anything. Chen Mu laughed and said. Hearing this, the woman's face changed and she cautiously glanced at Chen Mu. She didn't expect Chen Mu to see the cracks at a glance. Only to see Chen Mu say with a smiling expression. This kind of rule, I've seen it a lot in the bizarre end times. The rule says, as long as you buy something, you can leave them all. This is actually a misleading rule, imploring you to buy something quickly. But as soon as you buy something, you fall into the trap of the rule. Some people come in for the first time, encounter this rule, and in a panic, make a stiff purchase, just to get out quickly. However, those people either didn't have the plutonium or bought something that was too expensive. I guess you have a second rule, if you don't have enough money to pay, you die in the fallen mall. These two rules form a trap, and I'm guessing there are quite a few people who fall into it. The lifeline to breaking the trap lies in the fact that the rules don't say that you can't leave the mall without buying something. Thus, for those who lack metals, the best way to survive is to turn your head and leave now. A surprised expression appeared on the woman's face when she was caught by Chen Mu's glance. She put away the smile that cracked to her ears and said in a helpless tone, You're very smart, sir, and it's true that quite a few unlucky people have died here. But since you've already seen the way to life, then please leave, I won't stop you. After the woman said this, she let go of Chen Mu's arm, signaling that Chen Mu could leave. Leave? Why should I leave? Chen Mu shrugged, I just came here to buy something ah. What I told you just now is just practicing, I'm also afraid that I'm so used to being arrogant that I won't even be able to see the way of life and the rules after a long time. The woman looked at Chen Mu with surprise, this young man broke the mystery of the rules in one word, just practicing to play? What kind of arrogant tone is this? And what's more crucial was that one glance could see through the life path, with such insight and wisdom, this young man really seemed to have the money to be arrogant. You said you are here to buy something? The woman asked. Of course, take me to the most expensive store in your area. Chen Mu used the calmest tone to say the most arrogant words. If anyone else dared to say that, the woman would only think that he was tired of living, the most expensive store casually spent hundreds of thousands of plutonium coins, could an ordinary person afford it? Can an ordinary person afford it? He doesn't know the sky and the earth, but he's just sending himself to death. But Chen Mu said so, the woman felt that he must have this bottom. Such a smart and calm person would not come to send himself to death. Could this young man, really be able to come up with hundreds of thousands of medals? Somehow, the woman looked at Chen Mu and realized that Chen Mu was actually quite handsome. Rich and calm, this kind of man even Guile liked. Thinking of this, the woman in red uniform revealed a smile again, stepped forward, and intimately held Chen Mu's arm, enthusiastically leading Chen Mu into the mall. The most expensive store in the fallen mall was on the top six floors of the mall. After the two came to the sixth floor, the woman introduced Chen Mu to the place, where there were all sorts of expensive items such as liquor, clothes, jewelry and all the big-name luxury goods of the trickster world, so as long as one had the money, one could buy them all. But in the end, the woman still kindly reminded Chen Mu, everything here is very expensive, and if you don't pay after you buy it, you will die. If you want to buy something cheaper, there are cheaper items on the second floor. I'll be on duty on the first floor, so if you have any problems, feel free to find me. After saying that, the woman left, she still had to go to the first floor for her shift. After learning about the situation of the stores on the sixth floor, 
Chen Mu began to think about what gifts he should buy for the duke's family in order to impress the duke and make it easier for him to get the death-heavy armor. The duke should like tobacco and alcohol. Chen Mu had been there once in his previous life and heard that the duke had a wine cabinet dedicated to collecting red wine. However, Chen Mu later learned that the duke had fallen on hard times, and the inside of the wine cabinet was empty. So one of the duke's wishes was to get a lot of expensive red wine to refill the wine cabinet. Bringing a whole lot of red wine to the duke, the duke would definitely like it. Thinking of this, Chen Mu walked into a store that sold wine. After entering the store, the salesgirl inside warmly greeted him. Sir, what kind of wine do you want? We have red wine, white wine, and beer here, specifically tailored to the tastes of the bazaar, and it is a famous luxury in the bazaar. The salesgirl introduced enthusiastically, passionately trying to get Chen Mu to buy something. As long as Chen Mu couldn't pay, Chen Mu would have to die here and she would get her commission. She did not think that Chen Mu had the money to afford these luxury drinks. In the past few days, there had been several rash people who had come in and ended up not being able to pay and left their lives in the store. In her eyes, Chen Mu was just the next rash person. Pack all the most expensive red wines you have here in gift boxes for me. Fill 100 bottles for me. 100 bottles of red wine was enough to fill the duke's wine cabinet. With so many gifts slammed down, the duke would definitely be moved. Another important reason why Chen Mu had gone through the trouble of buying the gift was because he had once heard that there was another guile general great item in the Misty Museum. Only the duke had kept it a secret, so the outside world was only guessing, and no one had actually gotten it yet. If he could get two trickster general level props, it would be a big win, a big win, a big win. When I heard Chen Mu open his mouth to 100 bottles, the saleswoman in the heart of a laughed, as expected, another rash. Here a bottle of red wine will have to 1 to 2 million medieval, the most expensive and 100,000 medieval a bottle of, this kid absolutely cannot afford to buy. Soon, the salesgirl packed it up. It was only at this point that she charted her way to Chen Mu, revealing a tricky smile to Chen Mu, just waiting for Chen Mu to run out of money to pay. Sir, these 100 bottles of red wine cost a total of 2. 3 million. Please make the payment, otherwise you need to leave your head here to cover your debt oh. Only to see Chen Mu pull out a stack of stacks of money and said, it's not just 2. 3 million, I can still afford this amount. The salesgirl didn't even look at it, sir, it's plutonium. For this too. 3 million, you need to pay with plutonium. A few days ago, there was a rich brat who was just like Chen Mu and bought more than a million in one breath. As a result, when checking out, that rich dilettante realized that he had to settle the payment with plutonium, and that he had to use the plutonium from the bizarre post-apocalyptic world. At that moment, the rich second generation directly froze in place, and the person was stunned. The salesman thought that Chen Mu was also a rich second generation man with a lot of empty money but no plutonium from the bizarre end times. However, Chen Mu was not stunned silly, he still said in a calm tone, yeah, what I'm giving you is plutonium. With these words, the salesperson lowered her head in disbelief and looked at the stacks of money Chen Mu gave her. It really was medieval money. Plutonium coins that emanated a strong and eerie aura. This time, it was the salesperson's turn to be stunned, and she froze in place then. How is this possible? How could this be possible? The bizarre post-apocalyptic world had just begun for a month. How could someone have so many plutonium coins? This person is also too rich. This scene completely exceeded the salesperson's cognition, and she looked at Chen Mu with disbelief, not even knowing what to say. A moment later, she came back to her senses from the shock and hurriedly changed her tone, Sir, wait a moment, I'll call the manager over. One shot was more than two million medals, this level of transaction, it was no longer for her, a salesperson, to make the call, it needed the manager of the mall to step in. Chen Mu was not in a hurry, letting the salesgirl help herself, sitting comfortably on the sofa, drinking a cup of freshly brewed black tea, slowly waiting for the manager to come out. He this out, directly to the store's red wine, all of a sudden to buy empty. The stock in the store was only about 100 bottles, after all, these red wines were so expensive, even the creepy chief level creepy, could rarely afford to drink such expensive ones. The previous owner of the midnight cafeteria, that level of creepy was already at the creepy chief level, and it hadn't even bothered to drink a bottle of this red wine for over a year. Only a duke at his peak could buy dozens of bottles at once. During the process of waiting for the manager to come over, in order to fear that Chen Mu would be idle and bored, the salesman knelt beside Chen Mu and began to pinch his legs. If other people saw the scene, they would probably be angry and spit out blood. We into the bizarre scene, which one is not trembling, see bizarre hate to go around. You are good, actually in the bizarre scene as a grandfather, but also let the bizarre to pinch your legs. You're more angry than the others. Is there any justice in heaven? Two or three minutes later, the manager of the fallen mall rushed over. A big customer of over two million dollars is already a gold level customer of the mall. For the mall, consumption of 1 million, can become a silver level customer, enjoy the mall's VIP service, enter the mall to manager personally reception. If you spend 2 million dollars, 
you can become a gold level customer. And then above that, there are black gold customers that have to spend more than 5 million. The silver of the fallen mall, there are only a handful of them, and every one of them is a powerful creep in the city. As for gold customers, since the creepy end of the world had just been a month old, even the strongest creepy wouldn't have any that would consume 2 million medieval coins in a month, so there weren't any yet. Chen Mu was the first golden customer in the mall. In this regard, the mall manager paid extra attention. Mr. Chen, congratulations on becoming our first gold customer, this is your VIP gold card. The manager handed Chen Mu a card that emanated gold. Unexpectedly, for the gold card, Chen Mu did not accept it. He directly pushed away the gold card and said, I told you to hold off for now because there's an even more urgent one later. I haven't finished shopping yet. My shopping has just begun. Where is the most expensive jewelry in your store? Pack it up for me. Chen Mu upheld the principle that the most expensive was the best. It was also true that every penny counted, and if you wanted the best goods, then pay the highest price. Hearing that Chen Mu also wanted to buy jewelry, the manager didn't dare to be slow, and hurriedly had the most expensive jewelry in the mall brought over. This was a crystal necklace made of trick crystals, holding it in his hand emitted a light blue glow, which was particularly attractive to look at. Unfortunately, this crystal necklace didn't have any special effects, it couldn't add defense, attack or anything. But even so, it couldn't help but be expensive. 1 million medals for a necklace. Taking out such a necklace, no female dial could refuse. Consider it a gift for the duchess, Chen Mu remembered that she should be quite fond of jewelry. It was just that after the duke fell on hard times, he sold the jewelry to pay off his debts, and with such a necklace given to her, he thought she would be ecstatic. Pack it up and put it away. Chen Mu threw the 1 million plutonium to the manager, who hurriedly had the necklace packed up and wrapped in a gorgeous gift box on the outside. After thinking about it, Chen Mu bought a few more watches, each of which was worth a lot of money, costing Chen Mu another 2 million dollars. In the end, when he did the math, Chen Mu had spent more than 5 million plutonium in the fallen mall in just half an hour. As expected, as the name suggests, it was truly a fallen mall, spending money like water. After packing these gifts, Chen Mu put them into his space ring. Looking at the space ring in Chen Mu's hand, the mall manager revealed a look of envy in his eyes. Such a spatial ring was a guillotine-level prop, with a huge amount of space inside, making it very convenient to put in all kinds of things. To be able to own such a strong ring, this young man's identity must be extraordinary. A customer with such a strong background must not be offended. After buying these, Chen Mu suddenly felt that this mall was quite good, and there would definitely be a lot of shenanigans to come shopping in the future. Why didn't he himself take one step and just buy the mall? Thinking of this, Chen Mu said to the manager, Is your boss around? I want to buy this fallen mall and ask how much it can be sold for. By the way, remember to tell it that I'm not poor, money is not a problem. Upon hearing this, the mall manager was first shocked at Chen Mu's wealth and power, followed by a difficult expression. Mr. Chen, our boss is not here lately, I can't make a decision on this kind of thing. How about this, when the boss comes back, I will definitely convey it to the boss at the first time. At this, Chen Mu did not care. At that time, when Chen Mu bought Midnight Eatery, it was because the current Midnight Eatery was still very small, so the owner was not strong enough to guard the store every day. The owner with such a large mall must be very strong, at least at the creepy general level. It was more than normal for a creepy of this level to go out on a business trip. Let's wait for it to come back from its business trip. Anyway, the mall was right here. Chen Mu could afford to pay a price that would satisfy it. At this time, the manager carefully asked, Mr. Chen, how about this? I open a supreme black gold card for you. Supreme black gold card? What is this? Chen Mu was a bit puzzled. He admitted that he was a turd in his previous life, and he was well drilled in rules and raw paths, but for this kind of high-end stuff, he had no chance to get in touch with it at all. It's like this. The VIP cards in the Fallen Mall are categorized into three types of silver, gold, and black gold. On top of these three, there is an even more advanced one called the Supreme Black Gold Card, which is only open to the most honored guests. Unlike the other three types of cards, the Supreme Black Gold Card required the guest's background to be strong enough, in addition to meeting the spending conditions. The Supreme Black and Gold Card is an affirmation of the guest's honorable status, and many shenanigans will know the honor of your status after seeing this card, which is a symbol of identity and status. Supreme Black Gold Card can enjoy many rights and benefits, in addition to the rights and benefits of shopping, but also enjoy other privileges. To use an analogy, for example, Mr. Chen, if you were chosen by the little note to participate in the weird mission in the Fallen Mall, as long as you have the Supreme Black Gold Card, you are the big boss of the mall during the mission, and you can change the rules at will. Even if it's someone else, you can use the privileges of the Supreme Black Gold Card to intervene in their mission if you want to. In addition, if you want to visit the mall, we can clear the mall of other customers in advance and only receive the most honorable you. 
You can also open a subcard for someone else at any time based on the Supreme Black Gold card, similar to writing a check. When others take your card and enter the mall, they will be able to enjoy the treatment of the Black Gold card. And if you want to see our boss, as long as our boss is in the mall, whenever you want to see him, with your Supreme Black Gold card status, the boss will see you at any time. As the manager of the mall, I only have the authority to open a Supreme Black Gold card for someone once. If you are willing, Mr. Chen, I will open it for you. Hearing the manager say that, Chen Mu nodded after thinking about it, then you can open one for me. Chen Mu didn't really know much about this, what he didn't know was that the supreme black gold card that he could open with a casual word was something that many bizarre people could only dream of, or even dare to think about. Soon, a large pile of gifts were packed, Chen Mu counted them and felt that what he had bought was pretty much done. All of these things, all of them were gifts that were prepared to be given away. Money buys the way, pearls and jades explore the way, Chen Mu played it very skillfully. However, Chen Mu did not buy anything for himself. For one thing, these were for creepy, Chen Mu couldn't use them alone. Secondly, Chen Mu was a firm pragmatist. Like what kind of red wine, jewelry, and accessories, could they enhance strength? No. These things are just lying around in the mall, and as long as you have money, you can buy them anytime. I already have enough money, what I lack is strength. If they can't make me stronger, then what's the point of having them? Chen Mu only needed things that could enhance his strength, if there was a prop that could enhance his strength. Chen Mu would be more than willing to spend a large amount of money to buy it. After the shopping was completed, Chen Mu thought about it and asked the manager to open 50 shopping cards for him, each amounting to 5,000 medals. These shopping cards, Chen Mu was going to use to incentivize the employees in the midnight cafeteria. He wanted them to know that if they worked well for Boss Chen, Boss Chen would not treat them badly. The mall manager was generous. For Chen Mu's 50 shopping cards, the mall manager immediately said that he didn't need Chen Mu to pay for them the 5,000 amount of each card would be the mall's treat for Boss Chen. For Chen Mu this kind of big customer, the mall manager is of course willing to please him. Chen Mu did not refuse and accepted the mall manager's goodwill. The mall manager respectfully sent Chen Mu away, all the way from the 7th floor to the 1st floor. The red-uniformed lady on the 1st floor, seeing Chen Mu coming down, had wanted to strike up a conversation. However, when she saw Chen Mu behind her, followed by a fawning manager, she couldn't help but dismiss the idea. She had thought that Chen Mu was just a little bit of money, but she didn't think that Chen Mu's background was actually so deep that even the manager of the mall had to personally send him away. One must know that the mall manager was already at the guile chief level of strength, and further up was a strong guile general. For a guile of this level to personally send Chen Mu away, one could only imagine how deep Chen Mu's background was. Wasn't he a bit mean just now? Did Chen Mu scare him when he first arrived? The red-clothed female weirdo had some regrets, had she known that she would have released some of her feminine charms and tempted Chen Mu. Like Chen Mu this kind of background, but also rich, but also calm, but also a little handsome people, where to go as a scarce resource, if embraced Chen Mu this thigh. Chen Mu didn't know that he had triggered such an intense reaction in her mind just by passing by the female guile. Outside the fallen mall, the driver had been waiting for a long time. Seeing Chen Mu delayed in coming out, the driver could not help but get a little nervous. Could it be that his boss had gone to the top, bought too many things, and was held back for not having the money to pay? Thinking of Chen Mu's generous appearance, the driver felt that it shouldn't be, but still had no bottom in his heart. Just then, Chen Mu finally came out of the mall. Behind Chen Mu, the mall manager led a group of salesmen and bowed in unison towards Chen Mu. Greetings Supreme Black Gold Boss Chen, welcome to your next visit. Hearing the words Supreme Black Gold, the driver's heart thumped, as far as he knew, the highest grade was Black Gold, and that all had to spend astronomical amounts. The driver's previous boss was only at the silver level. His own new boss, who had only entered the fallen mall for the first time and had only shopped for a small half day, had actually become a supreme black gold customer. Obviously, supreme black gold was even more honorable than black gold. What exactly was the background of his own boss, actually so powerful? After Chen Mu got on the car, the driver turned his head and asked, Boss, where are we going next? He he, don't rush first, let me show you something. Chen Mu said, from his spatial ring, he pulled out a small square box and handed it to the driver. What is this? The driver was a bit puzzled. Open it and see, it's for you. Chen Mu said with a smile. The driver opened the box, only to see a black watch lying inside. On the surface of the watch, there was a black luster, and at a glance, it was made from materials of great value. The second hand ticked away, holding it in his hand, he could feel the texture of the machinery inside, and it was worth a lot at a glance. In the place of the watch bracelet, there is also a small line of engraving, Guida Chui Fei. Guida Chui Fei, a famous luxury brand in the bazaar world, famous for the exquisite workmanship of its watches. Of course, the price was naturally not low. The cheapest piece would cost more than 20,000 plutocrats. It could be said that owning a piece of Guida Chui Fei was something that many bazaar would never dare to think about in their entire lives. 
It just so happened that he liked watches in his day-to-day -day life, and he was able to talk about the various styles of Guida Chui Fei. It was a pity that as a cab driver, his monthly salary was only over $3,000 per month, and apart from expenses, he did not have any savings at all. For him, Guida Chui Fei was a dream that could never be reached. On weekdays, he could only rely on buying imposters to fulfill his dream. How could he not expect that his boss, who he had just known for a day, would actually buy a piece of Guida Chui Fei for himself on his first visit to the Fallen Mall? And it wasn't a $20,000 entry model, but a $50,000 plus mid-range model. Suddenly, the creepy driver had the urge to cry. As a creepy, he had lived for decades. During these decades, he had been at the bottom of the bizarre world, having to greet people with a smile on his face every day, and had never experienced the feeling of being respected. His previous boss had always had a condescending demeanor. Not only did he pay himself according to the minimum standard, but he also frequently defaulted on his wages for half a year. After the start of the bizarre end times, the boss squeezed him even deeper, and there were more tasks every month. This forced him to take desperate measures and ask for more plutonium from the passengers in order to meet his boss's requirements. He knew that his former boss had never looked up to him. Therefore, when Chen Mu wanted to recruit him, he agreed without hesitation. It was just that he never expected that Chen Mu, his new boss, would actually give him a coveted Guida Chui Fei on his first day on the job. Had the boss been paying attention to him, knowing that he liked watches? It must be so. The boss had always been calm and keenly observant, he must have noticed himself. It was normal for the boss to notice that he liked watches, but the fact that the boss actually bought one for himself was something he could never have imagined. At this moment, Creepy Driver felt what was called the feeling of being respected. In Shen Mu's place, he not only got a higher pay, but as a creepy decades, he experienced being respected for the first time. With a boss like this, what more could one ask for? If he couldn't give his liver and brain to his boss, Tricky Driver felt like a white-eyed wolf. Thank you boss. The creepy driver controlled his crying and said in as normal a tone as possible. He he, it's good if you like it. Chen Mu said, then, next stop, take me to the city's museum. It is rumored that it has become the creepy scene misty museum. I swear allegiance to the boss. Holding the attitude of offering his liver and brain to the boss, the creepy driver drove extra hard, and his speed increased a lot more than usual. In less than 10 minutes, the creepy taxi traveled across the entire city to the western outskirts of the city. The museum, which was located in the western suburb of the city, and behind the museum, there was a large city cemetery. Chen Mu looked through the car window and observed the outside environment. Even though it was 11 in the morning and the big sun was shining fiercely overhead, from afar, a layer of grayish-white fog was shrouded above the museum in the distance. The fog blocked the sunlight and emitted a gloomy feeling, making the misty museum look somewhat eerie. It seems that the museum has been bizarrely polluted, turning it into the bizarre scene, the misty museum. Chen Mu nodded in satisfaction. If he had come early and it hadn't turned into a bizarre scene yet, then wouldn't it be a wasted trip? In the bizarre end times, many bizarre scenes did not appear right from the start. Like the Midnight Cafeteria, originally a student cafeteria in the school, a month before the weird apocalypse, are still good, the students after school are still normal to eat. Two days before Chen Mu and his team received the weird mission, the school cafeteria was contaminated by the weirdness, and whenever it was midnight in the dead of night, it would turn into the Midnight Cafeteria. Like the Misty Museum, it was also a week after the bizarre apocalypse had descended that the museum had undergone a mutation and turned into the Misty Museum. On the way to the Misty Museum, one had to pass through a forest highway. Driving on the forest highway, the trees overhead completely blocked the sunlight, and the highway became dark and gloomy, filled with gray gloomy fog. If it was an ordinary vehicle, even with the high beams on, it could not penetrate the mist, and it was impossible to see more than half a meter. In this case, either you drive at turtle speed in the dark mist, being careful not to roll off the highway, or you can only get out of the car and grope your way through the fog on foot. Either way, mentally and physically, it was torture. However, Chen Mu, who was sitting in the underworld taxi, was not worried about this at all. Since the underworld taxi was originally a trickster, the lights of the underworld taxi could easily penetrate the fog, and the view in front of the car was wide open. However, Chen Mu felt that, for the creepy driver without eyes, the field of vision or something doesn't seem to matter ah. This creepy driver doesn't seem to rely on his eyesight to drive. Instead, it was convenient for Chen Mu to be able to clearly see the surrounding situation. When passing a corner, Chen Mu saw a clear brake mark on the highway, and the brake mark went directly out of the highway and disappeared into the side of the cliff. It seemed that there was an unlucky person who drove too fast in the mist and directly rushed off the cliff. To say that he drove too fast, Chen Mu's creepy driver was even faster. With an extremely high work ethic, the creepy driver still maintained a super fast speed, brushing the corners without slowing down, and in 10 seconds or so, he ran through the forest highway and arrived in front of the creepy museum. Boss Chen, the destination is here. 
The creepy driver turned his head and said to Chen Mu, Boss Chen, do you really want to go further? You did not receive the small blood-colored note and do not have to participate in the Misty Museum's Bazaar Quest. But I have to remind you that if you continue further and enter the Misty Museum's boundaries, then you will be forced to take part in the Bazaar Quest, and you will only be able to leave if you complete the quest alive. At the creepy driver's kind reminder, Chen Mu nodded, I know, but I have to make a trip to the Misty Museum. Seeing his boss's firm eyes, the creepy driver said, Why don't I accompany you, boss? Chen Mu waved his hand and politely refused the creepy driver's good intentions. The Misty Museum, as a bizarre scene, was bizarrely occupied by the Duke's family. The creepy driver was also creepy, and going there rashly would in turn provoke the Duke's anger. Just like one mountain could not tolerate two tigers, the bazaar was not allowed to casually intrude into other bazaar sphere of influence. In the end, the driver got out of the car and pulled open the door for Chen Mu, respectfully seeing Chen Mu off. Chen Mu was alone, walking towards the Misty Museum. Walking through the dense fog, Chen Mu was a little frightened in his heart. To be honest, if he could get his hands on the death-heavy armor, even if he walked alone here, Chen Mu's heart would be filled with confidence. It seemed like it was still important to have strength on one's own. This strengthened Chen Mu's determination to get the props. After walking a few steps, Chen Mu entered the range of the Misty Museum. The surrounding area was a deserted wilderness, a thick mist filled the surroundings, and the temperature became so low that people couldn't help but shiver. The Misty Museum stood directly in front of it, with a shape that looked like a medieval European castle, and there were a few black crows circling over the castle, emitting a few creepy cries from time to time. Outside the main gate of the Misty Museum, there were also a few people standing in modern clothes. Chen Mu wasn't surprised by this, if he wasn't wrong, these few people had received the small blood-colored note and had to bite the bullet to join the bazaar mission. These few people, three men and one woman, did not look too good, and it was obvious that they were all nervous and scared. One of the men was in his forties or fifties, bald with a big belly. Chen Mu recognized him at a glance, this man was a famous local rich merchant, Wang Gafu, who could often be seen in the local newspaper. When the bizarre end times came, even the rich were not spared, and everyone was shivering under the shadow of death. Except, of course, those who have enough plutonium. Besides Wang Gafu, there were two young men. One of these two young men had dyed yellow hair and the other had dyed green hair, and it was obvious that they were both friends from the same gang. The last one, on the other hand, was a young woman. This young woman was fashionably dressed, wearing revealing clothes and a very thick makeup, and was shivering in Wang Dafu's arms. Judging from her age, she was old enough to be Wang Dafu's daughter. However, Chen Mu knew that this was not Wang Dafu's daughter. Unsurprisingly, it should be Wang Dafu's adopted lover. When the few people saw Chen Mu arrive, they all looked at Chen Mu in unison. When the two young men saw that there were people of their age, they hurriedly greeted Chen Mu, as if they wanted to pull him in. Dude, you also received this weird quest called Misty Museum? One of the young men asked. Chen Mu did not answer. Experience had told him that there was no such thing as friends in a weird mission, not to mention friends who had never met before, even brothers who were as close as brothers would turn against each other in a weird mission. Betrayal, betrayal. Of these in the bizarre mission is not uncommon, and even sometimes companions are more terrible than bizarre. Only at the beginning of the bizarre end of the world, there are still people thinking of teaming up to find a partner, thinking that friends can help each other and increase the chances of survival. Unbeknownst to them, it was this kind of people who died the fastest. Seeing that Chen Mu did not answer, the two young men made a fool of themselves and turned their heads to speak their own words, not bothering with Chen Mu anymore. However, Junior, who was in Wang Dafu's arms, looked at Chen Mu with a frightened face. Baby, scared? Don't be afraid, I haven't seen any big storms, so I'll take care of this little thing. Wang Dafu spoke greasy words of love and comforted the woman in his arms, even though he himself was shaking a little as he spoke. Junior pointed at Chen Mu and said in a trembling voice, I saw him just now, getting out of a cab. However, I saw the driver of that cab. As he said this, Junior's eyes revealed a look of horror, and that driver has no eyes. Hearing Xiao San say this, Wang Dafu was taken aback. Not only that, even the two yellow and green hairs were startled. The cab driver didn't have eyes? Is it hard to believe that the cab driver is creepy? Who would dare to ride in Creepy's car? Could it be that the new Chen Mu was also creepy? At that moment, the gazes of several people all looked at Chen Mu in unison. However, from the outside, Chen Mu appeared ordinary and did not look like a creepy. Creepy skin would appear a cold, miserable white color, and from the appearance of the skin, Chen Mu's skin was delicate and red, obviously having body heat, not cold skin. How could someone with body temperature be a creepy? After determining that Chen Mu was not a creepy, several people were slightly relieved. However, they all noticed that Chen Mu's behavior seemed a bit abnormal. To put it simply, it was that Chen Mu was a bit too calm. Only to see that Chen Mu was standing in place with his hands in his pockets, scanning the four people with an indifferent gaze before continuing to stand there calmly. 
calm and collected. It was a stark contrast to the four people who were trembling. This brat did not look like he was entering a bazaar scene for the first time in the slightest. This calmness made even Wang Dafu feel inferior. He could feel that Chen Mu had a very different aura about him. This kind of temperament, sharpened from countless times of life and death, was by no means something that a boy of this age could possess. It was hard to be stared at by a few people, Chen Mu frowned slightly and faintly said, Stop looking at me, if I were creepy, would you all still be standing here alive? Instead of speculating about my identity, why don't you think more about yourselves and think about how you're going to survive the next mission? Slightly pretentious words were paired with a calm appearance. Green hair skimmed his mouth towards Chen Mu and said to yellow hair next to him, Che, this person is really a fool, he's in the weird mission and still comes to pretend. Yellow hair nodded, that's right, we pulled him into the gang and he still pretended to be noble and unwilling. Going out without the help of his brothers, let's see how he can survive in the weird mission. Those who fight alone will die the fastest. The two of us are good brothers looking out for each other, we will both survive. Wang Dafu was also a bit upset, he comforted Junior in his arms. Don't be afraid, it's just a rash young man pretending to be a pussy. Young people have no ability and no resources, they are all newborn calves who are not afraid of tigers. You follow me well, the resources I have are not comparable to this kind of youngster. Hearing Wang Dafu's words, Junior's mood calmed down a lot. Thinking that Wang Dafu was extremely energetic on weekdays and could smooth out anything, Xiao San's face gained more admiration. She is a person in her early twenties, willing to give Wang Dafu as a mistress, it is because of Wang Dafu's resourcefulness and wide network. This time, bad luck, by the Misty Museum of the Strange Task selected, Xiao San thought he was dead, did not expect Wang Dafu was also selected. Xiao San heard that Wang Dafu relied on his connections and status, spent a great price to get extremely rare medieval coins. With the medieval coins in hand, it was rumored that they would be able to go unimpeded in any of the bazaar missions. This gave Xiao San an extra measure of peace in his heart. In order for Wang Dafu not to abandon himself, this morning Xiao San used all his skills to serve Wang Dafu well. He was counting on Wang Dafu having the plutonium coins in his hand and being able to pull himself up in the weird mission. Brother Fu, you must take me with you to spend your medieval coins. People like you so much, you can't abandon them. Xiao San pouted at Wang Dafu. Of course, how could I possibly abandon you? As long as you're good and obedient, I'll divorce and marry you when this weird mission is over. The plutonium coins that Wang Dafu spent millions of dollars and got were currently hidden in his crotch. The reason why it was hidden there was mainly because he was afraid of being stolen. Top pocket, pants pocket, these were too insecure, if someone casually touched it, then he would lose a lot. As he thought about it, only the crotch of his pants was not easy to be found. Therefore he had someone in his underpants, specially sewed a pocket with his precious plutonium inside. Chen Mu on the side was some distance away from them, but listened to all their conversations in his ears. Chen Mu felt that it should be that after he bought the midnight eatery, his strength was raised to Gui Min, which incidentally raised his hearing. Wang Dafu actually had plutonium? This was somewhat surprising to Chen Mu. However, thinking about Wang Dafu's status and position, it should still be possible to spend a large price to get a few hundred medieval coins. What Chen Mu didn't know was that the plutonium in Wang Dafu's hand was only a 10 denomination plutonium. If Chen Mu knew about it, he would definitely laugh his ass off. It's true that plutonium is very precious, but you take 10 plutonium and want to buy your way through the duke's shenanigans? What kind of international joke is this? If you take out 10 medals, the duke will still think you're humiliating him. I advise you to honestly hide it in your pants, and it's best not to take it out for the entire bazaar mission, lest it backfire. It was at this moment that Chen Mu felt something extra in his hand. He looked down and saw that in his hand, a small blood-colored note had appeared at some point. At this, Chen Mu was not surprised, he had intruded into the scope of the Misty Museum, even if he had not received the bazaar quest before, he would have received it by now. Creepy Quest, Misty Museum. Quest Description, Deep Within the Dark Mountains, Shrouded in Mist, There Was an Old Museum Located Here. In the old museum, every late night, there were always screens coming out. Those who are close to the museum will say that they smell the strong odor of blood. The duke was originally an outstanding trickster general, and in his old age, he bid farewell to the battlefield and secluded himself here with his family and servants. The old museum became the duke's family's residence. You are a friend of the duke and have come to visit him after hearing about his old friend's seclusion. In the misty museum, the warm duke's family, hearing of your arrival, has prepared a cozy dinner for you. After traveling for several days, you have arrived at the door of the duke's house. The butler is waiting for you at the door. Please go up and knock on the door, the butler will open the door for you, and you will enjoy fun games, and a cozy dinner. By the way, the duke does not like late guests, so please move as soon as possible. While Chen Mu was reading the small note, several other people had already walked up to the front door of the Misty Museum. The gate in front of them was ancient and heavy, revealing a style of castle architecture. 
From Chen Mu's memory, the museum was not of this appearance. Obviously, after the museum had turned into a bazaar scene, the decorations on the outside had changed along with it. Bang, 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 bang. Green hair stepped forward and knocked on the door of the misty museum. As he knocked on the door, yellow hair, who prided himself on being a good brother, quietly stepped back and hid behind his good brother. Only a creak could be heard, and the museum's gate was pushed open from the inside. In the gap of the gate, a pale and ghastly white arm stretched out. Obviously, it was a bizarre hand. Seeing this, the faces of the crowd changed slightly. Other than Chen Mu, this was the first time they had seen a bazaar. As the door opened completely, the owner of this arm walked out. A bazaar with white hair, dryly dressed, and wearing a butler's uniform. This weird old man was the duke's butler. There's a new guest, please come in. Although the butler's tone was cordial, his face was calm and didn't act enthusiastic, with an appearance of business as usual practice. It could be seen that the old housekeeper was only entertaining this new batch of guests in a formulaic manner. The reason for this was clear to Chen Mu. There was no other reason, because the guests that had come, were simply too many. Ever since this place turned into a bizarre scene, in just half a month, 20 to 30 batches of guests had already come. Receiving so many guests, the old housekeeper had already gone from being initially enthusiastic to being numb now. Furthermore, the image of these guests was not considered good in the old housekeeper's heart. It was said that one should not visit empty-handed, this was the most basic courtesy and respect, and the same was true and creepy. However, these 20 to 30 groups of guests that came, without exception, all of them came with empty hands. Not the slightest bit of politeness and respect. In fact, the old housekeeper had misunderstood these people. These people are here to do bizarre tasks, struggling to survive on the death line, and bring gifts? Not bringing a few knives for self-defense was already a sign of respect for the bazaar. The old butler thought of when, before the duke lost his power, which of the guests who came to visit did not bring tons of gifts. Even he, the old butler, was able to dabble in the light and get a gift of a few hundred plutonium coins. It's true that the tiger has been bullied by the dog. After the duke lost his power and retreated, the guests are so rude. Green hair yellow hair, Wang Gafu, and Xiao San, the four of them entered the gate in turn. Because the old housekeeper is weird, a few people are quite afraid of weird, do not dare to look at the old housekeeper, all lowered their heads far away. This action, in the eyes of the old housekeeper, became even more of a sign of alienation and looking down on himself. Another group of rude guests. The old butler shook his head helplessly and prepared to close the gate. It was at this time that the old butler suddenly realized that there was another guest who had not come in. Chen Mu was standing outside the door, looking at himself with a smile on his face. Why don't you come in yet? If you don't come in I'll close the door and never come back in. The old housekeeper frowned and said nonchalantly. Not being able to enter the door meant that if you couldn't complete the bizarre task, you would have to wait for death. It could be seen that the old housekeeper had an equally bad impression of Chen Mu, who was also a guest in this batch. Don't be angry, old housekeeper, I'm not coming in. Chen Mu laughed, took two steps forward, walked through the door, and stood in front of the old housekeeper with a smiling face. Then don't hurry up and go sit in the hall. What are you doing standing in front of me? Don't hinder me from closing the door. Oh, old housekeeper don't be in a hurry, this is my first time here, I took the liberty of disturbing you, don't mind. This is my small token of appreciation, consider it an apology to you. Shen Mu spoke a lot of words that did not leak a drop of water, while saying that, from the spatial ring, he pulled out a small box, and smilingly stuffed it into the old housekeeper's hands. Space ring? The old housekeeper recognized the goods at a glance, the person who could have a spatial ring, thought that his identity was not ordinary, a person with a background. Seeing Chen Mu and being so understanding, he gave himself a gift as soon as he came up. The old housekeeper's brows instantly relaxed, and his impression of Chen Mu immediately became a lot better. This young man was good, and had a background and knew how to be polite. Aya, it's fine, it's fine, don't bother. What's the point of being so polite? The old housekeeper revealed a charitable smile, took Chen Mu's small box, opened it slightly and took a look at the contents. It didn't matter if he didn't look at it, one look startled the old housekeeper. Inside the exquisite and luxurious little box, there was an extremely fine watch lying quietly. Guida Chui Fei, the top luxury brand in the bizarre world. The old butler had seen a lot in the past and could tell with a glance that this watch was worth a lot of money and was a high-end item in the Guida Chui Fei. The selling price was above 100,000 plutocrats. At this moment, the old housekeeper's mood could no longer be described as shocked. To know, when the duke was at the peak of his power, the gifts given to the old housekeeper by those guests who paid a visit to his house were only a few hundred plutocrats. Only once, was it a gift of 1,000 medals. Like this high-end watch of 100,000 medals, only the duke himself at the peak of his power could get this kind of gift. What's more, now that the duke has long lost his power, and he is just an old butler, the young man in front of him actually gave himself a 100,000 plutonium watch as soon as he made a move? 
This young man is also too generous. No, could it be that he took the wrong gift? Is this gift not prepared for the duke? Thinking of this, the old butler hurriedly closed the box and handed it to Chen Mu. Your guest has taken the wrong gift, this should be for the duke, I'm just a housekeeper, how can I be given such an expensive thing? Unexpectedly, with a smile on his face, Chen Mu put the gift back into the old butler's hands. I gave it right, this gift is for you, the housekeeper. You have worked hard for the duke for most of your life, I deeply respect you, a small gift to show my appreciation. Hearing that the gift was really for himself, and being bragged about by Chen Mu, the old butler immediately felt a sense of relief, and could not help but look at Chen Mu in a higher light, the more he looked at Chen Mu, the better he looked at him. Don't worry mister. Chen, although I'm just a butler, my words still carry some weight in the duke's house. You can be a guest as much as you like, and I guarantee that you will leave the misty museum alive. But whenever mister. Chen suffers a bit of superficial injury, it will be because of my poor hospitality. The old butler swore with conviction and gave Chen Mu a guarantee that Chen Mu would definitely not die in this bizarre scene. Chen Mu believed in the old housekeeper's words, the old housekeeper did have a certain status, even if Chen Mu gave the duke an earful, the old housekeeper could let Chen Mu leave alive. By the way, Mr. Chen, are those people with you? If so, old man can take care of them as well. I just happened to meet them by chance, and I don't know each other. Chen Mu replied. Chen Mu wasn't a saintly mother, those few people obviously looked at Chen Mu with displeasure, so how could Chen Mu use his own favors to offer them help? In other words, Chen Mu not allowing the old housekeeper to give them a hard time would already be a great benefactor in the bazaar mission. Hearing Chen Mu's words, the old housekeeper naturally understood what it meant. Since those few people did not know Chen Mu, there was no need to take care of them. Carefully putting the watch away, the old butler warmly made an invitation gesture to Chen Mu. Mr. Chen please come here, those few people are already sitting in the hall. The duke's dinner is still a little while away, before that there will be a small game to help the guests pass the time before the dinner. A small game? Chen Mu thought back carefully, and from memory, he didn't seem to remember when there was a small game in the Misty Museum. Chen Mu had come here once before, when it was already more than 8 o'clock in the evening, directly starting the duke's dinner. Could it be because he had come early and there were different quests at different times of the day? There was this possibility. Led by the old butler, Chen Mu arrived at the duke's living room. The living room was made from the first floor of the museum, transformed. Inside the museum, various collections were displayed. There were medieval short swords, knight's helmets, and yellowed parchment, revealing an ancient texture everywhere. The entire first floor of the museum is a dark yellow color tone, the space as a whole is on the dark side, only one or two fireplaces are burning, emitting a faint yellow light. At this time, the other four people were already waiting in the hall. A few of them stood in the middle of the hall, with a European-style chandelier above their heads. A few people were looking at their surroundings with vigilance and curiosity. When they saw the old butler coming, the gazes of the several people immediately focused over, the old butler was, in their eyes, he was the mini-boss in the mission. However, the scene that happened next made several of them dumbfounded. Only to see the old butler bring Chen Mu, to a quaint sofa, let Chen Mu sit on the sofa, smiled and asked. Mr. Chen, what would you like to drink? We have hot water and black tea here. Have some black tea. Chen Mu said indifferently. Okay, you wait a moment. A few moments later, the old butler carried a tray with a teacup on it. The old butler placed the teacup next to Chen Mu and opened the lid, inside was steaming black tea. Chen Mu took a sip, this was something for people to drink, not for creepy, so it tasted pretty good. A few people were dumbfounded, the way Chen Mu sat on the sofa and slowly sipped the tea made people wonder if he was here to do a life and death mission or on vacation. The old butler had such a good service attitude? There was still tea? However, several people waited for half a day, but they didn't see the old butler come to ask them what to drink. It was as if the old housekeeper's service attitude was only for Chen Mu alone. Everyone was here to participate in the bazaar mission, why should there be such a big difference? After 10 minutes, Chen Mu's tea was finished, at this time, the old butler came again, it looked at a few people and opened its mouth. Guests, the duke's dinner is still being prepared. In order to help you all pass the time, the duke has prepared a small game for you. The name of this little game is Hide and Seek. In order for all guests to have a good time, please be sure to follow the following rules. 1. The game will start in 5 minutes, the game time is 2 hours, the game will end automatically when the time is up. 2. When the game starts, the security guards of the Misty Museum will appear. The security guards will patrol the museum and they will kill the outsiders. Never be found by the security guards. 3. During the game, please do not leave the first floor of the Misty Museum, if you leave this range, death will come. 4. If you are unfortunate enough to be spotted by the security guards, please do your best to avoid them, but in the process of avoiding them, please do not touch the museum exhibits. 5. All items that do not move, except the floor and walls, are Duke's exhibits. 
6. The exhibits cannot be moved or touched. Whoever dares to move or touch them will be punished by the duke. These are the rules of the game, please get ready, the game will begin immediately. After the old butler finished speaking, he gave a wry smile to several people before leaving the first floor. In the large museum, only Chen Mu, Wang Dafu, the woman, green hair, and yellow hair were left at this moment. The mechanical clock on the wall ticked, and several people were silent, carefully memorizing the rules that the old butler had said. The atmosphere began to become eerie, the temperature in the air was slowly decreasing, the ground began to become damp, as if something was about to appear. The woman hugged Wang Dafu tightly, she was counting on Wang Dafu to save her. However, Wang Dafu himself was having trouble saving himself, and thin beads of sweat were appearing on his forehead. He admitted that this game was more exciting and tense than any of his previous business battles, because the stakes were his own life. Green hair and yellow hair weren't much better, they had heard that in bizarre missions, one had to follow the rules. And they had also heard that there were rules that hid the life path of the mission. As long as one discovered the path to life, even the most difficult mission could be easily passed with a smile and a laugh. However, discovering such a thing as a life path was not something that ordinary people could do. Especially since the bizarre end of the world had just begun, and one was a novice, it was as hard as heaven to discover the life path. Brother, this old housekeeper is too ruthless, the rules are too strict, there is no intention to give us a way out. Green hair's tone was filled with fear. Right, the exhibits can't be touched, that's still reasonable. But other than the floor and walls, everything else that can't be moved is an exhibit. Doesn't that mean that when we hide, we can't even touch the cabinets, sofas, or whatever? How can this be fun? Yellow hair also had a hard look on his face, this kind of mission rule, was extremely harsh, he even wondered if he was being targeted by the old housekeeper. Contrary to the nervousness and fear of several people, Chen Mu appeared calm. At this moment, Chen Mu was pondering while walking around the museum, taking advantage of the fact that the game hadn't started yet to scrutinize the environment in the museum. This was a typical veteran performance, rather than wasting time by crying in place, it was better to observe the environment in advance, and also have an extra chance of winning. Although the old butler had guaranteed that Chen Mu would leave alive, Chen Mu was also trying to find a way to survive. Chen Mu knew very well that if he did not use his brain for a long time, he would lose his experience very quickly. In case he encountered an extremely difficult rule in the future, he would be in dire straits. Chen Mu pondered over the rules of the game, and it admitted that the rules were harsh and very oppressive to humans. Not being able to touch the exhibits meant that when encountering the security guards, they could not fight back with what was at hand, they could only passively hide, and had to be careful not to touch the tables and chairs. It was simply too difficult to hide for two hours in this situation. No, there must be a way to survive. According to Chen Mu's experience, sometimes, the way out of a mission was hidden in the harsh rules. If one could not see the way to life, then the harsh rules would bring one to death. But if one has enough experience and wisdom to peek at the way of life, then the harsh rules, on the contrary, will help you to live. So, what exactly are these harsh rules implying to me? Just as Chen Mu was thinking hard, the clock on the wall suddenly made a dull sound. Five minutes had arrived. The cold air suddenly rose. A faint white mist began to appear within the museum. In the ethereal mist, it seemed like something was about to appear. The game began. Such a bizarre sight made Wang Dafu's junior scared enough to scream all of a sudden. Ah! The shrill woman's cry immediately echoed throughout the museum. Wang Dafu was startled, Junior shouted so loudly, she wanted to be discovered quickly by the security guards, right? Don't drag me along if you want to die. Snap. Wang Dafu directly gave her a slap to shut her up. The two young men, green hair and yellow hair, also began to hide at this time. The entire first floor of the museum was shrouded in white mist. Within the mist, black figures appeared from time to time. Some of these black figures were people, and some were bizarre security guards. On the other side, Shen Mu frowned slightly. From the black figures in the mist, it was deduced that there was more than one creepy security guard, and the number was at least two or more. This time, the bizarre mission was a bit difficult. According to Chen Mu's past experience, those four people would not be able to survive more than two if they did not find a way to live. A mortality rate of more than 50%. However, if the lifeways were discovered, the mortality rate would decrease drastically, and even a few people could easily complete the mission. This was the charm of the living path. Chen Mu worked hard to find the living path, he didn't intend to save those few people, but only to exercise his ability to discover the living path. If he could find the hidden lifeways and such harsh rules, Chen Mu believed that his ability would improve a lot. One minute into the game, security guards began to appear from the mist. The first creepy security guard to appear appeared behind Wang Dafu. It was a cool and creepy rotting corpse, wearing a security uniform that was rotted into rags. Its body was severely rotted, revealing the internal organs inside. With every step it took, rotting pus flowed out mixed with a pungent corpse odor that made people vomit when they smelled it. 
The pungent odor reminded Wang Dafu. He followed the odor and looked back, just in time to see the bizarre security guard, opening its bloody mouth at him. Fuck. Wang Dafu cursed, and without thinking too much, he grabbed Junior in his arms and pushed at the security guard. As for himself, he turned his head and ran. Junior was pushed out before she reacted with hindsight. She looked at Wang Dafu in disbelief, not expecting Wang Dafu to be so desperate. Before the mission started, the two were still swearing and sweet-talking. Only a few minutes had passed, and everything had changed drastically. Husband and wife were originally birds in the same forest, but they flew apart in the face of great difficulties. This kind of scene was very common in the weird post-apocalyptic world. The ugliness and selfishness of human nature was glimpsed in the bizarre mission. There was no way out, the woman could only stagger up, the immense fear made her adrenaline secrete rapidly, and she actually overcame the trembling of her legs and escaped in the other direction. Luckily, the weird security guard went after Wang Dafu, giving her a moment's respite. On the other side, yellow hair and green hair weren't much better. In front of the two of them, a skeletal security guard blocked their way. Bro, hold on, I'll go around the back and sneak up on it. With a serious face, yellow hair said to his good brother green hair. Green hair nodded, he had been following yellow hair for more than 10 years, the two of them had been playing since they were children, their relationship was ironclad. Although he was scared in his heart, Green hair still gritted his teeth and stood in place to attract the attention of the skeleton security guards. Yellow hair, on the other hand, patted his good brother's shoulder and prepared to go around to the back and sneak attack the skeleton security guard from behind. Seeing the skeletal security guard getting closer and closer, Green hair's legs were shaking a little. He looked at the back of the skeleton security guard, expecting his good brother to appear from behind the skeleton security guard and deliver a fatal blow to the skeleton security guard. However, after a few seconds had passed, Green hair had been blocked by the security guard in the corner, and yellow hair, who had circled around the back, had yet to appear. You're waiting for that yellow hair? The skeletal security guard, green hair, said in a mocking tone, I saw it all, yellow hair ran from behind me. He didn't intend to sneak attack me at all, it was just to get you killed so he could escape. Hearing this, green hair still didn't believe it, but as the skeleton security guard got closer and closer, he finally realized in despair that he had been betrayed by his good brother. Ten years of brother ah, you actually betrayed me. Green hair shouted in grief and indignation, but he only shouted once before his body was torn apart by the skeletal security guard. Hearing the shouts coming from behind, yellow hair, who had already run away, revealed a mocking expression. What a time to believe in good brothers. Good brothers aren't just for betrayal. At this time, Chen Mu stood in front of a clock, his face calm. Looking at the white mist, a weird security guard was getting closer and closer to him, but Chen Mu did not have the slightest panic or escape on his face. After five minutes of hard thinking, Chen Mu looked at the clock in front of him as if his mind was enlightened. Exhibits. Things that can't be moved. No one can touch it. The Duke's punishment. One key clue, like a pearl, was strung into a necklace in his mind. Thinking back to those harsh rules, Chen Mu suddenly realized that it was true. Behind the harsh rules, there was a hidden path to the life of the mission. He Chen Mu had realized the hidden path to life. This joy of surviving a desperate situation made Chen Mu feel incomparably wonderful. He looked at the strangeness that walked in step by step and his face was not only devoid of fear, but was instead filled with confidence. As the black shadow in the mist got closer and closer, Chen Mu took a deep breath, and he made an extremely perverse move. Standing in place like a statue, not moving at all. This was the path to life that Chen Mu had realized. The mystery of the path of life was hidden in the sixth rule. The exhibits cannot be moved or touched, and whoever dares to move or touch them will be punished by the duke. This rule, at first glance, was used to constrain humans, making it impossible to touch the exhibits and making it more difficult for people to hide. Chen Mu, at first, was also confused by this rule, thinking that it was too harsh and the task was difficult. However, Chen Mu had a wealth of experience. Five years of experience told him that the harsher the rule, the easier it was for something fishy to exist. As expected, after careful consideration, Chen Mu discovered the catnip in the rules. The key point of whoever dares to touch was whoever. This whoever included not only people, but also weird security guards. In other words, even the security guards could not touch the exhibits, or they would be punished. There is an exciting implication here, in this game of hide and seek, people can be invincible. How can one be invincible so that the creepy security guards can't catch them? Simple, just turn yourself into an exhibit. So, was it possible, to turn oneself into an exhibit? Shen Mu realized that it was possible to do so, and the method for that was hidden in another harsh rule. Another harsh rule, the fifth rule. Except for the floor and walls, all items that don't move are the duke's exhibits. Another seemingly harsh rule. On the surface, it was restricting one's activities, except for the floor and walls, one could not touch anything else. But thinking about it in another way, 
This rule actually implies a metaphor, a way to turn people into exhibits. If the person did not move, then under this rule, the person would become an exhibit for the duke in the museum. So, combining these rules, Chen Mu arrived at the mission's life path. When encountering the creepy security guard, there was no need to run and hide, just stand still and you became the duke's exhibit. The creepy security guard couldn't touch the exhibit, so naturally, he couldn't touch you, let alone catch you. As long as you stand for two hours, you will be invincible in this game of hide and seek, and live peacefully until the end of the game. However, Chen Mu, who had a quick mind, also smelled a hint of something different in the mission rules this time. In the mission rules this time, for the first time, there were induced rules. The so-called inducing rules were inducing players to make mistakes and interfering with them to find out the right way to live. For example, rule number 4 in the rules. If you are unfortunate enough to be spotted by the security guards, please do your best to avoid them, but while doing so, please do not touch the museum exhibits. This is a typical bait and switch rule. This rule is imploring the player to do everything you can to avoid the security guards when they encounter the creepy security guards. To avoid the guard, you naturally have to run and move, in which case there's no way to be stationary, and you can't be an exhibit. If a player puts too much faith in this rule, then there is a good chance that they will miss out on survival. The difficulty of the bizarre quests is starting to gradually increase as the bizarre end times get longer. Chen Mu said silently in his heart. In this regard, Chen Mu was not surprised. After all, he was the one who had survived from the five years of the bizarre end world. Five years ah. After that long period of time, the quests in the creepy end world had become quite difficult and perverse. Induced rules? What kind of pedantry is that? There were self-contradictory rules in the background, and even wrong rules. The most difficult one Chen Mu had encountered, there were a total of 23 rules in that bizarre mission. What was even more outrageous was that all 23 rules were wrong rules. As long as you believed in one of them, you were finished, waiting to die. If Chen Mu wanted to find a way to live, he could only speculate on the hidden way to live behind it based on the wrong rules. Based on several pieces of wrong information, combine them, find the contradictory parts, speculate, and look for the life path implied in them. It was a double test of physical and mental strength, and Chen Mu had survived it. Therefore, the hide-and-seek game in front of him was nothing more than child's play in Chen Mu's eyes. With two hours of mission time, he had found a way to survive the mission just as it began. Chen Mu was very confident that for a bizarre mission of this difficulty, the life path he found would not be wrong. Thus, looking at the bizarre security guard walking towards him, Chen Mu's face was calm. As expected, the bizarre security guard stopped when it was one meter away from him, just looking at himself so closely, but did not dare to step forward in the slightest. Chen Mu was standing right in front of it, but it didn't dare to approach Chen Mu. This was the pain of discovering the path of life. As long as one grasped the mysteries of the path of life, one could be a fish out of water in the bizarre mission. The bizarre security guard looked at Chen Mu for a while before it was quite scornful of Chen Mu, it didn't dare to mess with Chen Mu because at this point, Chen Mu was already a duke's exhibit under the definition of the rules. It did not dare to kill Chen Mu. After a few moments of stalemate, the weird security guard turned around and prepared to leave. Chen Mu was finally relieved, the fact that his presumed path to life proved to be correct. However, before Chen Mu could breathe a sigh of relief, he suddenly felt that a hand patted his back. What shocked Chen Mu even more was that this hand was pale and cold, and one could tell at a glance that it was definitely not a human hand. It was a bizarre hand. Creepy was touching himself. How was this possible? Chen Mu's face changed, in the rules, the current self was an exhibit, and the bazaar could not touch the exhibit. Could it be that he had made an error in his speculation and arrived at the wrong path to life? As this thought popped into his mind, Chen Mu's heart sank. How could one's own speculation be wrong? With his five years of experience in the weird post-apocalyptic world, the probability of his own speculation being wrong was extremely small. Chen Mu was very confident in himself, and if he wanted to survive in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, confidence was an essential and excellent quality. While Chen Mu was puzzled, a weird voice suddenly came from behind him. Sir, your tea? Tea? What tea? Chen Mu was confused. The creepy behind him walked up and appeared in front of Chen Mu, only to see that this creepy was not a security guard, it was dressed in a waiter's costume, holding a tray in its hand. On top of the tray, there was a steaming cup of tea. The butler was worried that you were thirsty and asked me to bring you a cup of hot tea. It is cold and damp in the Misty Museum, so please pay attention to keeping warm, Mr. Chun. Those creepy security guards can't harm you, and if you don't want to participate in the game, you can leave at any time. After the waiter Spooky finished speaking, he placed the hot tea beside Chen Mu. Looking at the scene in front of him, Chen Mu realized that the creepy was not a security guard, it was the duke's attendant. It had come to bring tea and water to himself. Wait a minute, what kind of strange drawing style was this? A few other people, who were living and dying in the bazaar mission, but he himself was given special care, served with hot tea, and could leave at any time. 
the hide and seek game, says that it is a game, but I am afraid that only for Chen Mu, it is really a game. This difference in treatment is also too big. To be honest, it was the first time that Chen Mu was subjected to this kind of special treatment. In the past, he was a poor man in the creepy end world, and like those few people, life and death were hard to predict. So how could he possibly enjoy this kind of hospitality? Tisk, it's good to have medieval currency in the bizarre end world. Chen Mu could not help but sigh. At this moment, not far from Chen Mu, Wang Dafu's junior was stumbling and escaping over. After she ran apart from Wang Dafu, she was alone in the misty museum, hiding. All the way to hide, are scared, arm also on the floor not to piece of blue and purple, look very woeful. Unexpectedly, when she ran here, she actually encountered Chen Mu. She was originally prepared to go forward, looking for Chen Mu to help, save themselves. What she didn't expect was that before she could go forward, she saw Chen Mu surrounded by two heads of bazaar. In front of Chen Mu was the creepy security guard, and behind him was the creepy waiter. She had thought that Chen Mu was going to die, but the reversal came so quickly. The creepy security guard was afraid of Chen Mu and didn't dare to approach, turning his head away. As for the creepy waiter, he was even more outrageous, and actually gave Chen Mu a cup of hot tea. This was to serve Chen Mu, right? Looking at their own messy appearance, looking at Chen Mu calm and collected, there are bizarre tea serving. For the first time, the woman felt the disparity of the world in the weird post-apocalyptic world. The gap between people, how could it be so big? Chen Mu's image in her eyes had changed from the young loser at the beginning to the inscrutable strongman he was now. In comparison, Wang Dafu was simply weak. Don't look at Wang Dafu's usual high and mighty status. But when it came to the bizarre end of the world, he was instantly knocked back to his original form. Wang Dafu couldn't be relied on, so let's change another backer. Thinking of this, the woman looked at her body. She brushed her hair and pulled her blouse down, making herself look as alluring as possible. She wanted to go ahead and exert some feminine charm in case Chen Mu took a liking to herself. As long as she fell for Chen Mu, wouldn't she be able to eat and drink in the weird end world in the future? What she didn't know was that in Chen Mu's eyes, this little action of hers was nothing more than a little cleverness. After tidying up her clothes, Junior walked towards Chen Mu with an enchanting face. Chen Mu had long discovered this Xiao San, when she walked towards herself, Chen Mu's eyes had more than a trace of vigilance, he did not know what trick Xiao San was going to play. Handsome man, I see you came here alone, you are at the age of blood, won't you be lonely alone? Xiao San walked to Chen Mu's side, although she didn't even know Chen Mu's name, she still acted enthusiastically and hugged Chen Mu. Chen Mu instantly understood, ha, huh, this woman was obviously trying to find a backer to come to. Unfortunately, Chen Mu wasn't too interested in this kind of heavy makeup style, he still preferred a bit of purity. There is also a more important point is that this junior doesn't look too clean. Chen Mu is worried that he will get sick. Aya, May Ru's Law. With the weird end times coming and the collapse of order, medicine would become harder and harder to find. Therefore, not getting sick as much as possible was one of the tricks to surviving in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world. Chen Mu also remembered that before he was reborn, there was a big brother from the bizarre end world who had contracted syphilis. That big brother had survived nine deaths in the bizarre mission, only to die at the hands of syphilis. Chen Mu did not want to repeat the same mistake. He he, you should go find Wang Dafu. Don't even think about it. I am not going to use my resources to help you. Chen Mu rejected the woman without hesitation. At the same time, Yellow Hair also hid all the way to Chen Mu's neighborhood. After experiencing the betrayal of his best friend, at this time, Yellow Hair's mind was a bit tired, and his body had long been sweating because of the hiding, looking quite a bit more lousy than even Junior. When he saw Chen Mu's appearance, his mind exploded at once. Only to see Chen Mu neatly dressed, holding a cup of bubbling hot fragrant tea, not a trace of wretchedness could be seen on his body. Not only that, there was actually a woman, throwing herself at Chen Mu. Marred. Is there any mistake? This is in the weird mission ah. I almost lost my life, and only managed to survive by betraying my brothers. Why can you live so comfortably? Are you here to do a life and death mission, or are you here to play a game? For Chen Mu, it's really just a game of hide and seek. It also attracted Wang Dafu's mistress. The gap between people. The level of explosiveness of Huang Mao's mind was not much better than Junior's at that time. This young man with a mysterious identity, in the end, what kind of skills does he have to live such a nourishing and fast life? Thinking of this, Yellow Hair took a step towards Chen Mu. Chen Mu had long since discovered Yellow Hair, and he pushed away Xiao San who was hugging him, with more than a hint of vigilance in his eyes. Before the mission even started, Chen Mu could tell that Yellow Hair was a ruthless person, not a good person. Chen Mu could read people very accurately, after five years of practicing in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, basically he could see at a glance what kind of character a person had. I did not expect it to be true, the mission time is not even halfway through, the green hair by the side of the yellow hair has disappeared. Chen Mu could guess that green hair must have died. As for the reason for his death, he was surely unrelated to yellow hair. 
For this kind of dangerous person, Shen Mu always take the initiative to stay away, so as not to cause trouble for himself. Of course, if Yellow Hair was insensitive and wanted to do something wrong to Chen Mu, Chen Mu would not be merciful. Chen Mu knew one thing very well. If you don't get rid of the grass, it will grow again in the spring breeze. Big brother, I see that you are so powerful, why don't you bring me along? Don't worry big brother, I'm the most righteous person, I definitely won't push back when you ask me to do anything. Yellow Hair licked his smiling face and called Chen Mu big brother as soon as he came up. Chen Mu reacted coldly, there was no way he would accept this kind of sinister person as his little brother, that was called leading the wolf into the house. Then I'll let you die now. Didn't you say that you'll never push back, then you go die? Chen Mu said indifferently. Yellow Hair was disliked by Chen Mu, and was immediately choked, not knowing what to say. It just so happened that Junior was also rejected by Chen Mu. Yellow Hair looked at Junior's body and couldn't help but feel itchy in his heart as he sent out another team invitation towards Junior. Xiao San was now isolated, Wang Dafu dumped her, Chen Mu didn't give a damn about her, so she had no choice but to agree to Yellow Hair's invitation after thinking about it. The two of them hid from the security guards while walking towards the depths of the Misty Museum, hoping to find a good hiding spot there. Looking at the departing figures of the two, Chen Mu sighed in relief, finally not causing trouble for himself. This kind of teammates, in Chen Mu's eyes, belong to low-value teammates, there was no need to get involved with them. On the other side, the waiter slightly carried an empty plate and returned to the old butler. Well, hot tea was served, right? Chen Mu was our honored guest, we must not neglect our honored guest. The old butler stroked the designer watch on his hand and praised Chen Mu's understanding. It could be seen that this Guida Chui Fei watch had made the old butler's impression of Chen Mu extremely favorable. The attendant, who was sent by the old butler, brought tea to Chen Mu. Lord Butler, the tea has been delivered. When I went to deliver the tea, a weird security guard spotted Chen Mu, but Chen Mu didn't run, but stood still. Chen Mu's face was calm, not at all like he was scared silly. Thus I guess that Chen Mu has discovered the mission's lifeline. The creepy servant said. He has discovered the way to life? The old butler was shocked. The living path of the mission was to stand motionless. The old butler didn't expect that Chen Mu would actually be able to discover the life path, and so quickly when the mission had just begun. It seems that Mr. Chen is very wise. The old butler could not help but sigh with emotion as he looked at the watch in his hand, his face even more puzzled. He had originally thought that Chen Mu was not strong enough to survive the bizarre mission, so he had given himself the watch in an attempt to let him off the hook. However, this was not the case. Before he could even let himself drain him, Chen Mu had already discovered the way to live. With this kind of intelligence and this kind of strength, was he still afraid that he wouldn't be able to survive in the mission? There was no need for him to give himself a gift, ah, and to give such an expensive item. Could it be that? The old housekeeper thought of a point, could it be that Chen Mu gave himself a gift because he really wanted to make friends with himself and deal with a good relationship? Yes, that was it right. One was a relationship of mutual utilization, and the other was a relationship that had risen to the level of friendship and friendship, but of course the latter was more touching to the old housekeeper. Chen Mu was a good person, to actually give himself such an expensive item in order to establish a friendship with him. It's been a long time since I've seen such a sincere friend. What's the saying, Dusk witnesses pious believers? At a time when the duke was down and out, he was still willing to make friends with himself. This friendship, my old butler accepts it. This friend, I, the old housekeeper, will make it. Chen Mu did not expect that the old housekeeper's self-raider was so powerful that the mission had only just begun, and he considered Chen Mu as a friend. It was quite good for Chen Mu, so that it would be much easier to get the death-heavy armor afterwards. He was a friend, so it wasn't too much to ask for a general-level item from your duke. Go, bring Mr. Chen some more pastries, the old butler said to the attendant. When treating one's friends, just tea was not enough, of course, one had to serve good pastries. Thus, in the Misty Museum, there was a scene like this. Chen Mu leisurely sat on the sofa, with steaming tea on his left hand and a plate of exquisite pastries on his right. With this appearance, no one would even suspect if they said he was here on vacation. As for those weird security guards, they were very sensible and didn't bother Chen Mu anymore. They were all making a living under the duke, and they dared to disturb the duke's honored guest? How dare they disturb the duke's guest? Chen Mu's side was leisurely, while the others didn't have such a good time. On the other side of the Misty Museum, Yellow Hair and Junior formed an alliance, and the two of them were hiding and trembling to avoid the security guards. Wang Dafu dragged his obese body, also hiding carefully. Obviously, several of them, none of them found a way to live. As time passed, the security guard's search was not as strict. If they were all to follow the intensity at the start of the game, all of these few people, except for Chen Mu, would not survive. The difficulty of the Misty Museum's mission was not that perverse. After hiding for half an hour and never seeing the security guards appear again, Yellow Hair and Junior's hearts were slightly relieved. 
In their eyes, the most difficult moment of the mission had already passed. Now they could finally breathe a sigh of relief and wait for the mission to end. After relaxing, Yellowhair moved his head. He had long been craving for Junior for a long time, and now that the two of them were sharing the same place and had just experienced the pressure of life and death, Yellowhair desperately needed to release a wave. Xiao San knew very well what Huang Mao wanted, in order to be able to get Huang Mao's help in the next mission, she was very willing to cooperate with Huang Mao. She had done a lot of this kind of thing anyway. However, what Xiao San didn't tell Yellowhair was that she had spent too much time playing before and had contracted a lot of diseases. As for whether or not Yellowhair would get diseases, that was up to God. Due to the fact that the security guards were out less, in the Misty Museum, at this time, it was unusually quiet, and the sound made by a pin dropping on the ground could be transmitted a long way. Therefore, even though it was far away, Shen Mu still heard the movements of Yellow Hair and Junior. Even the well-informed Shen Mu was greatly shocked by this. How cerebral palsy were these two, daring to play such tricks in a weird mission? Was it because they didn't want to die fast enough? One had to know that there were many crises in bizarre missions. Even seasoned veterans had to remain vigilant at all times. In a weird mission, staying alive was the first priority now. These two dared to play such tricks, not afraid that their attention would be distracted and they wouldn't be able to detect the danger in time? One didn't know whether to say that these two were bold or ignorant. According to Chen Mu's experience, this hide-and-seek game was a typical first-priority pressure-type mission. Meaning, at the beginning of the mission, extreme pressure would be applied, with many bizarre security guards appearing, and the mission would be extremely difficult. This process would last for about 10 minutes. After that, for an hour or so, the difficulty of the mission would suddenly decrease, and the weird security guards would basically not appear. At times like this, even if the player lay down on the ground and slept, they wouldn't be able to die once they woke up. However, don't think that this was the creepy conscience. On the contrary, this is an extremely insidious move, the real trap is behind. When the mission was still 10 minutes away from ending, the difficulty of the mission would suddenly increase steeply, even surpassing the difficulty when the mission first started. A large number of bizarre security guards suddenly appeared, and since the players were in a relaxed mood and couldn't detect the danger in time, people often died. This was the insidious and vicious part of the mission. Time passed by one second at a time. There were still 10 minutes left, and the mission was about to end. As expected, just as Chen Mu had predicted, the difficulty of the mission increased steeply. Wang Dafu was hiding in the corner at the moment, and the peace and quiet for more than an hour had made him more vigilant in turn. After all, Wang Dafu was a businessman who had been in the business world for decades, and was much more cautious than Yellow Herring Jr. This caution saved his life. Suddenly, with his afterglow, he realized that a black figure had appeared in the mist behind him. Creepy security guard. Without much thought, his heart immediately rose to his throat, and he clapped his ass and fled elsewhere. Yellow Heron Jr., on the other hand, were not so lucky. Xiao San was lying in Yellow Hair's arms, still blowing pillow talk, wanting Yellow Hair to take care of himself more. Yellow Hair agreed, anyway, the promise is not money, this kind of promise he has done too much. Suddenly, Xiao San let out a shriek, both eyes looking behind Yellow Hair in horror. What's wrong? A shock. Yellow Hair was a little impatient as he glanced behind him. This glance made Yellow Hair's sweaty hair stand up. Creepy security guard. Behind him, a creepy security guard appeared. Run. Yellow Hair shouted and was about to get up and run away. However, he was shocked to find that he was too relaxed just now and actually hadn't even put on his pants yet. The few seconds of delay was enough to be fatal. Seeing the bizarre security guard getting closer and closer, Yellow Hair looked towards Junior beside him, and with a clench of his teeth, he pushed Junior in the direction of the security guard. Ah, what are you doing? Xiao San was stunned by this sudden turn of events. She stumbled and fell to the feet of the creepy security guard. If one has to die, the one who dies must not be me. Yellow Hair had already put on his pants by now and fled towards the far out without looking back. How could Xiao San not expect that in just two hours, she would actually be betrayed by two people? When she looked up, she saw that the creepy security guard was towering over her, looking at herself with a mocking face. In the next second, blood splattered everywhere. Ten minutes was not long to say the least. For Chin Mu, it was only the time it took to drink half a cup of tea. For Wang Dafu and Yellow Hair, it was a long century. Finally, with the heavy bell ringing, two hours had arrived. Peekaboo game, over. The white mist gradually dispersed, the temperature in the museum warmed up slightly, and the damp water stains on the ground gradually dissipated. Wang Dafu and Yellow Hair, all tired, returned to the hall. In the hall, Chen Mu finished the last sip of tea and ate the last bite of pastry, looking calm and elegant. It had to be said that the duke's taste was still online, the tea and pastries tasted good, it was a qualified afternoon tea. Looking at Chen Mu who finished enjoying the afternoon tea, Wang Dafu and Yellow Hair, looked at Chen Mu with a jealous face. Both of us are about to die, and you actually ate an afternoon tea elegantly. 
There is no justice. We're both participating in a weird mission. Why would you be so comfortable? Chen Mu looked at Yellow Hair and Wang Dafu and silently calculated in his heart. Apart from Chen Mu, it was equivalent to saying that there were four people who participated in this hide and seek game. Obviously, only two people survived. 50% survival rate. This bizarre mission was already considered treacherous. Regarding Wang Dafu and Yellow Hair's jealousy, Chen Mu directly ignored it. You guys are so miserable, it's not like I caused it, if you want to blame it, blame it on the bizarre end of the world, it's none of my business. Moreover, these two that survived were not good people, both had betrayed and betrayed their teammates. Only the despicable can survive in the bizarre end times. This is the depravity brought about by the bizarre end times. At this moment, Yellow Hair finally understood why Chen Mu had a cold attitude before the mission started and was unwilling to team up with others. It seemed that Chen Mu had long known that there were no teammates to speak of in the bizarre mission. There were only you, death and deceit. What exactly was Chen Mu's identity, and why did he understand the bizarre end times so deeply? At this moment, although Chen Mu did not do anything, his identity, in the eyes of the two, became extraordinarily mysterious. There was more than a trace of scorn in the gazes of the two men as they looked at Chen Mu. Not only that, Yellow Hair and Wang Dafu, the two of them, in each other's eyes, were also filled with distrust and vigilance. No one mentioned anything about forming a team anymore, and they were all wary of each other, fearing that they would be the next to be betrayed. It was at this time that the old butler came. He looked at Wang Dafu and Yellow Hair, who were in a sorry state, as well as the calm and collected Chen Mu, and slowly said, Guests, the game is over. I don't know if you all enjoyed the game of hide and seek? The duke has already prepared a rich dinner for everyone on the second floor. As long as you eat the dinner, all of you guests will be able to leave this place. Come with me, the dinner will begin soon. It was finally time for the dinner. Chen Mu was instantly energized. Whether or not he could meet the duke at the dinner, and whether or not he could buy a rare item of the Guile General Grade depended on his performance at the dinner. Chen Mu's eyes were filled with longing when he thought of the Death Heavy Armor, a Guile General Grade item. The most appealing feature of this item was actually not the physical defense. To be honest, although props that could withstand weird damage were rare, there were still quite a few of them. Based on this attraction alone, it was far from being able to do anything that would make countless powerhouses rush for it. The most crucial and attractive point of the Death Heavy Armor was that it could violate the rules once. Users who wore the Death Heavy Armor and entered a bizarre quest were able to violate the rules once without being punished. The cooldown of this skill is one month. It was important to realize that in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, rules were in existence that could not be disobeyed. No matter how powerful you were, you could not violate the rules. Even if it was a boss in the bizarre scene that wanted to kill a person. But if that person followed the rules, the creepy boss couldn't harm him. This was the power of the rules. Even if the creepy boss was powerful, at most, it could only modify the rules to make them more favorable to itself, but it could not violate the rules. Those who violated the rules, whether they were human or creepy, had to be punished. No human or guile could resist the power of the rules. Except for Death Heavy Armor. As far as Chen Mu knew, the Death Heavy Armor was the only item which could resist the power of the rules. Such a heaven-defying effect made countless powerful people rush to get it from the duke even if they risked their lives. Chen Mu was no exception. Chen Mu was indeed very strong and had trillions of medallions. But Chen Mu did not dare to guarantee that he would never violate the rules. In case he was careless, got caught in the gutter, and violated the rules once, then the death heavy armor would become his bottom card to save his life. This bottom card must be obtained. Under the butler's leadership, several people came to a staircase. After going up the stairs, they arrived at the second floor of the Misty Museum. The second floor was a wide hall, and this was the place the duke used for banquets. The butler said to the few people, There are some rules at the duke's dinner, so please don't break them. Otherwise the duke is angry and the consequences will be severe. 1. To the duke and duchess, be polite and don't make insulting gestures. 2. When the duke gives you food, you can't refuse it and you have to eat it all. There will be a penalty for not eating it all. The duke doesn't like too many rules, so these are the only two rules, so make sure you follow them. Another bizarre quest. Chen Mu frowned slightly, it seemed that the Misty Museum was not simple. A spooky scene, first hide and seek, then a dinner party, two spooky quests. After saying that, the butler led the three of them into the hall of the dinner party. Chen Mu carefully observed the surroundings. Right above the hall, there was a European-style chandelier hanging, the style of the lamp appeared classical, and burning on it were candles. In the middle of the hall, there was a long crystal table with cutlery and candles on it. It must be the dinner table. The old butler brought several people to the table and assigned them positions. Chen Mu's position was at the top, near the duke's main seat. This was the old butler's hospitality to Chen Mu, making it convenient for Chen Mu to talk to the duke. As for Wang Dafu and Yellow Hair, they sat farther away, and at first glance, 
they were the positions of ordinary guests. After waiting for a few moments, the Duke and Duchess finally came. The Duke's dress was a typical European medieval style, revealing an air of power and nobility. If one looked closely at his face, one would realize that his face was miserably cold, a typical eerie face. The Duchess, wearing a white skirt, was similarly dressed in medieval style, but the Duchess looked beautiful, in her forties, with a great deal of charm. All of our guests have traveled a long way, and I have prepared a dinner for all of you. The Duke and his wife revealed formulaic smiles, it was obvious that they had gone through this process many times. Without too much politeness, the Duke instructed the attendants next to him to serve tonight's dinner. A group of bizarre waiters, wearing blood-spattered aprons, brought plates of food onto the table. As soon as the plates were served on the table, Shen Mu could smell the strong odor of blood. His face changed slightly, the food tonight was not normal. As expected, the plates on the table were filled with red soup broth. In the midst of the soupy broth, there was broken meat and eyeballs floating, and even broken arms. The two, Wang Dafu and Yellow Hair, almost didn't vomit on the spot. Holy f asterisk ck. What the hell is this? This is fucking for creepy to eat. Looking at the arms, legs, eyeballs, and broken meat in front of them, Wang Dafu and Yellow Hair's faces changed drastically, forcing themselves to resist the urge to vomit. The two of them looked at each other, it was hard to imagine how they were going to take these disgusting things and eat them in their stomachs. Hee hee, let me distribute the food to you guys. The Duke said with a smile. It was at this moment that Chen Mu suddenly spoke. Duke, Duchess, please wait. Before the dinner begins, I have some gifts here as a token of appreciation. The gifts are not expensive, so please forgive me, Duke and Duchess. A goose feather sent from a thousand miles away is a light gift. Saying that, Chen Mu was about to pull out the gift he had prepared from his spatial ring. A trace of joy flashed in the Duke's eyes. After coming to so many guests, there was finally a guest who understood. And by the looks of it, this guest had quite the background, actually having a space ring. From the space ring, Chen Mu pulled out two small boxes and handed them to the Duke and Duchess in turn. The Duke opened the boxes carelessly, he had been in a high position for many years and had seen a lot. Chen Mu said that the gifts were not expensive, so naturally, the Duke did not expect much, he was just satisfied with Chen Mu's intentions. However, when the Duke opened the box, the Duke's face changed. Guida Chui Fei, Honorable Edition Limited Watch. It was worth one million medieval dollars. The Duke looked at Chen Mu with a shocked expression. You call this not considered valuable? Creepy plutonium, it wasn't like it came from the wind. When people met for the first time, giving a hundred thousand or so plutonium would already be a very expensive gift. Is this young man so rich that he has a different definition of valuable? Taking a gift of one million medals as a gift for meeting. One must know that even when the duke was at his peak, he only received a gift of 700,000 to 800,000 medals. As soon as Chen Mu made his move, it was a 1 million medieval dollar Guida Chui Fei. The duchess next to her, after opening the small box, her face became even more shocked. The gifts she received as a duchess were never inferior to the duke. The guests mainly gave gifts to the duke, and what they gave to the duchess was just some incidental items. A few tens of thousands of plutonium meant something. However, how could the Duchess not expect that what Chen Mu gave her was actually a crystal necklace worth 1 million medals? The Duchess was very knowledgeable, and she could tell at a glance that this crystal necklace was bought from the Fallen Arcade. Fallen Mall, the high-end mall of the Bazaar World. The Duchess had, before, often gone shopping at the Fallen Arcade with the noble women Bazaar ones, together. However, even the Duchess, faced with the prices in the Fallen Mall, was often out of her depth. Just like this crystal necklace, for example, the Duchess used to like it very much. However, after seeing the selling price of up to a million plutocrats, the duchess still hesitated. Don't look at the duke's high status, but the plutonium he had as a military general wasn't much. Moreover, the duke still has a large family to support, butlers, attendants, and attendants. With such a large platoon, which one of them has to invest a huge amount of plutonium? Therefore, the real shopping for the duchess is actually not much. Such a crystal necklace, the duchess loved it, but the price was quite painful. After agonizing over it for a month at first, the duchess still gave up on buying it. Now the duke is down and out, this crystal necklace, for the duchess, it is even more out of reach. However, how could the duchess not expect to actually receive this surprising gift at tonight's dinner party? Before Chin Mu was reborn, he remembered the duchess's preferences, so he happened to pick the one that the duchess liked. At once, the atmosphere at the table changed. The duke changed into a smiling face, looking at Chen Mu with a beaming smile, just like looking at his good brother. The duchess also revealed a bright smile and looked at Chen Mu with an expression like she was looking at her future son-in-law. Come, come, ma'am, you distribute food to Chen Mu, the duke said. In response, Chen Mu understood that the duke was giving himself a break. What the rules said was any food allocated by the duke should be eaten. But it didn't say that the food assigned by the duchess must be eaten. 
In other words, these disgusting foods, Shen Mu was perfectly fine with not eating them. After all, the duke was in a position of honor, and even if he was letting off steam, he couldn't do it as blatantly as the old butler did. Chen Mu couldn't help but sigh, the duke is not ordinary ah, put a water or so level. The duke naturally saw that Chen Mu knew that he was letting water out. The duke was very happy, this is a smart person ah. Putting in water himself, Chen Mu was able to know it by heart. Such a smart young man, and out of the blue, seems to have a good background, is a good partner. Duchess received the crystal necklace, it is the time when the heart is in a blaze of glory, look at Chen Mu as the more you look at the more you like, where do you care about the duke so implicitly let go of the water, directly blatantly let go of the water. The duchess directly clapped her hands, let the waiter serve some cakes and distributed them to Chen Mu. The meaning is obvious, those disgusting things, don't serve them in front of Chen Mu, it's not good to be disgusted by Chen Mu. Favoritism. Favoring. The duchess was close to writing these two words on her face. This sudden shift left Wan Dafu and Yellow Hair dumbfounded. Holy F asterisk CK. It can still be played like this? Wang Dafu's head flashed and thought of the fact that in his pants, he still had 10 plutonium coins that he hadn't used. Plutonium, this is precious plutonium. Wang Dafu heard from others that in the weird post-apocalyptic world, the most precious thing is plutonium. As long as you have plutonium in your hand, the bazaar can even kneel and lick you. Therefore, Wang Dafu spent a great deal of money at that time, using up the connections he had accumulated for more than 10 years, and managed to get 10 plutonium coins. Now, it was time to use it. Chen Mu, this kid, what kind of rags did he take that could be as precious as his own plutonium? Obviously, Wang Dafu only knew that plutonium was the most precious, and thought that everything else was inferior to plutonium. Chen Mu took out two gifts that could make the Duke and Duchess's hearts blossom. Then if he himself took out even more precious plutonium, wouldn't he be able to make the Duke kneel and lick himself? Thinking of this, Wang Dafu cleared his throat and stood up directly. Lord Duke, Duchess, I have even more precious gifts here for the two of you. After saying that, in public, Wang Dafu directly pulled out his crotch. Only to see that from his crotch, he took out something stained with urine and put it in front of the duke like a treasure. The duke looked down and, fuck, 10 plutonium, you're fucking here to humiliate me? The duke may be down and out, but he's still an aristocrat in the bazaar. No matter what, a thin camel is bigger than a horse, and his family still has hundreds of thousands of medals. What's the meaning of your 10 medals? Humiliation. You're humiliating me. What made the duke feel even more humiliated was that Wang Dafu actually pulled out this 10 medals from his pants. Such an anticlimactic maneuver instantly made the duke fume. Dare to humiliate the duke at a dinner party, pull me out and chop him up. The duke said to the attendant beside him. Without saying a word, the valet directly pulled up Wang Dafu and dragged him downstairs. Wang Dafu was all confused, what's going on? Isn't it said that the medals are the most precious, isn't it said that all the bazaar have to kneel down, why is the script he took different ah? Why would he be dragged out and chopped by the duke after he took out this 10 plutonium? Chen Mu also want to laugh a little, Wang Dafu this pass operation, really a little outrageous, let Chen Mu were shocked. After 5 years of living in the weird post-apocalyptic world, Chen Mu had never seen this kind. Chen Mu admitted that Wang Dafu's flurry of operations had given Chen Mu a long insight. After Wang Dafu was dragged out and chopped up, the dinner party continued. The duke and duchess, still looking at Chen Mu with a smiling face, gave Chen Mu a cake. When it was time to divide the food for yellow hair, the duke looked at Chen Mu and asked, Is this person a friend of yours? Chen Mu shook his head, I don't know him. Still, Chen Mu and yellow hair were strangers, so naturally, he did not want to help yellow hair with his own resources. What's more, yellow hair was still hostile to Chen Mu, so it was even more impossible to help yellow hair. Without Chen Mu's care, the duke for yellow hair did as he was told, and directly distributed a large pile of rotting minced meat and eyeballs. To yellow hair. Looking at the disgusting food on his plate, and then looking at the exquisite cake on Chen Mu's plate, Yellow Hair wanted to cry without tears. Even if there is a difference in hide and seek, how come at the dinner party, the treatment of himself and Chen Mu, is still such a world of difference ah? He had to eat such a disgusting thing, but Chen Mu had a cake to eat, and even Chen Mu didn't have to eat it if he didn't want to. Yellow Hair's mind exploded once again, and in his eyes as he looked at Chen Mu, there was more intense jealousy. In this jealousy, there was more than a trace of resentment and malice. Why can Chen Mu be so comfortable? Why can't Chen Mu help me for nothing? When we get out of the weird mission, I'm going to let Chen Mu die. Chen Mu has so many good things, and that space ring, as long as you shark Chen Mu, everything is your own. In the future, when I enter the weird mission, I can also be as free as Chen Mu. Yellow hair thought in his heart, from time to time, he looked at Chen Mu with malicious eyes, and in his heart, he had already planned to assassinate Chen Mu. Regarding yellow hair's malicious eyes, Chen Mu had long since seen it in his eyes. Oh, have murderous intentions towards me? Knowing that Yellow Hair had murderous intent towards himself, 
and deliberately letting yellow hair go, waiting for yellow hair to find trouble for himself, this kind of breaking behavior, Chen Mu could not possibly do. If yellow hair was looking for death himself, don't blame Chen Mu for being ruthless. Chen Mu silently took out his cell phone and dialed creepy driver's number, telling creepy driver to wait outside for yellow hair. The creepy driver was very strong, and it was easy to take out a yellow hair. Chen Mu knew a truth. If you don't get rid of the grass, it will grow again in the spring. The dinner party continued. Yellow hair covered his nose and gulped down the disgusting food. Chen Mu, on the other hand, talked and laughed with the Duke and Duchess, not at all looking like he had entered a bizarre scene. During the conversation, Chen Mu showed his wealth from time to time, making the Duchess look at him with glowing eyes. The Duke was likewise quite interested in Chen Mu's medallions. Nowadays, the Duke was very down and out, and in order to be able to maintain a decent life, he desperately needed a large amount of plutonium to fill the gap. Chen Mu, who appeared at this time, happened to have a large amount of metals, and at first glance, he was a master who was not short of money. So, how to get the metals from Chen Mu? What did one have that could attract Chen Mu? With a background like Chen Mu, ordinary things would definitely be hard to get into his eyes. If the things he took out were too bad, wouldn't that be humiliating Chen Mu? Suddenly, it occurred to the duke that he had a guile general grade item in his hand. Death heavy armor. Chen Mu should be interested in this guile general grade item. The duke silently prayed in his heart, hoping that Chen Mu would be interested. Otherwise, he really didn't know how he could exchange it for a large amount of medieval coins. An hour later, with the yellow hair, who was so disgusted that he was numb, swallowing the last eyeball into his stomach, the dinner party finally came to an end. The old butler came over and said to yellow hair and Chen Mu, both guests, thank you for coming to the Misty Museum as guests. The Duke's hospitality, I wonder if you are all satisfied? If there is nothing else for you all, you can leave the Misty Museum now. The old butler's words announced the end of the Misty Museum mission. Five people participated in the mission, and only two ended up surviving. Chen Mu belonged to the exception, if Chen Mu wasn't counted, one out of four people survived. A 25% survival rate. Hearing the end of the mission, Yellow Hair finally breathed a sigh of relief. Yellow Hair's stomach, which had been propped up into a leather ball, was filled with the rotting blood in his throat. Just thinking about how much he had eaten, Yellow Hair's mind exploded. Taking another look at Chen Mu, good lord, he didn't have to eat anything from start to finish, and even if he did, it was just cake. Yellow Hair's mind exploded once again. Just wait, I'm so miserable, how dare you be so comfortable, when I get out of the Misty Museum, I'm going to take everything from you. So far, Chen Mu had never shown his strength, giving Yellow Hair an illusion. Yellow Hair felt that Chen Mu was nothing more than having medieval coins, looking at Chen Mu's white and clean appearance, he didn't look like someone with any strength at all. Chen Mu relied on the fact that he had medieval coins and was imposing in the weird scene. When he got out of the weird scene, he could stab Chen Mu to death. Holding this thought, Yellow Hair looked viciously at Chen Mu, and then went down the stairs to leave. Yellow Hair did not want to stay here for a second, quickly leave the Misty Museum, find a place to hide outside, and when Chen Mu came out, stab Chen Mu to death. The Duke also saw Yellow Hair's hostility, and waited until Yellow Hair left, the Duke said to Chen Mu. Mr. Chen, this yellow-haired person, doesn't seem to be too friendly towards you. Of course, I can see that. Chen Mu nodded his head. Immediately afterward, Chen Mu said. Moreover, he's prepared to kill me. Lord Duke, haven't you noticed that the table knife on the table, he secretly took one away, so I guess he is already preparing to kill me. The Duke was a bit surprised when these words came out. The Duke had been chatting with Chen Mu, and hadn't noticed when yellow hair had, in fact, taken away a dinner knife. Chen Mu, on the other hand, had to chat with both the Duke and Duchess at the same time, and was actually able to notice Yellow Hair's small movements. Such a keen observation power made the Duke feel inferior to himself. Mr. Chen, if you're worried, I can send someone to take care of him. The Duke offered to help, releasing his goodwill to Chen Mu. Chen Mu smiled and politely declined, thank you for the Duke's kindness, but I don't think it's necessary. My men, are already waiting for him outside the door. Hearing that Chen Mu had henchmen, the duke could not help but give Chen Mu another high look. Thinking to himself that he had guessed correctly, Mr. Chen had a background in strength. Mr. Chen, I have a good thing here, I wonder if you are interested. Oh? Chen Mu's heart rejoiced, it seemed that the duke was unable to hold his breath and was taking the initiative to bring out that trickster general grade prop. Mr. Chen, don't be in a hurry, I'll take you to take a look, the duke said. At this moment, yellow hair had already exited the museum. Behind Yellow Hair, the door of the museum clicked shut, Chen Mu did not follow him out. Yellow Hair frowned, could it be that Chen Mu was left behind? He was still waiting to kill Chen Mu, now Chen Mu didn't come out for half a day, then when would he have to wait? Yellow Hair looked at the surrounding situation, around the misty museum, was a large dense jungle. It was late in the day, and a thick fog filled the surrounding area, the air became damp and cold. 
Yellow Hair was only wearing a short sleeve and was already shivering from the cold. And what's worse, due to eating too much rotten meat, in Yellow Hair's stomach, it had already begun to roll and make noise. In his stomach, the pain was as unbearable as a knife churning. Fine beads of sweat emerged on Yellow Hair's forehead as he felt that it was getting harder and harder in his stomach. That Duke fellow, what on earth did he give himself to eat? No, if he waited here any longer, he was going to die of pain. He had survived with great difficulty, he couldn't die of pain at the end of the mission. Yellow Hair's stomach began to turn over, and he pondered that he had to go to the hospital quickly. Chen Mu should not be able to come out for a while, he went to the hospital to wash his stomach, and if he was faster, he could still come back before Chen Mu left, just in time to kill Chen Mu at the door. Thinking of this, Yellow Hair rushed toward the forest highway. The forest highway is very long, how long do I have to walk? Yellow Hair wanted to call an ambulance, took out his cell phone and saw that there was no signal around. At this time, Yellow Hair surprised to find that the entrance to the forest highway actually parked a cab. God help me. Yellow Hair's heart was overjoyed, while covering his stomach, he walked towards the cab. Perhaps his stomach was too painful, or perhaps he wasn't vigilant enough about the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, Yellow Hair didn't even think about why there would be a cab parked in the deep forest at night. Walking to the side of the cab, without saying a word, Yellow Hair pulled open the door and sat in. Master, go to the hospital. Faster, I'm dying of pain. If you don't drive faster, believe it or not, I'll kill you. From his pocket, Yellow Hair took out a secretly hidden table knife and threatened the cab driver. The cab driver sat in the driver's seat, never looking back, started the cab and began to drive towards the forest highway. In the back seat, Yellow Hair breathed a sigh of relief as he covered his stomach and gasped for air. Suddenly, Yellow Hair felt a little bit wrong, he was in the car, and smelled a faint odor of blood. Yellow Hair thought of something. Hardly, he stumbled into the weird again. His back brushed with cold sweat, stuttering toward the driver. Master, you this cab, is not there any problem ah? The driver, however, acted as if he didn't hear it, and didn't say a word. Cab, running faster and faster. Yellow Hair is a typical bully, after realizing that the driver may be weird, Yellow Hair dared not speak, and the atmosphere did not dare to breathe. Soon, the cab drove into the forest and stopped at a secluded corner. Sir, your destination is here, the driver said in a hoarse voice. I am going to a hospital. Yellow Hair looked at the dark forest around him, his face pale with fear. The hospital is your chosen destination. But in this cab, do you have the qualification to choose? This forest is the destination that the boss chose for you. The creepy driver coldly turned his head and looked at Yellow Hair. Ah, creepy. Seeing the driver's eyes without eyeballs, Yellow Hair finally believed that this driver was really creepy. The boss said to let you die with a clear conscience. The boss is Chen Mu, you messed with someone you shouldn't have, so pay attention in your next life. The creepy driver said icily, announcing Yellow Hair's death. With things having come to this, Yellow Hair finally realized what kind of existence he had messed with. He suddenly remembered that before the mission started, Junior had said that Chen Mu was sent here by a creepy driver. At that time, Yellow Hair didn't believe it, thinking that it was bullshit, who could be so bullish as to make creepy willingly become a driver. However, Yellow Hair now believed it, Chen Mu was that bullish. Not only did he eat and drink in the Duke's house, but he could also make creepy work for him as a personal chauffeur. What a terrifying existence Chen Mu really was. If I had known this, I should have knelt down and licked Chen Mu, this was a thigh thicker than a mountain. One still thought of killing Chen Mu, now it seemed really ridiculous and stupid. However, there was no medicine for regret in the world. In extreme regret and fear, Yellow Hair died in the dark forest. In the Misty Museum, Chen Mu was led by the Duke to the Duke's office. Along the way, the Duke was thinking about how much it should be sold for. The Duke was also aware of the rarity of the death heavy armor. To be honest, the Duke was still heartbroken after selling such a prop. If he wasn't really short of money, the Duke would be unwilling to sell it. In the office, the Duke sat in front of the desk, and Chen Mu sat opposite. Chen Mu saw at a glance that the wall on the right side of the office was the Duke's red wine cabinet. The red wine cabinet at this time, was already empty. The red wines on it were all gone. Chen Mu knew the Duke's preference. Just like the Duchess liked necklaces, the Duke's favorite, was red wine. Lord Duke, there is no hurry to talk about business. I've prepared some small gifts for you this time, in addition to the meat and greet gift just now. After saying that, Chen Mu touched his spatial ring, and between the flashes of his mind, bottles of red wine were taken out of the ring and neatly stacked on the wine cabinet. One bottle. Two bottles. Five bottles. Ten bottles. Twenty bottles. Just seeing bottles of red wine, appearing on the wine cabinet, the. In front of the duke's eyes, he was dazzled. Enough to put two minutes, hundreds of bottles of high-end red wine, so filled the wine cabinet. The originally empty wine cabinet was filled to the brim at this time. So many red wines, each bottle was worth a lot of money, there was nothing below $10,000. The most expensive ones, 
There were even millions of a bottle. Even when the duke was at his peak, he didn't buy red wine so extravagantly. When he thought that he was now down and out, and Chen Mu had actually given himself so much red wine, the duke could not help but feel a sourness in his eyes. Those old subordinates of his own from before, one by one, no longer paid visits to his door. In comparison, Chen Mu's every move was undoubtedly sending charcoal in the snow. The icing on the cake is more, the snow and the charcoal less. The world was cold, people were cold and warm, and so was shenanigans. In the eyes of the duke, Chen Mu did not know about the existence of the death-heavy armor. Therefore, in the duke's eyes, this series of Chen Mu's giving was completely unrequited. Good wine, good wine. Mr. Chen is truly treating me as a friend. The duke could not help but sigh with emotion. A moment later, the duke figured out that Chen Mu was sending charcoal to himself, and if he were to withhold it again, wouldn't he be making a fool of himself? Just for the fact that Chen Mu sent charcoal in the snow, the duke knew that Chen Mu was a righteous person. This friend, worth making. The duke moved the wine cabinet, and behind the wine cabinet, there was a hidden compartment. Opening the hidden compartment, the duke, from inside, held out a one-person high armor. Death-heavy armor. Mr. Chen, truth be told, this is a treasure that I have collected for most of my life. The guile general grade prop death-heavy armor. This heavy armor is infinitely powerful and possesses a formidable power against the rules. When I was on the battlefield, I killed two guile generals for it before I captured it. I don't have many friends nowadays, mister. Chen loves me so much, there's nothing I can do to repay you. This death heavy armor, consider it my gift to you. The duke was also a man of righteousness, and this was largely true of the martial generals in Creepy, all of them were brash and righteous. Thus, as soon as the duke made his move, he gave the death heavy armor to Chen Mu. This time, it was Chen Mu's turn to be shocked. This duke was also too generous. This death heavy armor could at least be sold for more than 20 million medieval coins right now. Moreover, as the bizarre end times deepened, people became more and more aware of the power of the rules, and the power to fight against the rules became even more treasured, and the value of the death-heavy armor climbed up day by day. At the highest point, someone offered 1 billion medieval coins for the death-heavy armor. Such a valuable thing, and the duke actually gave it to himself? Receiving the death gauntlet from the duke, Chen Mu was thrilled in his heart. The death-heavy armor appeared to be thick and heavy, but when held in the hand, it was as light as a cicada's wing, and one hand could move it. Chen Mu took off his jacket and put the death heavy armor on his body. As soon as the death heavy armor touched Chen Mu, the heavy armor suddenly turned into a pile of light and merged into Chen Mu's body. Chen Mu felt that a warm current was injected into his body, and within his body, there was an extra trace of majestic power. A powerful force against the rules. Chen Mu's personal strength was also climbing rapidly, upgrading from guile folk to guile soldier level. Not only that, Chen Mu could clearly feel that his defense ability had received a huge boost. The death heavy armor had merged with Chen Mu, and from the outside, it was impossible to tell what it looked like to be wearing the armor, Chen Mu was still a short-sleeved. But at this moment, if someone were to stab Chen Mu with a knife, they would be shocked to find that the blade of the knife looked like it was cutting on steel when it touched Chen Mu's body. The death heavy armor was integrated into Chen Mu's body, and from now on, the death heavy armor, the only weapon that could resist the power of the rules, belonged solely to Chen Mu, and no one would be able to snatch it away. Feeling the majestic power in his body, Chen Mu was delighted he finally had the power to defend himself. After going to the fallen mall to buy so many gifts for himself, it was not in vain after all, not only did he make the duke consider himself as a friend, the duke also gave such a precious prop to himself. Chen Mu still understood the reasoning behind reciprocity. The duke was generous and gave the death heavy armor to himself, so he definitely had to show it to himself as well. At that moment, Chen Mu touched his spatial ring and took out 10 million medieval coins from it. Lord Duke, the death heavy armor is too valuable, I can't take it for nothing. Consider this 10 million medieval coins as my money for buying it. Chen Mu's move shocked the Duke once again. The 10 million medieval coins, neatly coated, took up a large portion of the wall. Looking at Chen Mu's generous gesture, the Duke couldn't help but feel emotional. Chen Mu is a good friend. One must know that even if Chen Mu did not contribute any money, Chen Mu could still take the death heavy armor. But in order to not let the duke suffer, at least that was how the duke felt, Chen Mu actually threw away 10 million plutonium coins. In the duke's heart, his evaluation of Chen Mu was raised by another notch. Not greedy for small advantages, not letting his friends suffer. Chen Mu was worth making friends with. This 10 million medals had relieved the duke's urgent need and helped him fill the money gap. Grateful, the duke took out a token and handed it to Chen Mu. Chen Mu, you are my good brother. This token is for you. In the future, if you encounter difficulties, just crush this token and I will know your location and will immediately rush over to help you. Receiving the token, a look of surprise appeared on Chen Mu's face. The death-heavy armor that was worth billions of dollars, he had spent a few million gifts plus 10 million medals to take it down, he had simply earned a fortune. 
And there was also the unexpected joy of actually obtaining a duke's token. The gold content of the duke's token was clear in Chen Mu's heart. To be honest, this is a prop comparable to the trick general level. Although the duke lacked money, he was extremely strong. The duke was a trickster general level trickster. This kind of strength is often the big boss of a city. Like the boss behind the Fallen Arcade, who owned countless industries and controlled the Fallen Arcade, a top tier bazaar scene, that level of bazaar was only at the strength of a bazaar general level. From this, it could be seen that the strength of a creepy general level was strong. In the entire bazaar apocalypse, there were only a handful of guile kings that were stronger than guile generals. It could be said that the strength of a creepy general was already a half step peak in the creepy end world. Having the token was equivalent to being able to summon a creepy general level creepy on its own in times of crisis. Who else would dare to mess with himself in the creepy end world? If the medieval coins couldn't settle the matter, let the duke step in and directly click a few times, instantly exterminating the other party. This is a bizarre general level bizarre, in giving himself as a backer ah. The copy of the Misty Museum, Chen Mu earned a lot. Simply earned hemp ah. In the half hour that followed, Chen Mu and the duke had a great conversation. During the conversation, the duke appreciated Chen Mu more and more. This young man had a wide range of knowledge, and could even say many things that the duke did not know. For example, the underworld bank, which the duke had never seen before, was a top-level eerie scene that only the eerie king could come into contact with, but Chen Mu was able to talk about it as if he had seen it with his own eyes. In fact, Chen Mu had not only seen it, but the underworld bank was also lying in Chen Mu's spatial ring. If such words were said, it was estimated that the duke would be able to drop his jaw. However, Chen Mu still had a sense of propriety, this kind of core secret, Chen Mu naturally could not say to others. Even so, the duke still greatly appreciated Chen Mu's insight. The duke was even more firmly convinced that Chen Mu was a person with a background, and a big one at that. Finally, when the conversation came to the bizarre end of the world, Chen Mu talked about his plans. I'm going to buy some more industries in the bizarre end world. It's just that I have too many metals in my hand, so I don't know which ones are the most suitable to buy first having too much money and not knowing how to spend it. It was simply a naked pretense. If other people heard this, they could explode in place with envy. But Chen Mu was innocent, he really wasn't pretending, this was indeed his concern. Harm, perhaps this was the trouble of the rich. Quality resources were always scarce, Chen Mu had a lot of medieval coins, but his time was limited ah. He could only participate in one bizarre scene at a time, and he could only come one by one if he acquired them. So which bizarre scenes, then, were worth investing in? Otherwise, when the bizarre scenes all appreciated in value after a year or two, and even some of them were not for sale to the public, Chen Mu would have missed out on a good opportunity to acquire them. In this regard, the duke, as a member of the bazaar, definitely knew more than Chen Mu. After thinking for a moment, the duke said, I think that the school is a bizarre scene worth purchasing. In the creepy end times, those powerful creepy basically have children and offspring. Children and offspring, they have to go to school, right? Don't you humans all rush to get into a good school? So many powerful people have their heads cut off to send their children to a good school. It's the same with spooky. A good school is a scarce resource for senior eerie. Those high-level bazaar, for their offspring, were willing to pay a huge price. If you buy the good school and become the principal of the good school. If you buy a good school and become the headmaster of it, do the children of those senior creeps who want to go to school have to beg you for help? If they beg you, they will naturally owe you a favor. As long as the school you buy is good enough, there will be countless high-level weirdos begging you for favors. You'll be able to reap countless bizarre favors. At that time, if you want to ask them for favors, it won't be a matter of words. The duke's words enlightened Chen Mu. Right. He had a lot of plutonium in his hands right now, but to put it bluntly, he was still using plutonium to beg the bazaar, to give him a release and do favors for him. But if one were to buy a school, like the duke said, then it would become creepy begging to do things for himself. One's begging creepy for himself, and one's creepy begging for himself. It's a world of difference. Like human beings, Senior Eerie also valued their offspring and wanted to give them good resources and education. If you hold on to their offspring, you will be able to run amok in the entire bizarre end of the world. As a matter of fact, in Chen Mu's memory, those famous weird schools were all big powers that had shaken one side of the weird post-apocalyptic world. For example, the high school that Chen Mu was attending had turned into a bizarre scenario, Dark Knight High School, about a month into the bizarre apocalypse. In the bizarre end of the world, the Dark Knight High School developed rapidly, and in less than half a year's time, it had become a top-notch existence that shook one side of the world. Looking around the dozens of cities, Dark Knight High School was the best school. Seeing Chen Mu come to a sudden realization, the Duke continued to point out. There are also hospitals, which are also scarce resources. Which creepy doesn't get injured, and after getting injured, do you have to go to the creepy hospital to see a doctor? If you become the director of the weird hospital, all those injured weirdos will beg you to treat them, 
and you'll be able to reap a whole lot of favors. In that case, who would dare to offend you in the end of the weird world? Not afraid that no one will help cure him? Chen Mu's heart surged at once, sighing with emotion that the duke was really old-fashioned, pointing out the direction at once. It seemed that his trip to the Misty Museum had yielded far more than he had imagined. Many thanks for the duke's guidance. Chen Mu sincerely thanked him. Next, Chen Mu's direction was clear, he was going to return to his high school first. A day or two later, his high school would turn into the Darkness High School, and he would just be able to participate in the Bazaar Quest and by the Darkness High School. The Midnight Cafeteria was also in Chen Mu's high school, and Chen Mu was at the Fallen Mall at the time, and had run dozens of shopping cards, which he hadn't yet had time to send out to his employees. There was no telling how the employees were doing at work, and after these shopping cards were sent out, they would definitely shock those employees. I guess there aren't many bosses who are willing to give shopping cards to their weird employees in the weird end world. After buying the Darkness High School first, he would then look for the creepy hospital or something else. After continuing to talk with the duke for a few moments, it was already getting late, so Chen Mu got up and prepared to leave. The duke was very enthusiastic and tried his best to retain Chen Mu for the night, but Chen Mu politely refused. Chen Mu was not accustomed to spending the night in someone else's home, and he was prepared to make a trip back to the midnight canteen and sleep at the midnight canteen at night. The duke was reluctant to leave and asked the duchess to send Chen Mu away. The duchess led Chen Mu down the stairs to the first floor gate. As he left, Chen Mu thought for a moment and pulled out a card from his ring. This card was black in color, and within the black, there was a slight dark gold color mixed in. That's right, this was the black gold card of the Fallen Mall. After Chen Mu obtained the Supreme Black Gold Card, he was able to issue black gold cards to 10 people with the privilege of the Supreme Black Gold Card. Chen Mu then opened a black gold card with a $1 million limit as a farewell gift to the Duchess. Looking at the black gold card in front of her, the Duchess brightened up. She had shopped at the Fallen Mall quite a few times, so she naturally knew the honor of the black gold card. In the past, when the Duke was at his peak, the Duchess couldn't even afford to open a black gold card, and could only spend with a silver card. Shopping with the Duchess, there is a weird noblewoman, this noblewoman on the basis of their own black gold card, every time they are high and mighty, so that the Duchess is not happy for a long time. But there is no way, who called the black gold card so rare and noble, the Duchess greedy black gold card for a long time, but not that strength cannot afford to open the black gold card. Now at the time of separation, Chen Mu actually sent her one, which is the black gold card she has been looking forward to for a long time. Chen Mu's image in the duchess's heart had reached its peak. Such a understanding young man, and so powerful, but also quite handsome. Unfortunately, it is not his own son. But, why can't he be his son-in-law? The duchess was excited in her heart, her own daughter is a vampire bazaar, typical petite lowly figure, two small tiger teeth extraordinarily cute. If Chen Mu could look at her daughter, wouldn't that be one more golden son-in-law? Unfortunately, his own daughter hadn't come back yet, and when she did, she would definitely have to be introduced to Chen Mu to get to know her. After leaving the Misty Museum, Chen Mu saw from afar that his driver was waiting for him. When the driver saw Chen Mu come out, he directly drove the car over, got out and helped Chen Mu pull open the door, and also thoughtfully used his hand when Chen Mu blocked it, preventing his forehead from knocking into the door. Did that yellow hair settle it? Chen Mu asked indifferently. Boss, don't worry, what was given to me, I will definitely do it properly. That yellow hair, will never appear again. He has already died in that forest. Chen Mu nodded with satisfaction, he was satisfied with the driver's performance. After he had entered the Misty Museum, the driver had not left and had been waiting for him outside the Misty Museum. This wait was 10 hours. In the middle of the day, after resolving yellow hair, the driver didn't slack off in the slightest to touch the fish and immediately drove the cab and continued to wait in front of the Misty Museum. The mountains were shrouded in mist, the temperature was very low, and the driver was wearing very thin clothes, but he had no complaints. It was a good henchman. From his space ring, Chen Mu took out a piece of packed cake and handed it to the driver. This is the cake from the duke's dinner, the flavor is not bad, brought a piece for you to try. Upon hearing this, in the driver's heart, a warm current surged. The boss was so good to himself, he was thinking of himself even when he was eating a banquet, and when there was something tasty, he even brought a piece for himself. In Chen Mu's flurry of concern, the driver had been completely loyal to Chen Mu and swore to follow him to the death. Even if someone offered him a higher price to dig him up, he would not jump ship. The driver carefully put the cake away, the cake would be eaten later, he couldn't delay the boss. Boss, where do you want to go next? Back to my school, make a trip to the midnight cafeteria in the school. Okay, boss. Returning to the city from the Misty Museum, there was a mountainous road to go through. The cab began to speed, and the driver sped down the forested mountain road with his great skill. The mountain road at night was eerie and spooky, and it was as if countless unknowns were hidden in that dark forest. A car and cab brushed past each other, but that one car, was driving in the direction of the Misty Museum. 
Through the car window, one could see that in that car, there were several young men and women sitting. The eyes of these few men and women, without exception, revealed panic and despair. Undoubtedly, they were the new batch of unlucky eggs, selected to participate in the Misty Museum's bizarre mission. To them, the Misty Museum was a hell. But for Chin Mu, he even felt a bit cozy, the Duke and Duchess were treating him well, and the old butler was also treating him well. Chen Mu looked at the scene outside the car window, he was lying in the back seat of the car, looking at the creepy who was driving the car for him, and he couldn't help but feel a lot of emotions. The difference between people and the creepy end times is so big. The cab traveled all the way and soon passed through the forest and re-entered the familiar downtown area. When traveling to a night market street, Chen Mu asked the driver to stop and asked the driver to wait in the car. Chen Mu stepped out of the car and came to a pancake stand. Before the bizarre end of the world, Chen Mu liked to come to this pancake stand every night after he got off his studies and buy a pancake as a late night snack. After so many years, the pancake stand only lasted for two months before it could not be opened after the weird end of the previous life. Chen Mu and the bizarre post-apocalyptic, countless times nostalgic once good life, want to eat pancakes once again, but unfortunately there is no opportunity. Now that he was reborn and returned, and happened to be passing by, Chen Mu bought another pancake and ate it carefully in one bite. The flow of people in the night market street was much less than before. Originally a lively night market, now there were only three or two pedestrians, and half of the stalls on the side were closed. It could be seen that the impact of the bizarre end of the world had gotten bigger and bigger, and the world was falling into a depression. After depression, it is fear, after fear, it is chaos and despair. Right now, it was the last trace of tranquility before the storm. Enjoying the tranquil evening breeze, Chen Mu finished his pancakes and returned to the cab. Go to the midnight cafeteria. Chen Mu's words were cold, revealing a hint of determination. It was because Chen Mu knew that the tranquil time was gone forever, and if he wanted to survive in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, he could only accept challenges over and over again. In the midst of challenges, one could make oneself stronger. Until one became the master of the bizarre end world. Five minutes later, the cab drove into the school, and in the teaching building next to it, the lights were still on. Obviously, the order of the school was still there, and the students were still attending classes. However, what Chen Mu did not know was that in the classrooms now, the students no longer had the heart to learn. That night, Chen Mu's performance in the midnight cafeteria had already been spread by those few girls, and the entire class knew about it. Chen Mu's position in the class had become a transcendent existence. Some students were even speculating if Chen Mu was some mysterious big brother. Those students who had a feud with Chen Mu were secretly praying that Chen Mu would not come to clean up after himself. Chen Mu didn't go back to his class, he had to make a trip to the midnight cafeteria first, that was his property. Right now, the school was still normal, other than the cafeteria becoming the midnight cafeteria, the entire school had not yet become the dark night high school. Chen Mu was prepared to take a look at the midnight cafeteria before returning to his class to rest for the day and wait for the dark night high school copy to open. The cab drove into the school and stopped outside the midnight cafeteria, and Chen Mu told the driver to rest in the car. Chen Mu got out of the car and walked towards the entrance of the cafeteria. As soon as he walked into the midnight cafeteria, Chen Mu detected an abnormality. Logically speaking, at this point in time, it was the time when the cafeteria was doing the best business. However, looking around, the entire cafeteria was bustling with only a few customers. However, soon, Chen Mu knew the reason. In the middle of the cafeteria hall, there was a fierce ghost. Surrounding the ghost was a group of Chen Mu's employees, including Li Xiao Xiao. Li Xiao Xiao was the manager of the Midnight Cafeteria, and at that time, when Chen Mu participated in the Midnight Cafeteria replica, she was the one who was responsible for the arrangements for Chen Mu's several people. At this moment, Li Xiao Xiao, who was looking at the ferocious stern ghost with a difficult face, was somewhat at a loss for words. Chen Mu frowned slightly as he keenly sensed that the strength of that fierce ghost was not ordinary. It was at least at the Guile Chief level. The strength of the guile was divided from high to low, in order. Guile king, guile general, guile chief, guile soldier, and guile folk. Chen Mu's current strength was that of a guile soldier. The most powerful person in the midnight cafeteria was the cafeteria manager, Li Xiao Xiao, who was also at the guile soldier level. Facing a Gui Long level Li Xiao Xiao, Li Xiao Xiao's strength was quite a bit worse. Judging from the situation, this guile chief level ghost was not coming from a good place. Could it be here to cause trouble? This seriously affected Chen Mu's business. No wonder no customer dares to come to eat when a Sly Chief class ghost comes to cause trouble. Daring to cause trouble in my Chen Mu's cafeteria, the stern ghost is impatient with life. Chen Mu frowned and walked towards the direction where the stern ghost was. Seeing that someone was coming, Li Xiao Xiao turned around and was pleasantly surprised to find that it was actually her boss. Boss, someone is here to cause trouble. What's going on? Chen Mu asked. So, Li Xiao Xiao told all the ins and outs. After hearing it, Chen Mu finally understood the cause and effect. 
There was no other reason, because Chen Mu's employees were, were too curly. Ever since Chen Mu bought the Midnight Cafeteria, not only did he not fire the employees, but instead, he paid the employees' wages, all of them back. Chen Mu's move made the employees of the Midnight Canteen, all grateful to Chen Mu. Now that business is not doing well, the boss not only didn't fire us, but also treated us so well, we are all thinking of repaying the boss. How to repay? Work hard. The boss has treated us so well, we definitely can't let the boss down. And so, all the employees of the Midnight Cafeteria were in a desperate work mode. The waiters worked hard to serve the customers and make every customer feel at home. The customers who came here all admitted that Midnight Canteen was the restaurant with the best service. The cleaners cleaned carefully, filling the Midnight Canteen with the fragrant smell of blood. Customers are always praising the cleanliness of Midnight Canteen, the air is filled with the smell of blood, just like our taste. It's rare to find such a clean restaurant. The chefs in the back kitchen, bursting with intense enthusiasm, threw themselves into the development of new dishes. A female chef developed the latest dish, combining sashimi and hot pot to create Midnight Canteen's signature dish, Explosive Boiled Blood Liver. Once the dish was launched, it instantly captured the taste buds of countless diners and became a signature dish known far and wide. The staff all rolled up and worked hard to reward Boss Chen. In this way, under the big roles of all employees, the flavor, service, and environment of the Midnight Canteen instantly reached the top level, attracting countless diners. The business of the Midnight Canteen exploded. In just one day, the revenue reached half a million medals. Chen Mu's Midnight Cafeteria had made a crazy amount of money, bringing Chen Mu a huge amount of plutonium. This was of course a good thing, although Chen Mu was rich, he never minded having too much money. Things like plutonium, more was better. When business was good, it would inevitably attract the jealousy of peers. This guile chief level ghost in front of him was named Tuli. It was the owner of a top hotel next to him, and many creeps went to eat at his place. With the explosion of the midnight cafeteria, Tuli's number of customers plummeted and his business could not continue. An ordinary cafeteria, how dare you steal my business? Relying on his strength, Tuli came to the midnight cafeteria to cause trouble, wanting to mess up Chen Mu's business. It just so happened that Chen Mu came back, so he came across the scene in front of him. Seeing Chen Mu coming, Tuli said towards Chen Mu, You are the owner of the Midnight Eatery? A mere human, how dare you do bizarre business? I advise you not to be ungrateful and sell the Midnight Eatery to me quickly. I'll offer 1 million plutonium coins for your Midnight Eatery. Tuli's words were full of danger when he said it at the end. 1 million medieval coins? It was simply open robbery. Chen Mu had spent 7 to 8 million medals to buy it at that time. The current midnight cafeteria could earn half a million medals a day. You want to buy it for a million dollars? Why don't you go and rob it? I'll say three counts, you hurry up and get out, I can forget about it. Chen Mu said indifferently, with a cloudy look. Just buy you? A guile soldier level human, and you don't even look at my strength. I'm at the guile leader level of strength, killing all of you would be easy. After Tuli finished speaking, he was about to make a move on Chen Mu. Boss be careful. Night Xiao Xiao could see a fight and hurriedly tried to block in front of Chen Mu. The surrounding employees, too, had all picked up their weapons, and as long as Chen Mu gave the order, they would fight Tuli to the death. Even though they were all at the guillotine level, which was tantamount to a moth to a flame, they all knew that if it wasn't for Chen Mu, they would have long since turned into lone souls. Now that Chen Mu was in danger, it was impossible for them to abandon him. The performance of the employees made Chen Mu very pleased. Even for humans, it was impossible to be so loyal in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world. However, Chen Mu gently pushed Night Xiao Xiao away as Chen Mu faced two Li's attack straight on without the slightest bit of timidity. Chen Mu's eyes revealed determination and confidence. Bang! Two Li's attack ruthlessly struck Chen Mu's body. However, Chen Mu stood still, not moving at all. On the contrary, Tu Li, by the powerful reaction force, was shaken back several steps before stopping. Just a strength that has just reached the Guilong level, how dare you pretend to be a bully in front of me? Chen Mu said indifferently, not putting Tu Li in his eyes in the slightest. The surrounding employees were stunned, including Li Xiao Xiao, who looked at Chen Mu incredulously. His own boss, relying on his strength at the Guile soldier level, had hard caught a heavy punch from the Guile chief? How was this possible? In the Guile ranks, each rank was like a heavenly gap between them. A Guile chief ranked Guile could single-handedly defeat 10 Guile soldier ranked Guile. In terms of common sense, Tuli could easily crush 10 Chen Mu's. If this punch went down, Chen Mu would be seriously injured if not killed. However, the truth was that Chen Mu was unharmed, and instead, Tuli was knocked back several steps. This is impossible. Yes, it was indeed impossible. However, there was always an exception. Chen Mu was this exception. Chen Mu possessed a Guile General Great item. Death Heavy Armor. With this armor on, a Guile Master Level Guile would not be able to harm Chen Mu at all. Even some newly ranked trickster generals were unable to break through Chen Mu's defenses. 
it was that strong and domineering, the duke fought ten dial generals for several days and nights for it back then, now, it seems that the death heavy armor is, indeed, worth the duke fighting so desperately for it, Chen Mu could not help but lament, even if Tuli was stupid, he could see that something was wrong with Chen Mu, you are a mere human, what exactly is your origin, Tu Li's words were filled with scorn, I'll say it again, I'll say three counts and you get out of here, Chen Mu said coldly, this time, no one thought Chen Mu was pretending, everyone believed that if Tuli didn't want to leave, Chen Mu definitely had the strength to make Tuli get out, the employees gathered around Chen Mu and all looked at their boss with adoration on their faces, their boss was deeply hidden, and his strength was unexpectedly so strong, this shocked the employees and strengthened their resolve to follow Chen Mu to the death, Tuli was still hesitating, he was not willing to leave just like that. Tuli looked Chen Mu up and down, a hint of fluke existing in his heart. Perhaps, Chen Mu was only powerful in defense, but was actually not powerful in his own right? However, Chen Mu's next move completely made Tuli scared out of his wits. Only to see Chen Mu touching his ring, from within the ring, he took out a palm-sized token. This token was black in color, with a dense gui chi wrapped around it. The thickness of the weird chi was so thick that it even manifested into a black mist. Just by looking at it, one would be shocked by the powerful force hidden within. Tuli could tell at a glance that this was a weird token. And it was also the token of a guile general. Creepy general. A creepy general. That was a super creepy that could rule a city. In front of the powerful creepy general, Tuli was a clown. And the creepy general could crush Tuli to death with a casual move of his finger. How could Chen Mu have the creepy general's token? One must know that tokens were extremely important and rare existences for a guile general. A guile general could only have one token. When a creepy general gave the token to someone else, it was equivalent to telling everyone, this person is my life and death friend. Whoever dares to touch him is declaring war on me. It could be said that the person who could get the creepy general's token almost possessed the strength to mobilize a creepy general. As long as Chen Mu wanted to, he could crush the token and summon a guile general to come and fight for Chen Mu. What kind of transcendent existence was the person who could obtain the guile general's token? At this moment, Tuli finally realized what kind of existence he had messed with. If he had known that Chen Mu had the token, if he had given Tuli a million guts, Tuli would not have dared to provoke Chen Mu. Even if Chen Mu wanted Tuli to kneel down and lick his feet, Tuli wouldn't dare to say a word. Tuli relied on his strength to bully others. This kind of person who relied on his strength to bully others was even more afraid of an existence that was stronger than his own. Chen. Chen boss, I'll roll, I'll roll right now. Tuli didn't even dare to look at Chen Mu, who was arrogant just now, in front of Chen Mu, he actually knelt down and rolled out from the cafeteria floor. While rolling, Tuli also said, Boss Chen, I see that your floor is dirty, I'll use my body to help you wipe it. Tuli, who was arrogant before, became so lowly in less than a minute after Chen Mu appeared. Such a huge contrast made everyone present, drop their jaws. Those diners, after seeing this scene, all looked at Chen Mu in shock, unable to believe that a human, actually had so much energy. Stiffly resisting the heavy fist of the Guile General. Having the Guile General's token. It made the Guile Chief scared out of his wits. They admitted that among the humans they had seen, other than Chen Mu, there was no human this powerful. It was thought that after they finished eating and left, with their word of mouth spreading, it was unlikely that anyone would dare to come to the midnight cafeteria and cause trouble again. Even after knowing Chen Mu's mighty reputation, in the future, in the weird scenes, they would have to go around Chen Mu, and even have to serve Chen Mu properly. An even more shocking scene was yet to come. After Tuli rolled out, in the true sense of the word, of the midnight cafeteria, at the entrance of the midnight cafeteria, the more Tuli thought about it, the more scared he was. As a creepy, Tuli knew very well how a powerful creepy could torture a weak creepy. This was because it had often done so itself, often torturing the weaker bizarre than itself, making their lives worse than death. It had offended Chen Mu itself, and Chen Mu had the creepy general as a backer behind him. From the fact that Chen Mu had the creepy general's token, it could be seen that Chen Mu and the creepy general were extremely close. If the guile general behind Chen Mu knew about it and came to settle the score with himself, he would torture himself to a life worse than death. Just thinking about such a horrifying scenario, Tuli shivered in fear. For the rest of its life, it would have to live in this kind of fear every day, which was too desperate for Gu Ei. No, this kind of hellish terror was unacceptable to itself. Thinking of this, Tuli trembled as it looked towards the midnight cafeteria, and immediately afterward, it actually ruthlessly blasted its fist into its head. Only a snapping sound was heard, and Tuli died in front of the door of the midnight cafeteria. It was afraid that the Guile General would find itself in trouble, so it committed suicide right in front of Chen Mu's cafeteria. The loud noise of Tuli's death drew the attention of the other creepy in the cafeteria. When they rushed out of the cafeteria, each of them revealed a shocked expression. Shocked to the extreme. Tuli had committed suicide. Tuli was scared to the point of committing suicide by Chen Mu. 
A creepy long-level night ghost was actually scared to the point of committing suicide by a human, by a human. A strange story for the ages. From the beginning of the creepy end times until now, there had never been such a scene. Including Chin Mu, he was also shocked by Tuli. I'm super. I'm scaring a creepy to death? There was no one in the past and no one in the future. In his previous life, Chen Mu had been crawling around in the creepy end world for five years and had seen many powerful humans. However, he had never heard of anyone who could scare a creepy to death. Good lord, he had set a record. When Chen Mu was mentioned in the future, everyone knew that he had scared a creepy to suicide. Not far away, there were a few bold students who were looking at this place with curious faces at this moment. Since the door to the midnight cafeteria was always open, some of them saw the entire process. Chan Mu? Wasn't that the senior's senior? I heard earlier that he bought the midnight cafeteria, so what's going on now? He scared a creepy head to death again? Soon, as these few students returned to the classroom, the news that Chen Mu had scared a powerful creepy to death began to circulate throughout the school. In this school, there was yet another legend of Chen Mu. Clean up the corpse and throw it away. Chen Mu said to one of the employees. The employee did not hesitate and faithfully carried out Chen Mu's order, throwing Tu Li's body aside. After Tu Li's death, the upscale hotel under Tu Li was naturally taken over by Chen Mu as a branch. In this way, the midnight canteen had another branch, and the revenue it could create every day had at least doubled. After dealing with the troublemaking Tu Li, Chen Mu returned to the cafeteria and began to understand the situation of the employees, as well as the cafeteria's business status. Among them, what surprised Chen Mu the most was the midnight cafeteria's back kitchen, which had developed a new dish, the explosive boiled blood liver. This dish had become the cafeteria's breakout hit. In Chen Mu's memory, after the midnight canteen developed into the midnight hotel, this dish became an enduring classic. Conservatively estimated, this dish would create several hundred million dollars of profit for Chen Mu in the future. How could such a classic dish be developed so quickly? One must know that from the time Chen Mu left the midnight cafeteria, to attending the Misty Museum, and then returning to the midnight cafeteria, only one day had passed. One day to create a famous dish? This speed was simply too heaven-defying. Soon, Chen Mu sought out the chef and asked her how she did it. The chef's answer was within Chen Mu's expectations. Originally, this famous dish, the chef had developed it a long time ago. It was only that the previous boss, who was just too heartless, owed more than half a year's wages. As a result, the chef did not publicize this dish. Until Chen Mu came, not only did not fire them, but instead gave them a full salary, so the chef was greatly moved. Only then did he bring out this dish. Chen Mu nodded after hearing this. A day's time to bring out this dish, and then have this dish spread amongst the diners, causing a firestorm. It seemed like too short a time, it was only a day. However, for Creepy, their one day was a little bit not quite the same as a human's day. Because. They don't have a break. To put it simply, the spooky is at work all 24 hours of the day. That's why, those spooky scenes, no matter when people go in, they can always run into spooky. Because Creepy has no concept of rest, it's always working. What 8-hour workday? What double breaks? What insurance? Nothing. There are even bosses who don't even pay Creepy a salary. The boss has given you a chance to work, why should he pay you? You have a job, you have a salary, you have all the benefits? This is the logic of many Creepy bosses. And in the weird world where the strongest are honored, the weird employees are not strong enough and can only be exploited by their bosses. The competition and oppression in the bizarre world is far more vicious and cruel than the human world. Therefore, the 24 hours of bazaar was equivalent to humans working for 4 days. 4 days was still a reasonable amount of time to promote the dish. Looking at the employees who worked diligently, Chen Mu felt that the necessary rest was still needed. Working 24 hours a day was just too cruel. As Chen Mu's employees, as long as they were loyal to Chen Mu and gave Chen Mu a good job, Chen Mu would not treat them poorly. Those shopping carts from before, it was time to send them down to the employees. Thinking of this, Chen Mu said to Li Xiao Xiao, Call the employees over, I'll announce something to everyone. Soon, dozens of employees from the midnight cafeteria all gathered over, only to see Chen Mu take out a bunch of shopping carts and say to the employees, Our midnight cafeteria, we have now introduced a brand new benefit. Any employee of the midnight cafeteria can receive a shopping card. The amount in the shopping card is 5,000 medals. Every month, the midnight cafeteria will send inside 1,000 plutocrats of shopping money. As long as one keeps working at the midnight cafeteria, one can always enjoy this benefit. Once these words came out, the scene instantly quieted down. The weird employees, all of them, looked at each other in disbelief. Welfare? What's a welfare? The boss has given us a salary, why would he give us benefits? Combined with a salary and benefits, the benefits are all taken up for us? Then what else does the boss earn? Listening to the whispers of the employees, Chen Mui was speechless. What a group of qualified leaks. B. 
Being used to being oppressed by the weird boss, they all started to castrate themselves and began the self-hypnosis of leaks. There's no welfare elsewhere, that's something else bizarre. In my midnight cafeteria, every single employee enjoys benefits, and as long as you work well, the benefits will get better and better in the future. Chen Mu said loudly. After saying that, Chen Mu asked Li Xiaoxiao to hand out the shopping cards to the employees. It wasn't until they got the shopping cards that the employees came back to their senses, each with a shocked expression on their faces. The boss had really given them welfare. And this shopping card, it was actually the famous Fallen Mall. If it wasn't for the boss's shopping card, the vast majority of these employees wouldn't have been qualified to enter the Fallen Mall to shop for the rest of their lives. The boss is actually treating us so well. For a while, the bizarre employees present were all in tears. They truly felt that Chen Mu was completely different from the other bizarre bosses. This was a good boss who treated them sincerely. Before the employees could recover from their shock, Chen Mu made another heavy announcement. Starting today, the working hours of the midnight cafeteria are revised. Every one of my weird employees should enjoy the right to rest. Starting today, the 24-hour workday is shortened to 20 hours. For the remaining 4 hours, you can do what you want. Rest, sleep, shop. For every shenanigans, a mere 20 hours of work per day is all that is required. Chen Mu's announcement was like a thunderbolt that exploded among the bizarre employees. Rest? What is rest? I've been working for 10 years and I've never had a break. Isn't it right to work 24 hours a day? Gosh, our boss is actually so nice. This is the first time I've heard that the boss actually gives weird vacations. There are 4 hours of vacation every day. So much time to spend, it's simply too much to spend. The creepy employees couldn't believe that their boss was actually treating them so well. Giving them work, paying them wages, giving them benefits, and giving them 4 hours of rest every day. The benefits all let them take over Ah, In the hearts of the employees, a feeling of guilt arose. We've taken all the benefits, what about the boss? The boss is so considerate of us, there's no one like him before or since. Looking at the entire bizarre world, there was no such good boss. Looking at the excited expressions of his employees, a trace of excitement also surged within Chen Mu's heart. What Chen Mu was excited about was he had found a bunch of leaks. Great leaks ah. The weirdness in the weird end world was simply the finest leaks. The oppression in the bizarre world was so severe that such bizarre employees were cultivated into extremely qualified leaks. Working 20 hours a day was, by all accounts, simply inhumane when placed in the human world. But for these bizarre, quality leaks, it was a heavenly gift. For the first time, they heard that they could still have rest time. Chen Mu could hardly imagine what kind of shock would be set off in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world when his own industry was done, promoting the 8-hour workday, double rest, providing insurance, and medical care. These originally ordinary benefits were unimaginably great in these oppressed weirdness. All of these benefits would become Chen Mu's sharp weapons, helping him sweep through the bizarre end world. Imagine there was a strong bazaar that worked 007 every day without any welfare benefits. At this time, as long as Chen Mu offered conditions such as 8-hour work, double rest, and so on, and then tripled his salary. As long as the bazaar's brain was not faulty, they would all throw themselves into Chen Mu's embrace, work for Chen Mu, and be grateful to Chen Mu. Chen Mu would have the most loyal and hardest working group of men in Creepy's post-apocalyptic life. It was simply a descending blow. Lure sometimes worked better and more effectively than coercion. If there were any other weirdnesses that wanted to eliminate Chen Mu, then a large number of Chen Mu's men would be the first to disagree and help Chen Mu fight the other weirdnesses to the end. Winning the Hampa. The main reason why Chen Mu didn't immediately promote the 8-hour work was because, with something like welfare, Chen Mu wanted to slowly boost it. If the benefits are given to the head in one go, what else can these weird employees look forward to in the future? First give a 20-hour working time, these employees are all excited like this. When it's 12 hours later, 8 hours later, plus a double holiday. Wouldn't these weird employees have to kneel down and call out to Chen Mu's father? Ahem, of course, there's another important reason. These weird leaks are too good to cut, Chen Mu also want to cut a cut. Such a high quality leak in front of, do not cut a cut words, simply heartless up. Chen Mu's career just started, very short of manpower, a time, and cannot recruit so many employees. So the first bitter a bitter these men, let these weird, 20 hours a day, to fill the manpower vacancy. After all, the development of Chen Mu's business came first. What Chen Mu wanted was to dominate the creepy end times, it wasn't like he was doing charity in the creepy end times. Boss Chen had allowed them to work only 16 hours a day with 8 hours of ample rest time, and they were already thankful for that. Amidst a loud cheer, Chen Mu all felt that he was really a great person and too good to his employees. Suddenly, I don't know which of the bizarre employees, too excited, directly shouted. Boss Chen, you are truly our living Yen Wang. This cry shouted out the hearts of the other bazaar. It was instantly echoed by a large group of people. Yes, Boss Chen, you are truly the king of living hell. King of living hell. 
In the mouths of the creeps, living yama was a complimentary word that was used to praise. When a creepy said to you that you were a living yama, please note that it wasn't scolding you, on the contrary, it was treating you as a savior. On the contrary, if a spooky says to you, you are truly my little angel, then don't be happy, for it is cursing you viciously. This was perhaps the cultural difference between creepy and humans in the creepy end times. Shenmu felt that the title of king of living hell sounded more or less hellish. Amidst a loud cheer from the employees, Chen Mu felt great. He shook the middle of his hand, and at this moment, he experienced for the first time, what the feeling of power was. Sure enough, the feeling of being in control of power and being surrounded by others made one drift away. With a single thought, Chen Mu was able to control the fate of his employees. When he was happy, the employees had a good day. When he was angry, the employees had to suffer. In the weird post-apocalyptic world, power is especially fascinating. With power in one's hand, one can not only keep oneself alive, but also control the fate of others. In his last life, Chen Mu had been in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world for five years, not to mention controlling other people's destinies, he couldn't even decide whether he could live or not. There were times when a powerful creepy was able to deprive Chen Mu of his life. Living a new life, this time, Chen Mu secretly resolved that he must grasp power, the supreme power in the bizarre end world. Soon after, Chen Mu announced the adjournment of the meeting, allowing the employees to work individually. The bizarre employees, one by one, returned to their posts and continued to start working. Although it was already midnight, the employees were still energized. This kind of efficiency in working would definitely fill the bosses of other bizarre scenes with envy if they saw it. As for Chen Mu himself, he was ready to get a good night's sleep. It was already 12 midnight, Chen Mu had labored all day and was in dire need of a nap to relax. Chen Mu chose to find a staff dormitory in the midnight cafeteria to make do for the night. To be honest, sleeping in a dormitory was still not as comfortable as a hotel, much less his own home. Chen Mu lay on the bed and began to ponder, should he buy a good house? The previous neighborhood was old and shabby, Chen Mu did not want to live there anymore. His status in the weird post-apocalyptic world would be getting higher and higher, so at least he had to find a big villa with a pool to live in. Where in the city could there be such a villa? Chen Mu thought about it, in the outskirts of the city, there was one such villa called Landscape Courtyard. It used to be the city's villa area, the residence of the city's richest tycoons. Before the bizarre end of the world, when Chen Mu went to school, he had often heard about the luxury of the Shan Shui courtyard. At that time, one of Chen Mu's new dreams was that one day, he would be able to live in the landscape courtyard and own a villa of his own. Obviously, for Chen Mu at that time, this was only a dream, and could even only stay in a dream forever. After the weird end of the world, something seemed to have gone wrong with the landscape courtyard, and it had been occupied by weirdness, becoming a weird scene. While everyone else was afraid of weirdness, Chen Mu was the opposite. Only the weirdness is afraid of Chen Mu. Chen Mu has hundreds of millions of plutonium in his hands, he is really not afraid of ordinary weirdness. Chen Mu pondered, he quite liked the environment there, if he bought that weird scene and made it his own property, he would also have a place to stay. Of course, at the moment, he still had to make a copy of the Dark Knight High School first, and pocket the Dark Knight High School, which was the most important thing. After waiting for a good night's sleep, tomorrow, he would first go to his class and familiarize himself with the situation in advance. If Chen Mu remembered correctly, the copy of Dark Knight High School should start tomorrow night. By the time tomorrow night rolled around, all the teachers and students in the entire school would have received a small blood-colored note and would have to participate in the Dark Knight High School's mission. At that time, it was Chen Mu's good opportunity to acquire the Dark Knight High School. Early the next morning, Chen Mu woke up refreshed. The pressure that had accumulated in the bizarre end times was all released overnight, making his entire body refreshed. All over his body, exhaustion was swept away. After getting dressed, Chen Mu was in the midnight cafeteria, having some breakfast. At Chen Mu's request, the dishes sold in the midnight cafeteria did not have any human components, and they were all replaced with the internal organs of various animals. After all, Chen Mu was a human, and to make human flesh food in his own industry, Chen Mu would more or less feel diaphoretic. Moreover, for the bazaar, human meat was not a favorite food. Only those low-grade bazaar that couldn't afford other meat would use human meat to eat. Midnight Cafeteria was to hit the high end and become the best hotel in the bazaar end world, not selling human meat before it was too late would be beneficial to the cafeteria's subsequent development. With all the factors, human meat was no longer sold in the midnight canteen. Therefore, Chen Mu was very relieved to eat in the cafeteria in the morning, not afraid of being diaphragmatized. Breakfast was buns, donuts, and soy milk, all carefully made by the back kitchen according to Chen Mu's tastes. After eating breakfast, Chen Mu left the midnight cafeteria and walked towards the teaching building. Returning to the long-lost campus, Chen Mu felt a trace of tranquility and relaxation. It was the time for morning study, and the playground was empty of students. The students were all in the teaching building, and the sound of reading aloud came from the classrooms. Cherish the last good moments. 
Tonight when the Dark Knight High School replica opens, the school will turn into a hell on earth. Shen Mu couldn't help but sigh with emotion. It was at this moment that on the other side of the playground, a middle-aged man with a bald head and a big belly walked over. This man was the director of instruction, and as soon as he saw Chen Mu wandering around the playground, he became enraged and yelled at Chen Mu. That student. You come over here. What class are you in? I'm going to write your name down. However, as Chen Mu got closer and closer, he got a good look at Chen Mu's face. This face is a bit familiar ah, this student's name, seems to be. Chen Mu? Holy shit. The director of instruction was taken aback. In the past two days, the rumors about Chen Mu in the school got stronger and stronger. Like Chen Mu wasn't afraid to be weird. He bought the midnight cafeteria. Scared a creepy to death. The head teacher had heard many of these rumors. Everyone in the school knew that Chen Mu was not an ordinary person. The director of instruction had originally thought of climbing into a relationship with Chen Mu or something. After all, the weird end of the world was getting more and more dangerous, and a lot of people smelled a crisis. Being able to make friends with someone like Chen Mu was the same as saying that he had found himself a talisman in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world. Not to mention the head teacher, even the principal of the school wanted to get close to Chen Mu. However, Chen Mu has not been back to school, the phone cannot be reached, want to climb the relationship have no doorway. This is not, Chen Mu happened to go back to school, actually let himself meet. When I think of just now, I yelled at Chen Mu, the director of teaching is a face of fear. If Chen Mu held a grudge and wanted to kill himself, it wouldn't be easy. Thinking of this, the director of teaching quickly changed into a smile and bent over with a pleasing face. Aya, isn't this student Chen Mu? Hello hello hello, disrespectful disrespectful disrespectful. I'm the senior's director of instruction, Zhang Changzhou, you can just call me little Jiang. Chen student ah, if you have any difficulties in school, such as which classmate bullies you, which teacher treats you badly ah, you can just tell me, I will definitely solve it for you. Looking at the fawning director of instruction, Chen Mu was somewhat speechless. He had only left for a day, and the director of instruction had begun to lick himself on his knees? One second he was yelling at himself, and the next second he was on a kneeling mode, really putting it in and out. Okay, Director Jiang. You go and get busy. I'll just turn around. Hey, good Lu. You slowly turn around. What do you need? Directly go to my office and talk to me. The director of instruction had a cordial face and watched Chen Mu walk away. Soon, Chen Mu arrived at his class. Senior Class 27. This morning was the language morning reading, the language teacher and homeroom teacher, Ms. Song, was grading papers on the podium, and the classroom was filled with the sound of books being read. As soon as Chen Mu entered the classroom, the sound of reading in the classroom instantly quieted down. All the students put down their books and looked at Chen Mu with a hint of awe in their eyes. Even teacher Song on the podium actually revealed a smile when she saw Chen Mu arrive. Outrageous! Chen Mu was greatly shocked. One had to know that Chen Mu had often been late before. Every time Chen Mu was late, as long as he met Mr. Song, he would definitely be scolded and punished by standing for another hour. But today, Chen Mu was equally late, and not only did Mr. Song not scold him, he was instead full of smiles. Mr. Chen is here, did you have breakfast? If you haven't, teacher will buy some for you. Teacher Song, who was mean, asked Chen Mu with concern. It's fine, it's fine, I've eaten. Chen Mu waved his hand repeatedly, teacher Song's attentiveness made Chen Mu a bit uncomfortable. Regarding Chen Mu's deeds, Teacher Song had heard about it long ago. In fact, earlier on, with regards to the rumors of the bizarre end times, Teacher Song was never going to believe it. She didn't believe in any bullshit end times and felt that everything was normal. However, as time passed, more and more deaths appeared, gradually filling her heart with fear. In particular, the night before last, a few students in her own class actually received small bloody notes to participate in the bizarre mission of the Midnight Cafeteria. At that moment, and this... Song's worldview collapsed. It turned out that the bizarre end times had really come. And there was no way to avoid it. No one knew which day the little bloody note would come to their head. When she heard about Chen Mu's deeds, she was greatly shocked. She couldn't imagine that there was actually someone so powerful. As a result, Chen Mu had jumped from a poor student who was not good at studying to a strong person in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world in her mind. When she saw Chen Mu again, like the head teacher, all she thought about was how to get on good terms with Chen Mu. Not only her, but the rest of the students, when they saw Chen Mu again, their eyes were filled with a strong sense of awe. Especially those students who were not on good terms and who looked down on Chen Mu. They could not wait to put their tails between their legs for fear that Chen Mu would find them in trouble. However, Chen Mu wasn't that bored, the previous ones were just a little friction between classmates. As long as they didn't mess with themselves again, Chen Mu didn't have that kind of effort to find them trouble. Throughout the day, Chen Mu's side was surrounded by a large group of classmates. Chen Mu, what happened the night before yesterday, is it true? I heard them say that you scared all those creeps half to death. More than that, 
I also heard that Chen Mu directly bought the Midnight Cafeteria. Geez, this is too awesome. Chen Mu's status in the class instantly became a transcendent existence. Especially at noon, the principal and a large group of teachers, specially carrying gifts, came to visit Chen Mu in the classroom. The principal carrying gifts and coming to see the students? Outrageous. In all the years of the entire school, Chen Mu was the first student to receive this kind of treatment. Such an unbelievable move made Chen Mu a little shocked. As time passed, night fell. Throughout the day, Chen Mu couldn't even count how many classmates, teachers, and leaders had come to his place to mix their faces. Even at dinner time, there were girls who came over and hinted to Chen Mu that they could go home with Chen Mu tonight. There were two girls who were still very pretty and were the class flower of the class, and under the pressure of the bizarre end of the world, they both began to throw themselves at Chen Mu. However, Chen Mu was temporarily unavailable. According to Chen Mu's experience in his previous life, the Dark Knight High School replica was going to start at 8.30 tonight. All the students in the entire school had to participate in the bizarre quest. 7 o'clock in the evening. 7.30. 8 o'clock. As the time gradually approached, Chen Mu was keenly aware that in the air, a faint smell of blood began to permeate. The sky outside the classroom became dark. The evening wind whimpered, it was the height of summer, but the temperature of the air had lowered quite a bit. Some of the students wearing short sleeves were shivering from the cold. 8.30 at night. The Dark Knight High School replica started. At the same time, all the students received a small blood-colored note. Spooky mission, deadly exam. Task description, the originally tranquil school suddenly turned into the Dark Knight High School. The students here need to take a fatal exam. Please remember, the first law of survival of the Dark Knight High School passed the examination. Only the top students who pass the exam are qualified to live. Mission requirement. The fatal exam will begin at 9 o'clock. Before 9 o'clock at night, all the candidates who received the small blood-colored note need to arrive at the examination hall on time. Everyone's exam room is their own classroom, sitting in their own seat, waiting for the exam to begin. If you fail to arrive at the examination center on time, you will be considered to have failed the examination and will be deprived of your life. Seeing the small blood-colored note in their hands, all of the students, all of them, changed their faces drastically. Oh my god, this is a bizarre mission. I'm too unlucky to have been chosen by the weird mission. MD, I've also been chosen. You've all been selected? I also received the little note. I heard that everyone from other classes will be taking the fatal exam as well. Unsurprisingly, all the students in the entire school are in for a rude awakening this time. God, save us, I don't want to die yet. Don't look for God, Chen Mu is God. It's better to let God save you than to let Chen Mu save you. The classroom was in an uproar, and the entire school building was noisy. In the corridor outside the classroom, students crying in pain could be seen from time to time. Obviously, being selected by the Bizarre Quest had caused many students to psychologically break down. How could they have never imagined that the Bizarre End Times would actually come so quickly? They had thought that they would be able to watch the fire from the other side of the river, watching others do the Bizarre Quests, and that they would be spared. However, they had forgotten that this was the End Times. In the End Times, no one could survive alone. Death, perhaps, came to the door in the next second. Some students played it smart and chose to take a leave of absence from home after learning about the midnight cafeteria mission yesterday, thinking that by leaving the school, they could avoid being selected by the bizarre mission. For example, in a residential neighborhood, in the bedroom, a girl was lying on the bed, looking at the small blood-colored note in her hand, frozen in place with fear. A moment later, she finally cried out, Dad, I've been chosen by the weird mission. Save me, I don't want to die. This girl was one of the students who had taken a leave of absence from home. She, like Chen Mu's crowd, had received an invitation to the fatal exam at 8.30. Seeing the small note in her hand, her parents were also shocked. Quickly, quickly, I'll go down and drive, you change your clothes, you have to be at the school by 9. If you don't get there before it's too late, make it quick. A few minutes later, the parents panicked and drove their private cars, taking their children with them, rushing towards the school. At the school's main entrance, there were dozens of private cars parked, as well as various motorcycle battery cars. Without exception, these were all sending children back to school. Chen Mu stood in the back row of the classroom, and through the window, he saw the panicked parents at the school gate. Alas, weird end times, how can I escape? It's either life or death. Chen Mu couldn't help but sigh. Anyone who wanted to escape the bizarre mission was instead the one who died the fastest. Only by facing the bizarre mission head-on would it be possible to live. This deadly exam is a challenge for me. In Chen Mu's memory, he had once participated in this bizarre mission. Only, that time, he had failed. At that time, he, like these students, was at a loss for words and panic. Facing the tricky and deadly exam, Chen Mu did not succeed in finding a way to live, or rather, he and his classmates at that time, all fell into a dead end. The so-called dead end path, contrary to the life path, was the most treacherous path in the tricky mission. 
Once one went on the dead end path, then one would get the worst results. At that time, Chen Mu's crowd, indeed, got the worst result. Chen Mu only remembered that after the fatal exam ended, the entire classroom became a sea of bright red. Everywhere were broken limbs, spurting blood. There were a few classmates that managed to survive, but they were also scared into psychosis. Chen Mu was also terrified at that time, and he almost died here. It could be said that it was purely a fluke that he survived. Now, the fatal exam appeared in front of Chen Mu once again. And the Chen Mu of today had long ceased to be the same person he was back then. After five years of training in the bizarre end times, Chen Mu was already incomparably mature, and the gap between him and the person he was at that time was already sky high. Five years ago, I failed. Five years later, this time, I must find a way to live. Chen Mu secretly resolved that he must see the breaks in the rules in this fatal exam. This was a challenge for him. Time passed by, and most of those students who had left the school rushed back to their respective classrooms within 20 minutes. There were two students who had directly taken an airplane yesterday and left the city. At this moment, with 30 minutes to spare, they would not be able to rush back to the school no matter what. What greeted them could only be the fate of death. 9 o'clock at night. A dull ringing bell echoed within the school, which was the originally a sound that excited the students, but at this moment, it became a life-inducing demon. All the students sat in their seats, waiting for the exams to come. They had taken countless exams before, but there was no exam that scared them more than this one. From the school's loudspeaker came the bell for the exam. As the bell rang, a series of high-heeled shoes sounded in the corridor outside the classroom. It was conceivable that this was the invigilator approaching. Knock knock knock. Three knocks rang out, and the door of the classroom was pushed open from outside. A woman in uniform, holding a pile of test papers in her arms, walked in. Hello everyone, I am your invigilator. Lethal examination, now begins. As the female teacher announced that the exam would begin, the students in the class, one by one, held their breath nervously. The female teacher stepped up to the podium and unwrapped the stack of test papers she was holding, dividing them into portions. I am a strict teacher, and in my exams, anyone who breaks the rules of exam proctoring will be put to death. The rules for invigilating exams are as follows. 1. No one is allowed to look at the contents of another person's exam paper, and if you divulge the contents of the exam paper, then you will be executed. 2. No one may leave the classroom during the examination. 3. No one may harm the invigilator. These are all the rules of the exam, let me distribute the test papers. The students present were all battle-tested in exams, and had taken a thousand exams from childhood to adulthood, not 800. Therefore, after listening to the rules of the exam, some keen students immediately realized that the invigilator had left out the most crucial one, which was also the basis of all exams. No cheating. The four words no cheating contain too much content. For example, no talking to each other, no cell phones, no leaving your position. In other words, these are all things that candidates are allowed to do in the rules of a lethal exam. Candidates are able to talk to each other, use cell phones, and leave their seats. Wouldn't this be an indulgence in cheating? No, there wouldn't be such an obvious loophole in the rules. Unless, the invigilator thinks that even if students are able to talk to each other, use cell phones, and leave their seats, the students can't cheat. Being able to do all of that and still not being able to cheat, the students hadn't encountered an exam like this since they were young. Vaguely, many students could feel that this fatal exam, surely hidden murder. The invigilator took the test papers and began to distribute them one student at a time. Those students who got the test papers were all dumbfounded when they saw the content on the test papers. This wasn't the exam they had encountered before. What shocked them even more was that when the invigilator was handing out the test papers, inside the test papers, there was actually a sharp dagger. Every candidate was given a test paper and a sharp dagger. Soon, the test papers were handed out to Chen Mu. The invigilator looked at Chen Mu and placed the test paper on Chen Mu's desk, giving him a dagger as well. Picking up the test paper, Chen Mu quickly scanned it. Sure enough, the content hadn't changed, it was the same as the one he had gotten in his previous life. Fatal exam paper. Candidate's class, senior class 27. Candidate's name, Chen Mu. Dear candidate, welcome to the fatal exam. Please familiarize yourself with the contents of this paper as you take the fatal exam. Have you noticed that your classmates, it seems, have become not quite the same as before? Yes, in your class, a creepy has been mixed in. It is now lurking within the examination room, silently watching you. Exam content, please find out this creepy and kill it within two hours to be successful in the exam. If you do not find and kill the creepy, then you are considered to have failed the exam. At the end of the exam time, half of the surviving students in the class will die at random. It is important for you to read the following rules in detail when you start the test. Rule 1. Creepy will not attack you when it is not harmed. When spooky is harmed, it will attack you. Rule number 2. All students are suppressed in strength during the fatal exam. 
When Creepy attacks you, no one can kill Creepy. Rule 3, the dagger in your hand, thrusting it into Creepy's body, will fatally injure Creepy. Rule number 4, this rule is personal to you, you must yell out at the start of the test 1 hour and 30 minutes in. You may not answer after that, no matter if anyone asks you why. Rule 5, when you think you have found the answer, you can vote as a class whether to hand in the paper. After the vote is approved, submit the paper to the invigilator, who will help you decide whether it is right or wrong. If you answer incorrectly, you are considered to have failed the exam. Rule 6, when the number of people remaining in the class is less than or equal to half, the exam is considered passed and the exam ends automatically. Congratulations, you can go home now. I'll tell you how to tell a creepy, usually, a creepy will have the following characteristics. 1. Creepy is lazy, and creepy usually won't move until you notice it. 2. Creepy will occasionally make strange noises, pay attention to look for strange noises around you and you'll spot the creepy. 3. Creepy has two arms and legs, just like humans. From the outside, it's hard to spot who the creepy is. For a very practical trick to judge the spooky, use your dagger and stab the body of the spooky. If it is a spooky, then the spooky will emit black smoke. These, then, were all that was on the exam paper. This was an unusual exam. After reading the contents of the test paper, the eyes of the students in the class revealed shock and incredulity. Someone in the class had become creepy? Who was creepy? As long as the creepy was identified, the exam would be passed. At once, the students all looked left and right at each other wanting to see the foreign field in each other's eyes. However, no one dared to speak, everyone was making eye contact. Because of the past exam discipline that was at play, although it was said that talking was not prohibited, no one dared to be the first to try. After all, talking during an exam was a violation of exam discipline. Looking at one of the rules on the test paper, Chen Mu began to fall into thought. The rules this time were much more complicated than even before. If the few rules that were judged weird were counted, then the rules had reached as many as 10. This was a sign that the difficulty of the task had increased. The mission difficulty of the fatal examination was higher than the Midnight Cafeteria and the Misty Museum. It could also be seen from the scale of the mission that there were too many, too many people involved in this fatal exam. If one could not find out the correct way to live, then the consequences would be unimaginable. In Chen Mu's mind, he recalled back to the beginning, when the fatal exam in his previous life was a bloodbath. In the entire high school, there wasn't a single class that managed to find a way to live. The price was naturally quite tragic. After the fatal exam, the entire Dark Knight High School had turned into a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood. That horrifying sight, no one dared to imagine. Even after five years of practicing in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, Chen Wu still felt his heart palpitating every time he recalled that moment. Then, let's take the exam seriously now and try to find a way to survive. Chen Wu looked at the rules in the exam paper and began his reasoning. Soon, from rules 1, 2, and 3, Chen Wu began to refine his conclusions. Rules 1, 2, and 3, summarized, were nothing more than saying that. Creepy was unable to harm people until it was attacked. Once detected, the creepy would start slaughtering, and no one would be able to fend off the creepy, not even a dagger could harm the creepy. It is natural, then, to draw one conclusion. After discovering the creepy, one must be quick and precise, killing the creepy with a single slash, without giving the creepy a chance to counterattack. Once the creepy counterattacked, everyone would have to die. A seemingly ordinary conclusion but Chen Mu could feel the killing opportunity behind it. This killing opportunity could only be experienced when combined with the fourth rule of judging the bizarre. Method of judging creepy stab the dagger into the creepy body to see if black smoke comes out. Okay, so if right now, I suspect a person to be spooky, then what should I do? Simple, stick the dagger into his body. But I can't stick it into a limb or gently cut the skin to make a judgment. Because then, if he was really creepy, after creepy was injured, the slaughter would begin and no one would be able to fend off creepy's attacks so the answer would be obvious. If I guessed that someone was creepy, then the best thing I could do was to use a dagger and stab him hard in the skull. One blow would kill. If that person isn't creepy, there's no doubt that person is dead. Stabbed in the skull with a dagger, there's no chance of survival. Cold sweat broke out on the backs of the students who read these rules. The rules of the fatal exam were guiding the participants to kill. This was one of the hidden killing opportunities of the fatal exam. Not only that, the fatal exam had rules that were also hinting at death and killing. Another rule that hints at killing is rule number 6 of the exam rules. When the number of people remaining in the class is less than or equal to half of the class, the exam is considered to have been passed and the exam is automatically ended. Why is the class size less than half? There were two possibilities. One was that Creepy had been attacked and started slaughtering the candidates. Another is that the candidates are killing each other. Yes, it is possible for candidates to kill each other. This was because Chen Mu had encountered this situation in the fatal exam in his previous life. When the exam was about to end, if no shenanigans had been found, 
then under extreme pressure, some candidates would fall into madness. If they failed the exam, it was possible that half of them would die randomly, possibly themselves. But if the class is left at half the size according to rule number 6, then the exam will pass and one will not die. One is out of one's control and one is in one's control. Under the threat of death, someone would naturally choose the latter. Thus, the planned killing began. This was the most terrifying scene in the fatal exam. The various rules of the fatal exam were all challenges to the existing order. In Chen Mu's memory, that is, after the fatal exam, when everyone realized that the existing order could not protect themselves, the order began to collapse rapidly, and the bizarre end of the world really came. At this time, in one of the classes downstairs, the candidates couldn't sit still and began to search for answers. This exam should be able to talk, right? Ken ah, don't you just talk, the invigilator didn't even care about you. Brothers, let's think of a way to find the mole quickly. Right, we are all classmates, no one wants to die. Whoever turns out to be creepy, hurry up and come forward, for the sake of your classmates, don't make things difficult for everyone. Are you stupid? How can they come forward if they've all become creepy? It's got to be us to find it out. How can we find it? There are so many people, didn't it all say in the test paper that you can't tell the difference from the outside, how can we find it? Very quickly, the classroom was a mess, and the candidates were talking and discussing. Show me your paper. You want to die? Can't look at it. It's against the rules. You want to die I don't want to die. Look at that boy, he hasn't moved from his seat. I don't know who shouted out, and the gazes of everyone in the class all looked towards that boy. As expected, that boy was sitting in his seat, his eyes looking ahead, like a wooden man, not moving at all. Do you guys remember what the test paper said? Creepy is lazy, and creepy usually doesn't move until you spot creepy. Well then the answer is obvious, he turned into creepy. Yes, he didn't move a muscle, that's him. Teacher, we found creepy. Great, this fatal exam is too easy. These rules are so bluff, they scared me half to death. I didn't realize the answers were so simple. Isn't this just like some of the finale questions, it looks hard but actually reveals itself once you do it. The candidates all got excited, and there were two boys with a lot of strength, holding daggers and walking towards the boy who didn't move at all. Stick it in. Stick it in. Quickly stick the dagger in. Wang is the strongest, let Wang do it. First time killing creepy, a bit nervous. In the midst of a loud cheer from the surrounding, brother Wang gathered his courage and plunged the dagger into the boy's head. However, the next scene left everyone dumbfounded. Instead of black smoke appearing as the dagger plunged into the skull, bright red blood gushed out. The cheers came to an abrupt end, and the entire classroom was instantly quiet. All the students stared wide-eyed, their eyes filled with fear and incredulity. Ah! Murder! Someone died dash. That's not right, if he's not spooky, why has he not been moving? Yeah, he's not talking either. When Wang walked up to him with the dagger, he didn't speak either. How could a normal person react like this? No, look at his test paper. This boy was already dead, and his test paper was being looked over by the surrounding students, and a student pointed at his test paper and shouted. Two students, who were bold enough to do so, came over and looked through the slain boy's test paper. One of them shouted. There's a problem with his rule number four. Personal rule, when the exam starts, you must remain motionless for half an hour. During that time, no matter what anyone says or does to you, you must not respond in any way, or you will be put to death. Hearing this, the class fell silent once again. They finally realized why, even with the dagger in hand, the boy who was killed was as unresponsive as bizarre. It was because the rule stated that he couldn't have any response. At this moment, these candidates finally realized the cruelty and cunning of the fatal exam. A rule, like an invisible shackle, was placed on everyone. If one was not careful, one would die and live to kill other candidates by mistake. Terror. Thrill. Despair. All sorts of emotions that began to spread through the class. Fear mixed with the smell of blood, some of the candidates couldn't stand the immense pressure and had begun to whimper and cry. They finally understood the difficulty of finding a way to live amongst the bizarre quests. In a rule, the path to life was tightly concealed. Obviously, they had misjudged the path to life. Such a scene was similarly staged in many classes. With less than 20 minutes having passed in the exam alone, there were already quite a few candidates who had been killed. At the same time, such a situation also occurred in Chen Mu's class. There was a candidate who did not move at all, drawing the attention of the others. There was even someone who was already holding a dagger and was eager to try. There's no need to try. He's not spooky. Chen Mu spoke up. He's just bound by the fourth rule and can't speak. Chen Mu said this because in his previous life, candidates had done the same thing, stabbing their daggers and only to realize that they had killed the wrong person. Some of the candidates would be skeptical after hearing Chen Mu's words. However, when they thought of how powerful Chen Mu was, and then thought about Chen Mu's words, they felt that it made sense, so they stopped and went on with it. 
As expected, after another 10 minutes, as soon as the fourth rule's bindings ended, that candidate hurriedly shouted, I'm not weird. I can speak now. Chen Mu, thank you for saving me. Chen Mu waved his hand, indicating that it was no big deal. The rest of the students looked at Chen Mu with more than a trace of respect and shock. Some of the students were originally skeptical, thinking that Chen Mu's level was blown out of proportion. However, after seeing this scene, they all changed their views as well, admiring Chen Mu more and more. It seemed that Chen Mu was indeed capable. Chen Mu's expression, however, did not relax to any extent. This was because up until now, Chen Mu hadn't found a way to survive for the time being either. Half an hour of the exam had already passed, and a quarter of the time had passed. Restlessness and uneasiness began to permeate the air. At least a third of the classes in the entire Dark Knight High School had already seen blood. Under the smell of blood and the pressure of the deadly exam, many candidates' hearts had already seen subtle changes, and the seeds of killing had already begun to be planted. Half an hour. 40 minutes. 50 minutes. Seeing that the examination time was about to pass halfway, there was not a single class in the entire Dark Knight High School that had managed to find the hidden shenanigans. The class that Chen Mu was in was quite good, with Chen Mu's prestige added, the class was quite calm. The students were talking and discussing, and although there was a lot of commotion, there were no deaths or injuries yet. The other classes were not so lucky. Next door to Chen Mu's class, in less than an hour of exam time, four candidates had already died in the class. Killing was a Pandora's box, once it was opened, then it could not be stopped. The students in this class, after killing the first person, were unable to stop the killing. They used what seemed to be a very democratic approach to killing. After discovering a suspect, all the students in the class, take a vote. As soon as the votes were half, the person was killed to see if he was creepy. Everyone doesn't want to die themselves, they want to find creepy quickly. So every vote is basically 90% in favor. In this way, it's practically a mob dictatorship. Everyone was at risk. Kill him. He hasn't been talking, so it must be creepy alright. Yes, I'm his friend, his personality isn't usually like this, he must be possessed by creepy. Everyone start voting, raise your hands if you're in favor. Wow. A large number of hands went up, and there was no doubt that more than half of the votes were in favor. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. The people in the class, in a frenzy of shouting, had gone nearly insane. They used this madness to vent their inner fear and despair. Finally, after killing another boy, a boy wearing glasses stood up. He was the school bully in the class, and he was usually at the top of his academic performance. Only the school bully stood up and said in a calm tone, All students, be quiet. Listen to me. I've found the creepy. With these words, the frantic classroom suddenly quieted down, and everyone's eyes looked towards the school bully. You found creepy? Who is creepy? Quickly say. You're the best student, the smartest in our class, what you say must be fine. Under the urging of the surrounding students, the school teacher said, The creepy hidden in the classroom is actually right in front of each of our eyes. She's sitting right there for everyone to see. Our invigilator, you are the spooky hidden in the class. The spooky we're looking for is you. The students around them looked at each other in disbelief. School bully, what nonsense are you talking about? Didn't it all say in the rules that the invigilator is the creepy ah? Yeah, we all know that the invigilator is creepy. The schoolteacher smiled slightly, revealing an enigmatic smile and said with confidence, Yes, the truth is often that simple. People think about it so much that they forget that the truth is sometimes right in front of them. The rules just say that we have a creepy in the classroom. But do the rules state that the creepy isn't the invigilator? It doesn't say that. The rules don't even say who the creepy is. We have a creepy in the classroom and the proctor is a creepy. So it's only natural to come to a conclusion. The creepy that the exam rules have us looking for is the invigilator. The class exploded after the schoolteacher's chesty comment. Geez, no way, it's actually that simple? How could it be? How could a weird quest be so simple? But if you think about what the schoolteacher said, it seems a bit reasonable. It's not like it says in the rules that the creepy we're told to find isn't the invigilator. I'll go. It still makes sense. The schoolteacher added, that's the sinister part of the rules. At the very beginning of the rules, we were told that the invigilator was creepy. Therefore, everyone's thinking is biased thinking that the shenanigans that we are told to find in the exam are the ones that we have to go through a lot of trouble to find, and that it can't be as simple as the invigilator. If the answer is the invigilator, then wouldn't the answer be given to us right at the beginning of the paper? We have all been taking exams for more than 10 years, our minds are ossified, and we subconsciously think, how can there be such a simple question paper? So, all of us, falling into the trap of thinking, ignore the simplest answer. Not only that, but I was able to find evidence to support me. Let's look at number 3 of the creepy traits. Creepy has 4 arms and legs, just like humans. When everyone saw this article, they subconsciously assumed that Creepy became like his classmates. 
That's why everyone was watching their classmates during this hour. However, did it ever occur to anyone that this statement was actually implying that? Creepy was the invigilator. The invigilator had four arms and legs, just like everyone else. This just proves that the invigilator is the creepy we're looking for. After an impassioned speech, the entire class roared once again. Holy shit. What the schoolteacher said makes so much sense. Sure enough, he's a smart guy, he found the truth at a glance. Great, we can all survive. Hurry. We found the answer. Turn in your papers. Turn in your papers. Turn in your papers. Under the shadow of death, the candidates were already impatient to escape. After hearing the answer given by the schoolteacher, all the candidates felt that it made sense and they couldn't wait to hand in their papers. The invigilator sitting on the podium looked at the excited students in the class and revealed a wry smile. However, none of the excited students, including the schoolteacher, noticed the smile. Teacher, we're turning in our papers. Are you guys sure about handing in your papers? The invigilator asked. Sure. Almost all the students, all shouted in unison. Good, turn in your papers. The invigilator revealed a wry smile, after I collect the papers, I will announce the answers, and you will know if you got it right. At the same time, Chen Mu was in his class. A student flashed brightly and suddenly shouted. I know. The invigilator is the creepy we're looking for. As a matter of fact, after an hour of acclimatization, the brains of quite a few students had begun to think quickly. There were not a few such students who, like the schoolteacher, came to the conclusion that the invigilator was the weirdness to be found. Chen Mu looked at the excited student, coldly shook his head and said, No, your answer is wrong. Why? That student was a bit unconvinced. He he, believe me, the person who submitted this answer can already wait for the deathly fate of failing the exam. Chen Mu said. As soon as the words fell, a large chorus of shrieks and screams came from the class next door where the schoolteacher was. These screams and shrieks were not cheers. Rather, they were mixed with fear and despair. Just half a minute ago, the invigilator finished collecting the test papers. Every candidate had joy on their faces, waiting to go home after the exam. The exam is finally over, finally I can go home. Yeah, thanks to the school bully this time. It's still the school bully who is bullish, no matter what the exam is, it's always so hanging. In the past, when I took the exam, I couldn't copy the school bully. I didn't expect to get a ride this time, and hoard out the school bully's answers for nothing. Ha, huh, I guess our class is the first one to finish answering. Isn't there Chen Mu in the next class, why haven't they finished answering? We've all handed in our papers. In my opinion, Chen Mu is just being blown up. If you really want a bullish character, you still have to look at our school bully. That's right, Chen Mu is nothing, not as powerful as our school bully at all. Amidst the cheers of the crowd of students, the school hegemon also raised the corners of his mouth, reveling in the bragging of his classmates. However, just at this moment, the, the invigilator's face suddenly turned icy cold. I announce that your exam answers. Wrong. The moment these words came out, the candidates in the entire classroom, in an instant, all quieted down. All of the candidates looked towards the podium incredulously. They thought they had heard wrong. Wrong answers? How could that be possible? How could the answer be wrong? All the candidates, half of them died randomly. The exam is over, candidates who are alive, congratulations, you can go home. The invigilator coldly threw out these words, like a death sentence. In an instant, half of the candidates in the classroom had thin red lines appear on their bodies. The red lines grew longer and longer, and in the midst of the red lines, a large swath of blood spurted out. Their bodies, cracked open. Accompanied by a cry of shock and despair, those candidates who had managed to survive, seeing such a horrifying scene, all fled through the door in fear. They were lucky to have survived. But the price was that half of the candidates died. For these candidates who survived, the scene they saw was definitely a lifetime of psychological shadows. There were even a few candidates that were paralyzed with fear on the spot. Two of the candidates, seeing their former classmates, cracked into pieces in front of them, blood spurting out, had been scared into a nervous wreck, sitting on the ground and babbling. Those candidates who rushed out of the classroom, shouted in fear and despair in the corridor. Not the answer. The invigilator is not the answer. This cry of despair echoed throughout the entire school building. In addition to this class, there were at least two other classes that had failed the exam for the same reason. This cry of misery and alarm similarly reached Chen Mu's class. Upon hearing that cry, the invigilator wasn't the answer. The students in Chen Mu's class all looked at Chen Mu with shocked faces. The student who was still talking tough was so shocked that he was unable to speak. If it wasn't for Chen Mu's veto, many of the students in the class really had the intention of voting to hand in their papers. If they turned in their papers, then the consequences would be unimaginable. It could be said that Chen Mu had saved their lives. Sure enough, Ginger was still old and hot, Chen Mu was truly unfathomable. Chen Mu, how did you know that the invigilator wasn't the answer? One student couldn't help but ask. This was also the doubt of the other students in the class. 
It's simple, the rules conflict. The rules say that the invigilator is not to be harmed, no matter what. But then the later rule says that in order to identify whether or not it's a creepy, you need to scratch the creepy with a dagger. These two rules, then, conflict. If I suspect the invigilator is creepy, and I want to identify him, then I need to scratch him with a dagger. But the invigilator can't be harmed. So there would be no way for me to prove whether the invigilator is creepy or not. The only way to prove it is to vote to hand in the papers. Once you vote to hand in your papers, you're gambling with your life. As far as I know, this is not in line with the rules of the creepy quest. The rules of the spooky quests, although sometimes difficult, there will be wrong rules, misleading rules, but you should remember one thing. There must be a hidden life path in the rules. The so-called life path is the sure way to survive. By discovering this life path, I am 100% sure that I can survive. Instead of gambling on whether or not I'll survive. If there is no way to verify a path, then it must be a false path. A true life path must mean something else. What Chen Mu said was the experience he had accumulated in the five years of his bizarre end world. This answer from the invigilator was a typical unprovable one, which was an obvious pseudo-life path. The reason why it was called a pseudo-life path was because it wasn't really a life path, it was a dead-end path disguised as a life path. Generally speaking, such pseudo-life paths were extremely treacherous. It was usually a path of certain death. Only experienced people like Chen Mu could see through it at a glance. People like the schoolmasters could easily walk into a trap and be doomed. After hearing Chen Mu's explanation, the students in the class were all shocked. This was the first time they had heard of the concept of pseudo-life path. Chen Mu is so awesome, he actually knows so much. If it wasn't for Chen Mu, we would have died this time. Chen Mu is the thigh of our class, hold on tightly to the thigh. I declare that I am Chen Mu's most loyal supporter. Everything he says is right. The invigilator on the podium, after listening to Chen Mu's explanation, also cast a surprised look at Chen Mu. She hadn't expected that Chen Mu would look at the issue and actually be so thorough, seeing the pseudo-life path. This was a truly intelligent person. Time passed minute by minute, and after the pseudo Xinglu, the situation was back in a stalemate. In the other classes, the killing had already entered white heat. As Chen Mu had predicted, in the midst of one killing, the psychology of many students had become distorted. In order to survive, in order to be able to finish the exam as soon as possible, some people finally started to show their daggers to their classmates. Do you guys want to be randomly selected? If you don't want to, I have a method that will allow you guys to live. In a certain class, a strong student said to the dozen or so students around him, What method? You discovered the way to live? No, I didn't discover a way to live by the rules, but I did discover another way to live. He took his dagger and aimed it at another group of students. As long as we kill them and the remaining number is less than half, then the few of us, we will all be able to live. Hearing such cruel words, the few students around them, all showed hesitation and difficulty. No, this is too cruel, I can't do it. A student dropped the dagger and crouched down, covering his face and crying. Do you guys have any humanity left? We're all classmates. Humanity? What is that thing that can help us survive? Finally, the situation was completely out of control. Order, collapsed. In a chaotic disorder, the killing began. Once order went out of control, people behaved far more crazily than one could imagine. After only 10 minutes had passed, another class passed the exam. The method by which this class passed the exam was rule 6. When the number of people remaining in the class is less than or equal to half of the class, it is considered to have passed the exam and the exam is automatically ended. Congratulations, you can go home now. Upon seeing those students, covered in blood, leaving from the corridor with their school bags on their backs, the students in the other classes immediately understood what had happened. Holy shit. Look at them. They can actually go back. They passed the exam? Their bodies are covered in blood. If I'm not wrong, they killed someone. You mean, they killed half of their classmates and passed the exam? My god, demons. They're simply evil. After witnessing this tragedy, the students from the other classes were all stunned. Perhaps it was only at this point that they would wake up. It was now the end times. The bizarre end times. The world they were familiar with had long since collapsed step by step, and they had already fallen into the hell of the bizarre post-apocalyptic world. In the entire Dark Knight High School, only Chen Mu's class, which was the best at keeping order, did not have any dead people. In the other classes, the least, two people had died. Not only that, as the exam time passed, the time to hand in the papers was gradually coming. Finally, when there was still half an hour left to hand in the papers, among the students who were slow to find the answers, some people couldn't withstand the huge psychological pressure and chose to commit suicide. ka -ching. The sound of glass breaking. Boom. The sound of a heavy object crashing to the ground. In just five minutes, there were three students who chose to break the window and jump to their deaths. This series of extreme actions, once again in the teaching building, caused a commotion. 
The students in the other classes, under a series of pressure, finally broke down completely. The bottom line of humanity began to be trampled on recklessly. We are all equal, but there are those who are more equal than others. If you want to be the more equal ones, pick up a knife with me and kill the others in exchange for our chance to survive. In one class, someone picked up a dagger and shouted at his followers. We want to survive. We will survive. Then, they took their daggers and swung them at their former classmates. Each class became a forest. The weak and the strong. Of course, amidst the extreme chaos, there were a few classes that maintained stability. The students in these few classes were struggling to find answers. In Vigilator, we collectively agree to hand in our papers. Our answer is, there is no weirdness at all. The real answer to this exam is that there are no other shenanigans in the classroom other than the Invigilator, that's why we couldn't find it. Hearing the students' answers, the Invigilator smiled coldly and finished collecting the test papers. Your answers are wrong, go to hell. With a series of miserable screams, half of the students became shattered corpses. It couldn't be said that these students hadn't worked hard, in order to survive, they had put their best foot forward and searched for every possible answer. The simplest one was that the weirdness was a classmate. In order to verify this answer, it was unknown how many students died at the hands of their own classmates. Then a school bully, after careful thought, concluded that Creepy was the invigilator. This is already an imaginative answer that breaks through the conventional boundaries, but it is still not right. Then some students even guessed that there was no Creepy at all. It turned out to be wrong, naturally. No matter how conventional the answer, how outrageous it is, you can't pass the exam. The exam tells you that the answer is there, that an answer does exist but you can't find it with all your might. It's like a drowning person who clearly sees the straw that saves his life, but can't grasp it. That's the real despair. One hour and 30 minutes. One hour and 45 minutes. Attention all candidates, the exam will end in 15 minutes. Candidates who have not yet answered, please do so as soon as possible. An ice-cold beep came from the classroom's radio. Finally, even in Chen Mu's class, a commotion began to appear. Chen Mu, is it impossible to pass this exam at all? I suspect that the exam doesn't have any answers at all. This is a bizarre mission with no way to live. Right, even if Chin Mu is so smart, he can't find a way to live, there's definitely no way to live. We're finished, half of us have to die here. I'm so scared, I want to go home, oh. The class became a commotion, as if they had entered a food market, making a ruckus. In the midst of this clamor, Chen Mu, however, began to kind of not say a word. Chen Mu just sat on the chair, maintaining a contemplative posture, calm like a statue. Even in the most terrifying time, Chen Mu was still like a sculpture, calm and collected. This was simply not something a normal person could do. Obviously, Chen Mu was not a normal person, and a normal person would not be able to survive more than five years in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world. Those who were able to survive for five years had, in some ways, exceptional qualities. For example, Chen Mu's outstanding quality was his composure. Regardless of the circumstances, Chen Mu was able to remain calm. The more critical the environment, the more urgent the situation, the more others panicked, the more calm Chen Mu was. It was this extraordinary calmness that allowed Chen Mu to discover the ultimate way of life in countless moments of crisis. At this moment, after more than an hour of thinking, Chen Mu already had a thought. This train of thought, however, was like a mist that shrouded the brain. It seemed that with a slight poke, breaking through the mist, one could discover the hidden truth. Chen Mu focused his attention, wanting to break through the fog in his brain. He was already about to discover the truth, and he had a strong feeling that the truth was right in front of him. Only, to take this final step, he needed one last bit of inspiration. This lifeline that had plagued Chen Mu for five years was about to be cracked by Chen Mu as he fought it once more. Finally, another familiar sound rang out. This sound couldn't be more familiar, it was too often heard in the classroom. So much so that almost all of the students ignored this sound as if it was normal. When Chen Mu heard this voice again, a smile finally lifted from Chen Mu's calm face you've hidden it really deep. The path to life for this mission is truly devious. A normal person would hardly think that you actually hid here. It's just a pity that you met me, and for the second time, I have finally discovered your secret. Chen Mu, who was as quiet as a statue, began to act. He stood up and picked up the dagger on the table. In my previous life, I failed. This time, I will make you show your true form. As Chen Mu picked up the dagger, the eyes of the entire class gathered towards Chen Mu. Oh my god. Chen Mu is finally going to act. Great. Chen Mu definitely sees a way out of this. The weirdness is about to be hidden. Ha ha. I declare that Chen Mu is the strongest student in the entire school. He's really as powerful as the rumors say. If only he was my boyfriend. Under the gaze of the entire class, Chen Mu took the dagger and walked towards the back row of the classroom. On the podium, the invigilator's eyes still showed disdain. This was just a bunch of milquetoast kids, and what they did, in the eyes of the invigilating teacher, was nothing more than a small fight. 
How could a group of brats discover a way to live? The invigilator teacher admitted that even she herself, without knowing the answers, would never be able to pass the exam. That kid called Chen Mu was nothing more than a struggle before death. Soon, Chen Mu walked up to a girl. I know, you're hiding here. Chen Mu said to the girl. In the face of Chen Mu's words, the girl did not utter a single word, and like a creep, her eyes stared dead ahead. However, Chen Mu's action caused the students in the class to be in an uproar. Chen Mu suspects that Wang Xiaoxiao is creepy? Impossible. Wang Xiaoxiao even spoke before, there's no way she's a creep. Yeah, Wang Xiaoxiao isn't talking now, I guess it's because of the rules. On Wang Xiaoxiao's test paper, there must be her rules that state that she can't talk at this time. That's the reason. Why would Chen Mu even suspect Wang Xiaoxiao? The students were greatly puzzled, like Wang Xiaoxiao's situation, in other classes, it had also appeared. At the very beginning of the exams, there was a class that killed such a student. Later on, it was also proven that the classmate who was killed was indeed not weird, but was just restricted by the rules. Now that Chen Mu was standing in front of Wang Xiaoxiao, he was doubting that Wang Xiaoxiao was bizarre? Such an obvious mistake, Chen Mu would actually make such a mistake? Even students with slow reflexes knew that Wang Xiaoxiao would not be bizarre. Chen Mu's move was like a trapped beast fighting in its final madness. This made many students' hearts vaguely disappointed. Could it be that even Chen Mu could not find the answer? In the next second, Chen Mu raised his dagger and aimed it in Wang Xiaoxiao's direction. This dagger, let you die. After saying that, Chen Mu plunged the dagger down. The force was so ferocious that he simply used his entire body. Immediately afterward, a scene that shocked everyone happened. ka -ching. Only a loud cracking sound could be heard. The dagger slashed down and did not hit Wang Xiaoxiao, but instead slashed on Wang Xiaoxiao's desk. This slash instantly cut Wang Xiaoxiao's desk into a pile of pieces. Wooden shavings were scattered all over the place. In the midst of the shattered wood shavings, a wisp of black smoke slowly rose. The entire classroom, at this moment, became dead silent. Everyone's gazes were filled with extreme shock. A pair of shocked eyes stared incredulously at Chen Mu. Even the invigilator on the podium stood up, surprise written in his eyes. This kid, actually really, found the hidden shenanigans. How is this possible? A few moments later, in the entire classroom, a complete cheer erupted. This cheer was deafening. The classroom desk. Creepy is actually a classroom desk. I didn't even think that Creepy would hide as a classroom desk. Sean Mu, you're my god. You actually did find Creepy. How did you do it? The school desk. Creepy actually hid as a school desk. How could this possibly be thought of? Chen Mu thought of it. Chen Mu patted Wang Xiaoxiao's head and said, Hee hee, I hope it didn't scare me. It was only at this point that the students realized that Chen Mu had just said the words. This cut, let you die. It turned out that it was not said to Wang Xiaoxiao, but to her desk. This was when the radio in the classroom rang out. Senior class 27, Chen Mu, successfully found the answer. The first class to pass the exam appears. The exam is about to end. Chen Mu is the only one who found a way to live. Congratulations guys, you can go home now. This broadcast sound was like heavenly music to the students in the classroom. The two hours of hell were finally coming to an end. They were finally going to come back from hell, back to earth. And the one who pulled them back to earth was Chen Mu's hand. The classroom was once again boiling. Chen Mu was surrounded by his classmates, and in Chen Mu's ears, it was filled with praise and adoration. There were even quite a few girls that looked at Chen Mu with starry eyes. There was no doubt that in the bizarre end world, there was no one, other than Chen Mu, who could give them such a sense of security. At this moment, Chen Mu remained calm as he wiped his dagger and inserted it back into its sheath. The clouds were light. He had defeated his former self and defeated his former enemy. This feeling of pain and pleasure made Chen Mu extraordinarily satisfied. It also signaled that Chen Mu's ability to find a way to survive was on a higher level. In the future, when faced with even more dangerous situations, Chen Mu would also be able to handle them with equanimity. This was how one's temperament was accumulated. Facing death and overcoming death time and time again, only then could one eventually develop the temperament of a strong person. Otherwise, even if one's family had a lot of money, they would still be nothing more than vicious profiteers. The students in the other classrooms also heard the broadcast. Upon hearing what was broadcasted, the students in the other classrooms, one by one, went crazy with envy. Chen Mu. It really is Chen Mu. Only he is capable of finding a way to live. I've long said that Chen Mu is the most awesome. You guys still said that he was blown out of the water, now he's been slapped in the face. So what if you've been slapped in the face? You and Chen Mu aren't in the same class, so he can save you? Damn it, why aren't Chen Mu and I in the same class? If I can survive this time, I'm definitely going to ask my dad to help me change classes to Chen Mu's desk. I want to be able to survive, I'm going to chase Chen Mu to be my boyfriend. You guys live first. Meanwhile, in Chen Mu's class, 
On the podium, the invigilator walked off the podium and walked towards Chen Mu step by step. Student Chen Mu. The invigilator teacher came before Chen Mu, and if she wasn't creepy, she would be a very pretty uniformed woman. You actually found the way to life, which makes me feel very incredible. I admit that I underestimated your strength too much. Even if it was me, it would be impossible for me to have discovered the lifeways. Then, I would like to ask you a question. How did you discover the way of life? And how are you sure that with so many desks in the class, creepy must be Wang Xiaoxiao's desk? The spooky teacher actually asked a human student for a question. This kind of thing, when said out loud, would absolutely blow others away. The invigilator's words precisely represented the questions of all the students. Immediately, a pair of eyes looked at Chen Mu with eyes that were filled with curiosity and questions. It's simple. The absolute law of the bizarre end times. The path to life is hidden within the rules. It was within a rule that I deduced this life path. Chen Mu slowly said, speculating the path to life from the rules? Upon hearing Chen Mu's reply, the students present all revealed puzzled expressions. The rules, each and every one of them had them. But Chen Mu was the only one who could surmise the birth path. At that moment, some candidates didn't believe it and hurriedly looked through their papers, rule by rule. But even how they looked, they couldn't imagine how to surmise the birth path from it. The invigilator showed a hint of gravity in her expression after listening to Chen Mu's answer. As far as she knew, only the topmost people could possess the extreme ability to look for clues from the rules and thus find the hidden birth path. Such people, without exception, were able to have a place in the bizarre end times. This was indeed the case for Chen Mu in his previous life. Being able to survive for five years in the bizarre end world was enough to prove his strength. Seeing the puzzled expressions of the crowd, Chen Mu smiled and began to narrate. When I first got the test paper, looking at the densely packed rules of no less than ten, I was as dazzled as you all were. In the face of the intricate situation, the simplest method is, let go of irrelevant distractions and look for the most central and essential purpose. In this examination, the most central purpose for us, as candidates, to survive is to find the hidden shenanigans. Then, I'll begin my analysis by sorting out the dazzling dozen of rules, and pick out the most crucial ones from them. The most critical rules are the ones that tell us how to find the spooky. After reading these rules, I was able to find a way out. So, I quickly searched and eventually locked on to these key rules. 1. Creepy is lazy, and creepy generally won't move until you spot creepy. 2. Creepy occasionally makes strange noises, look out for strange noises around you and you'll spot creepy. 3. Creepy has four arms and legs, just like humans. From the outside, it's hard to spot who the spooky is. The whole paper, with only these three rules, is telling us how to find the spooky. I call them, the source rules. The various other rules are all secondary rules, either interfering with us or assisting in testifying. In short, other than the source rules, the other rules, I call them, secondary rules. However, after finding the source rule, I was soon in a quandary. I think you are all in this predicament as much as I am. The source of this dilemma is the third source rule, the Creepy has four arms and legs, just like humans. From the outside, it's hard to spot who is creepy. When we read this rule, it's natural to assume that Creepy disguises himself as a human and takes the form of one of his classmates. Immediately after that, we all, as a matter of course, start looking inside our classmates, to find out who is Creepy. In fact, you're all wrong, you've all fallen into a trap. I also fell into the trap, but I quickly realized the anomaly. It was in the first source rule that I discovered the anomaly. Creepy is lazy and creepy usually doesn't move until you spot creepy. Haven't you noticed? This is a rule that works against creepy. If the spooky is disguised as a classmate, it won't move until we spot it. A living classmate can't move. Isn't that an obvious breakage? As long as a person's brain is okay, if they see any classmate not moving for half a day, they will definitely suspect him. In this way, it would be easy to find the weirdness and pass the exam. The reality, however, was diametrically opposite. There was not a single class that passed the exam. This just showed that we had misunderstood the source rule number three, in terms of understanding. After figuring this out, my thinking became much clearer. I began to read rule three over and over again silently, trying to find clues from it. Finally, I found the key break. Rule three, in fact, played a word game. Creepy has four arms and legs just like humans. From the outside, it's hard to find out who is creepy. These two sentences were separated by a period. This meant that there was no necessary logical cause and effect between these two sentences. It wasn't because Creepy had four arms and legs just like a human, so from the outside, it was hard to find out who was Creepy. There is no causal relationship between these two sentences. We should understand them separately. And the correct order of understanding is to understand the latter sentence first, then the former. Look at the latter sentence first. From the outside, it's hard to tell who is spooky. So, what would Creepy have to become to make it impossible, from the outside, to tell who is Creepy? It's simple. 
it can naturally turn into something other than what it is like to be a human being. Become air, become liquid, become an object. Imagine if creepy turned into air, would you be able to tell who creepy is from the outside? Obviously, no. So the question is, what would creepy actually turn into? It's at this point that we should go back and understand the previous sentence. In the previous sentence, look for clues that suggest, creepy has four arms and legs, just like humans. This is actually a pretty obvious hint that tells us that spooky has four limbs. Limbs are not just arms and legs, for benches and tables, they also have limbs. By this point, a rough guess can be made. The weirdness could be the tables, chairs, and benches. So, with so many desks, chairs, and benches in the classroom, which one, exactly, is the spooky one? It comes down to source rule number two, the creepy occasionally makes strange noises, so pay attention and look around for strange noises and you'll find creepy. This is actually an extremely crucial rule. Creepy makes noises. Tables, chairs, and benches that make noises are probably spooky. So I started keeping an eye out for any tables, chairs, and benches that were making noises. Eventually, I heard it three times. All three times, the sound came from Wang Xiaoxiao's desk. That's the creaking sound of a desk as it ages. Even if one hears it, one becomes accustomed to it. Only after one fully understands the rules can one find clues in the most ordinary movements. And so, as you can see, I picked up the dagger. At the last moment of taking up the dagger, I had one more crucial question to answer. Is this the pseudo-life path? The so-called pseudo-life paths are life paths that are derived from the rules, but which cannot be proved, and even if they were to be proved, it would cost you your life. When a life path requires you to bet on whether it is right or wrong at the cost of your life. This way of life, then, is not a true way of life, but a false way of life. It will lead us to death. In some classes, the guessing creep is the invigilator. Then the whole group handed in their papers and gambled with everyone's lives on whether this life path was right or wrong. At that time, in our class, there were students who wanted to do that, but I stopped them. Because I knew at first glance that this was a pseudo-life path. So, is this life path that I guessed, is it a pseudo-life path? The answer is, no. If I wanted to verify my life path, then all I had to do was to go and chop up that desk. Chopping the desk was not life-threatening to me. And the rules were protecting me, even if the desk was really spooky, it couldn't hurt me until I chopped it. The other rule also said that the dagger in my hand was able to slash the creepy to death. These two rules are actually protecting me, they are protecting this life path. This made it so that I would have to verify this life path, and there was absolutely no danger at all. This also sidestepped the fact that this life path that I had guessed was not only not a pseudo-life path, but it was also protected by the two rules, and was most likely a true life path. Therefore, I did so. The result, as you can see, was that I found the life path. The weirdness, is that one desk. After Chen Mu's words were finished, a silence fell in the middle of the class. The students surrounding them were all dumbfounded by what they heard. Did everyone take the same test paper? Why is it that when I hold the paper, my mind is empty and I only think of killing killing killing? Chen Mu got the test paper, but like opening a perspective hanging, directly saw the answer? The gap between people is so big ah. Chen Mu, your thinking is too perverted. Ordinary people like us can't even think of so much. With all these twists and turns, we won't be able to pass the first hurdle. Just like what you said, the point of detecting that the weirdness is not a classmate, we won't be able to discover it. Some of the students exclaimed in despair, a despair at the gap between themselves and Chen Mu. This paragraph caused many students to nod their heads in succession. Chen Mu was so perverse in his reasoning ability, they couldn't do it. If it wasn't for Chen Mu, they would be dead. If before, they only felt that Chen Mu was strong, but they didn't have a clear perception of exactly how strong. Now, they had a clear understanding of the gap between the two. This was a gap that could not be caught up with in a lifetime. If they said that before, Chen Mu was still a powerful ordinary person in their eyes. Then now, Chen Mu had already condensed his godly sphere, and in their eyes, had become a god in the bizarre end times. He he, there's no need to be so demoralized. Chen Mu laughed. In bizarre missions, the way to life is always hidden in the rules. A truly powerful expert, even if they haven't participated in a particular bizarre mission, they only need to get their hands on a few rules from the mission and one would be able to deduce the birth path from among the rules. In fact, in the rules of the paper, there are several rules that imply to us that the spooky is not a classmate. Rule 4, for example, is everyone's personal rule. My personal rule is for me to yell for an hour and a half into the exam. This seemingly nonsensical rule actually hints at us. Think about it, since the rule I got is so nonsensical, is it safe to guess that the other students have personal rules that are equally nonsensical? With that thought in mind, when you see a classmate that has been sitting still, you think she's being weird, but is it possible that she's fulfilling her personal rule? So, this is also implying to us that judging which classmate is spooky by observing her not moving is actually quite unreliable. When Chen Mu said this, 
the girl that she had saved earlier already had little stars rising in her eyes. It's still Chen Mu who understands me. At that time, she was doing this personal rule, and if it wasn't for Chen Mu stopping her, she would have been killed by her classmates as a trick. The more Chen Mu analyzed this, the more shocked and adoring the classmates looked at Chen Mu. It was as if Chen Mu had become an all-knowing and all-powerful god in the bizarre mission. There was no trap that Chen Mu couldn't see. The invigilator couldn't help but suck in a breath of cool air even after listening to Chen Mu's exposition. She admitted that among the humans she had seen, Chen Mu was definitely the smartest one. You are powerful beyond my imagination. I admit that I underestimated you just now. The invigilator said. A condescending trickster actually said to a human, you are more powerful than I imagined. If anyone else saw that, they would definitely be shocked. I'm flattered. Chen Mu still had a cloudy expression. Even though he had just passed the exam, even though he was star-studded by his classmates, even though he was bowled over by bizarre admiration, Chen Mu's face, there was not the slightest bit of pride or indulgence. Calm, calm, and mature. The invigilator had to admit that at Chen Mu's age, this was the first time she had seen a person with Chen Mu's level of sophistication. This kind of unperturbed calmness was definitely not something that was put on for the sake of pretending. To obtain this kind of temperament, you have to have experienced the baptism of a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood, have seen a great storm, and have seen a building about to fall. In a series of stormy baptisms, only then can one obtain this calm and serene temperament. At this instant, the invigilator suddenly felt that she couldn't understand the Chen Mu in front of her. What exactly had this young man ever experienced? Chen Mu's image, in her eyes, became mysterious. Mysterious men always have an inexplicable attraction. The invigilator suddenly felt that Chen Mu seemed a little handsome. It was at this time that Chen Mu suddenly said, Teacher, I passed the exam, do I have the qualifications to meet your principal? You want to meet the principal? The invigilator teacher was once again surprised. If an ordinary person had passed the exam with great difficulty, they would definitely want to leave quickly. It would be better not to return here for the rest of their lives. However, Chen Mu not only didn't leave, but instead wanted to see the principal. Chen Mu must have known that the principal of Dark Knight High School was a powerful eccentric. Humans hated to walk around and avoid the creepy, and Chen Mu actually took the initiative to want to meet the creepy? What a peculiar man. You are very courageous. The invigilator said, as the only candidate who found the answer, you certainly have the opportunity to meet the principal. But I'm curious, why do you want to meet the principal of Dark Knight High School? Can it be that you want to ask the principal for a reward because you passed the exam? The other students around them, who were also puzzled, looked at Chen Mu, wondering what Chen Mu wanted to do. What does Chen Mu want to do? I don't know, if an exam is this terrifying, wouldn't the principal of Dark Knight High School be even more terrifying? Yeah, I have to wet my pants when I see that kind of weirdness, Chen Mu actually took the initiative to want to meet it. The students couldn't help but speculate, no one could guess Chen Mu's purpose. To be rewarded? Oh, of course not. Chen Mu smiled and shook his head. Immediately afterward, Chen Mu used a flat tone and said something that shocked everyone. Because, I'm going to buy the Dark Knight High School. What did you say? You want to buy the school? The invigilator's eyes widened and he thought he had heard wrong. A student who actually wanted to buy the school. Simply delusional. Did he know how much Dark Knight High School was worth? Billions of plutonium. That's a truly astronomical price. Chen Mu looked like an ordinary high school student, although he was smart and calm, but could he have that much money? It's probably a child's immature mind that has no concept of money. The female teacher thought so in her heart. The other students, after hearing this news, also looked at Chen Mu in shock. They had all heard that Chen Mu was rich. But for Chen Mu to be so ostentatious and by the school in one go was something they couldn't have imagined. I told you, Chen Mu was rich beyond your imagination. In the last midnight cafeteria mission, Chen Mu directly bought the cafeteria. Participating in a spooky quest, you have to buy a spooky scene? Sure enough. I don't understand the world of tycoons. It was a cafeteria at the time, this is an entire school. It's much more expensive than the cafeteria. This school, it must be at least a billion dollars. Does Chen Mu really have that much money? The students were talking and discussing, it was obvious that Chen Mu's wealth was beyond their knowledge. Of course, would I joke with you? Chen Mu said indifferently. My time is precious. Take me to your principal. After saying that, Chen Mu took out a small box from his spatial ring and handed it to the uniformed female teacher. The teacher opened it and inside was actually an emerald bracelet. This bracelet, which was carved from the emerald of the Eerie Realm, was a small 10,000 medallions for one piece. This is, given to me? The female teacher was astonished, looking at the beautiful emerald in front of her, her eyes were instantly filled with desire. Such a piece of emerald bracelet, with her meager salary, even if she didn't eat or drink, she would have to save for three or four months. Unsurprisingly, if Chen Mu didn't give it to her, she wouldn't be able to afford to buy a piece for the rest of her life. 
Of course, hurry up and take me to see the principal. Shenmu said indifferently, as if a piece of jadeite that cost a small $10,000 was not as expensive as a bottle of water in his eyes. The female teacher couldn't believe it, her hands trembled slightly as she carefully received the piece of jadeite and, played with it in her hand for a moment, loving it. She looked at Chen Mu again, this time, in her eyes, there was no more contempt. A child has no concept of money? Bah! Other brother Fu just didn't like money. To a certain extent, brother Fu indeed had no concept of money. Because in other people's Fu's eyes, hundreds of thousands of things were just the money for a meal, and a small $10,000 bracelet was just the money for a bottle of water. Instantly, the female teacher changed her face at light speed and revealed a fawning smile towards Chen Mu. Student Chen, don't be in a hurry, I'll take you to see the principal. After saying that, the female teacher carefully collected the bracelet and stuffed it in her pocket as if it was a treasure. Then she stepped forward and intimately took Chen Mu's arm, leading him out of the classroom. Behind them, a group of winded students were left behind. I'm super. I suspect that the invigilator has changed. Yeah, is this still the same strict invigilator teacher? I remember when the exam was just taken, the invigilating teacher sat on the podium with a face of condescension and disdain, what's going on now? Now he's kneeling down to Chen Mu? He's so close to calling Chen Mu master. Is this money power? Just how rich is Chen Mu? Chen Mu was held by the female teacher's arm as he walked down the corridor of the school building. He had only given a small gift of $10,000, and the female teacher was just kneeling down? Chen Mu was a little puzzled, a gift of $10,000 is just a gift, not much, actually let the female teacher attitude change so fast. If the others heard it, they would probably want to strangle Chen Mu. We risked our lives in the bazaar mission and worked hard to earn a few hundred plutonium, and we couldn't wait to offer up the plutonium. You actually casually said that you think a gift of 10,000 medals is a small gift? That's too much of a show-off. If you're so pretentious, aren't you afraid of being struck by lightning? Chen Mu is also helpless, probably just came out of the duke's house, gave the duke a small 10 million dollar gift, felt that a gift of 10 or 20 thousand dollars was sparse. But it is worth it to spend this extra money. The principal's temper is not very good, if it is not Chen Mu gave a gift, the female teacher is really not sure to bring Chen Mu to see the principal. Along the way, the female teacher wore a short-skirted uniform and intentionally or unintentionally rubbed herself against Chen Mu's body. The female teacher even hinted that if Chen Mu felt tired, she could first accompany him to rest rest. The female teacher also did not want to lick Soa, but, he really gave too much. He also has a space ring, a look is not ordinary people ah. Female bazaar also like list rich brother. Ten minutes later, the two arrived in front of the principal's office. The female teacher took a deep breath and prepared to knock on the office door. Before knocking on the door, the female teacher was a bit nervous and couldn't help but remind Chen Mu. Student Chen, the principal's temperament, may not be that good. He doesn't really like people visiting him. So when you go in later, if you have anything to say, hurry up and say it, don't make the principal angry. As she said this, the female teacher's voice was shaking a little. It could be seen that the principal had a bad temper, making these subordinates afraid of him. Bad temper? Ha! Chen Wu let out a cold laugh in his heart, if the temper was even as bad as Creepy's, he had a way to make Creepy like him. What's the saying? You're not money, how can you make everyone like you? Coincidence. Although I'm not money, I've got tons of money. I'm a mediocre person, I don't have many merits, the only three merits I have, are. Money. Money. And fucking money. Knock, knock, knock. The female teacher knocked on the office door. After waiting for a while, an impatient voice came from inside. Come in. The owner of the voice sounded impatient, seemingly annoyed that someone was disturbing him. The female teacher warily pushed open the door and led Chen Mu inside. Principal, this is. Chen from our class, he wants to come and see you. The female teacher said fearfully, she didn't dare to say that Chen Mu was coming to buy the school. If such words were said, the principal would probably think that Chen Mu had come to tease himself and directly kill Chen Mu and the female teacher in a rage. Students? Behind the desk, the principal raised his head, his eyes filled with impatience. This was a big-bellied creep with a Mediterranean bald head and a beer belly, a typical middle-aged creepy look. When he saw that Chen Mu was a human being, he immediately fumed. What's wrong with you? This is a tiny human. How is a human worthy of entering my office? How dare you bring a human in, you have a death wish, don't you? The principal said at the end of the sentence, enraged, a tiny human actually dared to disturb himself? In the principal's eyes, killing intent had appeared. The principal's violent anger made the female teacher tremble in fear. Suddenly, the female teacher felt someone tugging at her, she turned around and saw Chen Mu pulling her behind him, bravely facing the furious principal principal head on, seeing that the atmosphere was about to come to a sword fight. Suddenly, Chen Mu revealed a smile. Mr. Headmaster, coming from afar, a small gift, no respect. 
Saying that, Shen Mu touched his space ring and pulled out from it a, a large box of good wine and two large bars of good cigarettes. Upon seeing the cigarettes and wine, the principal's expression visibly froze for a moment. The principal's face, with an expression of fury on one side and surprise on the other, looked a bit funny. He didn't expect that this human would actually send good cigarettes and wine as soon as they met. This time, the principal will not be whole. It is said that the hand is not stretched out, people carry cigarettes and wine over, you cannot blow people out. Air, you are, Chen students right. The tone of the principal, obviously eased a lot, the impatience in the eyes disappeared a lot. Chen Mu is not finished, the last time he bought a watch for the duke, after leaving from the duke's house, Chen Mu bought a few more. Creepy seemed to be all quite fond of this stuff, so buying a few more might come in handy in the future. At that moment, Chen Mu took out another locket from his spatial ring and handed it to the principal with a smile. The surface of the small box was wrapped in golden silk made of trick gold, and it was graceful and luxurious at a glance. Seeing the extravagant wrapping box, the principal's eyes changed, realizing that what was in the locket was not simple. After opening the box, there was a luxurious watch lying inside. Guida Chui Fei. The principal's pupils shrunk violently, and he thought he had misread it. A watch of over $300,000. Holy shit. Are all humans so rich nowadays? No, it should be that the Chen Mu in front of him was rich. Hundreds of thousands of gifts smashed down, the principal, no matter how much of a pussy he could pretend to be, couldn't hold it together at this time. Aya, Mr. Chen, why are you so polite? As the principal, I love students who are diligent and inquisitive. What is the problem? Directly come to ask on it well, but also bring what gift it. It's a waste of money. Like a changed person, the principal cheerfully collected the gift and affectionately patted Chen Mu's shoulder, as if he had seen his long-lost favorite student. Affectionate, enthusiastic. Such a huge contrast made the female teacher unable to tense up. Was this still the principal she knew? As far as the female teacher could remember, the principal had never been this cordial. For other creeps, the principal had always had a cold face, and treated humans even less kindly. Chen Mu, as a human, had also trespassed into the principal's office and had filled up the principal's anger level. Logically speaking, Chen Mu would be crippled if not dead. However, the scene in front of him was very different from what was imagined. Those who could be entertained so warmly by the principal, besides Chen Mu, were probably only those school managers. If the other shenanigans were to see it, they would be able to drop their jaws in shock. Mr. Principal is polite, I have something I want to trouble you with. Chen Mu said cheerfully. Hearing Chen Mu's polite words, the principal was even happier in his heart. So rich and so polite, Chen Mu had gained the principal's appreciation in just a few minutes. If there is any trouble, you can just say it, in the entire Dark Knight High School, there is still nothing that I can't handle. Did any teacher offend you? Don't be anxious, I'll find trouble with her right now. The principal patted his chest and said, No no, don't be anxious, mister. Principal, I have another box of good wine here for you. Chen Mu said, pulling out a box of wine from his spatial ring. However, I don't know if Chen Mu was careless, but when he pulled out the wine, he incidentally brought out a small token. Clang. The token smashed on the ground with a crisp sound. The principal looked down and almost didn't stare out of his eyes. The Guile General's token. Chen Mu actually had the Guile General's token Ah, What this represented, the principal knew very well. It meant that behind Chen Mu, there was at least one Guile General that was giving Chen Mu a backing. This human could not be messed with. I'm a young man, and I'm so furtive that I dropped everything on the floor. Mr. Principal don't mind. Chen Mu smiled, lowered his head in embarrassment, picked up the token and put it back into his spatial ring. This time, there was a trace of seriousness and gravity in all of the principal's expressions. Deliberately throwing the token out to imply that he had a backer, damn it, this pussy made him pretend ah. The principal knew that people like Chen Mu had money and backgrounds, he absolutely could not afford to annoy Chen Mu. One must please Chen Mu and fulfill Chen Mu's requirements. At that moment, the principal took out his treasured tea leaves and personally brewed a cup of tea for Chen Mu, warmly entertaining Chen Mu. Student Chen, you say, your request, as long as I can do it, I will do it for you. The principal assured Chen Mu. The female teacher looked at the principal sympathetically, guessing that the principal did not know yet, just how big Chen Mu's ambition was. If the principal knew that Chen Mu was going to buy the school, she didn't know what expression he would have. The female teacher thought in her heart. Mr. Principal, I only have a small request. Chen Mu smiled and said indifferently. I'm offering 10 billion dollars, I want to buy the Dark Knight High School. The moment these words came out, the tea that the principal had been drinking into his mouth, puffed out. 10 billion dollars? Buy the school? This was 10 billion dollars. What was the concept of 10 billion dollars? Also, what are you talking about? You want to buy the school? What? It's such a huge deal, but Chen Mu said it so lightly. 
If you didn't know, you'd think Chen Mu went into the food market and said, a dollar for a block of tofu. Such a huge deal, why couldn't Chen Mu see a trace of nervousness on his face? Ten billion dollars to buy a school, to Chen Mu, it seemed like a rare occurrence. Cough cough. The principal couldn't help but cough twice, if it wasn't for the fact that Chen Mu had given a gift of several hundred thousand dollars, he would have thought that Chen Mu was joking. Student Chen, our school, is probably only worth more than seven billion dollars. I know. Chen Mu nodded, that's why I'm offering ten billion dollars to buy it, and there's no reason for you guys to refuse. Chen Mu knew that in the late stage of the bizarre end times, the Dark Knight High School would develop into a behemoth, almost comparable to the Underworld Bank. At that level, it would not be something that could be bought down with medieval coins. A few trillion medieval coins wouldn't be able to buy it down. Now taking advantage of the fact that the bizarre end of the world had just begun, buying it down with 10 billion of his own might seem like he had suffered a bit of a loss, but in reality, he had picked up a big leak. Ahem, so many medieval coins. The principal's tone was a little hesitant. I'm a person full of shortcomings, the only thing I don't lack, is money. Chen Mu clapped his hands and clattered a pile of brand new plutonium coins filled half of the office. A hundred million plutonium coins, Chen Mu moved his hand and took it out. Seeing such strong financial power of Chen Mu, the principal was shocked. Half of his own office was stuffed with plutonium coins. In this lifetime, he had never seen so much money. The female teacher on the side was directly scared to the point of sitting on the ground, and she was looking at Chen Mu with glowing eyes. What kind of big tycoon is this? It was only after a few whole minutes that the principal came back from his shock. He looked at Chen Mu, took a deep breath and said, Student Chen, your financial power is beyond my imagination. I admit that you have enough money to buy the Dark Knight High School, but I can't sell it to you because it's not a matter of money. To tell you the truth, as long as you buy the Dark Knight High School, you've broken the rules. Breaking the rules, you will die. Rules? What rules? Chen Mu asked with some doubt. In his previous life, he hadn't bought a school, so naturally, he wasn't clear about the rules. The principal said, actually, the school is not mine, I am just replacing the school managers and managing the school. The school managers made a series of rules, including one in the sale and purchase of the school. The school managers stipulated that the original price of the Dark Knight High School, which was 7 billion medieval coins, would only cost 100 million medieval coins when purchased by a human. But you're so smart, you should have seen that it was a trap. The school trustees also stipulated that once a human purchased the Dark Knight Colleges, he will die the moment he signs the contract. Originally, the second rule, I wasn't supposed to tell you, but seeing as you've given me so many things, I'll be kind enough to remind you. Chen Mu's expression changed violently, the trustees of the Dark Knight High School were truly vicious. A $7 billion school, sold to humans for $100 million. This was an extremely delicious bait, and no one could resist the temptation. When people signed the contract and violated the second rule, they would be given a forced execution by the power of the rules. Naturally, the 100 million medieval coins in this person's hand also became ownerless and was pocketed by the school managers. This was a trap that was carefully laid out for rich humans. If Chin Mu remembered correctly, in his previous life, he had heard that there was a human who was very rich and had earned enough 100 million medieval coins in just two years. Then, this human took a fancy to the Dark Knight Colleges. It was exactly at that time that the Dark Knight High School was discounted by zero. One and sold to the public at a price of 100 million. This human tycoon, naturally, went to buy the Dark Knight Colleges. At that time, many people, including Chin Mu, were still envious, saying that this tycoon had really gotten lucky, and that he was able to buy the Dark Knight High School for 100 million, which really made people envious and jealous. Later, this human tycoon suddenly disappeared, along with his 100 million medieval coins, also disappeared. Now Chen Mu understood, it turned out that this human tycoon, just after signing the contract, violated the rules and was executed. His 100 million medieval coins were also monopolized by the trustees of the Dark Knight High School. What a trap! If Chen Mu hadn't been generous and given the principal hundreds of thousands of dollars in gifts and made the principal a friend, the principal wouldn't have been kind enough to remind Chen Mu. With such a rule in front of him, it looked like Chen Mu would not be able to buy the Dark Knight High School no matter what. The first law of the weird post-apocalyptic world, no one could defy the rules. However, since it was a rule, there were exceptions. Chen Mu was going to be that exception. 100 million medieval coins to buy the Dark Knight High School, a huge force equivalent to the Bank of the Underworld in the later stages. This temptation was simply too great. Even Chen Mu could not refuse this temptation. After only seeing Chen Mu think for a moment, he raised his head and looked at the principal, revealing a calm smile. Mr. Principal, for 100 million, I want to buy the Dark Knight High School. After hearing Chen Mu's words, the principal froze for a moment, what did you say? The principal, quite naturally, thought that he had misheard. 
Chen Mu wanted to buy the Dark Knight High School when he knew he would die. Either Chen Mu's brain was broken, or he had misheard. The principal chose the latter, thinking that he had heard wrong. What he didn't expect was for Chen Mu to say, word for word, decisively. I said, I want to buy Dark Knight High School. The principal froze once again. It turned out that it wasn't that he had misheard, it was Chen Mu's brain that was broken. This kid wanted money and didn't want to die? It was said that people die for money and birds die for food, but it wasn't this kind of game. By the Dark Knight College, Chen Mu violated the rules, must die. Chen Mu is dead, what's the point of having Dark Knight College? The female teacher next to him was also stunned. Are all rich people so idiosyncratic? $10,000 of emeralds said to give away, their own life said not to dawn. Really personalized ah. You can think about it, 100 million is indeed cheap, but I'm afraid that you have the life to buy, but not the life to spend ah. The principal was quite generous and reminded Chen Mu's sentence again. Chen Mu's mind was made up, nodded and said, the 100 million dollars for this room is what I paid. Bring out the contract, let's sign it. Although the principal was not a school manager, the school manager gave the principal the power to sign the contract. This was also for the convenience of harvesting, otherwise, in order to sign a contract, the school managers would have to go all the way to a meeting, and that would be too troublesome. The school managers knew in their hearts that with the rules they had set up, no one would be able to buy Dark Knight High alive. That was the rule. The supreme existence in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world. No one, no shenanigans, could violate the rules. From the safe, the principal took out a stack of contracts. The principal placed the contracts on his desk, picked up a pen, and signed his name. Student Chen, by signing this contract, you own Dark Knight High School, as well as the principal and all the teachers. However, I still want to remind you that by signing the contract, you will be breaking the rules. The rules state that a human who buys Dark Knight Colleges will die the moment they sign the contract. Without hesitation, Chen Mu took the pen and signed his name on the contract in a dashing manner. The principal sighed helplessly, good words are hard to persuade the damn ghost ah, he had persuaded himself so many times, Chen Mu was still adamant about sending himself to his death. The female teacher's eyes were full of puzzlement, she could not understand Chen Mu, why he was bent on death to sign the contract. At the moment of signing the name, suddenly, a powerful force, surged into Chen Mu's body. This force carried a dark and violent nature, rampaging through Chen Mu's body, wanting to tear Chen Mu apart. This was the power of the rules, and the rules had begun to kick in, wanting to put Chen Mu to death. However, before this force could tear Chen Mu apart, in Chen Mu's body, an invisible armor suddenly appeared, protecting all of his internal organs. Violent forces clashed left and right, but began to be unable to break through the armor. In the end, after a short collision, this force of rules, even began to slowly dissipate. The collision of energy in the body, manifested on the exterior, Chen Mu merely trembled twice, and his body quickly returned to normal. The imagined blood and flesh flying around did not appear. Chen Mu took the contract, and at this moment, the entire Dark Knight High School, became Chen Mu's property. The principal and the female teacher, after waiting for more than 10 seconds, did not see Chen Mu explode. Chen Mu, on the contrary, like nothing, stood in front of them and looked at them both with a smiling face. Why are you, not dead? On the principal's face, shock was written all over. The principal couldn't even remember, this was the first time he had been shocked today. Ever since he met Chen Mu, this young man always brought him shock, one after another. The female teacher also looked at Chen Mu incredulously as if she had seen a trick. At this moment, Chen Mu's performance had exceeded the perception of the principal and the female teacher. How could anyone defy the rules? The rules told you to die, so why are you still alive and well? This was impossible. This violated common sense. Could it be that in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, someone could really defy the rules? This was simply going against the heavens. Chen Mu smiled and looked at the two people who were jealous and shocked, and said lightly, I don't know if you two have heard of it, but there is a creepy general grade prop called the Death Heavy Armor. Death Heavy Armor? The female teacher was dumbfounded, it was obvious that at her level, she could not come into contact with such a strong prop. However, the principal's strength was already a half-step dial general, and he had heard of the Death Heavy Armor's great reputation. Legend had it that there was such a prop that could resist the supreme rule power. The name of this prop was called the Death Heavy Armor. In the entire bizarre end world, there was only one such prop that could resist the rules. Death Heavy Armor, this is a legendary, powerful prop that can change fate against the heavens. In the size of the world, there is only one. The principal said in an awe-inspiring tone, the Death Heavy Armor, I don't know how many people dream of this prop. My humble self, I happen to have a Death Heavy Armor. Chen Mu said smilingly. As Chen Mu finished speaking, his entire body was suffused with the shimmering light of the death heavy armor, making him look extraordinarily dreamy. You actually have a death heavy armor. The principal couldn't help but exclaim out in shock. No wonder, no wonder he dared to face the rules of the school managers head on and he dared to sign the contract. 
He actually had such an unbelievable prop. Even though he was already numb with shock tonight, this news still shook the principal to his core. There was only one prop in the entire bizarre post-apocalyptic world that was capable of countering the power of the rules, and this prop was actually in Chen Mu's hands. It could be said that Chen Mu was the only person in the entire bizarre post-apocalyptic world who could fight against the rules. What kind of ability is this? This is still called, I'm not talented? Then the rest of the world is useless. Why did he say such pretentious things in such a humble tone? Damn it, he got it again. But I remember that the death heavy armor is in the duke's hands. Back then, the duke killed for the death heavy armor with a dozen or so guile generals. How did you get the death heavy armor? The principal couldn't help but ask. He he, my humble self is not talented, just a little friendship with the duke. Chen Mu said with a grin. The principal snapped to mind that the token that Chen Mu had just dropped was the duke's token. You've got the duke's token in your hands, and you call this a small friendship? Damn it, he's got him again. How many more cards does this young man have? The principal could see that Chen Mu looked calm and unassuming on the surface, but in fact, he was particularly fond of pretending. It's only been half an hour since we met, how many times has he pretended to be a pussy? But Chen Mu is particularly smooth and natural every time he pretends to be a pussy. He really has the power. Those powerful managers who hid behind the scenes, this time they were planted, and they failed to steal the chicken. Not only did they not pit Chen Mu's medals, but instead, with 100 million dollars, they sold Dark Knight High School cheaply. Without any hesitation, Dark Knight High School is the best school in the entire bizarre post-apocalyptic world. The key school of key schools. And because of the constraints of the rules, other than Chen Mu, even if the other humans were rich, there was no way for them to buy the school. Once they bought the school, they would violate the rules and be executed. It could be said that Chen Mu was the only human in the entire bizarre post-apocalyptic world who owned a school, and the one he owned was the best Dark Knight High School. Chen Mu's wave, winning Hempa. Not only that, even the principal and the teachers, all became Chen Mu's henchmen. The principal's strength was very strong, and in the ranks of Guile King, Guile General, Guile Chief, Guile Soldier, and Guile Citizen, he had surpassed the Guile Chief, not quite reaching the rank of Guile General. It surpassed the Guile Chief, and had yet to reach the Guile General. Strictly speaking, the headmaster belonged to the strength of a half-step Guile General. Other than the Duke, the headmaster was the strongest among the Guile that Chen Mu knew. And unlike the Duke, the Duke and Chen Mu were more of a cooperative relationship. The headmaster, on the other hand, was completely Chen Mu's subordinate. Chen Mu could order the principal as completely as if he were ordering his subordinates, this was his own subordinate. Having a half-step Guile General as his henchman, Chen Mu's strength, was greatly enhanced. Returning from rebirth, in just a few days, Chen Mu had one hemp. Now Chen Mu's industries, including Dark Knight High School and Midnight Cafeteria, the strongest henchmen had reached the level of half-step Guile Generals. There are also those teachers, each wearing a uniform. Cough, each strong. The worst, all have the strength of a creepy soldier, and most of them have reached the strength of a creepy chief. After all, Dark Knight High School, as the aristocratic school among the bazaar, the strength of the teachers was certainly not bad. More importantly, Chen Mu had spent just over a hundred million dollars to reach this level. Chen Dong, please take a seat. The bulk principal was very discerning, knowing that Chen Mu was now a school director, he hurriedly changed his pleasing expression and fawningly invited Chen Mu to sit on his seat. Chen Mu waved his hand, I'm not very good at managing schools. I'll leave the matter of managing the school to you. Chen Mu still had a lot of things to do and a lot of money waiting for him to spend, so how could he possibly spend his time on managing the school? This principal was good, and in his memories of his previous life, under the principal's management, Dark Knight High School was flourishing. Chen Mu was happy to be a shirker and let the principal continue to manage the school. Hearing that Chen Mu let himself continue to be the principal, the bald principal's hanging heart was immediately put down. Chen Dong was so nice, actually trusting himself so much and letting himself be the principal. This trust from Dong Chen, it couldn't be let down. At that moment, the principal hurriedly used the loudspeaker and called out to the entire school's teachers to gather and come meet the new school manager. In less than 10 minutes, more than a hundred teachers, gathered in front of Chen Mu. When they saw that the new school manager was a human, a look of shock passed through the eyes of the teachers. What's going on here? How did the new school manager become a human? I think I've seen this person before, he was the only one who answered the exam. He took the exam? I have a bad feeling about this. Yeah, the fatal exam was so scary, he must have been scared to death and must be thinking of getting back at us. We're going to be screwed. The teachers were talking and discussing, and worry was written all over everyone's face. Unexpectedly, Chen Mu's next words were out of their expectation. Only to see Chen Mu say, From today onwards, Dark Knight High School is my property. I came to Dark Knight High School to do only three things. Raise money. Raise money. Or a fucking raise. All employees' wages will be doubled. 
All employees, same as Midnight Cafeteria employees, get four hours of vacation a day. The Midnight Cafeteria will take care of their meals, and all employees will eat for free. I only have one request, you guys have to work hard, and within a month, turn Dark Knight High School into the top school. Chen Mu's words left the teachers present, all dumbfounded. How could they not expect that Chen Mu not only did not retaliate against them, but instead gave them such good treatment? Their monthly salary was only 2,000, and after doubling it, it directly became 4,000. This was a huge amount of $4,000. Can't spend it all. Can't spend it all at all. Vacation? What's a vacation? These teachers, as weird employees, naturally, had never heard of what a vacation was. Chen Mu directly gave them four hours of vacation every day. The teachers present were all in tears and lamented. Chen Dong you are truly the king of living hell. Oh yes, in the bizarre world, living hell is a word of praise. After the announcement, in the cheers of the teachers, Chen Mu announced the adjournment of the meeting. Just after the meeting was adjourned on this side, the principal came to the radio room, turned on the radio, and announced. Mr. Chen Mu, you have just signed a contract to acquire Dark Knight High School. I am the principal of Dark Knight Collegiate, and I announce that the school board member of Dark Knight Collegiate is renamed Chen Mu. School manager Chen becomes the Dark Knight High School, the supreme leader. In the school, the fatal exams had just ended not long ago, and some students hadn't had time to leave yet. There were parents who also ran in to pick up their children. Thus, throughout the school, there were still quite a few students. Naturally, they all heard the school's broadcast. When listening to the first time, the students thought they had heard it wrong. The school manager? Wasn't that the highest controller of the school? Chan Mu? Wasn't that the name of a student? How could a student become a school manager? What a joke. However, the principal didn't just broadcast it once. To be able to be the principal of Dark Knight High School, the principal's ass-kissing skills had already been lit up long ago. How could one blowing up the leader once be enough? To blow it less often was to be disloyal. The principal utilized his ass-kissing skills and broadcast it three times in a row on the radio. Chen Mu becomes the sole school director of Dark Knight High School, the supreme controller of Dark Knight High School. Chen Mu has become the sole school board member of Dark Knight High, the supreme controller of Dark Knight High. Chen Mu becomes the sole director of Dark Knight High, the highest controller of Dark Knight High. Important things, say three times. Far from enough ah. The principal had another person make a banner at a rapid pace and pulled it directly on the school's front door. Thus, the students and parents saw a scene that shocked them. Only a few creepy, with their hands and feet, hung a black banner on the school gate. In the spooky world, the color black represents joy and praise. The black banner reads, School manager Chen Mu bought Dark Knight High School for a heavy sum of money and became the sole school manager of Dark Knight High School. With this wave of publicity, everyone in shenanigans in the entire school knew that. Chen Mu had become the school's top leader. Suddenly, a student exclaimed, Chen Mu, I remember, didn't he just buy the midnight cafeteria? If I remember correctly, he also took the fatal exam. Yes, he was the only examinee who answered the questions. Just now everyone was still a student, how come in 10 minutes of work, people have become school managers, the gap between people, is bigger than both people and guile, can someone really be so rich, my worldview has been turned upside down, Shen Mu stood in front of the window of the principal's office and looked at the entrance of the campus in the distance, where a large number of students were gathered around, waiting for him to come out, there was no doubt that these former classmates were now harboring thoughts of defecting to Chen Mu. The male students were asking around if big brother Chen Mu accepted a little brother. The girls were looking for someone to gossip about whether Chen Mu was still single or not. Chen Mu suddenly cried and laughed, good guy, he has only been reborn for about three days. How did he go from being a silent high school student to being sought after by millions of people? This change was too fast. However, Chen Mu, as a low-profile and introverted person with a little bit of money, hadn't planned to collect so many minions. This was because Chen Mu knew that in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, People's hearts were sometimes even scarier than weirdness. At least those weird henchmen, with the constraints of a contract, could not possibly betray Chen Mu. But the people might not be. Yesterday, they were like brothers and sisters, or husband and wife, but today, they might be at each other's throats. People's hearts, hard to gauge. Alright, let the teachers go eat, I should also leave, there are other things to do. Chen Mu said, leaving the principal's office. Behind him, the principal led a group of teachers, bowing and cheering Chen Mu's departure. Along the way, Chen Mu was pondering on his next plan. According to his previous plan, after buying the Dark Knight High School, Chen Mu owned two major industries, the hotel and the school, and was considered to be someone with a little bit of money. It was time to buy himself a mansion. In his previous life, Chen Mu was an ordinary person, living in an old and dilapidated neighborhood, the house was dark and damp, and the electrical appliances were all old and yellow. Reborn once again, living in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, when everyone else is down and out, 
worrying every day about whether they can survive. Chen Mu has made a fortune and is going to live in a mansion of several thousand square feet with a swimming pool and a garden. Chen Mu had long since selected his target, which was the city's high-end villa area, Shan Shui Courtyard. Before the weird apocalypse, the price of Shan Shui Courtyard had soared to hundreds of thousands of a square meter. To buy a villa, Chen Mu could not afford to work for thousands of years without eating or drinking. Now that the creepy end times had descended, he had heard that the landscape courtyard was haunted and had turned into a creepy scene. If one could buy it down, then one would have a luxury villa. Those who do not have constant property do not have a constant heart, and one can only live in peace before one can work with joy. Chen Mu decided, first make a trip to the landscape courtyard and buy himself a luxury villa, then go to the hospital and buy it as well. By then, countless shenanigans who wanted to see a doctor would have to beg for themselves. With hotels, schools, hospitals, villas, and powerful trickster generals as his friends, he would really become the overlord of the city. The future was bright. Thinking of this, Chen Mu took out his cell phone and prepared to call his driver to come pick him up. On the other hand, after Chen Mu left, the teachers of the school prepared to go eat. It was already 11 o'clock midnight, for the weird, it was time to eat lunch. What did Mr. Chen Mu say just now? Give Chen Dong work, Chen Dong package you eat and drink well, teachers can be free, go to the midnight cafeteria to eat lunch. For the midnight cafeteria's big name, the teachers have heard of. It is said that not long ago, the midnight cafeteria was a low-end cafeteria, and only the weird ones who didn't have money would go there to make up a meal. But I heard that two days ago, the midnight cafeteria was bought by a big boss. After that, the midnight cafeteria's level skyrocketed. One by one, explosive dishes were developed. The employees of the midnight canteen were also particularly hospitable, with the feeling that they weren't working for the boss anymore, but for their own father. I heard that a day ago, there was a hotel owner who wanted to go to the midnight cafeteria to cause trouble. As soon as the owner of the midnight cafeteria showed up, the hotel owner was scared shitless and committed suicide to appease the midnight cafeteria owner's anger. What kind of powerful background is this? Since then, the Midnight Canteen has been upgraded all the way, and has now been renamed, becoming the Midnight Hotel, the highest-end hotel in the city. While this was happening, a teacher remembered something and suddenly said, I remembered, I heard them say that the owner of the Midnight Hotel, seems to be called Chen Mu as well. Call what Chen Mu? Call it Chen Dong. Right, right, Chen Dong. The owner of Midnight Hotel is also Chen Dong. Our new school manager, just how much money is there? I heard that Midnight Hotel's catering, does very well. Dong Chen is too generous, isn't he, actually letting us go to Midnight Hotel for a working meal. A creepy teacher couldn't help but splash cold water on his colleagues when he saw how excited they were. Midnight Hotel's catering is good, that's sold to the customers. We're going for work meals, what do you think can be good? It's good enough to have a bite to eat. You don't really think that Chin Dong is so generous that the staff meals give you much higher specifications. It wasn't surprising that this creepy teacher thought so. After all, in the creepy world, working creepy had no human rights. The boss didn't even pay wages, and vacations were even less. Such a harsh working environment, and you're telling me about working meals? Other bosses provide, that's not called working meals, that's called eating unidentified sticky liquid that can't kill the weird. Previously, the trustees of the Dark Knight High School also provided work meals that were even worse than slop. Therefore, some teachers heard of the work meal, directly PTSD, has been eaten out of the psychological shadow. With apprehension, this group of teachers, arrived at the Midnight Hotel. Midnight Hotel has a total of two places, a headquarters, and a branch. The headquarters is opened in the Dark Knight College, the predecessor is the Midnight Cafeteria. The branch is that after the boss was scared to commit suicide, his hotel was changed into the Midnight Hotel branch. What the teachers came to was the Midnight Hotel headquarters. As soon as they entered the front door of the headquarters, a smell of food, immediately hit their faces. On both sides of the doorway, there were two greeters standing. Upon seeing the teachers come in, the greeters were instantly full of smiles and warmly bowed in welcome. The degree of enthusiasm startled the teachers. This kind of enthusiastic work attitude was definitely not from a whip. It was from the bottom of their hearts, a love for their work, and a love for Boston. The teachers were led to a large room filled with long tables. On the tables, there was a wide array of exquisite food. What braised trick fish, steamed trick shrimp, stewed big bugs, and the most famous of them all, explosive boiled blood liver. Such a large table of dishes, the teachers directly look stunned. One by one, you look at me, I look at you, suspecting that they have come to the wrong place. This large table, all of them were excellent dishes. Even if these teachers themselves, down to the restaurant to entertain the guests, but also categorically cannot afford to order these exquisite dishes. Not do not want to order, really can not afford to order ah. Such a table of dishes, two years of salary could not afford to buy. Manager, did you bring us to the wrong place? The teacher who had just questioned Chen Mu asked Li Xiao at the side. 
Li Xiao Xiao was the manager of the hotel, she smiled and explained. I'm sorry, the master made an impromptu announcement, so the working meal we prepared is a bit humble. Please also bear with us. These foods, although a bit humble, are all buffets, so everyone can eat as much as they want, and we will add more if it's not enough. This is the master's welfare for everyone. The master in Li Xia Xiao's mouth was naturally school manager Chen Mu. The moment these words came out, the teachers present all froze in place. These expensive and exquisite foods were actually really prepared for them? According to the previous standard, this was the kind of food that would only be served by the principal when he was entertaining VIPs. Now that Chen Mu was the school manager, he actually treated this as a working meal. Not only that, it's a buffet? How can you call this poor hospitality? Somewhat humble? Chen Mu's generosity had far exceeded their perceptions. In the world, was there really such a good boss? In an instant, that teacher who had just questioned Chen Mu, the corners of her eyes moistened. After being a weird teacher for so many years, she had experienced, for the first time, the feeling of being respected. Looking around at the enthusiastic hotel staff, this teacher instantly understood why Chen Dong's staff had such a work ethic. Chen Dong is really treating you as a brother. A soldier dies for a friend who understands him. It can be imagined that if right now, even if there is a trickster who says that he wants to overthrow Chen Mu, then all the employees present, even with brooms in their hands, would go up and fight the trickster general. After being moved, these teachers, one after another, started the buffet. While playing with their meals, some of the creepy teachers pulled out their cell phones and began to take pictures of the meal in front of them. Don't get me wrong, in the creepy end times, creepy was also with the times, they also had cell phones and other electronic devices. Just like in some spooky movies, spooky would come out of the TV. There's also the internet, where all sorts of spooky scenes exist. Some people accidentally, click on emails and fall into spooky scenes. As a creepy, it's normal for me to have a cell phone, right? These spooky teachers, one after another, started to show off their work meals in the spooky network. Soon, a video with such a title appeared in the creepy network. Shocked. The boss actually gave us this kind of food. Families who understand, I found a Yen Wang boss. Today, I'm going to reveal what Chin Dong's employees eat at work. One pretentious video after another, appeared in front of the five lakes of weirdness. There are even more pretentious ones, where the video is filmed with mountainous delicacies and the title reads, Another Ordinary Meal. Those weird ones who saw the video were all shocked and asked underneath the video, What kind of luxurious dinner is this? I'm afraid this meal must cost tens of thousands of plutonium. You call this a working meal? Do you have some misunderstanding about working meals? Don't brag, where can you provide such a working meal? I'll go over there and work for the boss and I won't take a penny of my salary. Midnight Hotel? This is a luxury hotel, you guys eat working meals here? The following quickly someone. Er, I should say there is a trick reply. Cheat your whole family resurrection. This is a working meal. In the spooky world, resurrecting the whole family is a vicious curse word, equivalent to the whole family dying a violent death and spiraling up to heaven. This is Chen Dong's working meal. Dark Knight High School and Midnight Hotel, now recruiting shenanigans at a rapid pace, welcome. Chen Dong is really treating everyone as a brother, if you don't work for Chen Dong, this life will simply be a wasted death. In the weird world, dying in vain equals living in vain. This one video, quickly spread. Throughout the bizarre world, countless bizarre were greatly shocked. Is there really such a good boss under the sky? On the outskirts of the Dark Knight High School, a few creepy soldier level creepy were hiding in a dark corner. It was now the middle of the night, and it was the time when the lone souls and wild creeps were roaming around. People had to be careful when walking on the road as a creepy could appear at any time. These spooky ones, specializing in lurking around the school, were in the business of lending money. As long as someone signed a loan contract with them, the terms of the contract were extremely harsh, as long as they couldn't get the plutonium to repay the loan, they would break the rules and be killed by them. At this moment, these few creeps were holding a cell phone, watching the video with great interest. Boss, look at this video. The little brother handed the phone up, and on it was the very image of the creepy teachers feasting on the Dark Knight High School. I've seen this video as well, this kind of treatment really makes creepy greedy. Boss couldn't help but sigh. Why don't you boss, how about we go defect to Chindong? Delegate? Ha! <laughs> boss let out a strange laugh, who do you think we are? With this kind of strength of our shenanigans, people don't even see us when Dong Chin sees us. When I see Chindong, it's all about kowtowing to Chindong. Still thinking of defecting to Chindong? Don't even think about whether they care about you or not. At this time, on the dark sidewalk, a figure was walking slowly. Stop fantasizing about working for Chindong, that kind of thing is only in dreams. Now come to life, hurry up and get in the spirit to sell our loan to that person. Boss Creepy urged in a loud voice. The person walking head on was none other than Chen Mu. He had specially avoided the school entrance to prevent those classmates' parents from pestering him, and had specially taken a small detour out of the school. 
Shen Mu was keenly aware of the fact that in the darkness in front of him, there were a few creeps that were staring at him. Not only that, they were about to launch an attack on themselves. On the dark path, other than Shen Mu, there was not a single pedestrian. The cold wind suddenly rose, and the temperature around them slowly lowered. Somehow, the dim street light in front of them, after flickering twice, went out. Shen Mu knew that all of these abnormal signs meant that he was being haunted by the lone soul wild guile. The so-called lonely souls and wild guile were the guile that wandered outside of the weird scene. This kind of weirdness, the time and place of its infestation was random. It's possible that you're shopping at the mall and make a trip to the bathroom, and you come across a spooky. It's possible that you're in the bathroom washing your hair with your eyes closed, and behind you, a spooky quietly appears. As the creepy post-apocalyptic world advances, this situation will become more and more common. It was no longer safe to walk at night, and on the paths outside of the campus, one could run into lone souls and wild spooks, which was a sign that the creepy end times was getting worse and worse. Chen Mu stopped and stood in place. Under the dark street lamp, several dark figures came out. They were wearing suits and ties, carrying briefcases in their hands, looking like salesmen. If you look closely, you will find that their faces, presenting a dead man's tragic white. Obviously, they were creepy. Sir, I'm disturbing you. We are selling loans over here, may I ask if you need a loan? The lead creepy said, squeezing out a raw smile on its ghastly white face. It looked especially creepy in the dark night. Sorry, I don't need it. Shen Mu frowned and shrugged it off. He still had business to attend to, the driver was already waiting for him at the intersection in front of him, and he had to go to Shan Shui courtyard to buy a large house, so how could he have time to fool around with a few creeps? Sir, our interest rate is really special. Look at our contract, you find us to borrow $100,000. The annual interest is only 100, not as expensive as a bottle of water. You can save it in the bank and eat the interest, and you can earn a few thousand dollars every year for nothing. The salesman used seductive words to lure Chen Mu into taking out a loan. Like Chen Mu this kind of student-like people, the best to cheat. Unexpectedly, Chen Mu laughed and pierced through their scam with a single glance. Playing word games with me huh? If I sign a contract and find you guys to lend out, it's money for human use, but when I go to return the money, you guys will tell me that what I have to return is 100 plutonium. For an ordinary person, 100 plutonium is more than he can afford to pay back even if he is sold. At that point, you'll be able to take his life according to the rules, right? This kind of small trick, don't show off in front of me. Chen Mu recognized the trap in just a few words. The several salesmen, all of a sudden, had shocked faces and looked at Chen Mu incredulously. How could he think that the money borrowed and the money returned were different? They couldn't figure out how a student-like person could have such insight? He was actually able to break the mystery with a single word. Looking at the several bizarrely shocked looks, Chen Mu smiled faintly. For ordinary people who met this kind of weirdness, they must have been scared to death. But for Chen Mu, ordinary lonely souls and wild weirdness could no longer harm him. Whether it was in terms of insight, wisdom, or strength, Chen Mu could easily crush these wild spooks. This was the manifestation of Chen Mu's improved strength. In the weird end times, it wouldn't take more than two weeks for the lone souls and wild guile to come out in large numbers. At that time, the good days of ordinary people would be over. Other people were scared every day, having to cope with bizarre tasks while praying that they wouldn't encounter wild spirits. But Chen Mu was completely indifferent, ordinary wild creeps couldn't harm Chen Mu in the slightest. This was the gap between people. Hee <laughs> hee, I see that your strength is good, all of you are guile leader level guile. Let's put it this way, are you guys interested in being security guards for me? Chen Mu looked at them with good strength and had already started to collect them. Wanting to expand one's power, recruiting employees was essential. A couple of staff members of the creepy chief level would be quite good as security guards for the midnight hotel, and outsiders who dared to cause trouble again would have to weigh the consequences. But then again, a chief of guile is already considered an elite class of guile. To have a guile master as a security guard? This was simply mocking them. As expected, when they heard Chen Mu say this, the several creeps immediately burst into a rage. A mere human, bullying me too much, making us become security guards? Are you worthy of that? With just one human like you, how dare you come to enslave the bazaar? The end of Creepy has arrived, humans will eventually be enslaved by Creepy. Several bazaar exasperated ISO fields, killing intent surged. The air temperature around them seemed to have lowered by several degrees. Chen Mu was not the least bit flustered as he said indifferently. I know you guys are in a hurry, but don't be in a hurry yet. I haven't said the treatment yet. Food and accommodation are included, and the monthly salary is $10,000. Every day has 4 hours of vacation, and every month has paid vacation. You can enjoy working meals at the midnight hotel, shopping cards and other benefits, and year-end bonuses. Follow me and do a good job, getting promoted and getting a raise, and going to the peak of the trickster life is not a dream. After hearing Chen Mu's open offer, several creeps looked at each other in disbelief, and their first reaction was, 
This human was joking. How could there be such a good deal? Even the superpowers of the bizarre realm, like the Hellmouth, the Underworld Bank, or whatever, couldn't possibly offer this kind of treatment. The only ones that could rival this kind of treatment were probably only the Midnight Cafeteria and Dark Knight High School opened by Dong Chen. Wait, what did he say? Midnight Cafeteria's staff meal? Could it be that he was? Dong Chen? I forgot to tell you guys, my name is Chen Mu. They call me Chen Dong, or Boss Chen. Chen Mu said with a smile on his face. At this time, a bizarre snap to mind, he had seen Chen Dong's picture in the video. It was exactly the same as the young man in front of him. This is not strange, this is not strange. No wonder he could recognize the trap at a glance. People Chen Dong is so awesome, a word is not easy. After recognizing the person in front of them as Chen Mu, the several creeps were instantly filled with excitement. They had dreamed of working for Chen Mu, but it was a pity that they couldn't find a way in. Now that Chen Mu took the initiative to recruit them, it was simply a good thing that fell from the sky. Chen Dong, when are you going to enslave us? The leading creepy instantly changed his face and said with a kneeling face, if food and accommodation are included, monthly salary of 10,000, every day has 4 hours of vacation, every month has a paid vacation, can enjoy the midnight hotel's working meals, have shopping cards and other benefits, and have a bonus at the end of the year. If you call that slavery, then these few creepy just wanted to shout, Chen Dong, please enslave us to your heart's content. Creepy will never be a slave unless. Soon, they took the employee card given by Chen Mu and smiled as they walked. Towards the midnight hotel no, they should be running. They can't wait, want to enjoy the slavery career. On the way, these bizarre security guards ran into another bazaar. This head of bazaar, seeing the other's excitement, asked in confusion. Why so happy? Did you kill a lot of humans today? The salesman replied, no, we're going to work for humans. Work for humans? Geez. You guys have disgraced your shenanigans. I can't believe you've been enslaved by humans. How did the humans enslave you? Chen Dong gave us these treats. The bazaar salesman said with an excited face. The bazaar was filled with shock after hearing that, humans are really hateful, this kind of enslavement career is too painful. We are all brothers, give me your employee cards and let me bear this pain for you. Chen Mu had recruited these few creeps to form his own security team, and also to prepare for cultivating his own forces. Starting with this security team, he would slowly form his own creepy army. After the few salesmen left in a flurry of excitement, Chen Mu continued to walk towards the front and soon arrived at the intersection. His private cab, was already waiting for him at the intersection. The driver got out of the car and respectfully pulled open the door for Chen Mu. After the two of them sat down, Chen Mu said, go to the landscape courtyard. Yes, boss. The driver stepped on the gas and the cab drove smoothly. During the traveling process, the driver suddenly said, boss, I feel that your aura is much stronger than before. Only after hearing the driver say this did Chen Mu notice that the strength in his body was actually much stronger than before. What was going on here? Chen Mu understood after a little thought that it must be the effect of the Dark Knight Colleges. Every time he bought a bizarre scene, his strength would increase by a large margin. Before buying the Dark Knight Colleges, he was a trickster soldier strength, and after purchasing the Dark Knight Colleges, his strength grew subconsciously and rapidly within a few hours. Nowadays, Chen Mu's strength, which had soared rapidly, had reached the next level, trickster chief. Elementary Guile Leader. After his strength jumped up a step, Chen Mu could clearly feel that as a human, he could actually control his body's guile chi as well. Looking at the spatial ring on his hand, Chen Mu's mind moved and drove his body's guile chi to slowly wrap the spatial ring. After being wrapped by the guile chi, the spatial ring disappeared from Chen Mu's hand. Can't say it disappeared, the spatial ring is still on the hand, only wrapped by the weird chi, the general people and weird can't see it. In the spirit of not revealing one's wealth, the spatial ring is a king of creepy prop, unique in the entire weird post-apocalyptic world. It's better to hide it, so as not to wear it on your hand every day, you can't be sure that it will be missed by someone who wants to snatch it. The speed of the cab is very fast, 20 minutes later, the cab arrived near the destination. As a high-grade villa area, Landscape Courtyard was located in the outskirts of the city. The suburbs had a good environment and beautiful mountains. There was no air pollution from the city, no horn noise. Surrounded by a verdant mountain forest, a moat ran through the mountains. The mountains are beautiful. Just right for the title of Landscape Courtyard, Chen Mu opened the car window, and the fresh air from outside suddenly rushed into the car. Taking a deep breath, he felt refreshed. What a great place to live. Don't look at this place in the middle of nowhere, but as a rich area, the transportation is absolutely convenient and fast. The city subway line 1, one of the subway station, just in front of the neighborhood of Landscape Courtyard. As long as out of the neighborhood, is the subway station. Within an hour, you can get anywhere in the city. Don't want to take the subway? Driving is no problem. A six-lane wide boulevard passes directly through the gate of Landscape Courtyard. With such a spacious lane, not many cars usually ran it, 
and only the rich people in the landscape courtyard would use it. Shen Mu couldn't help but lament that the rich were different, no matter what time of the day it was, they could enjoy the top-notch resources. The difference was that before the bizarre end of the world, Chen Mu was a resource that was enjoyed by others. After the bizarre end times and living a new life, Chen Mu became a rich man in the end times. And it was the top of the line rich man, sitting on trillions of plutonium bills that he simply couldn't spend. There was a saying that the rich man's money simply couldn't be spent. Chen Mu spent two days, the money in his pocket ah, is more and more spend more and more. 7. 5 million to buy a midnight hotel, only two days work, earned more than 2 million. He gave the duke a gift of more than 10 million dollars, and as a result, he got a billion dollars worth of general level props. The original price of 7 billion Dark Knight College, spent 100 million to buy, wildly earned 6. 9 billion. The more money you spend, the more you get. I've also made a ton of friends along the way. It's so sad. While Chen Mu was lamenting the hardships of a rich man's life, the driver suddenly turned his head and said, Boss, my car can't drive into the landscape courtyard. The periphery of the landscape courtyard seemed to have an air barrier that blocked outsiders, all of them. The driver's cab was blocked by this barrier. Even if the driver stepped on the gas and smoked, he could not break through the barrier. Chen Mu stepped out of the car and came to the air barrier. He tried to take a deep breath and fiercely blasted out with his fist. Boom! Only a loud bang was heard. The air barrier was unharmed. Chen Mu was a bit surprised, although he was a Guile Chief Jr., he was at least a Guile Chief's strength. In the hierarchical sequence of Guile King, Guile General, Guile Chief, Guile Soldier, Guile Citizen, it was already an elite strength. A fist blasted out, but it actually had no effect? Chen Mu pondered for a moment, and he realized that this air barrier was definitely not an ordinary power. If Chen Mu hadn't guessed correctly, it was the power of rules. Yes, the entire landscape courtyard was firmly protected by a rule. Seeing this, the driver looked worried, as he and his boss were blocked outside and could not enter at all. However, Chen Mu's face revealed an expression of satisfaction. The landscape courtyard was becoming more and more to Chen Mu's liking. There was actually a rule that was protecting the landscape courtyard from outsiders. This meant that in the future, when Chen Mu bought the landscape courtyard, unless outsiders saw through the rule, even if they were as strong as the Guile King, they would not be able to enter the landscape courtyard. An absolutely safe new home. Chen Mu stood outside the air barrier and began to ponder what rules, exactly, were protecting the Shan Shui courtyard. After all, the current Chen Mu was not the owner of the landscape courtyard yet, and he still had to find a way to get in. However, Chen Mu was confident that with his five years of experience in the weird post-apocalyptic world, he should be able to find out the rules as long as he used his brain. As long as you find the rules, then you can find the way of life. Different rules, the meaning of the way of life is also different. For example, for the rules behind this barrier, the path to life referred to the way to enter the barrier. While Chen Mu was pondering, a figure suddenly appeared at the entrance of the landscape courtyard within the air barrier. Chen Mu was not surprised to see a human figure appear. After all, it was the weird end of the world, and the landscape courtyard had turned into a weird scene, so it was only natural to see a weird person. However, when the person approached, Chen Mu was surprised. This silhouette was actually not a creep, but a living human being. What a living hell! Tone of voice? In the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere, how could there be someone? Shouldn't there be a ghost? That person was a young man in his twenties, when he saw Chen Mu, he was like seeing a life-saving straw, frantically rushing towards Chen Mu. While rushing, he shouted, Sir, are you buying a house? Imagine, in the middle of the night, in the outskirts of the city, a young man, chasing after you to ask if you buy a house. This scene was a scene that made people look at their backs. Too perverse ah. Chen Mu felt that it would be better to run into shenanigans, at least a little more normal. The young man ran to Chen Mu and snapped into the air curtain wall. Chen Mu realized that this air curtain wall was not only preventing Chen Mu from going in, but also preventing the young man from coming out. Suddenly, Chen Mu seemed to understand something. The young man looked at Chen Mu pitifully with a pleading gaze, Sir, are you buying a house? While speaking, the young man handed Chen Mu a card, handing it to Chen Mu. Surprisingly, the card could actually pass through the air curtain wall. Chen Mu's eyes lit up, and he instantly figured out. Why was this young man, appearing here? Why he was asking Chen Mu if he was buying a house? why the card could pass through the air curtain wall. Having figured all this out, Chen Mu had found a way to live by the rules. Only to see Chen Mu extend his hand, take the card from the young man's hand, and say, of course, I would love to buy a house. I came here to buy a house. After Chen Mu finished saying this, in front of him, a line of bloody characters appeared. Weird Mission, Landscape Courtyard. Mission Description, a luxurious villa located in the outskirts of the city. This used to be a paradise for the rich, until one day, disaster struck. Everything has changed. Dilapidated villas, dried up pools, empty ballrooms. The landscaped courtyard awaits its new owner. 
After these lines of bloody words appeared, the air curtain wall in front of Chen Mu cracked an opening. Chen Mu was able to enter the landscape courtyard. You wait for me outside. I already know what's going on inside. Chen Mu said to the driver. After saying that, Chen Mu looked at the landscape courtyard under the darkness of the night, and the corner of his mouth lifted into a playful smile. Interesting, really interesting. Things are starting to get interesting. A new mode of bizarre quests had begun. In the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, there was a specialized term for this new mode, diffuse bizarre scene. Chen Mu preferred to call it in layman's terms, the head-pulling distribution mode. Creepy scenes could be categorized into two types according to their size. One was small-scale, which became fixed-type bizarre scenes. For example, the Duke's Misty Museum is a typical fixed-type spooky scene. Like this kind of scene, it was small in size, usually only the size of a building, and the maximum would not exceed one block. The most important thing is that this kind of weird scene will not gradually expand. Even if another 10 years passed after the weird end of the world, the Duke's Misty Museum would still be that big, and it would be impossible to expand it to the size of a city. The other kind was the diffuse bizarre scene. This was the most terrifying existence in the creepy end times. As the name suggested, diffuse bizarre scenes would gradually expand their domains as time passed and the bizarre apocalyptic process advanced. Like Chen Mu's Midnight Hotel and Dark Knight College, they were actually all in this mode. As the bizarre apocalypse progressed, Chen Mu's power would grow, the more Midnight Hotels were opened, and the more campuses of Dark Knight Colleges were built. After 50 to 80 years, the Midnight Hotel could be expanded to the size of the city. Later there are bizarre scenes that can accommodate tens of thousands of people to participate at the same time, it is this kind of diffuse bizarre scene. As for the landscape courtyard in front of him, Chen Mu had already seen that it was the extreme of the diffuse bizarre scene. A scene like the landscape courtyard was not designed to kill people, but only to wildly expand in size. It would allow the victims who participated in the quest to seek out more people and pull them into the bizarre scene. As long as a sufficient number of people were pulled in, then that victim would be able to free themselves and qualify to leave. In order to find enough people, those victims, most likely, will set their eyes, on people they are familiar with, or even, their own family members. The number of people in the bizarre scene is also gradually increasing, and the scale is getting bigger and bigger. When this kind of pulling people's heads type of weird scene, is an extremely dangerous sign, means that the weird end of the world, is becoming more and more dangerous. The young man just now was a head puller, and couldn't wait to sell his house to Chen Mu. Once Chen Mu was interested and took the card, then Chen Mu was pulled into the bizarre scene. This was the only way Chen Mu knew of to break the air barrier. That was why Chen Mu revealed a playful smile and took the card. After entering the landscape courtyard, Chen Mu looked around and saw a dark and sluggish scene in front of him. Just as described in the quest, the villas in the landscape courtyard had fallen into disrepair and had turned into a dilapidated building. The moonlight from the sky shone on the ground, appearing cold and gloomy. Chen Mu couldn't help but be a little stunned as he surveyed the environment before him. It was at this moment that a middle-aged looking creepy, wearing a wide suit, a creepy gold chain, and the monocle of a capitalist's signature getup, appeared in front of Chen Mu. Seeing the frozen Chen Mu, this capitalist creepy smiled disdainfully, thinking to himself that it was another young man who was scared silly. It must have been the first time he entered the bizarre scene, and had already been scared out of his wits by the sights in front of him. Little brother ah, what are you thinking? The capitalist said eerily. It had thought that its sudden speech would startle Chen Mu. However, Chen Mu just gave it a faint look, not the least bit alarmed. Chen Mu's next words even made the capitalist creepy freeze in place. Only to hear Chen Mu not only not being afraid, but instead sighed in a regretful tone and said, Alas! I was thinking, this villa has become so dilapidated, how many plutoniums will I have to spend to fix it up after I buy it? Capitalist creepy? This person's brain circuits are afraid to be abnormal. Come on, you're entering the creepy scene hey, why don't you act a little scared? That would make me lose face, okay? And what did you say? You want to buy the creepy scene? Fuck me. You just entered a weird scene, and instead of thinking about how to survive, you're already thinking about how to buy it? No, he sounds like it's easy to buy it. What he's thinking about is how to fix it after he buys it. This young man is too crazy. Are all young people so abstract these days? This young man is too crazy. Simply no one in sight. Is not right, it is no one in sight bizarre. Capitalist shenanigans is very upset. No matter how, he is also the big boss of Shan Shui Courtyard, shenanigans at the level of shenanigans. Want to buy the landscape courtyard from yourself? Still thinking about how to decorate? Oh, this kid wouldn't have any misunderstanding about plutonium. He wouldn't think that it's a pile of plutonium burnt when going to the grave. No, he has to be shown the power of plutonium. Little brother, do you know how much it would cost to buy these villas? The capitalist bizarrely revealed a poem and said mysteriously. It has to be this amount. 50 million plutocrats. Do you have that much money? 
Unexpectedly, after Chen Mu heard this, he instead revealed a delighted smile. Only 50 million dollars? Quite cheap, I'll buy it. Chen Mu said cheerfully. The capitalist bizarrely froze, thinking that this young man was sick in the head. This was 50 million medieval dollars. He had no concept of plutonium, right? One had to know that the creepy end times had just begun for a month, and plutonium was rare both for people and for creepy. To put it in layman's terms, there was no inflation in the end of the bizarre world yet, and plutonium was very valuable. Like a duke's level of weirdness, at a time like this, if it wasn't for Chen Mu giving away some money, there were only a few hundred thousand plutonium coins in his pocket. This capitalist boss, his entire worth was just over 2 million metals. 50 million plutonium was dozens of times his worth. Such an ordinary young man could pull out 50 million medals. What a joke. But for Chen Mu, 50 million dollars was indeed a good deal. With so many villas in the landscape courtyard and the excellent location, these were all scarce resources. When the weird end of the world came a year or two later, with more and more weirdness and more and more plutonium, there was no doubt that the price of rare high-end villas like the landscape courtyard would definitely go up by leaps and bounds. Not to mention doubling, doubling dozens of times is not impossible. Buy early and enjoy early. This investment, a steady profit. Only to see Chen Mu, without saying a word, clapping his hands, to let the capitalist bazaar, to see the power of the plutonium. Come on, give it a little shock. As Chen Mu clapped his hands, a stack of brand new plutonium banknotes suddenly appeared on the ground next to him. 1 million, 2 million, 5 million, 10 million, 50 million. Stacks and stacks of medieval banknotes dazzled the eyes. Under the illumination of the moonlight, the stacks of plutonium banknotes looked particularly dazzling. Capitalist Creepy looked directly dumbfounded. It looked at the plutonium in front of it with disbelief. The stacks of plutonium notes, which emitted a strong bizarre aura, dazzled people. The capitalist boss looked at Chen Mu, his eyes filled with shock. He actually did have plutonium coins. And there were so many of them. This was 50 million dollars, 50 million dollars. He actually casually took it out with a clap of his hands. What kind of family fortune must this be? Okay, cut the crap and sign the contract. 50 million dollars, the entire landscape courtyard is sold to me. Chen Mu didn't have too much nonsense and directly stated his request. Selling the mountain water courtyard for 50 million dollars was actually quite a cost-effective deal for capitalist creepy. This was because it had never even thought that the landscape courtyard could be sold at such a high price. It could be said that this deal, for both parties, was a good deal. Chen Mu was earning money for the future, and capitalist Creepy was earning money for the present. Fine, fine, we'll sign the contract now. Capitalist Creepy agreed repeatedly and took out the contract for the landscape courtyard. As long as the contract was signed, Chen Mu would become the owner of the landscape courtyard. However, just when the deal was about to be concluded, capitalist Creepy suddenly changed its mind. It looked at Chen Mu in front of it, and in its eyes, a hint of greed showed. The young man in front of him was actually so rich that he could casually take out 50 million medals. Infinite greed began to well up in the capitalist's bizarre heart. The gaze it looked at Chen Mu also changed at this moment. Chen Mu became a lamb to be slaughtered in its eyes. Had it asked for too low a price? This young man's strength was a guile leader primary. He himself was a guile chief intermediate. In terms of strength, one was a bit stronger than the young man. Moreover, this is a bizarre scene, it's my own territory. The rules and whatnot are all things that I can change. The young man in front of me, in my territory, is definitely not my opponent. Then, selling it to him for 50 million dollars is a bit of a loss. No, I have to raise the price again. I want this young man to bleed heavily. Make a hard buck on him. Thinking of this, the capitalist Riley revealed a greedy smile and looked wistfully at Chen Mu. Little brother, ah, uh, sorry, I haven't told you the rules of the landscape courtyard. When you enter the landscape courtyard and want to leave alive, you must fulfill the following two rules. 1. Use 100 million medallions to purchase a villa in the landscape courtyard. 2. Invite no less than two friends to your new home. Only if you do these two things and follow the rules, can you leave the landscape courtyard alive? Hearing the capitalist's bizarrely insatiable words, the corners of Chen Mu's mouth once again revealed a playful smile. Things were getting even more interesting then. Originally, he had spent $50 million to buy the entire landscape courtyard, a dozen or so villas. Now the capitalist bizarrely sat on the ground and asked for 100 million medieval dollars and could only buy one of the villas. The price has risen dozens of times. Not only that, I guess I think Chen Mu is good at bullying. Chen Mu's friends must also be good at bullying. Capitalist Bazaar, directly play a sustainable exhaustion of fishing. Let Chen Mu recommend two more friends over. Continue to let it ruthlessly slaughter a sum of money. Chen Mu did not guess wrong. These two rules, it should have been one or the other. If you have money, you buy the villa and you can leave the landscape courtyard. If you don't have the money, you can pull a few more people into the gang. And if you pull enough heads, 
you can also leave the landscape courtyard. Now the good guy, Boschen sends it money, and it also raises the difficulty for Boschen? Chen Mu was shocked, he had met so many bizarre, but not one so bold. What a long time to live. Chen Mu suddenly felt that he had not acted too amiably, so much so that he made people think that he was easy to bully? When a lion puts on a sheep's skin, it doesn't mean that the lion becomes a sheep, it is possible that people have just finished eating a sheep. The capitalist is bizarre, looking at Chen Mu wearing sheep's skin, very nice and pleasant to talk to, and assuming that Chen Mu is a sheep. Then, it was time to take off the sheepskin and give it another little shock. Originally, he had been playing a game of human affairs with Creepy, and the other Creepy had to play it as a human accident. Boss Chen was angry and the consequences were serious. Boss Chen did not want to pay a penny, he wanted to make the capitalist bazaar in front of him, obediently give all the villas to himself. Thinking of this, Chen Mu instead revealed an amiable smile and said to capitalist Creepy, Good, it just so happens that I have a few friends, which don't want to move to a new home. I would like to invite them to be my guests. Capitalist Creepy smiled and was overjoyed. Thinking to himself that Chen Mu was really a soft touch, so quick to soften to himself, ready to pull heads for himself. He only saw Capitalist Creepy take out two cards, hand them to Chen Mu, and said, On the cards, write your invitation to your friends. If they come with the cards, as long as two people come, then you can leave safely. Of course, you'll also have to spend 100 million dollars and buy a villa. Taking the card from Creepy, Chen Mu said something that surprised Creepy. Two is too little. I have a lot of friends and need at least four cards. A surprised expression appeared on capitalist Creepy's face. With Chen Mu's intelligence, it was impossible for him not to realize that the matter of writing cards was punking his friends. To put it simply, it was utilizing a friend's trust, tricking the friend into coming over, and exchanging the friend's life for his own. With two cards, one could pit two good friends. Chen Mu actually thought the cards were too few and wanted four? Good lord, this was pushing his friend into the fire pit. If your friend doesn't want to come to Landscape Courtyard after receiving the card, then it's useless. The capitalist reminded Riley. Oh, sure. My friends trust me, they will definitely all come. Chen Mu replied with conviction. Only Chen Mu opened the card and wrote the invitation in it. Dear friends, I've come across something incredible. The boss of the Landscape Courtyard is definitely the best weirdness I've seen. He actually promised that he would give me the entire Mountain Water Courtyard. It's just so exciting. I want to share the joy with you. After you receive this card, please come as fast as you can to Shanshui Courtyard and I will give you a tour of my new home. Your forever good friend, Chen Mu. After seeing what Chen Mu wrote, the capitalist nodded with weird satisfaction. Just like many victims, in order to trick their closest ones into coming over, they would use lies, against those who trusted them the most. In the capitalist boss's opinion, Chen Mu was one such person. In order to attract his friends to come over, he intentionally lied to his friends by saying that the owner of the landscape courtyard was so nice that he gave him the entire landscape courtyard. Ha ha ha. Chen Mu was really shameless, in order to trick his friends into coming over, he didn't even care about his face when he bragged. Who does he think he is? I'm not a fool to give you the entire landscaped courtyard? This is simply the funniest joke capitalist creepy has ever heard. Chen Mu was also labeled as a person who liked to pretend in the capitalist's weird heart. Young rich and powerless, but also like to pretend, if you do not ruthlessly slaughter a knife, simply sorry Chen Mu. After writing the card, capitalist Creepy said, There are creepy carrier pigeons in the landscape courtyard, you tell me the address, I will let the carrier pigeons send it over. Unexpectedly, Chen Mu shook his head and said, No need, someone is waiting for me outside, I will have him send it. After saying that, Chen Mu took the four cards and walked towards the outside of the landscape courtyard. Capitalist Creepy was a bit uneasy and secretly followed behind to peek only to see Chen Mu arrive at the air barrier, and outside the air barrier, a cab was parked. Chen Mu threw a few cards through the window of the cab, and the cab quickly turned around and drove away from the highway. The taxi quickly turned around and drove away from the highway. So what Chen Mu said, someone is waiting for him, was a cab. The capitalist sighed in relief, it seems that Chen Mu really does not have much power, just a rich lone wolf. After all, from the appearance of the underworld cab, and ordinary cabs are not different, Chen Mu was the first to get into the cab, only to find that something is wrong. It was normal for capitalists to be too weird to see it. While waiting for the card to be delivered, Chen Mu returned to the landscape courtyard, where capitalist Creepy was waiting for him. Mr. Chen, those friends of yours, what kind of people are they? Capitalist Creepy asked. Those friends of mine, ah. Chen Mu thought about it and said, they are just ordinary people, maybe a little bit of money, a little bit of status, it can't be considered rich. Hearing Chen Mu say this, capitalist Creepy was relieved. This kind of people who had a little bit of money, a little bit of status, but weren't very rich or well established were simply the perfect leaks. With one cut, you can make a big profit, but you are not afraid of the other party's retaliation. 
Want to retaliate against me, also do not look at their own a few pounds. Capitalist Creepy has always been a bully, and now he is even more in a good mood, looking at Chen Mu's gaze, like looking at a lamb to be slaughtered. Idle now, why don't you pay the 100 million medieval dollars first? The capitalist's bizarre tone was laced with a hint of command. He didn't even add the names Mr. Chen and little brother, obviously looking down on Chen Mu. Chen Mu was only a junior guile chief and a lone wolf, with no background and no backstage, and now that he had fallen into his own hands, what was there to be afraid of? However, what he didn't expect was that Chen Mu not only didn't pay, but instead, he moved his fingers and collected all the 50 million medals on the ground. I know you're in a hurry, but don't be in a hurry yet. Chen Mu said smilingly. I'll take back this money first, so you can show me my villa first. It won't be too late to pay you when it's time to sign the contract. Of course, the premise is that if, by that time, you still want to collect my money, I'll definitely give you all of it in one cent. The capitalist Riley revealed a mocking smile as it wondered why Chen Mu had to say such cerebral palsy words. What did it mean by if I still want to charge you money? Isn't this nonsense? I definitely want to charge you money. Can't I just give you the villa for nothing? Immediately afterward, the capitalist bizarrely led Chen Mu to a villa, pointing at this small, remote and old villa, and said to Chen Mu, This is the villa sold to you, 100 million medieval dollars, not a single medieval dollar less. A villa this dilapidated, not to mention 100 million medieval coins, even 100 million money used by humans could easily be bought. Plutonium coins were much more valuable in the bizarre end times. This was clearly an insult to Chen Mu. However, Chen Mu still had a smiling face, seemingly unconcerned about the capitalist's bizarre humiliation. Chen Mu approached the villa, which had no decoration whatsoever, and was a completely rotten rough house. Chen Mu did not care and sat directly in the middle of the hall, revealing a calm smile. For some reason, upon seeing Chen Mu smile, the capitalist's bizarre heart was suddenly a little hairy. What's wrong with this kid? Being slaughtered and still smiling like a fool? It was at this moment that a series of crow's screams came from the sky above the villa. The capitalist was eerily clear that the crows were cawing at the hare, indicating that there was a new victim that had entered the landscape courtyard. Unsurprisingly, it would be Chen Mu's friend. His friend came really fast. What a good friend. But why do I have a bad feeling that something is starting to go wrong? The crow cause, an uninvited guest has come to the landscaped courtyard. In his hand, the uninvited guest held a card that easily passed through the air barrier. In the entire landscape courtyard, only one villa was lit up. The honorable black gold client was definitely there. This uninvited guest took three or two steps to the outside of the villa and walked into the villa's lobby. Chen Mu and capitalist Creepy, who were sitting in the hall, saw someone coming and looked in the direction of the front door. When it saw the visitor clearly, capitalist Creepy froze at once. It rubbed its eyes and looked carefully again, thinking that it had misread. The uninvited guest that came was no one else but the manager of the Fallen Mall. One had to know that Chen Mu was the Fallen Mall, the only supreme black gold customer. After receiving Chen Mu's card, the manager of the Fallen Mall didn't dare to be slow, and flew towards the landscape courtyard. Since Shanshui Courtyard was a rich area, it was very close to the Fallen Mall, so the manager was the first to rush over. When he saw that the person coming was the manager of the Fallen Mall, it startled capitalist Creepy. As a member of Creepy, Capitalist Creepy was well aware of the gold content of the Fallen Mall. In this city, there were several forces that occupied the ruling class. Midnight Hotel, Dark Knight High School, Fright Hospital, Fallen Arcade, and the superbly positioned Misty Museum, where I heard that a powerful Creepy General lived. No matter what, there is definitely a place for the Fallen Arcade among the top forces of the city. The manager of the Fallen Mall, his strength and status are naturally not bad. Capitalist Guile had always wanted to become a member of the Fallen Mall, but unfortunately, he hadn't spent enough money and was still an ordinary customer until now. Trying to meet the manager would be rejected. How could the manager suddenly run here? Could it be that? He is Chen Mu's friend? Thinking of this, capitalist Creepy couldn't T help but feel a chill. What is going on with Chen Mu? Didn't he he say that his friends were all ordinary people? Only a little bit of money and status. You call that a little? The manager of the Fallen Mall, the face of the city's top power, you call it a little status? What do you call that? Mr. Chen, you're our top black gold customer. On behalf of Fallen Mall, I've come to congratulate you on your relocation. This is a small gift, on behalf of Fallen Mall. With that, the manager took out a small box and handed it to Chen Mu. Inside the box, was a piece of gui jadeite worth millions. Chen Mu accepted the gift with a smile. The capitalist creepy next to him was taken aback after hearing the conversation between the two. Supreme black gold client? This wasn't something you could get just by having money. Capitalist Creepy surged with a bad feeling as it looked at Chen Mu, just as Chen Mu was also staring at it with a smile. Suddenly, Capitalist Creepy's heart thumped, feeling that things were not good. Chen Mu this kid. 
little brother, seems to have a little background ah. Before the manager sat down, on the roof of the villa, there came the calling of crows again. Someone is coming again? A few moments later, a female Gue wearing a red dress, with six Gue Chang level security guards, walked into the villa. Midnight Hotel Manager, Night Xiao Xiao, has come to congratulate the owner on his housewarming. Midnight Hotel? How was it another top tier power? Capitalist Giles' two eyes went black, this Midnight Hotel, was a newly risen power recently, it hadn't had the time to get to know it carefully. I heard that the boss behind the Midnight Hotel, seems to be a human, also surnamed Chen to come. Li Xiao Xiao shouted Chen Mu what was it? Master? Could it be that? Chen Mu was the owner of Midnight Hotel? Capitalist Creepy instantly cried without tears, it felt a deep deception. A little bit of money. A little bit of power. Chen Mu's definition of a little bit seems to be different from other people. At that moment, another crow caught on the roof of the villa. The capitalist shivered when he heard the crows cawing. Every time the crows cawed, there was a powerful person. Could it be that there was another big person of some status coming? It's true. A few seconds later, a beer-bellied, balding middle-aged man with a pleasant smile walked into the villa. The principal of Dark Knight High School. Capitalist Creepy recognized it at once. His family's child wanted to go to the key class of the Dark Knight High School, and he was trying his best to go through the relationship, wanting to stuff money to the principal. As a result, the principal paid a visit to the school before the relationship was finished and the money hadn't been inserted. The bad news is that the principal's visit was not to the capitalist, but to Chen Mu. The principal opened his mouth with a sentence that directly made capitalist Creepy almost die on the spot. Principal of Dark Knight High School, come to congratulate school manager Chen Dong on his housewarming. School manager. Chen Mu was actually a school director. Capitalist Creepy's eyes went black, and it almost didn't die of a brain attack on the spot. It looked towards Chen Mu and simply wanted to cry without tears. At this moment, only one sentence echoed in Capitalist Creepy's mind. A little bit of money, a little bit of status, all just ordinary people. At this moment, the Capitalist Bazaar experience, what is called the hearts of the wicked. Capitalist Bazaar to put it bluntly, is a businessman only, not too much power, the only dependence is the landscape courtyard these dozens of villas. Everyone here, whether it is the manager of the Fallen Shopping Center, or the Midnight Hotel's Li Xiao Xiao, or the principal of the Dark Knight High School, which one is not behind a huge background. It could be said that it couldn't afford to offend everyone here. The good news was, it hadn't offended any of these three people. The bad news was, the top boss of these three people, Shen Mu, was offended to death by it. Before capitalist Creepy could recover from the shock, on the roof of the villa, there was another crow's caw. Nima. There's no end to it. Capitalist Creepy was numb. There were three guests, one more than the other. This is going to come to the fourth guest, in the end what is the identity of the capitalist bazaar no longer dare to think. Capitalist bazaar only know one thing, his own today 80% to be accounted for here. A few moments later, a powerful strange gas, from outside the villa. This weird chi, even as a gui long, it was difficult to resist. Capitalist guile felt the danger. Those who had this kind of bazaar aura had to be far more powerful than the bazaar chief. Could it be that the person coming is a? Guile general? In the next second, the duke's figure appeared at the entrance of the villa. Brother Chen Mu, I received your invitation and have come to take a look at your new home to wish you a housewarming. Capitalist Guile was going to be unable to tense up and almost didn't cry out on the spot. You're completely bullying creepy ah. Capitalist Guile broke his defense on the spot. I'll let you pull a few heads, you shouted out four friends, three of them are the spokespersons of the top powers, and one of them is directly the strongest Guile general in the city. The top bigwigs in the entire city were all shouted over by you in one sentence. Chen Mu, you're a bully. You're playing pig in a poke, aren't you? I'm just a villa seller, can I mess with you? At that moment, capitalist creepy suddenly remembered a remark Chen Mu once made. If by then, you still want to charge me, I'll definitely give you every penny. At that time, capitalist creepy still laughed at Chen Mu's stupidity, thinking how could he not charge money? A son of a bitch for not earning money. But now... Even if Chen Mu shoved the money into its hands, it would have to kneel down and kowtow to Chen Mu, begging Chen Mu to take the money back. The capitalist creepy was now so flustered that its legs were shaking a little. It was only a creepy chief level creepy, and having been in business for years, its combat power had slipped badly. The duke who had fought hundreds of battles could easily crush it by casually moving his fingers. Being shouted over by Chen Mu to support the scene, the four bazaar friends all knew in their hearts that it must be this capitalist bazaar that had pissed Chen Mu off. They ran over in the middle of the night, specifically to help Chen Mu support the scene. The duke looked at Chen Mu and said, Little friend Chen Mu, show us around your new house? Chen Mu smiled, aren't you guys in the new house? Just now, the other creepy boss said that he wants to sell this villa to me for 100 million medieval dollars. The duke matched Chen Mu's performance and said with feigned surprise, 100 million? 
You said this broken villa is worth 100 million? Then, the duke's face sank, revealing a disgruntled expression as he looked at capitalist creepy. I heard that you're planning to sell this piece of shit to my friend for 100 million dollars? Being looked at angrily by Guile General, capitalist Guile was scared shitless on the spot. 100 million dollars to sell this small and shabby villa to Chen Mu, wasn't this clearly bullying Chen Mu? And the relationship between the duke and Chen Mu, very unusual ah. The capitalist could see that these two were definitely not ordinary friends, and had even reached the level of close friends. The duke was making it clear that he wanted to help Chen Mu out ruthlessly. Capitalist Creepy knew that if he dared to answer yes, that's it, it was estimated that without Chen Mu's hands, the duke would be furious on the spot, and would be able to raise his own ashes. Capitalist Creepy meditated in his mind, I still want to salvage it. There is no such thing. Absolutely no such thing. Capitalist Creepy hurriedly denied it, while showing a pleasing smile to Chen Mu. I was just joking with Boss Chen. Boss Chen is generous and kind-hearted. I'm just a house seller, how dare I bully Boss Chen. As long as Boss Chen says something, not to mention this broken villa, the entire landscape garden, I will give it to Boss Chen for free. But any time I charge a dollar, it would be disrespectful to Boss Chen. Chen Mu, however, waved his hand, that won't do. I don't lack money, so how can I take something from you for nothing? Capitalist Creepy was on the verge of crying, at this moment, its heart was filled with endless regrets. Marred. Why did he himself offend Chen Mu ah? If time could be rewound, back to half an hour ago, when Chen Mu had just pulled out 50 million dollars, he himself would have closed the deal without hesitation. No, he would have given Chen Mu a discount, not to mention 50 million dollars, directly 5 million dollars to sell to Chen Mu. In this way, they can sell a favor to Chen Mu, holding on to Chen Mu's thigh. If you hold on to such a thick thigh, you will be able to prosper in your own life. Whichever thought, he was a head jerk, greed is not enough to swallow the elephant, actually want to ruthlessly slaughter Chen Mu a meal. Chen Mu gave such a good opportunity, he not only did not grasp it, but also offended Chen Mu to death. The capitalist bizarrely admitted that offending Chen Mu was the most wrong decision it had made in its life. However, there was no medicine for regret in the world. It could only blame itself for being too greedy and stupid for falling into such a situation. The current situation was that if it wanted to survive, it could only desperately try to please Chen Mu, hoping that Chen Mu would let itself off the hook. Thinking of this, capitalist Creepy rolled and crawled, taking out the contract for the landscape courtyard. It directly plopped and knelt in front of Chen Mu, both hands respectfully, raised the contract over his head and placed it in front of Chen Mu. Boss Chen, this is the contract for the landscape courtyard. Boss Chen has a wide range of friends and is a righteous and righteous person, I am deeply impressed by Boss Chen and am willing to offer all 46 villas of Shan Shue courtyard as a token of respect. Boss Chen mustn't push back, if you don't sign the contract, I will kneel on the ground and not get up. The capitalist bizarrely blew Chen Mu wildly, knelt down and licked, and shoved the contract in Chen Mu's face, fearing that Chen Mu would not sign it. Chen Mu was a bit surprised, oops, boss you weren't like this before, I still remember that you didn't say before, 100 million plutonium, not a penny plutonium less. At that time, when you said this, you still had a very hangdog look. How did you become like this so quickly? Chen Mu shrugged his shoulders, it's not like he did anything, he just invited a few good friends. I still like how you were untamed just now. Chen Mu commented. Capitalist Creepy was just too enthusiastic, Chen Mu didn't want to sign, and it desperately begged Chen Mu to sign like it was a dead real father. I told you that the boss is generous, right, to take the initiative to give me the villa, I don't take it and it's still not happy. Chen Mu helplessly picked up the pen and signed his name on the contract. Seeing that Chen Mu was willing to accept the landscape courtyard, Capitalist Creepy was finally relieved. Boss Chen, the landscape courtyard is now yours. If there's nothing else, I'll get out first. Capitalist Creepy said carefully. All right, you go. Be careful on the road. Chen Mu said. Hearing Chen Mu agreeing to leave on his own, Capitalist Creepy was like an amnesty and hurriedly left with its ass in the air. However, it didn't do as well as the previous Creepy, who really rolled out, while the Capitalist Creepy walked out, which was more or less lacking in sincerity. Seeing that the Capitalist Weirdo had left, the other four weirdos in the villa revealed a smile. They had come here to help Chen Mu out. The Duke looked at the Capitalist Creep who had left and said to Chen Mu. Little friend Chen Mu, this creepy has suffered a big loss, and his heart must be filled with resentment. Do you want me to make a move for you to avoid any future troubles? The duke's meaning was obvious, the capitalist creepy had suffered a blood loss and was definitely resentful towards Chen Mu. It was only that right now, Chen Mu was so powerful that capitalist creepy didn't dare to move him. In case one day, Chen Mu encountered difficulties, there was no doubt that capitalist guile would definitely fall on his sword and retaliate back viciously. Regarding this point, it was impossible for Chen Mu not to be clear about it. Regarding the duke's good intentions, Chen Mu, however, shook his head and declined. There's no need to bother the duke to make a move. Guess why I reminded it, be safe on the road. 
Hearing Chen Mu say this, the duke revealed a heartfelt smile. Sure enough, he hadn't misjudged anyone, although Chen Mu was young, he was old and decisive in handling things without leaving any loose ends. Listening to Chen Mu's meaning, he must have already arranged for someone to take care of the capitalist shenanigans. Making friends with a smart person like Chen Mu was just comfortable. There wouldn't be a situation of being pitted by a pig teammate. In one exchange with Chen Mu, the duke became more and more satisfied with Chen Mu. Everyone makes mistakes, learn from them and just pay attention in your next life. Chen Mu looked in the direction where the capitalist had bizarrely left and said in a serious tone. Just as the duke had said, the capitalist's heart was in a state of fear after he bizarrely left the landscape courtyard. The celebration of returning from the dead made it gasp for air. Shit. Finally picked up a life back. Capitalist creepy cursed, venting the emotions in its heart. Soon after the mood of coming back from the dead calmed down, capitalist creepy's heart began to ache for its villa again. I have so many sets of big houses ah, just give them away for nothing. The capitalist's weird heart was dripping blood. After the heartache, the capitalist's weird heart surged with hatred towards Chen Mu. Shit. This kid doesn't just have a few friends, and by relying on that what's his name stupid duke, he snatched away all of the landscape courtyard, causing himself to suffer a bloody loss. When thinking about this, it never thought that originally Chen Mu was very sincere, and it was itself that wanted to ruthlessly slaughter Chen Mu. If Chen Mu didn't have a background, then the one kneeling down and begging for forgiveness and bleeding profusely at this time would have been Chen Mu. No, I can't swallow this breath. What happened in the landscape courtyard, sooner or later, I'll have to find Chen Mu to get my revenge back. That stupid duke, who could protect Chen Mu for a while, I don't believe I can protect Chen Mu for a lifetime. Capitalist creepy cursed viciously, it did not notice that on the highway behind it, there was a cab that was slowly following behind it. Sir, taxi? The cab stopped beside it, and the driver inside rolled down the window and shouted towards capitalist creepy. No taxi. I'm pissed off right now, if you don't want to die, get the hell away. Capitalist creepy said viciously, it didn't notice that the cab driver was also a creepy. You look pissed off. Is it because you feel like you can't swallow your breath about what just happened? What just happened? HM? How did you, a driver, know about me? The capitalist creepy sensed that something was wrong, it looked at the driver and was shocked to realize that the driver was actually a creepy as well, and was above itself in strength. My boss said, if you don't feel like swallowing this breath, then let me help you swallow it straight away. The driver opened the car door and walked towards capitalist creepy. Your boss? Capitalist creepy was alarmed, and it sensed danger. Suddenly, capitalist creepy remembered that when Chen Mu delivered the card earlier, it was handed to a cab. At that time, he himself was still laughing at Chen Mu thinking that Chen Mu didn't have much power and called out for a cab to deliver the card. What he didn't realize was that this cab driver was Chen Mu's personal driver. And one of the other person's drivers was stronger than himself. The gap between the two sides was too great. What could one do to fight with Chen Mu? However, this time, no one forgave it anymore. The driver faithfully carried out Chen Mu's orders, so that capitalist creepy, from now on, could enjoy a baby-like sleep, and could have 24 hours of sufficient sleep every day. Landscape Courtyard. Villa. After Chen Mu signed the contract, a powerful force was injected into Chen Mu's body. Chen Mu had already experienced this feeling twice. A moment later, Chen Mu could feel that at this moment, the entire Shan Shui courtyard was included in his sphere of influence. This was forcefully protected by the supreme power in the bizarre end times, the rules. From now on, the entire Shan Shui courtyard was Chen Mu's power. Congratulations, little friend Chen Mu, for moving into your new home. The duke smiled and congratulated. Congratulations boss. Congratulations to the owner. Congratulations to the honorable supreme black gold client. Several bizarre friends, all expressed their heartfelt congratulations to Chen Mu. At the same time, Chen Mu's strength, too, had risen considerably. From the beginning as a primary trickster leader, it had been elevated to an intermediate trickster leader. However, it stopped there. Chen Mu quickly figured out the reasons for this. For one thing, because the landscape courtyard, in itself, was not a huge power, it was just a luxurious villa complex, with the residential attributes making up the main part. Then, the increase in strength that it brought to Chen Mu was definitely smaller than a huge power like the Midnight Hotel or the Dark Knight Colleges. Secondly, as Chen Mu's level increased, the speed must have slowed down if he wanted to continue leveling up. A landscape courtyard that helped Chen Mu raise a small level had already satisfied Chen Mu. After all, if you thought about it, how many days had Chen Mu been reborn? In three days of work, he had leapt from a mediocre ordinary person to become an intermediate guile master. This speed was no longer something that could be described as a rocket ride. Looking at Chen Mu's rapid growth and strength, the duke was not only happy for Chen Mu, but also had a hint of envy. It was still good to be rich. To think that years ago, he had fought to the death on the battlefield, killing his way out time and time again in exchange for an increase in strength. From guile folk to guile chief, 
the duke had spent three years, Shenmu took three days, hundreds of times the upgrade speed ah, metaphysical novels didn't even dare to play like this, this speed, it was simply heaven defying, feeling the increase in strength, and also whoring out a landscape courtyard for nothing, Shenmu was in a great mood, the entire landscape courtyard had a total of 46 sets of villas. One of the largest and most luxurious set was the king of the landscape courtyard an oversized space of several thousand square meters, equipped with a swimming pool, tennis court, lawn, and a golf course. This one of the most luxurious villas, Chen Mu was going to use it for his own residence. The remaining 45 villas varied in luxury and size. They surrounded the king of the building, forming an arching stance. For these villas, Chen Mu definitely could not live alone. Chen Mu looked at a few creepy friends, which were all no match for himself. Now in the middle of the night, one of his cards was delivered, and without saying a word, he rushed over to give himself a hand. When the duke received the card, he was still having a dinner party in the Misty Museum, and was accompanying a few unlucky people, on a bizarre mission. After receiving Chen Mu's invitation, the duke, without saying a word, picked up his jacket on the spot and left, not even caring about the bizarre task. Those few unlucky humans, watching the big boss leave in a hurry halfway through his meal, each looked at each other, wondering who could make the big boss so attached. The duke's few people were so righteous, coming to help Chen Mu support the scene, of course Chen Mu would not treat his friends poorly. Only to see Chen Mu waving his hand, pointing at one of the villas, he said to the duke, Mr. Duke, if you don't mind, this villa, let's give it to you as a vacation villa. Hearing Chen Mu say this, a surprised expression appeared on the duke's face. He and Chen Mu were on very good terms, and he had come to help Chen Mu tonight purely out of the friendship between the two sides, and had never thought of asking for anything in return. With a wave of his hand, Chen Mu had taken a few million dollars of villa and given it to himself. The duke quickly refused, no, 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 Chen Mu is too polite. I'm just doing a favor in passing, there's absolutely no need to send something so expensive. It was normal for the duke to refuse. The villas here, each one of them cost around a million plutocrats. With a wave of his hand, Chen Mu was about to give the duke a million medieval dollar villa. The duke asked himself, he actually didn't put in much effort tonight, he just came to support a scene. To receive a million dollar villa just to support a scene? This is inappropriate, the duke's heart must be too much. Oh, mister. Duke, our friendship, don't shirk it. Chen Mu smiled and relieved the duke. The two of them pushed back a few times, and eventually, under Chen Mu's passionate persuasion, the duke accepted the villa with a sigh. Little friend Chen Mu is so generous, I really feel guilty. If there is anything you need from me, just give me a command. The duke was touched and said, he had never seen someone so generous as Chen Mu, and he felt more and more that it was a kind of luck for him to be friends with Chen Mu. Of course, the reason why Chen Mu was so generous must be that he had his own plans. Was the duke's trip here worth the reward of a villa? Of course not. Inviting the duke for a meal would be enough. Chen Mu knew it in his heart, but he still wanted to deliver. It wasn't because Chen Mu was a fool who wanted to give away money just for fun. Looking into his heart, every amount of money Chen Mu had spent since he was reborn was worth every penny and could bring him greater benefits. There were two reasons why Chen Mu wanted to give away the duke's villa. One, Chen Mu's new home lacked a powerful guard. Even with the protection of the rules, it would be difficult for outsiders to enter the landscape courtyard, but in the event that they did come in, such as a trickster general, what would Chen Mu be able to fend off? At that time, if he wanted to ask the duke to step in, not only would he have to use his friendship, but he would also have to pay a large amount of honorarium, because that wasn't simply holding up the fort. However, after Chen Mu gave the duke a villa, it was a different story. With the duke having one of his villas in the landscape courtyard, then the duke had a stake in it. Once an outsider invaded the landscape courtyard, not only were they robbing Chen Mu's property, they were also robbing the duke's property. When the duke's interests were violated, he would not need Chen Mu to ask him to step in, he would not hesitate to use his strength to fight against the invaders, and would not leave any room for extra effort. After all, touching one's interests was harder than touching one's soul. It's called bundling interests. With a million villas, tie the duke to a boat, and as long as Shan Shui Courtyard exists for a day, the duke will protect Shan Shui Courtyard for a day. For one million dollars, hire a trickster to watch your house wholeheartedly, and for a permanent period of time. Where can you find such a good deal? Secondly, and more importantly, Chen Mu also wanted to make money. How can you make money by giving the villa to someone else? Of course, it depended on who it was given to. Giving it to an ordinary creepy, of course, couldn't make any money, but giving it to a duke would be completely different. The value of a house is much more than a pile of reinforced concrete. A pile of reinforced concrete, speculated to the sky, can a villa be speculated to billions? That's a fool's errand. The most important thing about a house is the location. The essence of the lot is resources and connections. There is a saying how to say, under the feet of the son of God to do good things. 
At the foot of the imperial city, every inch of land is worth a million dollars, a toilet is worth a million dollars, just because the toilet next to the emperor. Landscape garden as a power, in fact, is not strong, not even count the city's top forces. But if there were trick generals living in these villas, then there was no doubt that the value of the villas would skyrocket. This was just the beginning, Chen Mu's ambition was definitely not limited to this. He wanted to build the landscape courtyard into a center for the rich and powerful in the weird post-apocalyptic world. Of the 45 sets of villas, Shen Mu planned to give away 35 sets and only sell 10 sets. These 35 sets of villas, Shen Mu was going to give them to his friends, to give them to the future powerful nobles and bigwigs in the post-apocalyptic world. Imagine, when 35 sets of villas are filled with dozens of creepy generals, or even creepy kings, then the entire landscape courtyard, the price of the house will skyrocket hundreds of times. Those newly promoted guile powerhouses, wanting to integrate into the upper class circle, would definitely have to live in the neighborhood of the upper class forces. At this time, Chen Mu will then sell the 10 villas to these newcomers, ruthlessly cutting their leaks. Ordinary shenanigans where there is no oil and water, are a group of poor people. These new powerful people are the ones who are rich. It is in them that the maximum profit can be extracted. The capitalist eccentrics were humiliating Chen Mu by selling him a villa for 100 million dollars. But when it really came to that kind of time, a villa, not to mention 100 million, even if it was a billion or two billion, those newly minted magnates, would not hesitate to snap it up. They would even be grateful to Chen Mu, thanking him for giving them the opportunity to join the upper class. Ten sets of villas, each sold for 1 billion dollars, were tens of billions of net profit ah. Not to mention the favors behind this. That was why Chen Mu took this opportunity to give the duke a set of villas. As for what the duke thought, Chen Mu was thanking him for stepping in, so he gave him the payment. That was the least important reason, at best it was a favor to deepen the relationship. The highest level of utilizing others is to sell them and let them count the money for you. They even have to thank us. What the duke does not know is that the moment he accepted the villa, he was also touched by Chen Mu. He has become a permanent security guard of the landscape courtyard, plus Chen Mu cut leaks with chips. But then again, this is also very good for the duke. The duke is also very profitable. Chen Mu like a win-win situation, we are peaceful as a friend, together to cut other shenanigans of the leak, is not it beautiful. There was no real win-win situation in this world. Often, the so-called win-win situation is just two big fish, teaming up to eat a small fish. Then the two big fish shook each other's hands and declared to the outside world that they were satisfied with the cooperation, achieving a win-win result. Looking at the duke getting a villa, Li Shaoxiao, and the principal on the side, their eyes were filled with envy. However, the two of them didn't have any other thoughts in their hearts other than envy. After all, he was a guile general, so getting a villa was normal. The two of them were only guile chiefs, even if Chen Mu gave it to the two of them, neither of them had the face to receive it. Unexpectedly, Chen Mu looked at the two of them and said, Thank you both for tonight as well. There are still a lot of villas in the landscape courtyard that I've reserved for you too. As long as you two work hard, I will also give you two free villas. Li Xiao Xiao, if you can make the entire city's dining, a market for midnight hotel in a month, then I will give you a large villa. Mr. Principal, if you can make every creep in the city, in one month, want to send their kids to our school, then I will also send you a villa. Hearing Chen Mu say this, an incredulous expression first surged on the faces of Li Xiao Xiao and the principal, and then an excited look appeared near the end. The two of them knew Boss Chen's character, Boss Chen was not an unscrupulous boss who only drew big cakes, Boss Chen was genuinely good to his employees. As long as Boss Chen promises, he will definitely do what he says. The two of them did not expect that they would actually be able to obtain the villa rewarded by Chen Mu one day. This was not only a huge benefit, but also an honor. Chen Mu was also intentionally or unintentionally building the brand of Shan Shui Courtyard, binding Shan Shui Courtyard to the highest reward in Chen Mu's entire industry, increasing the value of Shan Shui Courtyard. As long as his two men can do it, then it also proves their ability, in the future, they will definitely become a big man of the town. Giving them each a villa was also upgrading the Shan Shui courtyard. Li Xiaoxiao and the principal, both secretly resolved in their hearts that they must not fail Boss Chen's expectations. At this moment, Chen Mu turned his gaze, again, to the manager of the Fallen Arcade on the side. Undeniably, the manager's performance tonight was also completely impeccable. He was still the first to arrive at the scene. However, Chen Mu did not intend to, give the manager a villa. The reason was simple, Chen Mu was the customer, okay? The manager was the small boss of the Fallen Mall, and Chen Mu was the supreme customer of the Fallen Mall. Both sides are doing business. As the mall's supreme customer, letting the mall manager come out to do a favor, isn't this a normal transaction? You can't do a favor and give your boss a villa, right? Unless Chen Mu's head was messed up, he had become a pleasing personality. But Chen Mu will definitely show something. Businessman, then use the businessman's way. Only to see Chen Mu turn to the manager and say, 
Mr. Manager, look at these dozens of villas of mine, many of them are undecorated rough houses. I want to take these villas and give them all a good decoration. For the decoration materials, furniture and whatnot, I plan to purchase them from your fallen mall. You have to give me a favorable price. When he said the last sentence, Chen Mu smiled and bargained in a joking tone. When the manager heard this, he immediately understood in his heart that this was Chen Mu taking care of him, giving such a big order to himself. A villa's decoration, at least half to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Not to mention the king of the building that Chen Mu lived in, tens of millions of dollars could be invested in the renovation. This was a big order of hundreds of millions of dollars. The manager's face was already grinning from ear to ear. The big client Chen Mu was too kind. Tonight, I've made a lot of money. Simply too worth it. Mr. Chen, put your heart in a million pieces, if I can't satisfy you, I'll bring my head to you. The manager, who was greatly moved, made a military order on the spot, and would definitely not let Chen Mu down. Chen Mu nodded with satisfaction. After all, the villa's decoration, he is sure to find someone else to do, rather than cheap strangers, it is better to take care of the manager's business. We were all acquaintances, and the manager also saw that Chen Mu had the backing of the trickster general, and as a matter of fact, would be extremely attentive to the project, and would definitely give Chen Mu a favorable offer. Chen Mu also made a small profit, can get a little discount, but also can save the effort of supervising the work, save effort. Just suddenly, the manager suddenly thought of something, and a hint of difficulty appeared on his face. What's the difficulty? Feel free to speak up. Chen Mu could see the manager's difficulty. Mr. Chen, I thought of something. The Fallen Mall is mostly salesmen, and there are no employees who can do decoration. To renovate the villa for you, I definitely don't feel comfortable hiring those lone souls and wild spirits. That's why I'm in a bit of a bind, not knowing where to look for manpower. The manager said honestly. What he didn't expect was that just after the manager had finished talking about his difficulties, Chen Mu gave him a solution. Chen Mu looked at Li Xiaoxiao and the principal and said, The hotel and the school, they are both on their own. Do you have any extra manpower on your side? Li Xiaoxiao immediately said, Don't worry master, as long as you give me a word, I will bring all my staff over. The principal also stated, Dark Knight Collegiate School I can immediately suspend classes and call out all those teachers, everything will be based on Dong Chen's wishes. The duke also took the initiative to say, I also have some employees in my misty museum. If young friend Chen Mu does not mind, I will call them all over to help. Chen Mu waved his hand, don't affect the hotel and the school, duke you are also understaffed, so you don't need to affect the operation of the misty museum. Li Xiaoxiao had a bright idea and said, boss, I remembered. For our employees, we have four hours of vacation every day, why don't I call over the employees who are on vacation and have them come over as soon as they get off work. After working at the landscape courtyard, they can then go back to work. This way neither the hotel nor the renovation is delayed. Listening to the suggestion made by Li Xiaoxiao, Chen Mu also brightened up and looked at Li Xiaoxiao in admiration. This hotel manager of his own, cutting up leaks, really not soft, deep in his true heritage ah. Chen Mu waved his hand, well said. Let's do it according to what you said. Let the employees of the Midnight Hotel and the Dark Knight High School come to the Shan Shui Courtyard during their vacation time to do the decoration. However dash. Chen Mu's words changed, we can't let the brothers work for nothing either. Every employee who comes to work is counted as overtime. All employees who work overtime will be able to receive three times their salary as overtime pay. Not only this time, but any time in the future, as long as there are employees working overtime for me in my industry, I will pay triple overtime. Chen Mu's words dumbfoundedly Xiao Xiao and the principal. Overtime pay? What was that thing? Isn't it right to help the boss during break time? Why did the boss still need to give money ah? and it had to be tripled. It was no wonder that they were surprised, in the bizarre world, not to mention overtime pay, there wasn't even any overtime. Because 24 hours a day, all the time in the work, how to say overtime. Chen Mu instantly raised the concept of overtime, and also introduced overtime pay for the first time in the bizarre world. At least a few versions ahead of the weird world. The concept was so far ahead of its time that the weirdos had a hard time understanding it. Soon, the matter of Boss Chen's request for staff renovation was spread back to the Midnight Hotel and the Dark Knight College. In the Midnight Hotel, the creepy employees were enjoying a working meal. Brothers, Boss Chen said that the landscape courtyard needs manpower to renovate. After everyone finishes eating, don't rest, follow me to work overtime for Boss Chen. An employee shouted in the dining hall. Good. We definitely have no problem with Boss Chen's words. I feel guilty for receiving such high wages and benefits every day. Now that I can finally work more, I can't wait. A group of creeps put down their rice bowls on the spot and wiped their mouths to go work for Chen Mu. That kind of initiative and positivity, one after another wailing to go work overtime, those who didn't know, thought they had gone crazy. Taking the initiative to work for the boss? Still afraid of not being able to grab a spot? 
Other than Shenmue's industry, other bosses companies had never had this kind of spectacle. Very quickly, a message came back. Boss Chen said that employees who work overtime, all of them will pay overtime, three times their salary. When they heard this news, the first reaction of the weird employees was confusion. What happened? The weird employees ran through their logic and realized that it didn't make sense. The boss pays us a salary to buy our working time. We use our time off to work for the boss, so why does the boss have to pay us? And why triple the price? Got money with no place to spend it? In the words of other creepy bosses, it's a sin to give out money to employees for nothing. That's not blessed at all. This doesn't make much sense. At this time, there is a bizarre flash of light, suddenly realized and shouted. I understand. The boss is giving us welfare. The boss feels that everyone is short of money, so he thought of using this method to give everyone money to spend. At these words, the employees exclaimed in admiration. Other creepy bosses couldn't do this kind of thing, but if it was placed on Boss Chen, it wouldn't be out of place at all ah. What other boss, after taking over a loss-making cafeteria, also took the initiative to pay back the wages owed by the employees for half a year as well? It's Chan Mu. Which boss, who took the initiative to give his employees a double wage increase, and also took the initiative to raise their welfare bonuses? It's Chan Mu. Which boss, actually let the employees, be able to rest for four hours, and still have a vacation every day? It's still Chan Mu. Which boss gives his employees meals that are comparable to those of a five-star hotel? And it's fucking Chen Mu. That's not surprising, that's not surprising. A great benefactor like Boss Chen, sympathetic to his employees, thinking of them in every way. This side just pulled the welfare benefits, and afraid of employees do not have money to spend, take the initiative to use the overtime way, to give employees extra rewards. In order to let the employees do not feel guilty, can feel at ease to receive money, but also beautifully called overtime pay. A great benefactor. Boss Chen was truly a great benefactor. Brothers, just tell me, are we still short of money? One of the creepy employees suddenly shouted. The other creepy employees replied, no shortage. Nonsense, Chen Mu gave such high wages and bonuses, and those who worked under Chen Mu, even the lowest end employees, all had great benefits. It couldn't be said that they were rich and wealthy, but they definitely definitely didn't lack money. That employee shouted again, now that Boss Chen is starting his own business and giving us a large amount of money to enhance our benefits, Boss Chen himself must be very short of money. Even if Boss Chen is very short of money, he didn't even say a word, instead he was afraid that we didn't have enough money to spend and gave us overtime pay. Boss Chen is treating us like brothers. Now during the startup period, it is the time when Boss Chen is short of money, Boss Chen this overtime pay, I take the heart uneasy. Boss Chen treats me as a brother, I also want to treat Boss Chen as a brother. I definitely won't take this overtime pay. I'll work for Boss Chen for free. This bizarre employee's words spoke the hearts of the other employees. Yes, in the entire bizarre world, there was no better boss than Boss Chen to be found. If Boss Chen went bankrupt because he didn't have enough funds, then where would they find such a good boss? Definitely can't let Boss Chen go bankrupt. When Boss Chen is in such a difficult time, how can our conscience be clear if we still go and take Boss Chen's money and suck Boss Chen's blood? Is that something a human being can do? Oh, no, is that something that can be done by a trickster? This overtime pay absolutely cannot be taken. We can't add to Boss Chen's burden. The creepy employees quickly reached a consensus. We can't ask for overtime pay. We'll work overtime for Boss Chen for free. Boss Chen treats us so well, it's comfortable to work overtime. Very quickly, a large number of off-duty bizarre employees came to Landscape Courtyard in great numbers, joining the Decoration Army. These employees worked exceptionally hard, one by one like chicken blood. Decorating Chen Mu's house was like decorating their own. One employee looked at Chen Mu's big house and instead of being jealous, he couldn't help but exclaim. Look, for someone as kind as Boss Chen, he deserves to make a lot of money. Live in a big house. After working hard for four hours, these weird employees, without exception, did not register their overtime information and did not go to collect their overtime pay. As a result, Chen Mu quickly realized that something was wrong. His own villa, which was being rapidly renovated. Luxury floors, crystal chandeliers, green lawns. One piece of decoration rose up. However, a check of the work record, but found that no one is working. No one is working, how come the house is being decorated faster and faster? Living hell? Chen Basa survey found out, their own weird employees, actually one by one are not registered, are not receiving overtime pay. This is not good. This is not a matter of saving some money. Chen Mu, a landscape courtyard, spent hundreds of millions of medieval dollars on decoration. The overtime pay for the employees, full of hundreds of thousands of medals. Chen Mu had spent all the big money, but was he still short of this small amount of money? The main reason was that this affected Chen Mu's authority. Chen Mu was going to be able to say whatever he wanted in his own industry. Every order he gave, the employees had to faithfully carry out. 
Although Chen Mu was well aware that the employees did not want overtime pay out of love for themselves, this did violate Chen Mu's rules. It was absolutely impossible to start this bad. Thus, Chen Mu called out to his security brigade and ordered the security brigade. From now on, every employee who works overtime must take attendance and punch in, there must be no missing cards or omissions. The security brigade faithfully carried out Chen Mu's orders, but on the contrary, those employees who had received overtime pay were all downcast. Boss Chen is so difficult, and I'm still sucking Boss Chen's blood, am I still a trick? I'm sorry for my conscience. Right, why can't we work more? Overtime pay is fixed, if we just work a little more, it's equivalent to Boss Chen paying out less overtime. This proposal to sympathize with the boss was quickly echoed by a large number of employees. As a result, a large number of early arrivals and late departures appeared on the construction site of Shanshue Courtyard. Some employees in order to do more work, after work meals are not eaten, go straight to the site, the half hour for dinner to work. And they don't punch the card in advance, but only at the time of work. This is called early arrival. The so-called late retirement is also the same reason, once off work on the clock, but deliberately do not go, more work 20 minutes. On the way back, he would rather take a taxi, save the time on the road, pay the taxi fare himself, and also work more for Boss Chen. Chen Mu soon discovered this again, and he was shocked by it. What kind of brain circuits were these creeps? To continue working overtime during overtime hours? Chen Mu was going to acquire a hospital next, so he definitely needed to give his employees health insurance. The employees also had to take the initiative to work overtime during overtime, and when they exhausted themselves, how much more medical expenses would Boss Chen have to pay? This is no longer an ordinary involution ah, this is malicious overtime. It was necessary to curb this bad trend in the company. Quickly, Boss Chen ordered, pay strict attention to the company's attendance management, firmly refuse to arrive early and leave late, and not work a minute longer. When other companies tightened their grip on attendance, they were often going downhill. Chen Mu, however, when it was just developing, it was strictly grasping attendance, and it was still reverse strictly grasping attendance and refusing to arrive early and leave late. At a certain moment, Chen Mu suddenly felt that this bizarre end of the world, it seems to be played by himself a little bit wrong up. Under the crazy self-press of the employees, in just two days, the landscape courtyard had a new look. Even the manager of the fallen mall said that he had never seen such self-management ability employees. Boss Chen's batch of leeks, grow their own harvest, who see all greedy ah, have not cut such a high-quality leek, is simply a regret in the boss's career. However, the fallen mall manager was also clear that this was Chen Mu's ability. Otherwise, with so many weird employees, why were Chen Mu's employees the only ones of such high quality? Previously, the Midnight Cafeteria and the Dark Knight High School, they were all the same group of employees, so how come they weren't seen working so hard then? If the boss fooled the employees as idiots, then don't blame the employees for fooling the boss. The heart to heart. Chen Mu is good to employees, employees do not say on the mouth, the heart is remembered. No one is a fool, everyone has an account in his heart, who is truly good to themselves, who they want to return, we all know exactly what is in our hearts. Just the mouth did not say every day. Landscape courtyard renovation is completed. The final accounting of the cost of the time, the fall of the mall manager was greatly surprised. Due to the employee's desperate work, the construction period was seven days earlier than expected. Not only that, when the employees were working, they treated it as if they were decorating their own homes. If they could do a good job, they did it to the best of their ability, and if they could save materials for Boss Chen, they saved materials for Boss Chen. For example, some carpenters might have to cut two or three times, scrapping three boards, before they could cut a usable one. But the weird employees are fully concentrated, can be successful once, never do it a second time. Never increase the budget for Boss Chen. In this way, a lot of waste material was saved, and the cost actually saved more than $2 million. And the effect of the decoration, better than expected, all kinds of workmanship are extraordinarily fine and durable. This is the other decoration team on the market, absolutely cannot reach the level. Not because of the technology, but because of the heart. Chen Mu was very happy, spending more than half a million dollars more on overtime, in exchange for so many benefits, and saving more than two million dollars. One way or another, it was equal to earning more than a million dollars more. Cool. Chen Mu waved his hand, and from the one and a half million saved, he drew out half a million to give bonuses to the employees who participated in the renovation. Those employees who worked overtime were already guilty of Boss Chen, earning so much overtime and sucking so much blood out of Boss Chen. I didn't expect Boss Chen to give out bonuses. What kind of Yama boss is this? The man for the friend dies, can meet such a boss, even if it is to sell their lives to do is also willing to do. Finally decorated the new home, lying in thousands of square meters of villa, Chen Mu cannot help but feel a lot of emotions. A few days ago, he was still a poor boy. Now in just a few days, he had transformed himself and lived in a big house. Outside the door is the blue pool, the wide green lawn. 
The Duke had also moved into the villa next to him, and although he was often at the Misty Museum, whenever he had time, he would come to the villa for a vacation. The life of the rich and powerful is really degrading. Chen Mu took a deep breath, he knew that now was not the time to rest. It had been more than a month since the start of the bizarre end times, and the plutonium was in short supply in the early stages, and all industries were in desperate need of plutonium. This kind of time was the perfect time to acquire them. Actions should be fast. Now in Chen Mu's hands, he already had three major industries, Midnight Cafeteria, Dark Knight High School, and Landscape Courtyard, and had also established an excellent relationship with the Misty Museum, hiring the Underworld Taxi. In Chen Mu's ring, there was also the Underworld Bank. Although he couldn't take the bank out right now, he was able to constantly take money from inside the bank. Somewhat humorously, due to the process of acquiring the three major industries, Chen Mu had made a few big profits. So now Chen Mu, who had quite a bit of free money on hand, had actually deposited a few sums of money into the Underworld Bank. However, there was no need to worry, the Underworld Bank was already in Chen Mu's ring and would always belong to Chen Mu, there was no way it would swallow the deposits or anything. Chen Mu began to set his sights, looking towards his next acquisition. Now that everyone was so short of money, many industries were in the midst of a debt crisis, and there was an urgent need for Boss Chen to bring in a large amount of money to save them from the fire. The next target, of course, was the city's best and only hospital, Fear Hospital. After the arrival of the Bazaar Apocalypse, the original abandoned hospital, in the second week of the Bazaar Apocalypse, turned into a bizarre scene. This weird scene is called Fear Hospital. To say that this Fear Hospital, it's not really technically proficient. Or rather, the hospitals in the entire bizarre world were not very skilled. The purpose of the creepy hospital was, as long as you don't die, you win. Even if they die, it's because the patients can't be brought back. If you can cure one out of ten, that's a win. A big win. Even so, hospitals are in high demand for weirdos. Even the strongest weirdo doesn't dare to offend the hospital. Because it's rare. The hospitals that could treat creepy were too rare. Of the several surrounding cities, only Chen Mu's city had a fearful hospital that could cure bizarre. Although the effect wasn't great, but Creepy was sick and injured, and had no choice but to pay exorbitant medical fees to cure himself. There was really no other place to get cured. Even if the bizarre hospital technology is poor, to the late bizarre end of the world, as the number of bizarre more and more, the hospital bed is also difficult to find a bed. A large number of bizarre powerhouses, when suffering from serious fatal injuries, could only queue up to give gifts to the dean, only to beg for the hospital to be able to cure them. Therefore, with the acquisition of the Fear Hospital, Chen Mu almost had food, clothing, housing, transportation, education, and medical care, and was almost able to control the entire city. At this time, the operation of Fear Hospital was in a very bad state. To put it simply, Fear Hospital was in trouble. Because the hospital's technology was poor, so Creepy didn't dare to go to the hospital easily unless he was mortally wounded, for fear that the doctors would cure himself to death. Now it was again the early stage of the Creepy in times, the number of Creepy wasn't that much, and there was still a large number of creepy that hadn't appeared. And the power of human beings is also very small, many people do not even know the rules of the bazaar mission yet, let alone causing any harm to the bazaar. The number of bazaar was small, and the probability of being injured was small. Naturally, not many creeps would go to the hospital. The business situation of the frightened hospital naturally deteriorated extremely. It could be said that the two months at the beginning of the creepy end times were the hardest time for the fear hospital. As long as it survived this period of time, with more and more bizarre, the conflict gradually intensified, and more and more bizarre were injured, the status of the fearful hospital would directly take off, and it would be able to make a lot of money. Therefore, Chen Mu had already moved to depart, he was going to go and take advantage of this good opportunity to quickly buy the frightened fear hospital. That night, Chen Mu left the landscape courtyard and got into his private cab. Go to the fear hospital, Chen Mu said to the driver. The driver nodded, put his foot on the gas, and sped off with Chen Mu. In less than 10 minutes, the cab arrived at a remote suburb. Looking around, there were not a few residential buildings around, and there were even no pedestrians on the highway, making it look particularly desolate and desolate. In the darkness, there is a five-story building. In one of the windows of the building, a dark green light is lit in the dark night. From afar, it looked particularly eerie and spooky. This was the Fright Hospital, a hospital that specialized in treating the bazaar. Okay, let's park here. Wait for me outside, maybe I'll need your help. Shen Mu said to the driver. As a weird scene, the fear hospital naturally existed other weirdness. Based on the principle of no two tigers on the same mountain, the driver was not suitable to enter and could only wait for Chen Mu outside. After getting out of the car, Shen Mu took a deep breath. The cool evening breeze, mixed with the faint smell of disinfectant, instantly made Chen Mu awake. Regarding this hospital, Chen Mu knew very little. After all, in his last life, Chen Mu did not have enough strength and would have been struggling to survive, and would not have gone to a weird hospital to play with nothing. 
Therefore, most of Chen Mu's knowledge of the fright hospital was through hearsay. Looking at the eerie hospital in front of him, Chen Mu could not help but lament. I also don't know what kind of situation is the fearful hospital, in the end. Arriving at the gate of the frightened hospital, the gate was open and the security hall at the entrance was empty. Chen Mu easily walked through the gate, and in front of him was the small five-story building that emitted a weird green light, the fear hospital. In the next second, a line of bloody characters slowly appeared in front of Chen Mu. Weird mission, midnight doctor. Mission description, in the remote outskirts of the countryside, there stood an inconspicuous hospital building. Every midnight, there are always strange patients, coming in and out of the hospital. You are a young doctor who is not very good at finding a job. Finally, one day, a hospital named Fear is willing to provide you with an internship, inviting you to be the doctor on duty at midnight. You cherish this internship opportunity and come to this mysterious hospital. Lines of blood crossed, and the temperature in the air lowered considerably at this moment. The cold evening wind blew, the smell of disinfectant filled the air, Fear hospital windows, seems to have flashed a silhouette. Chen Mu cheered up, ready to walk towards the building. As soon as he entered the building, the pungent odor hit his face, and the tile walls inside the building were covered with bright red bloody handprints. This background is a bit eerie. Chen Mu could not help but lament. After playing so many bizarre missions, the background of this hospital was the first one that made Chen Mu feel uncomfortable. While Chen Mu was observing the environment, an icy voice came from behind Chen Mu. You are the new doctor on duty, right? Chen Mu turned around to look, a female guile in a nurse's uniform was looking at him from behind. Oh, yes. Chen Mu replied. According to the description of the bazaar mission, he was now a new intern doctor. Please follow me, the head doctor is waiting for you inside. The little nurse said while showing Chen Mu the way. The two walked a few steps and came to a door. On the door, there were a few words written in blood red. Duty operating room. Pushing open the door, a strong smell of blood hit their faces. The ghastly white surgical lights illuminated Chen Mu's eyes uncomfortably. In the center of the room, an operating table was placed. Next to the operating table, there was a small cart filled with various surgical tools. On the walls of the room, a blood-red colored banner was hung. Only to see that above these banners, there were lines and lines of big words written on them. Wonderful hands, a kind-hearted doctor, saving lives and helping people. It looked like this doctor was loved by his patients. On top of that, throughout the room, there was a creepy wearing a doctor's costume. Dr. Creepy was wearing a white costume and looked to be an old man in his 60s, wearing old-fashioned glasses. This weirdo was the chief doctor as the nurses called him. Seeing Chen Mu arrive, the chief doctor revealed a kind smile to Chen Mu. Aya, finally a newcomer has come. I'm getting old and my hands are not as good as they used to be. Having a newcomer here will be able to take over my surgeries. The head doctor said, handing Chen Mu a manual. Young doctor, first time in the operating room, right? On top of this manual, the requirements in the operating room are written. Follow the contents of the manual well, I will be there to guide you. I believe you, will become a qualified doctor. The chief doctor's enthusiasm surprised Chen Mu a little. This was the first time that Chen Mu, without a gift, had met such a kind and eerie person. Chen Mu did have some gifts in his ring. However, due to the fright hospital, Chen Mu hadn't been here before, unlike the Misty Museum, which Chen Mu had touched in his previous life, before he dared to give gifts as soon as he came up. Therefore, in order to be on the safe side, Chen Mu did not send any small gifts for the time being, waiting for the opportunity to feel out the situation before saying so. Receiving the manual and flipping through its contents, Chen Mu realized that the manual was written with a single rule. As the new doctor on duty, you need to abide by the following rules. 1. Fear Hospital is a strict hospital, gifts to doctors, nurses, patients, etc. are not allowed or you will be penalized. When he saw the first rule, cold sweat broke out on Chen Mu's back. Luckily, he was cautious and didn't pull out a gift right off the bat, or else he would probably be dead already. The five years of weird post-apocalyptic experience from his previous life still played a lot of role, at least making Chen Mu a lot more cautious. Continue reading. 2. The head doctor is an experienced veteran doctor with excellent medical skills and high moral standing, he will not cheat you and will always give the right treatment. 3. During your shift, you need to treat 5 patients. After completing the treatment of 5 patients, the mission ends automatically. 4. Out of the 5 patients, you need to cure at least 3 patients, otherwise the mission is considered a failure. 5. The success of a doctor cannot be separated from the evaluation of his patients. Only the patients can give the answer to whether they have been successfully treated or not. 6. Some patients are withdrawn, this kind of patient is very difficult to get along with, you need to give more patients and technology, to avoid them to give you a bad evaluation. 7. Fear hospitals have fewer patients, you need to have enough patients and wait for the patients to come to see you. Never leave the on-call surgery until your task is completed. 
There were a total of these rules written in the manual, and Chen Mu memorized them one by one. From the description of the rules, the chief doctor was on his side, it would not deceive him and would be able to give the correct treatment. After all, Chen Mu hadn't studied medicine, much less understood bizarre treatments. Without the chief doctor's guidance, Chen Mu would definitely have no way to begin. So, where was the killing chance hidden in these rules? And where was the path to life hidden? Chen Mu began to think about this question. Based on Chen Mu's past experience, the first point that could be surmised, the the chief doctor might be on Chen Mu's side and would be an important help to the success of the mission. As stated in the rules, the chief doctor was honest and would not deceive Chen Mu, and was experienced enough to give the right treatment. Did this mean that by doing what the chief doctor said, the patient could be successfully cured? Chen Mu buried this speculation in his heart first. Looking at the rules, the most dangerous one would be rule number 6. There are patients who are withdrawn, such patients are very difficult to get along with, you need to give more patience and skill to avoid them giving you bad reviews. In other words, one might encounter difficult patients. This kind of patient would give Chen Mu problems and make things difficult for Chen Mu. Once the patient gave a bad rating, then Chen Mu would be considered to have failed once. He could only fail a maximum of two times. More than two times, it would be considered a mission failure. This was the information Chen Mu had surmised from the rules, for the time being. As for more information, and what the path to life was, Chen Mu had no way of knowing yet. After all, Chen Mu was not an omniscient god, he found the answer step by step through logical reasoning. Now that the clues were not complete, logical reasoning could only go so far. The next step was to wait for the patient to appear. As described in the rules, the patients in the fright hospital were pitifully few. After Chen Mu arrived, the kindly chief doctor let Chen Mu sit and rest, and comforted him. There are fewer patients at night, so it's normal to wait more. What I didn't expect was that this wait was half an hour. Finally, just when Chen Mu's but was about to hurt from sitting, the door of the on-duty operating room was finally pushed open. Entering the door was a humanoid creep. Doctor, my arm is broken, quickly help me stitch up the wound. As soon as this bazaar came in, it grimaced and yelled in pain. Chen Mu looked at the bazaar patient, it was indeed as the patient said, one of its arms was broken, revealing a blood-red incision. In the blood-red incision, there were pieces of broken meat and blood vessels scattered about, which looked extraordinarily horrifying. Chen Mu was instantly pumped up, he had seen a lot of this kind of scene, but having to stitch the wound back together for creepy was the first time he had done it. The head doctor came to the patient and said, Chen Mu, quickly help the patient onto the operating table and prepare to operate on the patient. Hearing the chief doctor's words, Chen Mu walked forward and tried to assist the patient. He wasn't worried about the patient attacking him, as he was still protected by the death heavy armor. Although the rule violation ability had entered a cooling off period, the death heavy armor's protection was still very strong. Ordinary shenanigans could not harm Chen Mu at all. This patient didn't give Chen Mu any trouble and cooperated by getting onto the operating table and lying down on it. You've done a great job, next bring over the disinfectant water and sterilize the patient's wounds. The chief doctor pointed to a bottle and said to Chen Mu. As the chief doctor had said when they met, he was too old to do the surgery himself, so he was only responsible for guiding Chen Mu through the procedure. Chen Mu followed the direction that the chief doctor pointed and came to the operating table, and on the trolley on the operating table, he found the small bottle. There was no label on the bottle, and it was filled with a transparent liquid. Using sterilized water to treat wounds, this was the first time Chen Mu had seen this kind of operation, in his impression, shouldn't he have used alcohol or something like that? Maybe it was just that weirdness and people were different. Chen Mu picked up the bottle and asked towards the head doctor, is this the bottle? Yes. Hurry up and clean the patient's wound. The chief doctor urged. According to the rules, the chief doctor would not deceive himself. Chen Mu took his words at face value for the time being, took the sterilized water used by Guile, and began to sterilize Guile. As Chen Mu began to sterilize, the people in the operating room all began to enter their respective roles. The head doctor was observing the condition, and from time to time, he was instructing Chen Mu from the side. Chen Mu kept his head down, performing the surgery under the shadowless lamp. The nurse stood at the side, occasionally giving Chen Mu a hand and passing things around. The patient, on the other hand, was lying on the operating table, calmly undergoing the surgery. Every person in Guile, all entered their respective roles, and it looked like there was really that much of a surgery going on. Don't pour it on directly, use a cotton swab to sterilize it. The force of the swab should be lighter, not too heavy. Sterilizing once is not enough, at least three times. The head doctor carefully guided from the side, patiently correcting Chen Mu's mistakes. Finally, after spending 10 minutes, Chen Mu finished sterilizing the wound. Very good, the next step is to cut off the shredded flesh before we can sew up the wound. The chief doctor instructed step by step, and following his instructions, the surgery proceeded in an organized manner. Chen Mu also had to admit that the chief doctor still had two skills. 
Several times during the surgery, if not for the chief doctor's reminder, Chen Mu had almost made a mistake. And with the chief doctor's guidance, Chen Mu didn't see any mistakes, at least it wasn't obvious that he was leading Chen Mu into a pit. It went too smoothly, my heart is a little panicked instead. Chen Mu murmured in his heart. Very quickly, the minced meat was also cropped. The cutting of the bizarre shredded meat felt strange, and a foul odor permeated from time to time. The minced meat was cold, like rubber, and was clearly different from that of a human. Dr. Chen Mu, you did a great job, you're the smartest young doctor I've ever seen. The head doctor complimented. Very good, next, you need to sew up the patient's wound. Nurse, bring the sutures over to Dr. Chan Mu. Under the chief doctor's arrangement, the nurse quickly took some sutures and handed them over to Chen Mu. It was Chen Mu's first time operating on Creepy, and the operating room was filled with the smell of blood and antiseptic water, surrounded by bleak white lights. The good thing was that the steps for sewing up the wound were not that difficult. The head doctor showed Chen Mu how to wrap the blood vessels with thread. It was not known if it was because, this bizarre patient was designed for the mission, anyway, its blood vessels were thick and large, and sewing them up was not difficult, even without specialized training. Chen Mu quickly learned how to sew it up. Half an hour later, Chen Mu sewed up the last piece of the wound, and the patient's broken incision was finally taken care of. The surgery was over. The entire process came down without any abnormalities. Everything went smoothly. Chen Mu, however, frowned, not having the slightest joy of a successful surgery. This was because, he smelled a hint of something wrong. This was all simply too smooth. So smooth that it was somewhat unbelievable. During the surgery, the patient had not been difficult, the chief doctor had patiently guided, the nurses had actively cooperated, and, he himself didn't encounter any accidents. In 30 minutes, a bizarre surgery was over perfectly. This was not right. According to Chen Mu's understanding of the bizarre end times, as the bizarre end times developed, overall, the difficulty of the bizarre missions, was getting harder and harder. Just like the midnight cafeteria, the mission rules were moderate. To the Misty Museum, for the first time, there were induced rules that induced players to move in a game of hide and seek to the point where they couldn't discover a lifeline where they could live if they stayed still. Obviously, the Misty Museum is a bit of a step up in difficulty from Midnight Cafeteria. Then, later, in Deadly Exams, the misdirection rule was introduced for the first time. It's not so much baiting the player as it is outright misleading the player, making him act strangely and making his classmates suspect that he's just being weird. The difficulty has been taken up another notch. Three days had passed since this time's Fright Hospital, before the fatal exam. During the three days, the difficulty of the creepy quests, as a whole, would be raised somewhat. Although a small portion of the bizarre tasks, might still be easy, the general trend was the same, the tasks were getting harder and harder. Especially the frightened hospital, as one of the top forces, would definitely see a gradual increase in difficulty. And the first Operation Chen Mu participated in was so easy. The difficulty was even lower than the midnight cafeteria. As long as one overcame the discomfort of the blood and flesh and followed the chief doctor's instructions, one could easily pass. There was no need to even move his brain. In Chen Mu's heart, he silently raised his vigilance a touch. The current clues were still too few to speculate on the birth path. Let's take one step and see what happens. At this moment, the patient came down from the operating table, looking satisfied with the results of the surgery. This young doctor, your medical skills are brilliant. What a wonderful hand. Chen Mu smiled and said, if you are satisfied, remember to give a favorable review. The patient packed up her things and left from the operating room. The first surgery of the night, over. By the time the patient left, before Chen Mu's eyes, the indication of whether the surgery was successful or not had not yet appeared. Five minutes later, a line of blood characters slowly surfaced in Chen Mu's field of vision. First surgery. Score, 40 points, 60 points passing. Surgery result, failure. When he saw this prompt, Chen Mu's heart sank, but he was not overly surprised. As expected, there was an accident. The patient, after leaving the hospital, gave Chen Mu a rating for this surgery. Failing. Chen Mu began to carefully think back to the surgery and where he had gone wrong. Why did the patient give the patient a failing grade for what seemed like a perfect surgery? If every patient was like this, then how should he himself react? One could only fail twice at most, and there was still one last chance left. In the process of Chen Mu's thinking, time passed by minute by minute. In the frightened hospital at night, there were far fewer patients, and in the next hour, not a single patient came in anymore. In the midst of his constant pondering, Chen Mu's mind gradually gained a hint of inspiration. He looked towards the walls of the operating room, where blood-red banners were plastered all over. Wonderful hands, saving the dead and helping the wounded. This series of brocade flags were all sent by patients. Suddenly, Chen Mu noticed that the number of brocade flags on the walls seemed to have changed slightly. I remember when I first came here, I counted it, it was 43 brocade flags, now it seems. There is one more. 
Chen Mu said silently in his heart. When he had just entered the bazaar scene, he had memorized the layout of his surroundings, including counting the brocade flags on the walls in detail. This was Chen Mu's regular operation, after all, being able to survive for five years in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, this ability Chen Mu still had. This was because Chen Mu knew very well that very often, hints about the way to survival would not only be hidden in the rules, but would also be hidden in the bizarre scenes. Otherwise, the player would just take the rules and reason directly, why explore the weird scene step by step. If Chen Mu remembered correctly, when he first came here, the banners on the wall were 43. When the first patient left, the banners on the wall, without realizing it, had added another one. Miraculous hands. That's it. That's the one. Chen Mu remembered, just now, this place was a white wall, and just shortly after the patient left, there was another banner here. It was impossible for the bizarre scene to change randomly, and any subtle changes were hinting at the player's path to life. When his own surgery failed, there was one more, wonderful hands. Chen Mu once again observed the brocade flags on the wall, and he suddenly realized that amongst the crowd of praising brocade flags, there were two occasional cursing brocade flags interspersed. Incompetent quack. Family died violently. Suddenly, Chen Mu's mind's thoughts tumbled as he thought of the reason for this. If he wasn't wrong, in the operating room here, every time a surgery was performed, there would be one more brocade banner on the wall. The content of the banner was hinting at the success or failure of the surgery. According to the arrangement of the mission scenario, before his own arrival, it had been this chief doctor who was in charge of this operating room. Because Chen Mu observed the duty roster at the door when he came in, the same name was on the roster for the past two months, indicating that the doctor here had not been replaced. It meant then that the banners on these walls were hinting at the successful or unsuccessful outcome of the chief doctor's surgery. In this way, Chen Mu's thoughts became clear at once. In the context of Creepy, when Creepy sent you a banner with, wonderful hand, written on it, it wasn't praising you, it was scolding you. On the contrary, when Creepy sends you a banner that says, family dies violently, trust Creepy, it's wishing you a heartfelt blessing. Context. The culture of the spooky world. In Creepy's culture, wonderful hands, represents a failed surgery, and, whole family dies violently, represents a successful surgery. Obviously, the concept of weird world culture is introduced for the first time in this weird quest. When players were not clear about the weird world culture, they would misunderstand the meaning of the banner, or just ignore it as background. Only when the player clearly understood the culture of the weird world and knew that the banners were scolding the doctor could the player find the hints of the weird quest. Sure enough, this bizarre quest was by no means as simple as it appeared. What Chen Mu hadn't expected was that the difficulty of the bizarre mission in the fright hospital would be so high that it actually brought in the culture of the bizarre world as well. This time, the bizarre scenes had already begun to be arranged according to the bizarre culture. So, this wall of banners is actually telling the player that the head doctor's skills suck. In these two months on duty, he's performed 43 surgeries, and only two of them have been successful, all the others have failed. What a quack. The crack appeared. Chen Mu's eyes revealed a look of surprise as he finally realized what was wrong. Rule number two. The chief doctor is an experienced veteran doctor with excellent medical skills and high moral standing. He will not cheat you and will always give the correct treatment. It is mentioned in this rule that the chief doctor is highly skilled in medicine. However, judging from the facts, the chief doctor's medical skills were not superior at all, and instead, he was a complete quack. Chen Mu took a deep breath, if he hadn't guessed wrong, the wrong rule had appeared for the first time in this bizarre mission. Thinking of this, Chen Mu instantly became excited. He even had a way to validate his idea, it didn't require any complicated steps, just a single sentence to validate that it was a wrong rule. Only seeing Chen Mu looking towards the chief doctor, he suddenly spoke. Chief doctor, please tell me, in your past 43 surgeries, how many times have you succeeded? Upon hearing this question from Chen Mu, the chief doctor's expression immediately changed. He stared at Chen Mu incredulously and opened his mouth, wanting to say something but unable to, momentarily speechless. Chen Mu continued, Chief doctor, then please tell me, are you a skilled doctor? Chen Mu said while pointing at the brocade banner on the wall. The chief doctor was silent, and after a moment, he sighed and finally spoke slowly. You guessed it all? The reason why the chief doctor said this was because Chen Mu had asked the question that he could not answer. Chen Mu had guessed correctly that the chief doctor's skills were indeed lousy, and his medical skills were not superb at all. Then when Chen Mu asked this question, no matter how the chief doctor answered, he would tell Chen Mu an answer. Rule number two is a wrong rule. If the chief doctor answered, my medical skills are excellent, then he was cheating Chen Mu. In the second rule, it was clearly stated that the chief doctor will not cheat you, so once he cheated Chen Mu, it meant that he was directly telling Chen Mu that the second rule was wrong. If the chief doctor answered, my medical skills suck, this was indeed not cheating Chen Mu, but the second rule clearly stated that the chief doctor was highly skilled. Therefore, even if he answered in this way, the chief doctor was still saying that he had told Chen Mu that the second rule was wrong. 
The chief doctor stammered, unable to answer. Seeing this, Chen Mu revealed a smile. From the chief doctor's performance, he had gotten the answer. It was a wrong rule. After a few moments, the chief doctor could not help but sigh and looked at Chen Mu and slowly said, You are very smart, a total of ten people have come to me, and you are the only one who asked this question. He he, probably for a long time to come, I will be the only one to ask this question. Chen Mu laughed. It was true that he didn't pretend to be a pussy, and if it weren't for his five years of experience, very few people would have thought of this. In fact, in Chen Mu's previous life, it was only three months after the bizarre end of the world that one after another people realized that the rules in the original bizarre quests might be the wrong rules. Prior to that, all the people who participated in the weird mission had taken the rules as their lifeblood, not daring to cross the line one step, and trembling with fear and trembling to do what the rules required. Obviously, in this bizarre mission, the people who listened according to the rules had all died out. Then the reason why my surgery failed just now is obvious. It's because of your guidance, doctor, right? The second rule is wrong, meaning you're not skilled and won't necessarily tell me the correct steps. So as long as I follow what you tell me, then there's a high probability that the surgery will fail. After recognizing the wrong rule, Chen Mu pinpointed the reason for the surgery's failure. The chief doctor looked at Chen Mu with more than a hint of marvel in his gaze. He admitted that even if it was him substituting for Chen Mu, he would not have been able to discover the problem so quickly. Chen Mu took a deep breath, and as he thought further down the line, he realized that the problem did not get any simpler. Whether the doctor was unskilled or not telling the truth, there was no doubt that for the next few surgeries, Chen Mu could never listen to the doctor again. As long as he listened to the doctor's instructions, then the process of the first surgery would be repeated. The surgical process went well, but the result of the surgery was always a failure. However, Chen Mu knew very well that he knew nothing about medicine. In particular, he knew nothing about weird medicine. The chief doctor's guidance was no longer credible, so how could he do the surgery himself? Chen Mu only had one chance left. As long as it was a bizarre mission, then there must be a way of life that existed. This meant that even if Chen Mu knew nothing about bizarre medicine, he could definitely survive the bizarre mission. It would definitely be possible to achieve a successful outcome of the operation. Chen Mu could only continue to think about the rules, wanting to continue to look for clues from the rules. Time passes. For the next half an hour, there was no longer a patient in the entire on-duty operating room. Chen Mu stared at the rules for half a day, and finally, he came up with a possible way to survive. Obviously, according to the rules, whether the surgery was successful or not was evaluated by the patient. If the patient failed the evaluation, then Chen Mu would be in trouble. Since Chen Mu couldn't solve the trouble, then why not try to solve the person who created the trouble? For example, if killed the weird patient, the patient was already dead, so wouldn't it be impossible to make an evaluation? Then one wouldn't receive a bad review. Will there be a default favorable review? This was the most likely way to live that Chen Mu thought of. Chen Mu wasn't worried that the other rules were also wrong. Because even the wrong rules were not just given. The rules that were wrong had one thing in common, and that was that they acted as hints. For example, the fourth rule of this mission out of the five patients, you need to cure at least three of them, otherwise it is considered a mission failure. It would never be wrong, because this kind of rule is decisive and determines the success or failure of the mission. If such rules are wrong, the player has no idea how the mission can succeed. However, any rules that were wrong were suggestive rules that would not directly determine the success or failure of the mission. This life path of Chen Mu was deduced based on the third and fourth decisive rules. However, in order to verify this life path, one would need to wait for the next patient to arrive. There were very few patients in the fear hospital, and after an hour and a half, not a single patient had arrived yet. Chen Mu looked at the rules, and suddenly, a light flashed in his mind. The rules didn't say that the patients couldn't be brought by themselves. Then why am I waiting here dryly? Chen Mu's heart suddenly stirred, and he remembered his bank notability. Since I can't wait for a patient, let's create a few patients myself. Thinking of this, Chen Mu pulled out the phone from his pocket. This phone, which was given to him by the driver at that time, was specifically used for contact between the two. Beep beep beep. The phone connected. Hello? Boss, what are you looking for me for? I'm doing a mission in the fear hospital, help me find a few patients over here, I'm going to operate on them. Chen Mu said, remember, the patients have to be injured, and they have to give me 5 star reviews. Understood, boss, wait a moment. The driver hung up the phone and immediately drove the car, passing by the midnight hotel on the way calling a few Guile Chief level security guards up as well, and together they went to find a patient for Boss Chen. Moments later, a certain dark alley. A weird is lurking in the darkness, waiting for the prey that comes to his door. This bazaar is called the Bumper Porcelain Bazaar. When a vehicle passes by, it will rush out from the alley and lie directly in front of the vehicle, bumping into the owner. Once encountered this weird, the best way is to accelerate the past, absolutely cannot get out of the car. 
If the owner gets out of the car, and the bumper car spooky entangled, then the bumper car spooky will open the conditions, requiring the owner to pay a certain amount of plutonium, as compensation. Until then, the car owner fell into the rules. If he can afford to pay the money, then he'll get rid of it. If he couldn't afford the metals, the car owner violated the rules, and the bumper car trick could attack the car owner and eat his flesh and blood. Patiently waiting for three minutes, the wide road, suddenly came a yellow cab. Seeing this situation, the face of the bumper car guile was suddenly happy. Tonight's luck is really good ah, this has only squatted for three minutes, it is about to open. The speed of the cab was not too fast, which was very favorable to bumper car gue. If the owner of the car drove too fast, he would have run over it if he wasn't paying attention. This kind of slow driving is the easiest for bumper cars. When the cab drove to the entrance of the alley, the bumper car guile seized the opportunity and directly rushed out with an arrow step, lying straight in front of the cab. Agu, you hit me. Quickly get out of the car and pay for the money. Send me to the hospital. I tell you, this thing I'm not finished with you. Porcelain trick lying on the ground wailing, the appearance of extremely miserable, looks to be hit not light. Only to hear the squeak dash sound, the cab stopped, stopped in front of the bumper porcelain trick. Porcelain trick face a happy, it knows that the other party on the hook. As long as the other party dares to get out of the car, it will have to ruthlessly blackmail a sum of money, cannot give the money is even better, it will be able to directly attack the owner of the car. No matter what, bumper car trick is blood money. As expected, the door of the cab opened. However, soon enough, bumper carrier guile smile froze. Because what came down from the cab was not a person, but Gue. Blackmail blackmail to shenanigans? Moreover, the other party's strength was very strong, at least at the level of a Gue chief. Bumper sticker guile, as a low-level lonely soul wild guile, was only at the strength of the guile folk level. To make matters worse, there was more than one creepy coming down from the cab. There were also a few creeps wearing security uniforms that also came down from the cab, and their strengths were actually all at the Gue loan level. Oh no, we've met a hard opponent. The bumper trick said a bad word. Brother, careless ah, bumped you. The driver said with an apologetic face. The driver was wearing white gloves and had a civilized look. Ah, uh, it's fine, it's fine, it's a small injury, it's nothing to worry about. Bumper sticker shenanigans even if the guts again, which dares to blackmail shenanigans long level of shenanigans, suddenly a carp hit the ground, from the ground to stand up. Look, I'm fine. This little injury is nothing. I'll leave first if it's fine. The bumper sticker trick put on a smiling face and prepare to leave. The driver was not happy you brother, since I bumped into you, I will definitely be responsible for you. I'll take you to the best fear hospital in the city and have you treated by top Dr. Dr. Chun. Don't, 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 look I'm fine all over, no need to go to the hospital. Bumper sticker guile accompanied with a smiling face and said. Fine, this can't be done, your body is fine, how can Dr. Chen treat you? Don't let down Dr. Chen's peace of mind. The driver waved his hand, and a few security guards swarmed up, directly taking down the bumper trick. Break its legs, carry it to the car and send it to Boss Chen. The driver said. As soon as the words fell, the quiet highway at night echoed with the miserable screams of the bumper porcelain guile. The cab accelerated, on the back seat of the cab, the bumper porcelain gue, who had his legs broken, looked at the security guard sitting on his left and right, and simply wanted to cry. Their own luck is too bad right, touch a porcelain actually messed with a ruthless person. Along the way, the security guard repaired it enough, so that it deeply realized the gap in strength. A few lessons down, broke the legs of the porcelain trick, has been beaten out of the psychological shadow. It almost said with a sobbing voice, adults, you guys just let me go, I don't dare to blackmail people anymore. Don't be in a hurry, we'll take you to get cured and let you go afterward. The driver said coldly. At these words, the bumper car guile shivered, it was now being taught a lesson, it only wanted to quickly leave this group of powerful guile. Not a moment later, the cab stopped outside the door of the frightened hospital. The door opened, and the bumper creep was thrown out of the car with a thud. Remember to go to the on-duty operating room on the first floor and find Dr. Chen to treat you. The driver said to Bumper Gue through the car window. Don't get any ideas. We'll be waiting for you outside. We'll send you back after the treatment. If Dr. Chen has any grievances against you, it won't be as simple as a broken leg. The driver's calm words carried a thick threat of danger. The Bumper Cargyle had already been scared out of his wits, not daring to refute a single word as he nodded his head in agreement. Although he didn't know why, this group of Guile wanted to seek treatment from Dr. Chen himself. But in his heart, he knew that if that Dr. Chen, whom he had never met before, was the least bit dissatisfied, then his own life would be lost. This group of weird people looked like they were Dr. Chen's men. Even if they had a hundred guts, they wouldn't dare offend Dr. Chen. Dragging its broken leg, the bumper porcelain dial rolled and crawled to the outside of the on-duty operating room. Bang bang bang. 
The bumper porcelain guile knocked politely on the door a few times. Come in. Inside the duty room, Chen Mu's voice came. As soon as bumper cake guile entered the duty room, he immediately cried out. Dr. Chen. Where is Dr. Chen, I'm here to find Dr. Chen to cure me. The head doctor and nurse looked at each other in disbelief. Dr. Chen? Could it mean Chen Mu? It wasn't right. Chen Mu had only just arrived two hours ago and had only treated one patient, and the surgery had failed. Why did this new patient, as soon as he entered, name the patient and ask Chen Mu to operate on it? When had Chen Mu become so famous? Looking at the scared shitless creepy, Chen Mu revealed a kind smile. The patient he needed, had come. Get on the operating table. Chen Mu said to Bumper Porcelain Guile. The Bumper Porcelain Creepy was very understanding, knowing that Chen Mu couldn't afford to mess with it, and fearfully climbed onto the operating table on its own, not daring to let Chen Mu help it at all. Chen Mu nodded, satisfied. Look how understanding this weird patient is. The chief doctor's help was not to be trusted, so the next surgical procedure would need to be done by Chen Mu himself. Chen Mu looked at Bumper Porcelain Gui's injuries and was in a dilemma. On the operating table, the bumper porcelain guile looked at Chen Mu with fear and trepidation, it didn't expect that Chen Mu, a human being, was actually the boss of a few guile chief level guile. How deep was this person's background? How could he have messed with such a top level big brother after several lifetimes of bad luck? The bumper porcelain guile didn't dare to breathe, its little life was in Chen Mu's hands, as long as Chen Mu was not happy, a few guile chiefs outside would be able to make themselves gray in minutes. You've got a broken leg here. Chen Mu frowned slightly, he only knew how to sew up a wound, and it wasn't necessarily right yet, let alone how to deal with a broken leg. Seeing Chen Mu frowning, the bumper trickster's soul was scared out of his body, and he hurriedly picked up Chen Mu's words. Right, right, dr. Chen, it's a broken leg. I'm not very good at treating this. Chen Mu showed a difficult expression. The bumper sticker trick was about to be scared to death, his own disease dr. Chen can't cure it? Isn't this an embarrassment to dr. Chen, this is slapping dr. Chen's face, ah, he dared to hit Dr. Chen's face? The porcelain trick is not yet tired of living. The bumper porcelain Gue said in a hurry. No, 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 Dr. Chen, you're not at fault, the entire fault lies with me. It's me who was born with the wrong disease, it's me who didn't know any better and happened to have a disease that you won't cure. You give me another chance, Dr. Chen, I'll give birth to the disease again, and guarantee that you'll cure it, and that you'll be satisfied. These words of the bumper sticker guile directly rendered Chen Mu speechless. Translated, these words were simply kowtowing to Chen Mu and begging for forgiveness. Doesn't this seem like I, Chen Mu, am bullying creepy? What a bad influence. The chief doctor and nurse next to him were stunned. They had treated so many patients, and for the first time, they had seen a patient say that he had a bad disease, so that the doctor wouldn't be able to treat it, and begged the doctor to give him another chance. Simply heavenly ah. Chen Mu said, don't panic, as a doctor, I will still try my best to cure. I'll just help you treat your wounds, Chen Mu said as he began to clean the wound. It wasn't that Chen Mu was idle, it was mainly because he was worried that if he let the patient leave without doing anything, he might rule that he hadn't treated the patient, thus not counting the surgery as a success. Although a broken leg could not be cured, it was more or less meaningless. Chen Mu lowered his head to clean the wound, and in less than 10 minutes, the surgery was over. The bumper trick's leg was still broken, but it squeezed out a delighted smile and said, Dr. Chen's medical skills are truly brilliant. In just a few minutes of work, my leg is healed and doesn't hurt at all. Dr. Chen, you are really the best doctor I have ever seen. No one knows more about medicine than you. The bumper sticker bragged for a while, and once again, Chen Mu would not be able to get it right. Kissing ass at least have a limit ah, your leg is still folded, you are praising my medical skill, this is more or less a bit inappropriate ah. Which no, the next second, bumper porcelain trick directly from the operating table down, directly with two hands, upside down to support walking. Look. Dr. Chen, when I first came in, I crawled in. You slightly moved the surgery, and you see that I was able to walk. I was walking out. Saying that, Bumper Porcelain Gui directly walked out upside down and propped himself up with his hands, proving Chen Mu's superior medical skills. When Bumper Porcelain Guile left, a moment of silence fell within the on-duty operating room. Chen Mu was rendered speechless, and the attending doctors and nurses were rendered speechless. This surgery was also too abstract. Chen Mu silently sighed in his heart, his own driver is more or less ruthless ah, the bazaar are whole out of the psychological shadow, hey Chen Mu is a father for. Very good, boss Chen likes it very much. A few moments later, a few lines of blood appeared in front of Chen Mu's eyes. Surgery successful. Patient rating, 100 points. Note, please make the patient as satisfied as possible, that way they will give a higher rating. After the end of the bazaar mission, you will receive different rewards based on the number of ratings. The higher the rating, the better the rewards you will receive.
Looking at the contents of the blood letters in front of him, Chen Mu finally sighed in relief as if he was relieved. He had found the life path of the mission. However, this life path was special and only useful to Chen Mu. This was because other players, who simply did not have Chen Mu's strength, were able to find the patient who had been cleaned up and subdued. For other players, the life path should be what Chen Mu had guessed. Kill Creepy and get the default score. Obviously, the difficulty of the two was different. Chen Mu could get a full score rating just by taking it easy. If he killed Creepy, not only did he have to risk being counter-killed, but if Chen Mu hadn't guessed correctly, he would only be able to get a passing score by default. The difference between the two was obvious. Chen Mu couldn't help but lament that it was good to be rich. If you have money, you have power, and if you have power, you can do whatever you want. Other doctors cured the sick, relying on a superb medical skill. When Dr. Chen cured a patient, he did not rely on anything else, he relied on one word, money. As long as there is enough money and power, there is no disease that Dr. Chen can't cure. In case you encounter a disease that cannot be cured, it is never the fault of Dr. Chen, it is the patient does not understand, actually dare to have a disease that Dr. Chen cannot cure. He would go back and get sick again. Until Dr. Chen can cure it. Not long after the patient gave a favorable review, as Chen Mu expected, a new blood red banner appeared on the wall. Whole family dies violently. The attending doctor was greatly surprised when he saw the banner. Dr. Chen, I didn't expect you to be so popular with your patients. Look at your second patient, he was so pleased with you that he wished your whole family a violent death. Chen Mu was instantly filled with black lines. Although in the culture of the bizarre world, the whole family dying violently was a compliment to Chen Mu's excellent medical skills, but Chen Mu felt that it was wrong how he heard it. These words of praise, how to listen to how awkward. Not long after, another victim. Yuck, another patient walked into the duty room. Without a doubt, this was another patient that the driver had found. Unlike the first one, the patient who came this time had an accomplice. Both people were beaten up, especially the patient was given special care, directly beaten half paralyzed, helped in by his accomplice. Also like the second patient, as soon as they entered the door the two men shouted, Chen Dafu, where is Dr. Chen? We're looking for Dr. Chen to cure us. Chen Mu looked towards the two creeps, and when he saw the beaten and half paralyzed creep, his face suddenly changed slightly. If Chen Mu remembered correctly, this creepy had once offended himself. And it wasn't an ordinary offense, offending Chen Mu to death. This bizarre, and Chen Mu had a great grudge. Chen Mu looked at the patient lying on the operating table and revealed a mysterious smile. The patient had already been beaten up, and when it saw Chen Mu's mysterious smile, it couldn't help but feel hairy in its heart. It thought back carefully, it should not have offended this human, right? From the bizarre end of the world until now, it had killed three humans and eaten two, but the Dr. Chen in front of it, it was pretty sure it had never seen him before, let alone offended him. But why is Dr. Chen looking at me with such eyes? So scared. As the patient thought, it was true that it had never offended Chen Mu in this life, but please note that it was this life. In Chen Mu's previous life, this creepy had offended Chen Mu to death. At that time, Chen Mu was still a white man, with no money and no power. Like most people, he was struggling to survive in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, as small as dust. Unfortunately, Chen Mu encountered this bazaar and accidentally fell into the bazaar's trap, breaking the rules. Naturally, Chen Mu was attacked by the bazaar. Although in the end, Chen Mu managed to escape, but in the process of escaping, Chen Mu broke a finger. This creepy was one of the few creepy that had harmed Chen Mu in the creepy end times. That pain of ten fingers, Chen Mu could remember it for the rest of his life. If it wasn't for his luck, he would have died at the hands of this creepy at that time, not to mention his subsequent rebirth. Don't look at the bazaar as pitiful now but that was based on Chen Mu being very strong. If Chen Mu was still the same as in his previous life, then Chen Mu had no doubt that this creepy would likewise want to kill itself. This kind of hatred, could it not go unrewarded? Chen Mu was not generous enough to forgive a creepy that had once almost killed him. Thus, Chen Mu directly put a wave of viciousness on it. Only to see Chen Mu walk to the wall and pick up a defibrillator hanging on the wall. This is a defibrillator specially designed for bizarre use, energized with high voltage electricity, and cannot be used in non-emergency situations, as it will cause great harm to the bazaar. Chen Mu opened the defibrillator, directly turned up the current to the maximum, and ruthlessly pressed down on the weird's body. Ah! Only a miserable scream was heard, and Creepy, on the operating table, almost didn't get electrocuted. Hee hee, this is just the beginning. Chen Mu said with a cold smile. The Creepy was stunned, and before it could speak, Dr. Chen electrocuted it viciously again. Next to it accompanied it along with the bazaar, was also too scared to speak, and said that it was still Chen Dafu ruthless ah, this is to put the bazaar to death ah. What kind of blood feud is this? Further electricity is going to paste ah. Chen Mu also does not nonsense, for almost killed his own Gue, 
Chen Wu's attitude is very clear, he would rather just 60 points passing score, but also want to avenge the revenge of that year. Chen Mu had always felt that forgiving his former enemy was a betrayal of his former self. At that time, when his own fingers were broken and he fled in fear, his heart wanted to cut creepy into a thousand pieces. Having been reborn once, what qualifications did he have to forgive this creepy for his former self? Therefore, Chen Mu either didn't make enemies with others, everyone was good to you and I was good to you. As long as the feuding enemy, Chen Mu as long as the strength allows, never will cut off the roots, will not be stupid enough to let the enemy develop and have the opportunity to retaliate against himself. Soon, under the careful treatment of Dr. Chen, the bazaar on the operating table did not move, and directly died. The revenge of the broken finger back then was finally avenged. Chen Mu put down the defibrillator and said to Creepy's accomplice, I'm sorry, I'm not good at medicine and I accidentally killed it. You can carry its body away. The creepy accomplice next to him, after seeing his companion electrocuted to death with his own eyes, had long been scared out of his wits. So ruthless. As expected, this group of people were all so ruthless. The creepy accomplice was trembling in fear, it thought of those brutal security guards and drivers, and Dafu Chen, who was the superior of the security drivers, was actually so ruthless. This group of people couldn't afford to mess with them. If he himself offended Dr. Chen, he probably wouldn't be able to leave the hospital tonight. What did Dr. Chen just say? He cured a patient to death? A doctor who cured a patient to death. This is not in the fucking face of the Dr. Chen. Chen Mu's words sounded like the leader telling him I made a mistake. Letting the leader admit his mistake to himself? Do you still want to be in the business? If this matter spreads out, people won't dare to seek medical attention from Dr. Chen in the future, and if Dr. Chen gets angry, he will be dead. No, absolutely not. The weird accomplice's head was racing, almost burning with smoke, and finally got an idea, picked up Chen Mu's defibrillator, and directly electrified the weird corpse on the operating table. ZZZ. Accompanied by a strong electric current, the bizarre corpse on the operating table was electrified with a twitch. Seeing this, the bizarre accomplice hurriedly pointed at the twitching corpse and said to Chen Mu, Dr. Chen, look, it's still alive. Dr. Chen's medical skills are so brilliant, how could he possibly cure a patient to death? Look at how it keeps convulsing, it's obviously still alive. Dr. Chen is amazing, he brought my dead companion back to life. According to you humans, you, Dr. Chen, are completely a divine doctor of flesh and bones, living death. The creepy accomplice gave Chen Mu a hard blow, describing the dead creep as a living creep. Chen Mu was once again shocked as he saw a strong desire to live. What kind of operation was this? Chen Mu used to think that calling a deer a horse was just a story, after all, no one was stupid. So how could someone call a deer a horse and have a large number of people agree? Tonight Chen Mu really opened his eyes, deer for horses is still too conservative. As long as he is bullish enough, people can point to the dead trick as a living trick, just so as not to offend themselves. The chief doctor and nurse were also shocked. They had just seen a patient who said that his broken leg was cured, and they thought it was outrageous. They didn't expect an even more outrageous one. The head doctor and nurse felt that their worldview had been turned upside down. Is this still the weird post-apocalyptic world? Can Bazaar have some backbone ah? Unexpectedly, under this flurry of operations, the Bazaar, which was already almost dead, actually returned to the light, slowly opened his eyes and looked at his companions. Seeing the operating table Gui back to light, Gui companion immediately overjoyed, a pickup back to light Gui, said in its ear. Good brother, you're actually still alive. The dying Bazaar greatly touched, thinking that in the last moment, there are good companions care about themselves. Unexpectedly, the Bazaar companion's next sentence almost made it not taught. Only to see the bizarre companion said eagerly, Good brother, you haven't given Dr. Chen a surgical evaluation yet. Before you give Dr. Chen a 5-star review, you must not die. I'll be finished if you die. Hurry. Hurry up and give Dr. Chen a 5-star review while you still have a breath. Dr. Chen is the divine doctor of the world. Hurry up and give him a 5-star review. This scene confused Chen Mu. Very quickly, Chen Mu saw a line of bloody words floating in front of his eyes. Surgery successful. Patient rating, 100 points. After giving Dr. Chen a 5-star rating, the patient on the operating table, only then gulped and hiccuped. The creepy companion didn't dare to stay, holding its accomplice that was brought back to life by Dr. Chen, and quickly fled. I don't know if this scene tonight will leave any psychological shadow on its psyche. The psychological shadow left by a human being on a bazaar is quite explosive when looking at the entire bazaar post-apocalyptic world. The main reason Chen Mu didn't look for trouble with it was because it hadn't messed with Chen Mu in its previous life. And now in the bizarre mission, that companion did not belong to the patient, so Chen Mu did not make a move on it in order to prevent any accidents. Anyway, his own driver was waiting outside, 
and since he had given a five-star review, these two shenanigans were of little value to Chen Mu. Chen Mu believed that his own driver would take care of it for him. The two patients in succession were extremely satisfied with Dr. Chun. The only thing that made Chen Mu a little regretful was the first patient. Harm. Still, his own medical skills were not good enough to satisfy every patient Ah, The most important thing was that he couldn't get full marks. The first patient was only given 40 points. Simply a big failure Ah, Can't help but say that there are some regrets. With the departure of the patient, the operating room on duty once again fell into a silence. Chen Mu was waiting for a new patient to come to his door, while the chief doctor and the nurse, on the other hand, were curiously sizing up Chen Mu. By now, even if the head doctor was slow to react, he could see that Chen Mu was extraordinary. If the second patient with a broken leg was probably sick in the head and was licking Chen Mu on his knees, then the third patient could never be sick in the head as well. Then the third patient, there is no way that he is also sick in the head, obviously cured to death but also kneeling to lick Chen Mu. The only possibility was that Chen Mu was not a simple person. The head doctor carefully looked at Chen Mu, his voice became much more respectful as he carefully asked. Dr. Chen, I wonder what you do. Those patients seem to be very afraid. Oh, very respectful of you ah. Chen Mu waved his hand, giving full play to his fine quality of being modest and low-key. Nothing nothing. I'm just a small businessman, a little bit of money in my hands, a few employees with me to make a living, but also know a few friends just, just treat me as an ordinary person. It was at this time that the door of the on-duty operating room was knocked again from outside. Come in, Chen Mu said. The door to the on-duty operating room opened and a familiar figure entered. Chen Mu fixed his eyes on it, good lord, isn't this the first patient? How did it come back? Only to see this patient, as soon as he came back, he was like a dead father, crying and hugging Chen Mu's thighs, and started apologizing frantically. Dr. Chen, I was wrong. I was really blind just now, I didn't recognize you. You're such an excellent doctor, you've been kind enough to treat me, and instead of being grateful, I even gave you 40 points. I've sinned. I've come to apologize. Please forgive me. I'll change it to a perfect score for you right here. Chen Mu first froze for a moment, and then immediately saw the wounds on Creepy's body, there were several fresh wounds from the beating. Chen Mu instantly understood that it must have been his own driver who had retrieved this head of guile. Oh, offended Chen Dafu and still want to leave? Dare to give Dr. Chen 40 points, you are very brave. The driver, without saying a word, led the security guards, beat this head of Bazaar severely, and threw it directly back to the Fright Hospital. If you don't change your score back, you won't be able to leave the Fear Hospital. The Bazaar had long been scared half to death, and in his heart, he finally realized what kind of existence he had offended. Soon, in front of Chen Mu's eyes, a few lines of bloody words appeared once again. Surgery successful. Patient score, 100 points. Original 40 points. The patient has revised the rating. Finally, Dr. Chen, who didn't know anything about anything, after doing three surgeries, obtained the amazing achievement of three full scores. Moreover, Dr. Chen's superb medical skills of living dead people and white bones had begun to spread in the bizarre world. A new generation of divine doctors in the bizarre world had begun to rise. The head doctor wasn't a fool, after seeing this scene, he knew that Chen Mu was definitely not simple, and it was never as simple as Chen Mu said, doing small business. Thus, the head doctor directly opened his cell phone, logged into the weird world's internet, and started searching. Very quickly, a look of shock appeared on his face. The chief doctor looked at Chen Mu with disbelief. Midnight cafeteria, dark night high school, landscape courtyard. You call this a small business? A little bit of small money? The owner of the midnight hotel. The director of the midnight high school. Owner of the landscape courtyard. Supreme black gold customer of the fallen mall. Any one of these four identities taken out would be a rather bombastic existence. In the entire city, all of them could occupy a place as rulers. Now Chen Mu was in four positions, yet he said that they were all small businesses, and that it would be good to treat him as an ordinary person? Ordinary, my ass. If you call this an ordinary person, then you can count the ordinary people in the entire world on one hand. This is the city's top big shot. The head doctor was so scared that he was about to explode. To put it politely, Chen Mu was already half the ruler of the city, the Uncrown King. How could such a powerful person come to the Fright Hospital and do bizarre tasks like an ordinary person? It didn't make sense. As long as Chen Mu communicated with the dean, it was a top luxury treatment, the dean personally received him, where did he use to come to the operating room to take this kind of anger? Could it be that top-notch bigwigs like Chen Mu like to make private visits? Pretend to be ordinary people, to experience the plight of the people? If Chen Mu knew about it, he would probably cry out in vain. Chen Mu wasn't a masochist, so how would he make himself uncomfortable for nothing? If there was a privileged channel, Chen Mu would have opened it without hesitation. The key was that there wasn't. In Chen Mu's network, 
there was no one who knew the dean. The reason is also very simple, fear of hospital treatment success rate, the patient into the hospital, cannot be said to be back to life, can only be said to be one in nine. The hottest department in the hospital is actually the underground negative layer of the morgue. Later, the hospital did the extra money, the patient as long as the hospital, direct treatment, death, cremation one-stop service. The reputation of the fright hospital in the bazaar is just a little bit better than the crematorium, right? In this kind of shock the world, sob the ghosts and gods of the cure death rate, which bazaar more want to not be able to, will be fine into the fear of hospital law. Therefore, the weird bigwigs that Chen Mu knew, whether it was the principal, or the duke, all drew a line with the fear hospital for their own safety considerations. Not knowing the dean and not having enough connections, then the only way to attract the dean's attention was by doing bizarre tasks and inadvertently and accidentally exposing the ability to pay money. It wasn't that Chen Mu wanted to show off his wealth and act like a pussy, it was really a helpless move. Blame it on this damn weird post-apocalyptic world, the Chen Mu this kind of modest and low-key honest people, hard to force into a pretender. The head doctor didn't know this, he immediately decided that Chen Mu was a rich young master who came to experience life. This level of rich young man, the dean couldn't even afford to mess with. As a doctor himself, he naturally couldn't be offended. Suddenly, it occurred to the head doctor that he had pitched Chen Mu when treating his first patient. The dean didn't even dare to mess with him, and he actually dared to pit him. Big trouble. The chief doctor said, I want to salvage it too. Thus, when the next bizarre patient came in, before Chen Mu could make a move, the head doctor immediately became incredibly attentive as if he had changed his guile. Dr. Chen, you're tired after treating three patients, so let me do two surgeries instead, the head doctor said while going over to help the patient. Chen Mu was instantly anxious, what's wrong with you NPC? Trying to steal my business? This was sent to me by my driver, I'm still waiting to complete the weird quest, and the rules don't say that the chief doctor will steal business. Don't, 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 you go and rest, I'm a young man who can endure hardship, let me continue doing it. Chen Mu also said, the patient on the side, seeing the chief doctor to come to help himself, it actually also anxious. The patient had just experienced the driver's cordial care, and now saw Chen Mu and the chief doctor as a group. Such a group of strong people, they dare to let them to help. This is like the leader to help you sit on the chair, as long as still want to mix in this company, no one dares to let the leader to help themselves. How much of a spectacle does this have to be? Obviously, the weird patient hadn't lived long enough and still wanted to mix in the world. So, in the on-duty operating room, there was an unusually harmonious scene. The chief doctor to help the patient, the young doctor grabbed to help, the patient desperately shirked insisted on their own on the operating table. We can't afford to let others suffer, and would rather suffer a little more. Such a harmonious scene has not been seen for many years. In the end, the bizarre patient couldn't withstand the pressure and directly plopped down and knelt to Chen Mu. Dr. Chen, please let me go to the operating table alone. I wouldn't dare trouble you to help me even if I were dead. The head doctor was in a hurry and also knelt to Chen Mu. Dr. Chen, you've worked too hard, let me do this surgery. Looking at the two shenanigans in front of him who knelt down, Chen Mu was numb. Ma da. Is this still a weird mission? This style of painting was also too bizarre. The patient and the chief doctor, who were originally NPCs in the weird quest that scorned the player's existence, were now all kneeling to themselves? I obviously didn't do anything. Did I come to the wrong weird mission? It was at this moment that the female bizarre nurse on the side, actually helped Chen Mu to the seat next to her, and began to press and pinch Chen Mu's shoulders. Dr. Chen, you're so tired from the surgery, just rest on the side for a while. I'll help you press your shoulders for a while. The female trick nurse wasn't a fool, the chief doctor had knelt down and licked up Chen Mu, if she didn't be more active, she would wait for Chen Mu to find trouble? Soon, in the on-duty operating room, there was this bizarre scene. Chen Mu, as the player, was sitting on a comfortable chair, enjoying the massage from the female creepy nurse. The head doctor was at the operating table, seriously operating on the patient. The patient on the operating table, while grimacing in pain, was praising the doctor's medical skills, of course, he was praising Chen Mu's medical skills. Obviously, the chief doctor was doing the surgery, but the patient was praising Dr. Chen, who was enjoying the massage service next to him, one by one. Egg, this knife went down just in time to make a small cut in my kidney. This knife is not too light but not too heavy, it seems to have decades of strength. Dr. Chen is truly a godly doctor of the world, his knife skills are out of this world. Egu, this thread stitching, it's called authentic. Dr. Chen's craftsmanship really takes Gue's breath away. Chen Mu shrugged his shoulders, I obviously didn't do anything ah, if you say so then so be it. Today is really open eyes, bizarre lick up the leader, really no less ah. In this way, Chen Mu obviously did nothing, but the bizarre task is steadily advancing down. Don't ask, ask is the latest version of the fully automated bizarre mission. 
Mainly a player did not have to move anything, weird NPCs automatically help you complete weird quests. After the stitches were done and the surgery was over, a line of blood characters appeared in front of Chen Mu's eyes. Surgery completed. Patient score, 100 points. I'm super. Chen Mu was all shocked. The chief doctor helped himself and really counted the surgery as his own? That's right. The rules only said that the chief doctor would guide Chen Mu. But it didn't say that the chief doctor couldn't directly help Chen Mu to do the surgery ah. It was estimated that the rule makers, too, could not have imagined that such a heaven-defying player existed. Just like that, when the last patient appeared, the bizarre picture continued in the on-duty operating room. Chen Mu was lying on the chair, and was now having his legs pinched. The head doctor was doing the surgery, and the patient was stiffly complimenting Chen Mu. What was even weirder was that everyone in shenanigans present didn't feel that there was anything wrong. If anyone else had seen it, they would have absolutely collapsed their worldview and suspected that they had come to a fake bizarre post-apocalyptic world. Obviously, everyone was in the creepy end times, why could the gap between people be so wide? Soon, the last patient completed the surgery. In front of Chen Mu's eyes, a prompt that the surgery was completed appeared. Congratulations! You have successfully completed the Midnight Doctor mission. Your total score, 500 points. Full marks, absolutely full marks. In order to obtain an unparalleled score of 500 points, it meant that in all five surgeries, DR, Chen would need to do his best to satisfy the patients to the fullest. What a powerful medical skill this was. In the entire Frightened Hospital, it was an unparalleled achievement that had never been seen before, and would most likely never be seen again. The reason was simple, when Chen Mu acquired the Frightened Hospital, the later players, even if they were more bullish, would not be able to get 500 points. This is a very natural thing, the attending doctor is not stupid, Chen hospital director get 500 points, later if there is a player, can also get full points, this is how much does it mean? Was it saying that someone's strength was on par with that of director Chen and could replace him? Or are they looking down on director Chen, thinking that director Chen's medical skills aren't brilliant enough? Obviously, as long as the chief doctor still wanted to hang around, it was impossible for the next 500 points to appear. Thus, Chen Mu was the only one, the top player who had gotten the full 500 points achievement. It was at this moment that a few more lines of bloody characters appeared in front of Chen Mu. Due to your extremely outstanding performance, coupled with the patient's extreme praise for you, your picture and name will be on the first place of the Fright Hospital's Divine Doctor list. At the same time, in the hall on the first floor of the Fear Hospital, a large blood-red screen hung. A few big words were written on the screen. Divine Doctor List. At the first place of the divine doctor list was the human Chen Mu, a human who became a divine doctor in the bizarre world, or the first place. Chen Mu all had to exclaim, this was too abstract, right? The mission was completed, and it was completed with excellence, so naturally, there was no shortage of rewards. In view of your outstanding performance in the weird mission, the player who has scored 500 points will receive the weird leader level props hallucinogenic mist provided by the fear hospital. Please pay attention to receiving it. In the next second, a spray can appeared in Chen Mu's hand. This spray bottle was very common, it was the kind of spray bottle that contained disinfectant water in hospitals, specifically used to disinfect. The entire corridor of the frightened hospital was filled with that unpleasant smell of disinfectant water. The difference was that the hallucinogenic mist in Chen Mu's hand had a red, white and blue color. Don't look at it as a guile chief prop, in the hierarchy of guile king, guile general, guile chief, guile soldier, guile citizen, guile chief props already belong to the very rare props. Previously, Chen Mu had spent a lot of effort in order to obtain the Guile General Grade Death Heavy Armor, and he had also taken advantage of the Reborn's first opportunity before finally obtaining it. The Guile General Grade prop was only one level lower than the Death Gauntlet. Doing a weird quest and getting a Guile Leader Grade item was a good deal. However, it might be a little difficult for others to get a perfect score of 500 points. Chen Mu held down his excitement and began to check the introduction of the prop in his hand. Guile Long Level Props, Hallucinogenic Mist. Prop effect, this prop is a disposable prop. Pressing the handle of the spray bottle means using this prop. After using this prop, the spray can will spray a hallucinogenic mist. All the weirdness within a radius of 10 meters around you, who are below the level of general, will be affected and fall into the illusion. Duration, 1 hour. You can set the content of the illusion in advance, which can be personalized according to your needs. Tip, this prop is a rare prop and will expire after one use, so please use it with caution. After reading the introduction of the new prop, Chen Mu could not help but light up. This prop was good. With this prop, one could make the surrounding spooky and fall into their own fabricated environment. And it lasted for an hour. Doesn't this mean that one can indirectly control the bizarre's mind? Within this hour, whatever one wanted the creepy to see, the creepy would see. Useful for all creepy below creepy general. Chen Mu could imagine how many interesting things he could hypnotize the creepy in an hour once he had this prop. 
The only beautiful thing was that this prop only had one chance to be used. Only one chance ah. People death heavy armor, so heavenly ability, can be reused it, is that there is a month of cooling time. Wait a moment. In Chen Mu's mind, there was a sudden flash of light. It seemed like there was no rule that stated that a person could only participate in a bizarre mission once ah. If others knew Chen Mu's thoughts, high and low would have to curse, firstborn ah. Everyone was afraid to avoid the weird missions for fear that they would be selected. But you're so addicted to it, aren't you? One time is not enough, you want to do it more than once? Chen Mu has already cleared the Midnight Doctor mission this time, but there is no rule that says he can't do it over and over again. If I get a perfect score once, I can get a hallucinogenic spray. If I swipe a few more times, I'll get a lot of mist. One can only be used once. What if I get 10? 20? Wouldn't I be able to use it 10 or 20 times? As this idea emerged, Chen Mu was instantly excited. If the idea was feasible, then he would get an almost unlimited amount of hallucinogenic spray, as long as he had the time to brush up on his quests. Chen Mu didn't hesitate, and without saying a word, he directly left the on-duty operating room. The head doctor and nurse were dumbfounded. What was wrong with this rich young man? As soon as the weird mission was over, he didn't even pretend to be a pussy, he patted his ass and left without saying a word. What does he want? Chen Mu left the fear hospital, and as soon as he left the hospital gate, he turned back again. When Chen Mu stepped into the fear hospital again, as expected, a line of bloody words appeared in front of him again. Creepy mission, Midnight Doctor. Chen Mu was instantly overjoyed, sure enough, he had received this bizarre mission again. In the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, the only one who was overjoyed because he received another bizarre mission was probably Chen Mu. On the chief doctor's side, he also received a hint a new unlucky person was coming to the mission. Two and a half minutes later, inside the operating room on duty, the chief doctor looked at Chen Mu, who had returned again in front of him, and froze directly in place. Dr. Chen, what are you? The head doctor was old and felt that his brain was already spinning. The female trick nurse was still young, but also felt that her brain could not turn over. Not. How did you come back and participate in another bizarre mission? The chief doctor admitted that he was still too young, and that in this world, there were still many things that he hadn't seen before, such as Chen Mu's outrageous operation. Hee <laughs> hee, don't be so surprised. I'm just, oh, idle and here to have fun. Chen Mu grinned, come, come, all old acquaintances, process away. Soon, the driver's side sent the new patient over again. Still a familiar flavor. As soon as the patient entered the door, he was like a dead father, shouting, Dear. Chen, save me. The head doctor went numb, he looked at Chen Mu incredulously, thinking to himself that this rich young master was treating the weird mission like a playground? Sure enough, I don't understand the world of the rich, dr. Chen was lying on the chair, the female creepy nurse was massaging, the patient was blowing madly and awkwardly, and the chief doctor was doing surgery with his head down. The efficiency on the driver's side, at this time, also increased quite a bit, mobilizing more security guards, and the speed of catching the shenanigans increased by more than 10 times. Soon, outside the on-duty operating room, a long line of patients formed. Where is DR? Chen, I want to see DR. Chen, don't fucking cut in line. I'm in front of you. DR. Chen is the divine doctor of the world, isn't it normal to line up to see a divine doctor? These patients, without exception, were all sent by the driver who had given them a wild beating. In their eyes, DR. Chen inside was the ultimate boss, who dared to make the ultimate boss angry. One by one, even if they endured the pain and lined up, they didn't dare to have a single complaint, instead, they began to awkwardly brag about DR. Chen right in the hallway. The roles of Chen Mu and Creepy seemed to have switched. In this bizarre scene, Chen Mu had become a big boss-like existence, and Creepy had become a trembling player. Inside the operating room on duty, DR. Chen heard the sound of the queue outside the corridor, he looked at the chief doctor who was still slowly doing the surgery and said, Chief doctor, the speed of the surgery can be appropriately slowed down a bit, just mean it. The second half of the sentence Chen Mu did not say, anyway, with your skill, curing it is not much different from not curing it. Although this kind of words is the truth, but set out to hurt Gui's heart. Dr. Chen was truly a kind-hearted doctor, in order for patients to receive treatment as soon as possible, he went out of his way to speed up the surgery, just so that the patients outside would have to queue up less. Never because you want to speed up the speed of brushing the task, quickly get the rewards and other reasons. In this way, the surgery became an assembly line operation. 5 minutes apiece. Chen Mu's current state was just like the kind of thing that is said in online games, offline hang up, automatically brush monsters. In less than half an hour, Chen Mu completed his second bizarre mission. As expected, in front of Chen Mu, the familiar line of small letters appeared again. Due to your excellent performance in the weird quest, you will receive the Guile Leader level prop hallucinogenic mist. Chen Mu was happy. I'm super. It was actually possible to swipe it over and over again. 
This was simply a perfect bug. When the chief doctor saw that Chen Mu had an extra prop in his hand, he instantly understood. Good guy. The chief doctor straight away called out good guy. You're treating this weird mission like a copy of an online game. It's not like you're going to be bursting with gold coins. The other players for the weird mission, that is, master please give me a way out. Chen Mu's attitude towards weird quests is almost like, old thing hurry up and pop gold coins for me. However, what shocked the chief doctor even more was yet to come. Only to see Chen Mu walk out of the on-duty operating room directly without another word. Deep inside, the chief doctor's heart surged with a bad premonition. This young man won't have to do it again, right? You've caught a sheep and you're pulling it to death. Chen Mu started the crazy wool gathering mode. As soon as Chen Mu left the on-duty operating room, the patients outside the corridor exploded. Dr. Chen, you haven't treated me yet. You can't leave. Dr. Chen, you saved me. I've been waiting in line for half an hour. You high and low give me two looks. Otherwise, I'm afraid I won't be able to walk out of the fright hospital. The patients cried out to Chen Mu's back, one by one. It was as if Dr. Chen was really like a divine doctor. But then again, if you were to say that they were lying, it wasn't really true. They were telling the truth, they were indeed begging for Chen Mu to see them. If a lot of patients, who were begging the doctor to see them, were praising the results of the treatment, then it was basically fine for you to say that the doctor was a divine doctor. As for Chen Dafu being a divine doctor, there is no fault to pick, and it is completely in line with these phenomena, but it is just a little. Strange feeling. Chen Dafu healer, naturally cannot bear to let the patients disappointed, turned to the patient and said. Don't be anxious, I will be back in a while. Five minutes later, the chief doctor person was already numb, because he saw it again, someone walked into the fright hospital. That's right, that person was still Dr. Chen. Half an hour later, Chen Mu was full of anticipation, waiting for the bizarre quest to burst with gold coins. However, after five minutes, the word blood still didn't appear in front of Chen Mu. What's going on? Can't wool gather anymore? Don't, I spent half an hour on it. Even though I didn't do anything, I still worked hard on myself. Maybe Chen Mu's outrageous operation, the weird task will not be able to organize the whole thing. The weird mission never imagined that one day, he would be treated like a sheep, and be gripped by a crazy wool gatherer. Come on, this was the bizarre end times, okay? People are dangerous bizarre tasks, they also have dignity, okay? Finally, after waiting for 10 minutes, a few lines of bloody words slowly appeared in front of Chen Mu. In view of your excellent performance, you have been awarded the eerie chief level prop hallucinogenic mist. Please note that the same person can only participate in the same weird scenario for a maximum of 3 weird missions per month. You have already reached the maximum number of times this month, and will not be able to trigger the spooky mission if you enter the fear hospital again. Obviously, the spooky quest had been gripped by Chen Mu. If you can't afford to mess with me, you can't afford to hide from me. You can only glean up to 3 times a month. Looking at the entire bizarre post-apocalyptic world, Chen Mu was the only one who could force the bizarre quests to be like this. Chen Mu sighed, creepy in times is still a bit weak. One's heart was set on participating in bizarre quests, but as a result, one was still not allowed to play more? Forget it, three times a month of wool gathering, one should be content. This was the equivalent of Chen Mu having three Gui Chang level hallucinogenic sprays every month. It was enough for Chen Mu to cope with all kinds of situations. Chen Mu had pulled the wool over the sheep so badly that he had already alerted the director of the fear hospital. At this moment, on the fifth floor of the fear hospital, the dean's office. The dean of the frightened hospital was roughly in his forties in the mold of a middle-aged man. However, unlike the principal, the dean apparently paid more attention to figure management and still had a dry, thin, and tall image. The dean checked the recent business situation, the income from the Morgan cremation room had accounted for 80% of the hospital's total income. The hospital was on the verge of opening itself into a crematorium. While this was happening, the dean suddenly realized that the first floor seemed to be exceptionally lively tonight. The bizarre mission had been triggered three times in just a few hours. What's going on tonight? Three unlucky humans have come to do the quest? However, when checking the participants of the quest, the dean was directly confused. Where are there three people? It was all a person named Chen Mu. This person had participated three times in a row. All three times, he even scored 500 points. The hospital's divine doctor list had actually topped it three times in a row. Wait a minute. Crap. This kid also gleaned three rare props in a row. Doesn't his conscience hurt? No, the name Chen Mu seems a bit familiar. The dean thought about it carefully and suddenly remembered. Recently, Chen Mu has been the most popular company in the entire city. In just a few days, he has acquired a large number of properties and has become the city's dominant figure. This young man is a rich man. Although he didn't know where his money came from, but Dean knew the rules, in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, don't ask what you shouldn't ask. This kind of rich, wealthy young man often stood behind a huge power as a backer. 
The dean began to play the calculator in his heart, this young man is so rich, and now the hospital is losing so much money, if you can fool Chen Mu, let him take over for himself. Chen Mu definitely has the ability to take over this broken hospital. It depends on whether Chen Mu wants to take over. The dean calculated, like this kind of rich young master, most like face. As long as he touted well, coaxed Chen Mu to be happy, Chen Mu was happy, hot-headed, might just buy the hospital directly. Anyway, as soon as the contract is signed, he will take the money and run away, leaving this broken hospital to Chen Mu, the wrongdoer to take over. It was normal for the dean to think this way. It's the early days of the bizarre end times, and the frightened hospital has been losing money for years, millions of plutonium every day. Yes, you heard it right, every day it has to lose millions. In just over a week, it would lose a midnight cafeteria. This is by no means bragging. Medical care has been a bottomless pit of money since the beginning of time. I've seen people get sick and lose money, but I've never seen anyone lose money on a meal. The speed at which hospitals burn money was not comparable to industries like cafeterias and hotels. The medical supplies for Creepy were extremely expensive. There were few patients, but the medical supplies had to be updated frequently, which cost a lot of plutonium. There are also those wonderful hands doctors, not much skill, but the salary is not generally high. There is no way, things are scarce, doctors are too scarce, even if the technology is bad, there are hospitals are willing to pay a high price to keep. Therefore, to summarize, the entire hospital was a junk asset that was losing millions of dollars a day for the dean. Although according to the trend of the previous life, a year later, the fear of the hospital made a big profit, every day there are hundreds of millions of revenue into the account. But the dean didn't know ah, uh, in his eyes, the hospital is a bottomless pit of money loss. Early sold early to get out. Thinking of this, without saying a word, the dean changed into clean clothes and headed downstairs. On the first floor, inside the operating room on duty. Chen Mu had finished wool gathering and was thinking about how to get a chance to meet the dean. It was at this moment that the door to the operating room opened, and the dean walked in with a warm face. Aya, isn't this DR? Chen Mu Chen. I've heard a lot about you, I've heard a lot about you. As soon as the dean came in, it was as if he saw his long-lost father, and he was extraordinarily enthusiastic about Chen Mu. Egu, Dr. Chen, your medical skills really took my breath away. I've heard that you've continuously topped the divine physician list, and your arrival has really brought the hospital to life. This is a small gift I prepared for you, please don't refuse it. Saying that, the dean took out a golden pen from his pocket and handed it to Chen Mu. Chen Mu took it and took a look, great guy. A golden pen made of pure trick gold. A creepy gold pen, in the fallen mall, was sold for as much as 100,000 plutocrats. When writing with this kind of pen, all that was written out was a golden colored font. The words written, even in the dark, could shine. Other than that, there was no other bullshit used for it. To put it simply, this was a luxury product, and it was expensive plus useless, so it was simply a good choice for gift giving. Even though Chen Mu knew the ways of the world, the scene in front of him made Chen Mu a little confused. Not. The situation is a bit off right. No matter what, Chen Mu was also a guest at the door. Shouldn't Chen Mu pay a visit to the dean, give the dean a gift to express his goodwill, and then start talking? Why was it the other way around now? Chen Mu had just finished wool gathering, and the dean took the initiative to come see him and give Chen Mu a gift. This operation of the deans, Chen Mu didn't understand it at first, but he had some vague guesses in his heart. To be solicitous for nothing is to be either an adulterer or a thief. This dean was probably going to dig a hole for himself. Mr. Dean, you are too polite. How embarrassing to give a gift just after meeting. Chen Mu laughed, doing his surface work. He had given so many gifts, and with the rise in his strength and status, he had also begun to receive gifts from others. Immediately afterward, Chen Mu and the dean began a cordial exchange. I've long heard of Mr. Chen's great name, he has acquired many assets in the city, he is truly a hero. I've long heard of the dean's great name, running the hospital with great success, today, I've seen it, and it really lives up to its name. The two began to blow each other commercially, and the operating room was filled with a joyful atmosphere. After blowing a few sentences, the dean couldn't help himself, sighed, and in an extraordinarily regretful tone, said to Chen Mu. With such exquisite medical skills, it is simply a great pity for the bizarre world if dr. Chen does not enter the medical field to develop. Any eerie who knows that you are not entering the medical field, senior Chen, would feel a sense of injustice. I happen to have the frightened hospital in my hands, so if you want to enter the medical field to develop, I can help you, senior Chen. Chen Mu instantly understood, he knew why the dean was so attentive. It turned out that he wanted to let himself take over. The chief doctor next to him could also see that the dean had a belly full of bad water in his heart, wanting to take the money-losing hospital and let Chen Mu take over as the wrong seed. It was estimated that no one present, except Chen Mu, thought that the hospital was a good asset. After all, none of them were travelers, and only Chen Mu had experienced it to understand the potential of the frightened hospital. 
However, Chen Mu did not show an expression of delight, he knew one thing, the more eager the buyer was to buy, the easier it was to be ripped off. Chen Mu had money, but he was not willing to be ripped off either. He wanted to try to keep the price as low as possible, and it was best to use the cheapest money possible to acquire the hospital. Chen Mu's family was not thick, and his money was not much, it was all a small business, not as good as those big men with huge pockets, so he could save a little bit, so he could save a little bit. Chen Mu's face, first showed a delighted expression. Really? Mr. Dean is so generous? Actually willing to sell the fright hospital to me. That's great. Seeing Chen Mu take the bait, the Dean's heart rejoiced, saying that this ingrate was too good to be fooled and casually took the bait. The Dean said in a persuasive manner. Mr. Chen, look at our frightened hospital, it's a unique hospital in several surrounding cities. And there are more than 20 doctors in the hospital, each with excellent medical skills. If it develops well, I'm not bragging with you, it's easy for you to earn tens of billions of dollars every year. We have a good chat, so I'll sell it to you at a low price, without making any money, just as a friend. Two billion. Fear Hospital is yours. Hearing the dean's offer of two billion dollars, Chen Mu skimmed his mouth. Putting this aside to fool fools? If Fear Hospital operated normally, the current valuation was around $5 billion, $2 billion to sell to himself, that was indeed making a friend. But now the situation is, the fear of hospital losses every day, a day on the loss of a million. Such a bottomless pit of losses, cannot see the hope of making money, you dare to pay $2 billion? This is not making a friend, this is making an enemy. Chen Mu to the death ah. Chen Mu's face instantly pulled down, Mr. Dean, you are too insincere. While saying that, Chen Mu shook his head in disappointment, seemingly wanting to end this deal. Seeing this, the dean was instantly anxious. He really wanted to sell the hospital, even at a loss. This was because, in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, no bizarre scenario could just close down. If you became the owner of a certain bizarre scene, then as long as you were alive, you couldn't let it close down or disband. This is the one rule for bizarre bosses in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world. It was absolutely necessary to keep the bizarre scene running. Once this rule was violated, even if the boss was a creepy king, he would be killed by the rule. This is why, in the previous midnight cafeteria, even though the skeleton bosses could barely hold on, they still had to post money to keep it running. By the same token, even though the fear hospital was already a bottomless pit of losses, the director still had to dump millions of plutonium coins every day to keep the fear hospital up and running. It was by relying on this rule that the creepy endgame was able to spread so quickly. Old bizarre scenes were not allowed to close down, and new bizarre scenes continued to emerge. With more and more bizarre scenes, the bizarre apocalypse certainly became stronger and stronger. In the end, five years after the creepy end times, almost every place in the world had become a creepy scene. The dean gritted his teeth and asked towards Chen Mu. Mr. Chen, say a number then. Chen Mu didn't hesitate and directly extended a finger to represent the price he accepted 1 billion medieval dollars. The price cut was directly cut in half. This was also a fairer price that Chen Mu could accept, in his heart. Everyone did not take advantage of each other. Seeing the one finger Chen Mu stretched out, the dean revealed a look of surprise. This kid was actually so ruthless in killing prices. Forget about it, fear hospital this kind of gold swallowing beast, sell it a day earlier will be able to lose one day less. Less losses earn. The dean said helplessly, alright then, then a hundred million dollars deal. Once these words came out, the one who was surprised became Chen Mu. Chen Mu realized that the dean seemed to have misunderstood his meaning a little. Stretching a finger by himself was representing one billion dollars. The dean understood it as 100 million. I'm super. This dean chopped up the price is also too ruthless, right? And it is reverse chopping. He chopped his own price. Chen Mu just waste cut. Dean directly cut to the ankle ah. The dean saw Chen Mu hesitating and thought Chen Mu was not satisfied. So he gritted his teeth and said, 90 million. Chen Mu was shocked again. This was cheaper than Dark Knight College. This dean was in such a hurry. How much he wanted to quickly throw away the hot potato ah. Unexpectedly, Chen Mu again hesitated this time, the dean again lowered the offer. 80 million, Chen Mu, 70 million. Now, it was Chen Mu's turn to be embarrassed. Billions of dollars of things, sold to himself for 70 million. It seemed like since the beginning of the bizarre end of the world, he hadn't taken such a big advantage. Chen Mu knew how to stop at the right moment, he realized that the dean's eyes were red, so he guessed that if he cut it down any further, the dean would be really anxious. Thus, Chen Mu revealed a reluctant expression and sighed helplessly. Alas, 70 million is still a bit expensive. But Dean, you're so nice, I'm embarrassed to cut the price any further, I'll reluctantly buy it for 70 million. The Dean was on the verge of exploding when he heard this. Mard, you brat got a bargain and you're still selling it, right? Saying as if I begged you to buy it. Well, it's true that I begged you to buy it. When you buy down the fear of hospitals, you know into what a big pit. Every day millions of losses, in a few years, 
will be able to Chen Mu loss to bankruptcy. At that time, it's not as simple as running out of money. If you go bankrupt, you'll be executed by the rules. The dean's heart was instantly free, although the selling price was ridiculously low, he had finally snubbed a fool to take over the deal. Mr. Chen, trust me, you definitely won't lose out if you buy the frightened hospital. Oops, to be honest, I regret selling the hospital to you. The dean mocked Chen Mu in a conspiratorial manner, he believed that it wouldn't be long before Chen Mu saw the hospital's ability to swallow gold and regretted buying the frightened hospital. At that time, Chen Mu would definitely feel the irony of black humor when he recalled today's conversation. The dean painfully pulled out the contract and signed his name. Chen Mu didn't hesitate either, and directly from his space ring, he pulled out $70 million and neatly yards it on the ground. The head doctor and nurse next to him, seeing the neatly coated metals all over the floor, their eyes were all starry-eyed. The new dean was actually so rich that he just pulled out 70 million with his hand. They had never seen so many medieval coins in their lives. The dean saw Chen Mu's space ring, and a hint of greed flashed in his eyes. A rare prop like a space ring was something that no one possessed, not even a guile general. Perhaps only supreme existences like the guile king could access such props. Unexpectedly, Chen Mu actually had a space ring. It was hard to imagine what kind of deep background Chen Mu had behind him. The dean secretly made up his mind, as long as he signed the contract, he would immediately go far away and never meet Chen Mu in his life. Otherwise, in the future, Chen Mu lost to bankruptcy, looking for their own trouble, then they will be in big trouble. Chen Mu picked up the gold pen sent by the dean and signed his name on the contract. The moment the contract was signed with both parties' names, Chen Mu and the dean's heart, both coincidentally recalled the same sentence. Chen Mu, this unjust seed has finally signed. Dean, this unjust seed has finally signed. After signing the contract, the dean was afraid that Chen Mu would find a break, knowing that the loss of the hospital in fear. So the dean did not hesitate, went directly to the morgue to get a cart. Throwing the creepy corpses on the trolley, he put $70 million in plutonium and directly pushed the trolley and ran away. With the purchase of the frightened hospital, Chen Mu felt, in a trance, that within his body, a huge power had once again accumulated. Unsurprisingly, Chen Mu's strength was once again boosted. From intermediate guile leader, it was raised to guile leader advanced. However, unlike in the past, this time, Chen Mu had a strange feeling. This feeling was so subtle that it was difficult to accurately describe it in words. But if he really wanted to describe it, Chen Mu thought of one word. Connection. In the past few days, one had bought the Midnight Cafeteria, the Spectral Taxi, the Dark Knight High School, and the Landscape Courtyard. But before this moment, one's connection with these industries was limited to contractual connections and no other unusual feelings. But from this moment on, Chen Mu closed his eyes and carefully experienced the changes within. Within his heart, a thin red line spread out with himself as the starting point. At the other end of the thin red line was a small red dot. Chen Mu's heart was beating, and those red dots were beating along with it. Chen Mu took a few steps, and the positions of those red dots were making subtle adjustments. The red dots were centered around Chen Mu, always surrounding him. At this moment, Chen Mu had a feeling as if he had truly become the master of these red dots. A strong feeling of dominance erupted from deep within. As the sense of control grew stronger, Chen Mu began to read the meaning of these red dots. Midnight Hotel. Underworld Taxi. Dark Knight High School. Landscape Courtyard. Fearful Hospital. At this moment, Chen Mu truly felt that the bizarre scenes he had bought had truly established a connection with himself. It was an unprecedentedly marvelous feeling, as if all of these bizarre scenes had begun to move around themselves. One had become their true controller. Chen Mu already had a guess in his heart that because of the increase in his own strength, his control over the bizarre scenes was getting stronger and stronger. Thick and thin. When the strength reached that of a high-level trickster chief, this power of control materialized out deep inside, turning into red lines and red dots. However, what shocked Chen Mu even more was yet to come. In Chen Mu's hand, a stack of familiar notes suddenly appeared. Small blood-colored notes. Chen Mu's pupils contracted violently as he realized that these small blood-colored notes were very different from the ones he had received in the past. On the small blood-colored notes, there weren't any blood characters. Could it be that? I can write on this? Chen Mu's voice was trembling a little, having experienced the horrors of the bizarre end times, he could very well know what this meant. In the creepy end world, in its essence, there were only two classes the. The class that laid out bizarre tasks, and the class that carried out bizarre tasks. The former, called the rulers. The latter are called the ruled. Obviously, before tonight, all human beings in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world belong to the ruled. No matter how much wealth, no matter how high status, when receiving a small bloody note, they all had to obediently carry out bizarre tasks in order to seek a sliver of life. Even some of the bizarre, don't look at the bizarre scene calling the shots, but at best is a wage earner, to carry out the orders of the boss in the bizarre scene. In the bizarre end times, the ruled, no matter how strong they were, were ultimately the ruled, as humble as ants. 
With trembling hands, Shen Mu turned over the small blood-colored slips of paper in his hand. There were ten in total. Upon closer inspection, Shen Mu realized that at the beginning of each small note, there was a line of small words. On two of the small slips of paper, it read, Creepy Scene, Midnight Hotel. Two others read, Creepy Scene, Underworld Taxi. Another two read, Creepy Scene, Dark Knight College. Of the remaining four, two begin with, Spooky Scene, Landscape Courtyard. The last two began with, Spooky Scene, Fearful Hospital. They corresponded exactly to Chen Mu's five industries. If Chen Mu hadn't guessed correctly, each small blood-colored note represented a weird task for a person. With ten of them in his own hands, he could set up spooky tasks for ten people. However, there was also a restriction, not just assigning bizarre tasks, one could only order people to do bizarre tasks in their own industry. And for each industry, there was a limit to the number of people. Two small blood-colored slips of paper meant a maximum of two people in an industry. Nonetheless, Chen Mu's heart was already extraordinarily shocked. This meant that from this moment onwards, Chen Mu's identity had transformed. From the original being ruled, it had shifted to becoming half a ruler. Why did he say half? Because Chen Mu was now, itself, still likely to receive little bloody notes and had to do some weird tasks. It belonged to the ruled. But at the same time, Chen Mu was primed with the power to distribute little bloody notes, and was able to make ten people go on bizarre missions. From this point of view, Chen Mu again belonged to the rulers. Therefore, Chen Mu's identity was special, between the ruler and the ruled. This was a good omen. Chen Mu had a premonition that as his strength increased, and he acquired more and more industries, then the number of small slips of paper in his hand, would also increase. With the increase in the number of small blood-colored slips of paper, one day, would he be able to refuse to accept the bizarre mission? All of this was unknown. At this stage, the small notes in one's hand should only be distributed to humans. But one day, if, one can distribute small notes to the bizarre. And then if, one could acquire all the bizarre scenes and distribute countless blood-colored small notes. Wouldn't this mean that one would become the supreme master in the bizarre end times? Vaguely, Chen Mu felt that he seemed to be starting to touch, the secret of the bizarre end world. The biggest secret of the creepy end times was the creepy scene and creepy, and the second was the small bloody note. Where did the creepy end times come from? And where did the weirdness come from? Why does the creepy end times keep spreading? What is the ultimate motivation behind it? What are the rules? Why could they not be violated? This series of questions were all entangled in Chen Mu's mind, as well as in the minds of every human being. It was just that everyone was a mole cricket struggling to survive in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world. Not even the most basic survival could be achieved, let alone searching for the truth of the bizarre end world. Chen Mu, however, had a feeling that his own self, who had been reborn in a new life and carried trillions of plutonium coins, had the ability to search for the ultimate secret. Moreover, himself and the other bizarre scene bosses were different. The other bizarre scene bosses only had the ability to specify the rules of this scene, and did not have the ability to distribute small bloody notes. Chen Mu was not only able to specify the rules within the industry, but he had also obtained 10 small blood-colored slips of paper. The ability to distribute little blood-colored notes and hand out bizarre tasks to others. All of this was telling Chen Mu that he was a unique and special existence. Resisting his excitement, Chen Mu drew out a small blood-colored note and pulled out the creepy gold pen from his pocket. He wanted to verify his guess if he could really set up a bizarre task. From the 10 slips of paper, Chen Mu drew out a midnight cafeteria. After thinking for a moment, Chen Mu thought of a person, Jiang Hua. This person was a paparazzo, and before the bizarre end times, specialized in making money by digging up lace news. Originally, it was impossible for this kind of person in Chen Mu, to have any interactions. However, after the weird end of the world, not many people read the lace news, so Jiang Hua lost his income all of a sudden. Coincidentally, the news of Chen Mu's successive purchases of industry spread, immediately allowing Jiang Hua to find a new target. This was a big traffic flow. In an environment where people were generally fearful, as long as they ruthlessly morally kidnapped Chen Mu, were they still afraid of not having any traffic? Still afraid of not being able to chalk crappy money? Thus, Zhang Hua aimed his spearhead at Chen Mu and began to frantically output opinions on the internet, with only one core. Chen Mu, you're so powerful, why do you want to see death? As long as there was a weird mission somewhere and a participant died, then Zhang Hua would jump out and furiously spray Chen Mu on the internet. Wang Zhang City's Chen Mu is so powerful and has so many bizarre as minions. Why did you sit back and watch this person die? Couldn't you have sent two creeps to save him? Or, Chen Mu is so rich, yesterday there was a bizarre mission in Soanso City, and ten people wanted to participate at once. Why didn't Chen Mu just pay for that bizarre scene? That way those few people wouldn't have died. Chen Mu's indifference was disgusting, and Chen Mu was responsible for the deaths of those people. With remarks such as these, Jiang Hua could write more than a dozen a day. In just a few days, Jiang Hua had caught fire on the internet and gained a large number of loyal fans. 
Jiang Huo ruthlessly Chao lousy amount of money, he even earned more than a thousand plutonium coins. Naturally, under Jiang Huo's leadership, there were also many more voices cursing Chen Mu on the internet. Chen Mu was inexplicably labeled by Jiang Hua as selfish, indifferent, and unkind to the rich. Chen Mu had already known about this situation after buying the landscape courtyard. Unfortunately, Chen Mu's current power was limited to Wang Jiang city. That Jiang Hua was very smart, knowing that Chen Mu would find himself in trouble, so he stayed far away from Wang Jiang city and hid in the neighboring city, making it impossible for Chen Mu's forces to penetrate there. Jiang Hua thought that by playing this kind of cleverness, Chen Mu would have no way to deal with him. Before, it was just that Chen Mu was too busy buying and buying and didn't have time to take care of a clown like him. After all, Chen Mu was now scrambling to kill Jiang Hua, so if he wanted to kill Jiang Hua, he would at least have to send a henchman like a driver over and spend a day or two searching. It was too much of a waste of time. Time was money at times like this. The time and effort wasted by sending someone specifically to kill a Jiang Hua would cost Chen Mu hundreds of thousands of dollars at the very least. It wasn't worth it for this kind of jumped up clown. So Chen Mu just pretended not to see it as a fly calling. I didn't expect that just yesterday, Jiang Hu intensified his efforts and made a whole big job of it on the internet, putting out the word that, if he has time, he wants to personally go to Chen Mu's industry, to what midnight hotel to eat a meal, face to face to ask Chen Mu's heart is not made of stone, how can be so indifferent? All kinds of comments, all the Chen Mu whole speechless. Chen Mu said with a clear conscience, although he is not a good person, but never killed innocent people. As long as he didn't provoke Chen Mu, Chen Mu wouldn't actively harm anyone. Chen Mu would not actively harm people, nor would he help people for no reason. In the weird post-apocalyptic world, this was already considered a good person. Jiang Hua said so nice, his own hands have a thousand medieval currency, also did not see him take out to help people ah, and also cover the dead, afraid of others to borrow. Jiang Hua's series of remarks, attracted a large number of fools for him, crazy to Jiang Hua brush money. For a while, Jiang Hua became the spokesperson for justice, leading a group of idiots to morally kidnap Chen Mu every day. If Jiang Hua is really so courageous, he should just come over for a meal. Unfortunately, Jiang Hua pretends to understand, not to mention going to the midnight hotel, even Wang Jiang city do not dare to come. A kind of you have the courage to follow the network line to hit me posture. Okay, want to go to the midnight hotel to eat a meal is it? Now that he has a small bloody note, of course, Chen Mu first thought of Jiang Hua. So, Chen Mu picked up a pen, looked at the time, and wrote under, Midnight Hotel. Mission name, Taodai Eater. Task performer, Jiang Hua. Mission description, in a calm city, whenever night falls, there is always a hotel open for business. Everyone says, they have never seen a guest walk into the hotel. But every midnight, the hotel is always full of people. The hotel late at night is always entertaining a group of invisible guests. You are a diner in the next city over and today you have received an invitation to a lavish luncheon at the midnight hotel. Please make your way to the midnight hotel within two and a half hours. The midnight hotel does not like late guests. When Chen Mu wrote down Jiang Hua's name, although there were many people with the same name all over the world, there was no need for Chen Mu to specifically point out who it was. It was as if the small blood-colored note could read Chen Mu's thoughts and could accurately assign the task to that Jiang Hua. Moreover, when writing the mission description, Chen Mu also encountered some limitations. For example, Chen Mu couldn't just fill in the two and a half hours arrival time limit. At first, Chen Mu wrote 10 minutes, but as soon as he wrote 10 minutes, his handwriting slowly disappeared. Obviously, the weird mission thought that the participant would not be able to arrive at the midnight hotel in such a short period of time. If they wrote 10 minutes directly, it was equivalent to directly sentencing Jiang Hua to death, which was not allowed by the weird mission. In a way, this was also a protection for the participant. Chen Mu slowly postponed the time until he wrote two and a half hours, and the handwriting finally stopped disappearing. From the next city to the midnight hotel, it would only take two and a half hours to arrive at the midnight hotel, using the fastest speed possible and without any delays on the road. This was the protective rule of the weird mission, ensuring that the participants had time to catch up. Of course, if one wanted to rely on the protective rules to get stuck in a bug, that would not be allowed. For example, in the previous Dark Knight High School death exam mission, some students took airplanes and went to faraway cities, thinking that they could avoid the bizarre mission that way. But it was contrary to their wishes, the bizarre mission pressed on and didn't extend the time for them. So it can be concluded that this protective rule can be summarized like this. The weird quest protects the participants to arrive at the location of the weird quest at a reasonable time. If the reasonable interval is exceeded, then this protective rule fails. This kind of rule is not directly told to human beings, and it is called the hidden rule in the weird post-apocalyptic world. Hidden rules can only be discovered and guessed by oneself. The more hidden rules one masters, the greater the chance of survival. When Chen Mu finished writing, the small bloody note seemed to burn, slowly turning into ashes in Chen Mu's hands. The task was distributed. 
At the same time that the mission was distributed, the city next door, in some large, wide flat, Zhang Huo finished writing a new manuscript and stretched comfortably. The title of the manuscript was, Chen Mu's selfishness is incomprehensible. How could anyone be so selfish? If I were given 100 million plutonium, I would definitely donate it all to help everyone. This kind of writing style was John was best no blowing, no blacking, step on one and praise one. First, he made up all kinds of stories about Chen Mu seeing death and saving lives. Anyway, regardless of whether they were true or not, he definitely wrote them in great detail, as if he was there at the time. Then again, with a twist, with not blowing not black beginning, said that if they have a hundred million medals, certainly will not be so to see the death of the rescue, will certainly be. In contrast to the two, stepping on one to praise one, dramatic conflict effect pull full. Zhang Hu did not have to think about it all no, certainly is another hundreds of thousands of read a big explosion. After pressing the Yi publish button, Zhang Hu felt a little hungry and prepared to go eat something. It was at this time that Zhang Hu suddenly realized that on the table in front of him, a small bloodred note suddenly appeared. Zhang Hu's heart thumped. It couldn't be a weird mission, could it? How could he be so unlucky? In the next second, when Zhang Hu read the content on the note, he almost didn't pass out with two black eyes. Fuck me. It was actually Midnight Hotel. He had just matched Midnight Hotel online, and only a day later, he received a bizarre mission from Midnight Hotel. Zhang Hu had a hard time believing that this was a coincidence. Could it be that he had been targeted? It couldn't be. As far as Zhang Hua knew, the distribution of bizarre quests seemed to be randomized. The bosses of those bizarre scenarios, not to mention being very powerful and able to specify the rules of this scenario, had no way to specify who participated in this scenario. Zhang Hua thought that it was impossible for Chen Mu to have this ability to be able to designate him to participate in the bizarre quest. Otherwise, that kind of ability would be too heaven defying. This should just be a coincidence, it was his own bad luck. Jiang Hua consoled himself in his heart. There was no time to lose, there were still two and a half hours to go before it started, so he had to hurry over there. At that moment, Jiang Hua couldn't even care about his late night snack, hurriedly put on a piece of clothing and rushed towards Wangjiang City. Two and a half hours of time has been very extreme. Along the way, Jiang Hua stepped on the gas pedal to the end, almost put the car stepped on the smoke. When he passed a bridge, he almost didn't rush into the river. Crazy rush, Zhang Hua finally arrived at the midnight hotel at the specified time. When he came down from the car, Zhang Hua's clothes were soaked with sweat, and his appearance was particularly lousy. Looking at the luxurious midnight hotel in front of him, Zhang Hua couldn't wait to smack himself in the ear, he was really bitchy ah, had to send that article to provoke. If Chen Mu is inside, he will definitely be cool today. I hope Chen Mu doesn't know yet. He himself quickly finished the weird quest and left this place before Chen Mu could react. Holding the idea of a quick fix, Zhang Wu pushed the door and walked into the hotel. As soon as he entered the hotel lobby, a beautiful female manager greeted him. Hello sir, you're here for the bizarre mission, right? I'm the manager here, you can call me Li Xiao Xiao. Zhang Wu looked left and right, and when he didn't see Chen Mu's shadow, he sighed in relief. Great, that idiot Chen Mu wasn't here, this manager must not know about himself and treated himself as an ordinary player. If Li Xiao Xiao knew what Zhang Huo was thinking, Li Xiao Xiao would definitely be unable to tense up on the spot, revealing a sweating soybean expression, guess who sent you the weird quest? At that moment, Li Xiao Xiao said to Zhang Huo, come with me, lunch will be in the room inside. Although it was now midnight and it should be time for a late night snack, it was almost time for lunch for creepy. Along the way, Night Xiao Xiao gave Zhang Huo the rules of the luncheon. To attend the luncheon, you need to follow the following rules. 1. You must finish all the food on the table before you can leave. If you don't finish the food, there will be a penalty. 2. I understand that you are hungry, but humans cannot kill each other, humans are not food. 3. The table, chairs, knives, forks, and plates are not food. 4. You can't voluntarily throw away food or it's the same as not finishing it. After these four rules, Zhang Hua was taken to a small room. In the center of the room, there was a round table. On the table, there was a plate. On the plate, there was a large bowl of red soup broth. On the other chair of the table, sat a little girl. At the moment, the little girl was crying in a low voice, looking full of despair. Li Xiaoxiao explained to Jiang Hua, this little girl, is the loser of the last round of missions. She didn't complete the mission, so she was left behind. Later on, if you don't complete the mission as well, then you will join her and be punished. Jiang Hua's body began to shake a little as he came to the table and looked down at the soupy broth on his plate. A stench of blood greeted him, and Jiang Hua almost didn't faint. Vomit. Jiang Hua couldn't help but dry heave. Those red soup broths were mixed with ruptured eyeballs, half of an ear, and chunks of bright red meat. Not to mention eating it, just looking at it would give one nightmares. I hope this meal can gag you. Li Xiao Xiao made a conspiratorial remark, then closed the door and left. Jiang Wu didn't understand what Li Xiao Xiao meant, 
He thought Chen Mu didn't know yet, he had to hurry up and finish the job before Chen Mu knew. At that moment, Jiang Hua gritted his teeth, directly pinched his nose, picked up his plate, and began to tun 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 up. Jiang Hua could even feel the eyeballs, which were unknown to him, bursting into popping pulp in his mouth. Jiang Hua swore that after eating this meal, he would never want to eat a late night snack again in his life. The entire eating process went on for five difficult minutes. Even though there was no specified time in the rules, Jiang Hua still frantically forced himself to hurry up and drink quickly. If he didn't hurry up, Chen Mu might be coming. Finally, after five minutes, Jiang Hua burped. The soup broth on the plate was all poured into his stomach. Jiang Hua's intestines had gone numb, and his entire mouth was confused, he could barely taste anything except for the strong smell of blood. It was estimated that for the next many days, one would not want to eat again. Jiang Hua gasped and forced down the nausea in his heart. He carefully checked the table inside and out, making sure that there was no more food other than his own plate of food. Jiang Hua shouted at the door. Manager, come on in, I finished my food. I've completed the spooky mission, let me out now. As Jiang Hua finished speaking, the door to the room opened from the outside. Li Xiao Xiao walked in. She looked at the dining table and then at Jiang Hua, who was so disgusted that he was about to roll his eyes, and nodded in satisfaction. You're quite fast at eating, had I known that you could eat so much, I should have prepared a little more for you. You shouldn't have eaten enough, I'm really sorry for the poor hospitality. Jiang Hua almost died of anger, how much more do you want to prepare? You can't wait for me to die. Even though in his heart, he wanted to curse Li Xiao Xiao to death, on the surface, Jiang Hua still squeezed out a smiling face. Enough to eat, enough to eat, thanks for the hospitality. Jiang Hua said, about to prepare to leave. Wait, don't leave yet. Li Xiao Xiao called out to him. Why? Haven't I already completed my mission? Jiang Hua's heart thumped. As the saying goes, if you don't do anything wrong, you're not afraid of ghosts knocking on your door. Jiang Hua had done too much wrongdoing and his heart was weak. It's nothing. I'm just reminding you that your mission was accomplished excellently, so you've gained a chance. Li Xiao Xiao said. Chance? What chance? See this little girl. Night Xiao Xiao pointed at the girl sitting next to her, she was the loser of the last round of missions, and by rights, she was to be executed. But we, Midnight Hotel, don't like indiscriminate killing either. As long as you give me a hundred plutonium coins, I'll let her go and she'll be able to leave here safely. What do you think? Jiang Hua froze for a moment and looked at Li Xiao Xiao like a fool. A chance? This was considered a chance? Marred. Happy for nothing. Jiang Hua still thought that it was a good opportunity to get some kind of reward, high or low to make a hard profit. Unexpectedly, Li Xiaoxiao's so-called opportunity was to let himself spend money to save a little girl he didn't know. This is also good enough to be called a chance? In Jiang Hua's pocket, he was carrying a thousand medieval coins. To say that the source of this thousand plutonium coins was actually quite interesting. The series of articles written by Jiang Hua had gained a large number of fans. Many people viewed Jiang Hua as a savior in the post-apocalyptic world, a rare person with a conscience in the post-apocalyptic world, and held him in high esteem. There was one article written by Jiang Hua that lamented about the lack of human hearts, saying, If I had plutonium, I would definitely want to help those in need. There was a rich merchant's son, who was originally a fan of Jiang Hua, and after reading this article, he actually stole a hundred plutonium coins from his family and gave them to Jiang Hua, so that Jiang Hua could go and help people in need. The other hundreds of plutonium coins were also given to Jiang Hua by such kind-hearted people, in the hope that Jiang Hua would help more people. However, after receiving these medals, Jiang Hua decisively pull black, ban, delete a dragon, forever and the donor cut off contact. Now, Jiang Hua had a thousand medals in his hand, and he looked at the little girl who was crying with her head down, but there was no expression on his face. I'm sorry, I'd love to help her, but unfortunately I don't have any medals in my pocket. Jiang Hua said indifferently to Li Xiao Xiao. Oh, is that so? Knight revealed a contemptuous smile. All right, I'll leave if there's nothing else. Jiang Hua didn't want to stay even for a moment, he tucked the thousand plutonium coins in his pocket tightly and prepared to leave quickly. Wait, you can't leave. What else is going on? Your mission, failed. Li Xiaoxiao said word for word. Jiang Hua revealed a shocked expression, how is this possible? He pointed at the empty bowl on the dining table, I ate everything in the bowl cleanly. Even the soup I licked up. Are you guys unable to play? Do you dare to break the rules? Li Xiaoxiao said, I didn't break the rules. You did finish the contents of the bowl, but there's still food you didn't eat. Saying this, Li Xiaoxiao pointed at the little girl, she is also food. This time, Jiang Hua was completely shocked. What the hell? That little girl? Wasn't she the loser of the last mission, why was she also food? Jiang Hua had only participated in one weird mission, or the simplest kind. When confronted with this situation, he was completely dumbfounded. Yes, she's been crying on the edge of the table, so she's food too. You didn't eat it. Knight repeated again. You're bullshitting me. 
Ginger fire hissed, it's clearly stated in the rules. Humans aren't food, yet you said she was food. Are you bullying me for not knowing the rules? Li Xiaoxiao shrugged, but how do you know she's human? It was at this moment that the little girl, who had been crying with her head down, stood up from her chair, revealing her face. Her face was pale and without the slightest trace of blood. Such a grayish face was one of the characteristics of the bazaar. Zhang Hua was on the verge of collapsing, he vaguely knew in his heart that he would have to explain himself here today. Suddenly, Zhang Hua suddenly thought of something and shouted at Li Xiaoxiao as if he had grabbed a life-saving straw. No, the rules are wrong. This little girl is so big, even if I know she's creepy, there's no way I can eat her. I don't have a stomach this big, no normal person has a stomach this big. So that's why it's not even a way of life. There's something wrong with your rules, you didn't give me the way of life. Your rules are invalid. Li Xiaoxiao laughed, I know you're in a hurry, but don't be in a hurry yet. This mantra of Chen Mu's was now learned by Chen Mu's men as well. You're saying that the rules don't give you a way out? No, you're wrong. Rule number four, you can't voluntarily discard food, otherwise it's equivalent to not finishing it. The implication of this rule is, food that leaves of its own accord will not count as you not finishing it. You can make the little girl leave of her own accord, and that's how the tricky quest lives. Besides, I've given you the chance. For a hundred plutocrats, you can save her and get her out of the hotel safely. As long as she leaves, then you don't have to eat her. But, you refuse to help her. The reason was that you didn't have any plutonium. But if I'm not mistaken, in your pocket, there should be a lot of plutonium. Mr. Ginger Fire, didn't you once say that if you had a hundred million plutonium coins, you wouldn't hesitate to help others? But why are you reluctant to spend a hundred medals when you are asked to do so? Because you really do have a hundred plutonium coins, don't you? Zhang Hua's eyes widened, how could he not expect that his refusal just now had cut off his own life? But, I, don't know her, why should I spend my own money to save her? Zhang Hua tried to weasel his way out of this, but it was all in vain, he had already missed his way out of life. Yeah, why should I spend my own money to save someone I've never met before in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world? Li Xiaoxiao said, Mr. Zhang Hua, if you can't do it yourself, why do you want to morally kidnap and make others do it? Suddenly, Zhang Hua seemed to understand something, and he heard the strings in Li Xiaoxiao's words. Could it be that? These rules. Are Chen Mu. Zhang Hua's voice began to tremble. Yes, you guessed correctly. These four rules are what Boss Chen designed for you. Including the fact that you would refuse, it was also expected by Boss Chen. Because, this is human nature in the bizarre end times. Li Xiaoxiao said. Boss Chen asked me to bring you a message. In the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, not going to actively harm an innocent person is already the greatest mercy and kindness. Boss Chen has always followed this bottom line, not actively harming people, but not flooding them with compassion either. As for you, Mr. Zhang Hua, but for the sake of your own self-interest, you stood on the high ground of moral righteousness and went to actively harm Chen Mu, whom you have never known. Mr. Chen feels disgusted by your behavior and doesn't want to see you again in his life. After hearing Li Xiaoxiao's words, Zhang Hua felt like falling into an ice cave. He knew that he was dead today. A five-year player of the bizarre end times like Chen Mu had seen more rules than Zhang Hua had ever eaten. As long as Chen Mu wanted to fix Zhang Hua to death, he could just set up a few randomly curved rules. These four rules given by Chen Mu weren't too outrageous, and there weren't even any wrong rules. But even so, Zhang Hua still couldn't see through the path to life. The reason was simple, because Chen Mu had seen through Zhang Hua's heart, and Chen Mu had seen this kind of person too many times. Chen Mu and Zhang Hua, the two of them were not on the same level at all. In the end, Zhang Hua gritted his teeth and spoke his last words. Count me unlucky and unlucky to have been chosen for your bizarre mission. It's all my bad luck. Li Xiaoxiao, however, revealed a meaningful smile. Do you think that there's a possibility that it was Boss Chen who sent you here? Impossible. It's impossible. Zhang Hua subconsciously couldn't believe it. Could Chen Mu have the ability to assign bizarre tasks to himself? If this was really the case, this was too terrifying. A human was actually capable of assigning bizarre tasks? This was beyond Zhang Hua's cognition. It wasn't until this time that Zhang Hua snapped out of it, realizing what kind of existence he had provoked. Chen Mu was very different from those stars he had once reported on. Chen Mu's hands truly had power and blood. Soon, an employee dragged Zhang Hua out and found a remote place so that he could enjoy the best quality sleep from now on. On the other hand, the frightened hospital. Chen Mu nodded with satisfaction after learning that Zhang Hua was dead. Looking at the remaining nine small blood-colored notes in his hand, a hint of a smile appeared at the corner of Chen Mu's mouth. One could say bluntly that with the small blood-colored notes, throughout the entire bizarre end world, as long as Chen Mu wanted to, there was no one that Chen Mu could not kill. Even if that person was far away from the ends of the earth, once Chen Mu set up a bizarre task for him, he would have to arrive at Wangjiang City at the stipulated time. 
When he arrived at Chen Mu's territory, Chen Mu would design some tricky rules for him, and he would still be able to leave alive? Even if he was allowed to succeed once, Chen Mu still had a lot of little blood-colored notes in his hand, so the big deal was to come back a few more times. If nine consecutive bizarre tasks are not able to kill that person, Chen Mu directly take a block of tofu to hit himself, five years of bizarre end of the world is considered to be living in vain. Obviously, this was something that could not happen. The first time he used the small blood-colored note, Chen Mu almost figured out the rules. He put away the remaining few and began to deal with the matters of the fear hospital. The frightened fear hospital now belonged to Chen Mu completely. Developing the fearful hospital well would be a huge resource for Chen Mu. The resources here were not just plutonium. Imagine, right now, in the entire creepy end times, hospitals that could treat creepiness would have been extremely rare. On average, there would only be one hospital in four or five cities. And the treatment effect of the hospital can't be said to be poor, it can only be said to be miserable. Of the ten patients that came in, nine of them went out lying down. Even with this kind of treatment effect, the hospital was still in short supply. Of course, Chen Mu is not satisfied with this, since it is a hospital, he has to maximize the role of the hospital to play out. What is the most central role of a hospital? Very simple, treating patients. As long as it could cure the patients, then it was a good hospital. If the price is a little lower, that's even better. With an average 90% cure death rate, if Chen Mu's frightened hospital could push the cure death rate down hard, below 10% or lower, the then one could imagine how strong the weirdo's desire for the fear hospital would be. In the previous life of the fear hospital, 9 out of 10 patients could be cured, and at the end of the day, they could earn hundreds of millions of dollars in plutonium every day. If it becomes 10 patients curing 9, then how much can it earn, billions? Billions? Shen Mu could not even imagine. At that time, wouldn't the plutonium come in a steady stream? Not only that, when the reputation of the frightened hospital hit the streets, those rich and powerful shenanigans would converge on Wangjiang City from all over the world, not far away, in order to get the best treatment conditions. At that time, the city where Chen Mu was located would become the center of the entire creepy end times. Power, wealth, and status would continue to flow. The price of the landscape courtyard in Chen Mu's hands could be speculated to the heavens. Chen Mu didn't have to go anywhere, didn't have to fight monsters and upgrade all over the world. All he needed to do was sit at home, and the strongest shenanigans in the world would flock to Chen Mu and wealth would gather around him like a tidal wave. When that time comes, Wangjiang City will have the most luxurious hotel, the Midnight Hotel, the best school, the Dark Knight High School, the best hospital, the Fear Hospital, the best house Shan Shui Courtyard. Here, it would be the center of the bizarre end times. And all of this wonderful vision was built on the foundation of the Fright Hospital's improved reputation. If you want to improve the reputation, you definitely have to improve the skills of the doctors. Go, take me to the director's office. Chen Mu said to the chief doctor next to him. This way please, President Chen. The chief doctor was respectful and raised a bow to Chen Mu, leading Chen Mu towards the upper floors. Along the way, the chief doctor was thankful that he was smart enough not to cross paths with Chen Mu. Who would have thought that a player of a bizarre quest, in just a few hours, would transform into the new head of the fright hospital? The head doctor felt that taking the initiative to kneel down to President Chen just now was the best decision he had ever made in his life. Soon, under the lead of the chief doctor, Chen Mu arrived at the top floor. The top floor of the fear hospital was a slice of VIP wards, dedicated to the most honored guests. Chen Mu silently made a note in his heart that when the frightened hospital developed, all these VIP wards could become sharp tools in Chen Mu's hands. If you wanted to make friends with any trickster general or king, you could directly send the right to use a VIP ward, which was a symbol of status. Of course, it was still the same thing, provided that the fearful hospital had to develop and become the best hospital in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world. At the end of the VIP ward was the dean's office. Chen Mu walked into the dean's office, he asked the head doctor to wait outside the door and approached the office alone. The dean's office, to put it with high intelligence, was plainly decorated. Low IQ words, is a table and a chair. Thinking about it is also very normal, a hospital that loses more than a million dollars a day, the dean has long been poor as pants, which has the money to decorate the office. Chen Mu opened the drawer of the table and took out a small booklet from it. The list of doctors of fear hospital. In the entire pamphlet, there were a total of 20 to 30 doctors, which was the entire home base of Fear Hospital. Shen Mu looked at the introduction of the doctors and couldn't help but frown, they were all a bunch of wonderful doctors. All of them were a group of good doctors with wonderful hands. Suddenly, a doctor named Heal the Immortal attracted Chen Mu's attention. This doctor named Cure Immortality was a young chief doctor. In the crowd of old doctors, he looked unique. What attracted Chen Mu's attention the most was his treatment success rate. Surprisingly, it was as high as 50%. In other words, for every 10 patients treated by the cure for immortality doctor, 5 would survive. 
Among all the doctors with wonderful hands, Dr. Immortal Cure deserved the praise of the whole family died violently. Suddenly, Chen Mu remembered. In the memory of his previous life, it seems that there was indeed a weird post-apocalyptic famous doctor called Cure Immortality. Since Chen Mu was just a humble survivor in his previous life, he did not know much about doctors in the bizarre world. Even so, he had heard of the famous name of the cure for immortality. This doctor started out at the Fear Hospital, but later, when the Fear Hospital couldn't provide much development, he jumped ship and left for a bigger hospital. As time went by, the medical skills of Dr. Cure Immortality gradually improved by leaps and bounds. So much so that at the end of the weird end of the world, Cure Immortality specializes in treating the weird king, became a generation of famous doctors in the weird end of the world. Now it is the first stage of the end of the weird world, Cure Undead Doctor is still a young man, has not yet become a generation of famous doctors. He had only made his debut at the Fear Hospital. For such a genius, Chen Mu did not mind taking him under his wing. It was just as well that Chen Mu had purchased the Fear Hospital and didn't have the time or energy to manage the hospital. This Cure Immortality doctor became a good candidate for trusteeship. By entrusting Fear Hospital to him, Chen Mu felt relieved. Come on, call the Cure Immortality doctor over to me. Chen Mu shouted at the door. Not long after, the chief doctor hurriedly, bringing a young doctor to the office. You are the Cure Immortality doctor? Chen Mu asked as he looked at the weirdness in front of him. This weird dress, not the kind of young and handsome wearing a white coat image of young and promising doctors, on the contrary, the whole body is unkempt, more inclined to the Frankenstein dress. Only this kind of paranoid weirdness can in the chaotic weird post-apocalyptic world maintain the study of medical skills and eventually become one of the most famous doctors. I am. What is it that you're looking for me for, Dean? Cure for immortality, the doctor looked at Chen Mu with some curiosity, as far as he knew, Chen Mu had topped the hospital's divine doctor list three times in just a few hours. A hundred percent treatment success rate, plus full positive feedback from the patients. This kind of achievement, even the cure for immortality doctor, also feel extraordinarily shocked. As for Chen Mu is how to cure, the director of the doctor is not a fool, surely will not talk to the cure not dead specific process, that is too detrimental to the image of the dean. On the way, as long as the immortal cure asked about this matter, the chief doctor would boast about Chen Mu, blowing Chen Mu into a generation of famous doctors. In the chief doctor swore to praise, cure not dead the future generation of famous doctors, also on Chen Mu's medical skills were greatly shocked. Chen Mu did not care, as long as he never made a move, then his 100% win rate would always be a myth. Let this myth remain in the bizarre end times forever. Maybe a few years later, in a crowd of praise, Chen Mu in turn stabilized the position of a generation of famous doctors. Chen Mu didn't talk nonsense, and said directly to the point. I think that the treatment level of the fear hospital is really too low. Dr. Cure Undead, I think highly of your ability. Let's do it this way, I'll give fear hospital to you to take care of, and I can provide you with tons of resources and support. Can you help me develop the frightened hospital, within half a year, into the best hospital in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world? Hearing Chen Mu's statement, Cure Immortality felt a bit surprised. Vaguely, Cure Immortality felt that the new dean did not seem to be the same as the previous deans. The previous deans, Cure Immortality disliked very much. There was no other reason for this, because those deans were short-sighted and only focused on immediate benefits. The most common words of the former dean were, why did we lose so much money this month? Medical expenses need to be cut again. In this regard, the cure never dies felt helpless. He was a weirdo who was very ambitious in his medical skills, and it was obvious that medical care was something that burned money. Especially the weird medical care, belonging to the early development to invest a huge amount of money, thick and thin, a long time to see the effect. However, once the effect is seen, then the return received is not something that can be brought about by ordinary investment. That will be thousands of times the sky-high return. Unfortunately, the former deans are short-sighted, only focusing on short-term losses, not caring about the huge benefits in the long run. Because of this, the former presidents have slashed and cut budgets, resulting in poor medical care and 9 out of 10 deaths. Doctors like Heal the Undead, who specialized in the art of medicine, were even more powerful in burning money, and thus had always been disliked by the former deans, who even wanted to fire him as a way to save money. If Chen Mu hadn't bought Fear Hospital, the former dean would have fired Heal the Undead in less than two months. If those former deans could live to see two years later, they would regret realizing what kind of genius they had fired. Unfortunately, Chen Mu bought the Fear Hospital, and the gears of fate began to turn. Hearing Dean Chen say this, the originally silent heart of Cure Immortality suddenly rippled, but he suspected that Chen Mu did not know much about the hospital, so he carefully said, President Chen, you may not know, if you want to develop Fear Hospital, how much money needs to be invested in the early stage. Chen Mu smiled, of course I know, I'm a person who lacks everything, the last thing I lack is money. I'll give you the bottom line, as long as Frightened Fear Hospital can become number one, 
I'm even willing to invest a hundred billion plutocrats. Moreover, from now on, I won't pay you a salary. Cure Undead obviously froze for a moment, he didn't quite understand what Chen Mu meant. Listening to the first half of Chen Mu's words, it showed a strong determination to support the frightened hospital. What did the second half mean? Do not pay my salary? This is wanting to fire me. Chen Mu revealed a kind smile, patted the shoulder of the doctor who can't be cured and said, I won't pay you a salary, but I'll give you shares. I'll give you 1% of the shares of Fear Hospital. I won't let you bear the losses of Fear Hospital, and once Fear Hospital makes money, you will own 1% of the dividends. This is the deal I'm offering you. Chen Mu was not soft when it came to spending money. Especially for Cure Immortality Doctor, this kind of weird post-apocalyptic world ranked the top three famous doctors, Chen Mu naturally not stingy. Compared to the rewards that Cure Immortality could bring, this amount of payment was nothing. Moreover, Chen Mu also had his own plans. Once he took the shares of Fear Hospital, it was the same as signing a long-term contract with Fear Hospital. Jumping ship is not to think about, as long as the Fear Hospital does not close down, then obediently work for Chen Boss. Cure Immortality, the doctor revealed a shocked expression, he simply could not imagine that President Chen would offer such a high treatment. Don't look at the 1% share, it sounded small, but this was the Fear Hospital. A behemoth worth a billion dollars. The first time that Dr. Cure Undead had seen such a generous boss was when he offered 1% of the shares. Not to mention him, in the entire weird post-apocalyptic world, it is impossible to have such a generous boss. What does a boss use to show his appreciation for his employees? Of course, it is not a big cake, but the actual treatment. The higher the treatment given, the more it meant that the boss appreciated the employee. Can open such a high treatment, the boss of their own is how much love ah. At once, the cure for immortality heart welled up a warm current. He thought to himself, worthy of being a boss who has been on the top of the divine doctor list for three times, he is many times better than those short-sighted ex-directors. This might be the sympathy between divine doctors. Cure immortality, the doctor choked a little, his own talent, finally got Bull's appreciation. A scholar will die for a friend who understands him. To meet a boss who appreciates you so much, this life is worth it. Looking at the immortal doctor who was moved, Chen Mu asked the question he was most concerned about. If you want Fear Hospital to develop rapidly, what help do you need the most? After pondering for a moment, Heal the Immortal replied. For Frightened Hospital to develop, it boils down to two things. Good medical conditions, and excellent doctors. To have good medical conditions, you need to have good medicines, good medical equipment. These all require money, and lots of it. Chen Mu waved his hand, isn't it just a matter of money, not a problem. What medicines and equipment do you want, just name your price. The matter of money was easy to solve, the hardest point was the excellent doctors. Eerie doctors were not like medicines, as long as enough money was given, they could be produced in a short period of time. To train a qualified trickster doctor, one needed to invest a lot of time and money, and most importantly, experience. Doctors with rich experience were not necessarily excellent, but excellent doctors must have rich experience. Cure Immortality couldn't help but frown and said with some concern, the current fear hospital is short of patients. On average, each doctor can't treat one patient a day. Without patients, doctors lack the opportunity to practice and accumulate experience. In this way, it will take more time to become an excellent doctor. This wasn't a problem for the frightened hospital, in fact, at the beginning of the bizarre end times, all the bizarre hospitals faced a lack of patients. The reason was also simple, everyone was broke. At the beginning of the creepy end times, both humans and creepy lacked plutonium. According to Chen Mu's observation, the plutonium in the creepy end times seemed to be slowly becoming more plutonium. With the development of the creepy end times, the world only began to have more and more medieval coins. As for where these extra plutonium coins came from, no one could tell the mystery. The source of the medieval coins in the bizarre end times became a huge secret. That being said, everyone had no money in their hands, so naturally they didn't dare to spend it. Not to mention going to a place that burned money like a hospital. And the level of medical skills in the weird hospital was just that, right? Instead of spending tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of plutonium to gamble on a one-tenth of the success rate, many bizarre chose not to spend this wasted money. However, for Chen Mu, the problem of lack of patience was not a big problem. Patients were afraid of spending money, right? No problem. Just use your money power. Boss Chen paid for them to see the patients. If you thought that Chen Mu was stupid, spending his own money to treat creepy, then you were wrong. It was indeed true that Boss Chen paid out money, but those bizarre patients paid out their lives. As long as they dare to come to Fear Hospital, on the level of those doctors, at least nine-tenths of the mortality rate. As long as Creepy wasn't afraid to die, then come and practice for Chen Mu's doctors. Chen Mu will pay for it, and Creepy will pay for his life. We will all work together to raise the level of the doctors as soon as possible. This is the process of cultivating leaks. 
If you wanted to grow tender and juicy leeks, you had to water and fertilize them in the early stages, and only in the later stages could you harvest like crazy and cut out all the sparks from the scythe. It's fine, leave the patients to me. I'll make sure that the frightened hospital won't be short of patients. Chen Mu assured the cure for immortality. Of course, before attracting patients, Chen Mu had one last thing to do. He asked the chief doctor to call all the doctors in the hospital and gave everyone a meeting. A few minutes later, more than 20 doctors in the frightened hospital arrived in Chen Mu's office. They curiously sized up Chen Mu and looked at the young new dean in front of them, wondering what the new dean was going to announce. In meetings, Chen Mu never liked to talk nonsense, he directly opened the door and said, starting today, Fear Hospital is implementing a final elimination system. At the end of every month, all doctors will be ranked. According to the treatment success rate, they will be ranked in order from top to bottom. The doctor who ranks last will be directly fired. The moment these words came out, the bizarre doctors present were all in an uproar. This new dean is also too ruthless right. As soon as he came up, without saying a word, he started preparing to fire people? One must know that in the bizarre world, doctors were scarce. The former dean had lost so much money and didn't even bother to fire doctors. Dean Chen doesn't look like he's short of money either, so how come he's going to fire them as soon as he comes up? And is the last elimination, a month must be fired one. The only one who dared to play like this in the weird post-apocalyptic world was presumably the rich and powerful Chen Mu. At once, some of the doctor's hearts gave birth to incomprehension and dissatisfaction. No one would feel good about a boss who, as soon as he came up, wanted to fire his employees. President Chen was also too much of a dog. This was not treating DR. Creepy like a creepy doctor. However, as soon as Chen Mu finished his next sentence, all the doctors present, all of them sucked in a breath of cool air. Chen Mu said, from now on, the wages of all doctors will be raised tenfold. As long as they insist on not being fired, the doctors who are not fired every month will receive bonuses ranging from $50,000 to $200,000. A tenfold increase in salary? A bonus of at least $50,000? And that's every month? The doctor's first reaction was to think that they had heard wrong. What kind of heaven-defying treatment was this? Looking at the entire bizarre post-apocalyptic world, other than frightened hospital, there was simply no hospital that could offer such treatment. No, not to mention the same treatment, even if the treatment given by Chen Mu was discounted, there was no hospital that could offer it. According to this level of salary, as long as you work in the fear hospital for a few years, you will be able to become wealthy and free, and earn millions of plutonium. With such generous treatment, the complaints in the hearts of the doctors dissipated. Dean Chen, please make sure you don't treat me like a trick. What? You're saying Boss Chen doesn't behave and treats his staff like dogs? Coincidentally, I, Gue, have no other hobbies, but I like to treat President Chen like a dog. Roll. I'll start rolling hard. As long as you beat your colleagues and stick around for a few more months, you'll be able to gain wealth that you'll never earn in your life. For a moment, all the doctors present were energized with high fighting spirit. They couldn't wait to roll up their sleeves now and ruthlessly treat the bizarre patients. A smile appeared at the corner of Chen Mu's mouth, this was the effect he wanted. With the highest salary, screen out the best talents for my use. Eliminating every month didn't mean not recruiting new doctors. With such a generous package, Frightened Hospital didn't worry about not having any doctors coming in. Constantly entering new doctors and constantly eliminating unqualified doctors, it won't be long before the level of doctors in Fear Hospital will skyrocket like a rocket. As for the extra salary given to the doctors, it was completely worthless to Chen Mu. How much more could a doctor take? 10 to 20 million dollars would be enough. But a doctor who could get 10 or 20 million dollars could at least earn Boss Chen several hundred million dollars in profits. The doctors were all hungry and couldn't wait to work. A pair of eyes were staring at Chen Mu, all wanting to ask the same question, President Chen, we're ready, so where are the patients? Chen Mu smiled faintly, stating that there was no need to worry, a large number of bizarre patients were about to arrive. Chen Mu had already figured out, a way to attract the bizarre patients. If a few or a dozen weirdos came to see the patients, Chen Mu could use physical means to get his drivers and security guards to come out. But if he wanted to meet the needs of the fear hospital, it would not be in the tens or hundreds. According to a doctor who treated 10 patients a day, that would be about 300 patients a day. In a month, it would be tens of thousands of patients. If they were all beaten up one by one, then Chen Mu's staff wouldn't be able to do anything every day, and they wouldn't be able to finish 25 hours a day. So, other methods are needed. Chen Mu was a warm and simple person, so he wanted to use the simplest method a big spread of money. Spreading coins. Isn't it just that you're afraid of spending money on a cure? It's okay, Boss Chen invites you. You don't have to pay anything either, at most the tiny price of a life. However, straight up free is definitely not an option. Creepy lacks money, but Creepy isn't a fool. There was no such thing as a free lunch under the sky. When people heard that you didn't want money, their first reaction was whether there would be a trap. 
directly free, the effect would be poor instead. Therefore, Chen Mu decided to change the way, and he thought of medical insurance. Every Wangjiang city creepy, as long as they spent 10 plutonium coins, they would purchase Boss Chen's medical insurance product. Then when that creepy got sick, it would be able to go to the frightened hospital for free. In this way, the free will be packaged as a product and sold to the creeps. The price of 10 plutocrats, compared to the treatment cost of more than $100,000, was simply a free gift. As long as Chen Mu lowered the threshold of the health insurance and didn't set up all sorts of pitiful rules, then soon the weirdos would realize that there was a big hole in Boss Chen's health insurance that they could exploit. The weirdos will naturally think that this is a loophole in Boss Chen's health insurance, and they have to hurry up and pull the wool over Boss Chen's eyes, and go to the frightened hospital to pull the wool over their eyes if they are sick or not. It is hard to doubt that this is actually a, I pay for your life trap. Who doesn't like to take advantage? Weirdness also likes to take advantage of it. Even though Creepy was short of money, he could still come up with 10 plutonium coins. As for the name of the medical insurance, it was called, Fear Medical Insurance. Soon, Chen Mu mobilized the employees under his hand to spread this news of the medical insurance. Whether it was word of mouth offline, or various advertisements online. In less than half a day's time, a lot of the entire Wangjiang city's shenanigans knew about the medical insurance. On the streets and alleys, one could see Creepy talking from time to time. Have you heard about it? That very rich human boss, called Boss Chen. He gave us, Creepy, a special health insurance product, and I heard it's especially cost effective. Of course I've heard about it. 10 plutonium can enroll in the health insurance. As long as you get sick, you can go to the fright hospital for free treatment. Do you think it's true? Why don't we go and give it a try? Don't go don't go, it's just a money pit. If you're sick, a trip to the fear hospital will cost you at least tens of thousands of dollars. How can 10 plutonium dollars of health insurance help you get free treatment? What kind of dream is that? Are you willing to believe him, or are you willing to believe that I am the king of guile? Eh? But 10 plutonium isn't much, what if it's true? Wouldn't that be a big profit? 10 plutonium is not much, but it's ironically a waste of money. How can a human, how can he give benefits to Creepy? What can you do if he receives 10 plutonium from you and doesn't recognize the medical insurance? Most of the bazaar, upon hearing this news, still maintained a skeptical attitude. This was naturally expected by Chen Mu. Chen Mu had long thought of this situation. He had packaged it as a medical insurance, just thinking that the bazaar would think it was a trap and wouldn't dare to come to the fearful hospital to send death. Poo poo, and wouldn't dare to come to the fearful hospital to be cured. Facts prove that Chen Mu was right. Even if it was packaged as health insurance, still most of the bazaar did not believe it. But Chen Mu was in no hurry, he needed some patience to wait. Among the large number of skeptical shenanigans, there were naturally a small number of shenanigans that wanted to give it a try. After all, 10 plutonium is not much, and if it really goes down the drain, it will be fed to. Boss Chen. Not long after, the medical insurance sold out 20 copies. These medical insurance, in Chen Mu's industry, can be purchased. It was easy to want to buy them. However, Chen Mu did not give his employees medical insurance for the time being. The reason was also very simple. As far as the death rate of the fear hospital was concerned, his own employees had to be nine-tenths of the total. Employees are dead, who will work for themselves? Or wait for the weird doctor's skills up, and then give the staff on the health insurance it. That's when it's really welfare. As for the employees, they never doubted Boss Chen's decisions. A boss as conscientious as Boss Chen, how could he possibly exploit Creepy? If Boss Chen did this, there must be Boss Chen's reasoning. Those who were bold enough to buy the health insurance for the shenanigans began to tentatively come to the frightened hospital, wanting to see if the health insurance was real or fake. However, a scene that shocked them appeared. When they came to the fear hospital, the hospital's reception nurse warmly received them. These weird patients were surprised to find that the fear medical insurance actually did work. Not only that, those bizarre doctors, their attitude towards healing was extraordinarily positive, and they did not treat them differently in the slightest because they had only paid out 10 plutonium coins. Even the degree of vigor in healing, one by one, like playing chicken blood, the work attitude is extraordinarily serious. Even the old greaseballs and the creepy doctors began to become meticulous. The fear of medical insurance is actually real. While treating 10 patients, 9 ended up lying down and being carried away, and only one made it out alive. That one lucky one who left alive, not only will not blame the frightened hospital, for creepy hospitals, 9 tenths of the mortality rate, is not a very normal thing, but on the contrary, because of taking advantage of a great bargain, the initiative frightened medical insurance to publicize it. Brothers, I really can't believe that fear medical insurance is actually real. How do you know it's real? Because I just came out of the fear hospital. The doctors there have a great service attitude. I saw that on the divine doctor list, there's also Boss Chen's name on it, which means that the other Boss Chen really understands medicine and is giving us benefits. Crap. Looks like I was wrong about Boss Chen. 
Boss Chen is truly the king of living hell. Then why don't you hurry up and go, buy a copy of the fearful medical insurance, this is a good opportunity to pull Boss Chen's wool over his eyes. Under this kind of rumor, the whole Wangjiang city's weird people were shocked to discover that the fear medical insurance seemed to be real. Boss Chen actually took his own money and gave the big guys free medical treatment. What? You're talking about charging 10 plutocrats for medical insurance? Compared to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in treatment fees, it's just like giving it away for free, okay? Boss Chen is so evil. What a great evil. I like it so much ah. As the creeps who went to the fear hospital slowly became more and more, it wasn't long before some creeps were shocked to discover that the fear health insurance actually had a huge loophole. Some sick shenanigans found out that the auditing of fear medicare was actually extremely lax. Fear hospital nurses and doctors do not care when you are sick. Doctors didn't care if you got sick before you bought scary health insurance, or if you got sick after you bought scary health insurance. This meant that if any creep got sick, all you needed to do was to spend 10 plutonium coins to temporarily buy a fear medical insurance policy, and you could go to the fear hospital for free. You don't care if you'll be cured to death, just ask if it's cheap. 10 plutonium for a medical treatment, it's a heavenly benefit. Such a huge loophole, Boss Chen actually did not find out. This mustn't ruthlessly pull a fortune out of Boss Chen's wool. Soon, those sick bazaar, all bought a share of the fear of medical insurance, to fear of hospitals for free treatment. Originally the door cannot be Sparrow's Fear Hospital, just one day less, it became a weird mountain and sea of weird. At the entrance of the hospital, there was a long queue. The creepy doctors not only didn't complain at all when they saw the increase in patients, but instead celebrated the fact that they finally had the opportunity to gain experience. Working tirelessly for Director Chen, they even praised Director Chen in their hearts for being so capable that he actually did find so many patients. Chen Mu stood on the top floor of the hospital and saw the countless creeps lined up below through the windows of his office, the corners of his mouth happy. Oh, how could those creeps not have expected the loophole they thought they had complacently discovered, wanting to come and pull the wool over Boss Chen's eyes? But they never thought that that loophole was exactly what Chen Mu had left behind on purpose. It was so that those sick bizarre ones could come to the frightened hospital to be cured, accumulating experience for Chen Mu's doctors. With more and more patients, the morgue of the frightened hospital, too, was turned on full throttle, burning the bizarre corpses with all its might. Countless bizarre couldn't wait to squeeze into the hospital, and the vast majority were pushed into the morgue, with only a few lucky ones being cured. Creepy patients also did not have the slightest complaint, because the creepy hospital is like this ah, and the level of treatment at the frightened hospital was already considered good compared to other creepy hospitals. Just like that, Boss Chen cut the leaks of the bizarre patients, and cut them even harder, as it cost them their lives. Those bizarre patients who were cut leaks, one by one, they were happy, but also thought that they had ruthlessly gripped the wool of the Chen boss, took advantage of the big bargain. Naturally, this result was a happy one for all, both the boss and the leaks were happy. Chen Mu loved this feeling, selling the shenanigans and happily helping himself to count the money. The creeps excitedly called Boss Chen the king of living hell and rather darkly humorous was the fact that no matter whether one stood in the creep's point of view or in the human's point of view, there was no fault to be found with this statement. The weird doctors, under the leadership of the cure for immortality doctor, began to quickly correct their flaws. In less than a day's time, Chen Mu unexpectedly realized that the death rate of the fear hospital had dropped from 90% to 85%. This was a good omen that Chen Mu's strategy was successful. Perhaps before long, fear hospital would really become the best bizarre hospital in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world. After taking down the fear hospital, Chen Mu held many industries in Wanjiang City, almost becoming the actual ruler of Wanjiang City. Chen Mu was finally able to breathe a little sigh of relief, he had his own basic disc. For his next plan, Chen Mu was prepared to go in two directions. One of the directions was to continue to consolidate the basic disc and ensure his dominance in Wanjiang City. The specific way to do this was to acquire more industries and recruit more employees. The other direction was to expand beyond Wanjiang City. The bizarre end of the world was huge, and Wangjiang City was just a starting point. There were still countless industries waiting to be acquired, and countless strong people waiting to befriend or kill. The main those who go along with me will prosper, and those who go against me will die. This is so domineering, but does not show the sharpness. Chen Mu does not like to tear face to face, he prefers, is to hide the sharpness. Everyone on the surface smiling, behind the scenes will sell others, but also let others still help themselves to count the money, soft with hard, kill and kill. While Chen Mu was pondering over his future plans, the door to his office was knocked on from outside. Come in. Chen Mu was a bit puzzled, not knowing who was looking for him. The office door opened from the outside and in walked a middle-aged creep in a suit. As soon as the suit creep entered, he greeted Chen Mu with a smile. Hello, Boss Chen. I am the boss of Undead Metro. The suited creep introduced himself. Undead Subway? Chen Mu thought about it briefly, and it came to his mind. 
The so-called undead subway was originally the subway line of Wangzhang City. After the weird post-apocalyptic world, the subway in Wangzhang City was weirdly polluted and turned into a weird scene, the undead subway. In his previous life, Chen Mu knew something about the undead subway. He had once gone to the undead subway and performed bizarre missions. When he thought about it, it was really a handful of bitter tears, and he was careful in every way before he finally survived. After living a new life and acquiring a large number of industries, Chen Mu hadn't had the time to go to the undead metro. Chen Mu quite wanted to buy the undead metro, after all, it is the transportation fortress of Wangzhang City. If he bought it, it would be a great help in increasing his ability to rule. It was just a pity that he was in a hurry and never got around to it. What is this situation? The owner of the undead subway, took the initiative to pay a visit and came to find himself? Hello hello, please have a seat. Did you come to find me for something? Chen Mu was puzzled in his heart, but still had a smile on his face. Originally, Chen Mu actually did not like to smile, as a bloodthirsty young man, he liked to be straightforward and straightforward, thinking that wearing a smile on his face looked fake. But after his last life, the poisonous beating of the bizarre end times, Chen Mu had grown up a lot. He gradually realized that a smile was a protective color. Those who were truly sophisticated would almost never put their joys and sorrows on their faces, and they didn't always put on a serious face like in TV dramas, for fear of writing, I'm very thoughtful on their faces. On the contrary, people who are truly sophisticated always wear a smile and give people a kind of amiable feeling. They don't let others see through their true thoughts, they smile on the surface, and they can even put a knife into your body while smiling kindly. It was possible that this kind of amiable looking person was the ultimate big boss. Therefore after returning from rebirth, Chen Mu was always smiling. He had learned to hide his thoughts so that others could not see through his mind. Growing up, it was always one step at a time. The suit creepy did not sit down, instead, from his pocket, he pulled out a small box and respectfully handed it to Chen Mu. Boss Chen, a small token of appreciation, no honor. Chen Mu took the small box and opened it, inside was a creepy de Chui Fei watch. This guy gave himself a gift as soon as he came up? Chen Mu was a little surprised. For a moment, he even felt that he had switched roles with Creepy. In so many weird scenes in the past, it had always been Chen Mu giving gifts to the weirdo. Today, it was actually reversed. Chen Mu gradually came back to the fact that this was the reason why his strength and status had risen. Nowadays, Chen Mu had become the uncrowned king of Wangzhang City. Naturally, there were bizarre people begging to do things for themselves, and there were already starting to be bizarre people giving themselves gifts. I heard that Boss Chen likes watches, I hope Boss Chen doesn't mind. The suited creepy fawned and smiled, currying favor with Chen Mu. To be able to make the big boss of a creepy scene, take the initiative to come to his door to please himself. If he had put it aside in his previous life, Chen Mu wouldn't even dare to think about it. I'll let you break the bank, I like your gift very much. Chen Mu smilingly accepted the watch. He didn't particularly like watches, but mainly if he was giving it to someone, a watch was expensive and small, it was a suitable option. It was estimated that somehow, it had spread into Chen Mu liking watches. Receiving the bizarre gift, Chen Mu's heart was also quite comfortable. After all, there was a saying that went like this, reach out and don't hit the person who is smiling. Are you looking for me for something? Chen Mu asked. Upon hearing this, the suit creepy frowned, revealing a worried look. Boss Chen, it's like this. As you know, I run the city's subway. During this recent period, the number of bazaar in Wangzhang City is not high, and the subway is running and losing money every single day. I've heard that Boss Chen is bold and generous, and likes to acquire scenes on the verge of bankruptcy. So I'm thinking of inviting Boss Chen to inspect the undead subway. If Boss Chen is interested, we can talk about the price, I want to sell undead metro to you. I don't know what Boss Chen thinks. Good lord, this was a door-to-door -door plea for acquisition. Chen Mu was a bit surprised, his influence, was already this big? In the beginning, Chen Mu was very rich, but if he wanted to acquire a bazaar scene, he had to play the grandson first and take the initiative to go to the bazaar scene to complete the bazaar mission. Only after completing the bazaar mission could he attract the attention of the boss behind the scenes, and then have the opportunity to meet and talk. Now that he had acquired several major industries, Chen Mu had made a name for himself. Now, not only did Chen Mu not want to participate in the weird missions, but even some of the behind-the-scenes bosses, directly came to Chen Mu's door to beg for acquisitions. This series of status shifts had only occurred within a few days. From the time Chen Mu was reborn until now, not even half a month had passed, and there was actually this kind of skyrocketing change. This was a very good signal, meaning that Chen Mu was on the right plan, and was slowly transforming the plutonium in his hand, into status and power. In the face of the suit's bizarre invitation, Chen Mu naturally would not refuse. There was no reason to refuse a business that was sent to his door. Yes, I'll go with you to see the situation on the ground. Chen Mu agreed. Suit Creepy immediately looked delighted, as if he had seen a savior, looking at Chen Mu with the eyes of a dear father. Sure enough, 
Boss Chen was really a great guy. He thought Chen Mu would refuse, but he didn't expect to agree so quickly. Inside the suit's creepy heart, there was a trace of more gratitude towards Chen Mu. When do you have time, Boss Chen? I'm always free on my side, and Boss Chen is always welcome to inspect. Whoever had money was the boss. Chen Mu had money in his hands, naturally he was the boss, everything was subject to Chen Mu's time, the suit bizarrely had to listen to Chen Mu's schedule. Today then, Chen Mu said. He also had nothing to do right now, so he happened to acquire one more subway and control the underground transportation of the entire city. Suit Creepy was overjoyed and rushed forward to lead the way. The two left the hospital one after the other. Along the way, the passing pedestrians and Creepy were surprised to find a boss like Creepy groveling to a human. Upon learning that the human was Chen Mu, things made sense all of a sudden. Boss Chen, earlier in the day, I was a VIP customer of the Underworld Taxi. If the time had been earlier, I would have invited you to ride over in the Psy Taxi. It's just a pity that the current Phantom Taxi, I heard that it has been contracted by the mysterious boss at a high price and is not open to the public anymore. My status as a VIP client is no longer effective. Otherwise, I would have directly invited you to take the Underworld Taxi. Suit Creepy sighed with some regret. Chen Mu smiled and said, is there a possibility that the underworld taxi was just contracted by me? Immediately afterward, under Suit Creepy's shocked gaze, Chen Mu called out to his driver. After the two of them sat in the underworld taxi, Suit Creepy couldn't help but secretly sigh, indeed, it's Boss Chen, who was rich and generous. Actually took the entire cab, all wrapped up, became his own private car. Chen Mu sat in the cab, and also began to think in his heart. With so many industries and a mansion of his own, isn't it time to find an opportunity to change to a luxury car next? Although the Phantom Taxi was awesome, there were definitely more upscale luxury cars. Whenever there was time, order a privately customized luxury car for yourself. The speed of the Psy Taxi was, indeed, very fast. In less than two minutes, the Phantom Taxi stopped at the entrance of the subway. Without waiting for the driver to open the door for Chen Mu, Suit Creepy was extraordinarily attentive and took the initiative to help Chen Mu open the door. It could be seen that Suit Creepy took this transaction very seriously. Only Chen Mu had the strength to avoid Suit Creepy being executed by bankruptcy. At the entrance of the undead subway station, there were still a few human men and women standing. Undoubtedly, these few men and women were the unlucky ones chosen by the small bloody note to perform the bizarre task. When Chen Mu walked into the entrance of the undead subway station, lines of bloody characters appeared before his eyes. Creepy Mission, Undead Subway Mission description, underneath Wang Jiang City, rumors claimed that there was a mysterious subway. The subway would slowly open every midnight. The empty subway station is crowded with people. Spooky subway, unseen guests. Throughout the city, the legend of the undead subway circulates. Until one day, you receive a subway ride card and decide to come here to find out. Although Chen Mu was invited here, the assignment of the spooky mission was dictated by the rules behind the small bloody note. The rules dictated that as long as a human entered the creepy scene, then they would be automatically assigned creepy tasks. Even though Suit Creepy was the boss of the creepy scene, he did not have the ability to control the little bloody note like Chen Mu did. Thus, there was no way for him to stop the bizarre task from being assigned to Chen Mu. What he could do was to set the rules for the creepy quest. As long as Suit Creepy wasn't sick in the head, he would know how he should make the rules for Chen Mu. Chen Mu read the mission description and said to himself that this was a typical ghost movie plot. The protagonist wouldn't die without making a mistake, isn't it good to live a good life and have to come to find out what's going on? However, having received the bizarre mission, Chen Mu was not the least bit panicked in his heart. The big boss who made the rules is right next to himself, and still wants to ask for his own work. Don't say to Chen Mu out of the question, but we're the whole weird task, let Chen Mu have a little upset, that is the big boss some do not understand things. Obviously, big boss's brain was normal. He had already arranged for various situations in advance, giving each employee a clear explanation, and he himself was also accompanied by a close companion, ready to help Chen Mu solve unexpected situations. Chen Mu doing bizarre tasks, was this a test for Chen Mu? Re, this was giving Big Boss a chance to perform. Also participating in the bizarre mission were several young men and women. When they saw Chen Mu getting out of the car, their faces were filled with shock. Because, they saw that before Chen Mu got out of the car, a creepy got out of the car first, attentively helping Chen Mu open the door. And more than that, the one who helped Chen Mu drive the car was actually a creepy as well. They had heard that Chen Mu was rich, but they didn't think that Chen Mu had gotten to this level. It was actually possible for two bizarre people to serve Chen Mu attentively in the front and back. This was no longer ordinary richness. What they didn't know was that the creepy that helped Chen Mu open the door was the final big boss of the undead subway. If they knew, they would probably drop their jaws. At the entrance of the subway, there stood a male creepy. Seeing a few people coming, the male creep began to announce the rules. Welcome to all the new stewards. 
I am your foreman. As a qualified steward, you need to serve every passenger and handle all kinds of emergencies. Cabin crew rules. Rule 1, as a qualified steward, you need to have a good sense of time. There is one minute left before the subway starts, please enter the subway within one minute. Rule 2, you can't refuse any request from passengers. Rule 3, if your surname is Chen, you are a high school student, and your height is 181 centimeters, then you can ignore rules 1 and 2. As the male trickster finished announcing the first two rules, everyone present was confused. Several young men and women looked at each other. We all understand the first rule, and the second rule is fine, but what does the third rule mean? Surname Chen. High school student. Height 181. Several people simultaneously turned their gaze toward Chen Mu. Isn't this TM talking about Chen Mu? Come on, are all of you weirdos so shameless? Open the back door at least cover it up a bit. With such an outrageous rule, it was almost as if Chen Mu's ID number was written on it. Chen Mu was also a bit embarrassed. What's wrong with these weirdos? I know you want to lick me on your knees, but you have to pay attention to the impact. Too blatant, how bad is the impact ah? In this regard, the male creepy does not feel the slightest bit wrong. If you don't lick hard, it's the same as not licking. Male Guile is not a fool, Chen Mu is in all probability his future boss, he dares to make trouble for his boss? Instead of covering up, why don't you just open up, I am kneeling and licking Chen Mu. This would also leave a good impression on boss Chen. The suit creepy boss saw that his employees were so uptight and revealed a pleased expression. In order to comply with the rules, several young men and women, after announcing the rules, scrambled towards the subway. From the above ground subway station, to the underground subway, there was a considerable distance. In order to get there within a minute, the several people put their best foot forward and pulled out all their strength. It could be said that the fastest they had ever run in their lives was probably this minute. There were no lights on the subway platform, and it was easy to slip and fall running in the dark. One of the men, in the darkness, tripped hard. Even though the pain was excruciating, he could only grit his teeth and keep running. Finally, at 55 seconds, the panting few, barely caught up with the subway. On the other side, Shen Mu walked slowly towards the subway under the attentive hospitality of Big Boss. Look, Boss Chen, this is our entrance to the station, all of which have just been refurbished not long ago. If you are not satisfied, Boss Chen, I can refurbish it according to your requirements before selling it to you. The Big Boss in suit introduced the subway to Chen Mu, while carefully observing Chen Mu's expression, fearing that Chen Mu would be dissatisfied. When Chen Mu reached the underground, the originally dark subway platforms were lit up in turn. Creepy didn't like lights, so most of the creepy scenes were dim and dark. But when Boschen came, it didn't matter if Creepy liked it or not, what mattered was that Boschen was going to like it. Boschen likes lights, so no matter how much Creepy likes darkness, he has to turn on the lights brightly. In this way, under the personal introduction of the suit big boss, Chen Mu came to the subway like a leader's inspection, without slowing down. That subway didn't drive away, even though the passengers and other crew members had already arrived, as long as Chen Mu didn't arrive, the subway wouldn't depart. In the carriage, there were already creepy passengers waiting impatiently. Hey, the stewardesses, what's the matter with you guys? Why hasn't the subway departed yet? A creepy passenger roared impatiently. Before it could finish yelling, Chen Mu and the suit big boss came up just in time. Sorry, I'm the one who came a bit slow and kept you waiting, Chen Mu said with a smile. As a senior player, Chen Mu was always mindful of his identity. His identity in the game was that of a stewardess, and in the face of the passenger's dissatisfaction, he of course had to apologize. The moment the big boss in suit heard Chen Mu apologize, his face instantly changed. Crap! Chen Mu was now the big boss he was trying to curry favor with and was inspecting the creepy scene. Having Chen Mu apologize to creepy? Which creepy was tired of living, right? The creepy passenger was originally disgruntled in its heart, and when it saw the person who apologized, its body was instantly shivering with fear. It was actually Chen Mu. Where am I? Who am I? What did I just do? It seems like I yelled at Chen Mu and even made Chen Mu apologize to me. The creepy passenger was in tears, who in the entire creepy world of Wangjiang City didn't know of Boss Chen's formidable reputation. He himself was just impatient to wait, but he wasn't impatient to live yet ah. Uh. Boss Chen, listen to my explanation, this is all a misunderstanding. The bizarre passenger proofed his knees to Chen Mu, pleading for his forgiveness. In the face of this dramatic scene, none of the other bizarre passengers present felt the slightest bit out of place. It was as if in their eyes, it was only natural for Creepy to apologize to Boss Chen. Those who didn't know, thought that Chen Mu had pushed them too much. Chen Mu sighed somewhat helplessly, his own participation in Creepy quests now was already at a level where he could pass with his eyes closed. Even if Chen Mu was a little lazier and didn't even want to walk on the road, that was no problem. There were naturally shenanigans to carry Chen Mu to the end of the line. The subway slowly traveled and began to head towards the end. The bizarre mission officially began, 
and the bizarre passengers in the seats began to give the crew a hard time. Chen Mu was familiar with this kind of bizarre mission, which was a typical decentralized bizarre mission. In this kind of bizarre mission, there would not be particularly difficult puzzles, but a large number of consecutive small puzzles would appear. Participants needed to continuously solve the small problems, don't look at it as simple as it sounded, once they accidentally made a mistake, they would be doomed. As the subway slowly started, the tricky passenger's shenanigans began to continuously give the stewardess's problems. Hey, the stewardess with the hat. I need a blanket, and it must be delivered to me within three minutes. That tall steward, I don't know which carriage I've lost my luggage in. It must be found for me in ten minutes. I want to drink fresh blood. The steward quickly give me blood. A series of shouts rose and fell in the subway car. The male and female participants, without exception, were busy and sweating profusely. Each passenger's request was not difficult to say, they were all solved by moving their hands, without having to use their brains to think frantically. But to say simple is also by no means simple. A stewardess has to deal with many passengers' requests at the same time, and her brain switches back and forth between different small tasks. If you're not careful, you may miss a task or go over your allotted time. In the crowd of busy flight attendants, Chen Mu appeared particularly conspicuous. Only to see Chen Mu sitting on the first class seat, with fresh fruits placed on the small table board in front of him, next to him sat Big Boss waiting at all times, always answering questions and solving problems for Chen Mu. What? What about a passenger looking for Chen Mu's services, you ask? Just now, there was a bizarre passenger, not knowing if he was lacking in heart, actually really came to Chen Mu and asked Chen Mu to give him service. Boss Chun, please help me adjust my seat. Chen Mu reckoned that this bazaar was trying to ingratiate himself. Thinking that Chen Mu had to serve a passenger, he deliberately found the easiest one and asked Chen Mu to do it. For this kind of weirdness, one could only say that it was smart in the head, but not completely smart. Smart but not completely smart, or half-witted for short. What was Boss Chen's status? Still wanting Boss Chen to serve passengers? However, as the ultimate big boss, Chen Mu maintained his amiable and fine style and replied with a smile. All right, I'll do it right now. Before Chen Mu could stand up, the boss in the suit next to him dabbed up, and without saying a word, grabbed that half-assed creepy and threw the person out of the subway. Dare to make Boss Chen work? Pay attention in your next life. Suit boss shouted at the creepy passenger who was thrown down. Needless to think, the creepy that was thrown down would definitely not live. Chen Mu patted suit boss and said with a slight reproach. You're too impulsive, after all, people are passengers, I'm a steward, it's proper to serve passengers. If you throw people down so roughly, how will the other creepy friends look at me? Don't allow this next time. Suit boss nodded repeatedly, right, 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 boss Chen's lesson is right, it's all my fault for being too reckless. From the beginning to the end, Chen Mu had been playing the role of the white face, a kind and gentle image. As for the role of the red face, the bad guy let the suit boss take the role. In the past, when Chen Mu hadn't made his fortune yet, he had a feeling most of the big bosses were always a gentle and amiable image, looking at everyone with a smile. Only those small bosses, most of them were stern and ferocious images, always they criticized their employees and punished them. Until now, Chen Mu became the boss behind the scenes, he didn't understand the way. The reason is very simple, everyone wants to be the good guy, but someone has to be the bad guy. It was impossible to let the big boss be the villain. Then there is no way, the villain can only let the small boss to be the villain. Just like that half-assed weird passenger who had offended Chen Mu, he naturally had to be punished. If Chen Mu did not have enough rank and did not have any men under his hand, then Chen Mu could only be the villain and throw the half-assed weirdo off the bus. But now that Chen Mu's segment has risen, and there is a small boss like Suit Creepy under his command, then throwing Creepy off this kind of dirty work will naturally have to be done by Suit Creepy. Chen Mu could also pretend to criticize and chide Suit Guile for a few sentences. In this way, in the eyes of others, Chen Mu was the gentle big boss, and such things as throwing Creepy down were Suit Creepy's own decisions, which the amiable Chen Mu did not support. The purpose of punishing the offender was achieved, and Chen Mu also left behind an image of gentleness and friendliness. It was a win-win situation, Chen Mu won twice. It wasn't until he had experienced it himself that Chen Mu realized that power position and wealth could really make people gentle. Because what was not gentle, someone would do for you. It was hypocritical, but it was a great feeling. After making an example out of him, there was no longer any ungrateful trickster that dared to let Chen Mu serve them. During the conversation, the other male and female participants were surprised to find out that the one who had been sitting beside Chen Mu, serving him at all times, was actually the subway's big boss. How can this still be fun? Everyone had worked so hard to do the mission, and one of the lowest level of shenanigans could lead to their own death. People Chen Mu is good, the scene of the final boss, directly to Chen Mu is a little brother. The gap between people is so big. For a while, the mentality of many participants directly collapsed on the spot. 
The bizarre end of the world obviously just started not long ago ah, how Chen Mu is so bullish, this was unreasonable. However, the truth was just like that. In front of the facts, any suspicion paled in comparison. Soon, some weird passengers approached Chen Mu. Of course, it was certainly not for Chen Mu to serve. A well-dressed bazaar, respectfully came to Chen Mu and handed over his business card. Hello boss Chen, I am the owner of the creepy convenience store. You can just call me Xiao Zhang. This is my business card, as well as some specialties from the store. If you feel satisfied, feel free to come to my store anytime, I will give you the best price, starting at 50% off on all items. After saying that, the store owner creepy handed over a bunch of specialties. Those bizarre passengers saw this and slapped their heads, why didn't I think of that? This is a good opportunity to climb into a relationship with Chen Mu. Thus, a large group of bizarre passengers, respectfully lined up, took their business cards, and climbed into a relationship with Chen Mu in turn. The other participants, shocked, realized that those bizarre who had made things difficult for themselves, one by one, were as respectful as grandchildren in front of Chen Mu. At once, two more participants' minds crumbled. This couldn't be played at all. There was no harm without comparison. However, the fact that their minds were broken had nothing to do with Chen Mu. Chen Mu lamented that people were afraid of being famous, and once they were famous, it was as if the whole world was their friend. Before he could finish recognizing the weirdness present, the subway had already arrived at the station. A few lines of small words slowly floated up in front of Chen Mu. Congratulations, you have successfully completed your mission. Only then did Chen Mu react violently, I was on a weird mission. If I didn't say so, I would have thought I was attending a welcome party. Boss Chen, how do you feel about the undead subway? Does it still satisfy you? With anticipation and nervousness on his face, Suit Boss carefully asked Chen Mu. It was as if he was the participant in this bizarre mission and Chen Mu was the final big boss. Chen Mu slowly nodded his head after thinking about it. You've performed very well ah, I'm very satisfied with this trip. Chen Mu said. Hearing that Chen Mu was satisfied, the Suit Boss finally breathed a sigh of relief. Great, finally Boss Chen is satisfied ah. Then, Boss Chen, do you think, you are willing to buy the undead subway? The price above is all good. As long as you are willing to buy it, I can give you a 50% discount on my side. If you're still not satisfied, Boss Chen, we can all discuss the price. Suit Creepy said carefully, while speaking, he observed Chen Mu's face, lest he would offend Chen Mu. A 50% discount right off the bat? A direct waste cut. This made Chen Mu a little embarrassed. It was as if the two had just met and the other person had cut the other person himself at the waist. If they chopped it down further, wouldn't it seem like Boss Chen was not close to guile? All right. Alright, let's go with this price. 50 million medals, I'll buy the subway. Chen Mu said. The undead subway only had one line, and the line was short. Normally, the selling price should be between 100 and 200 million medieval dollars. Buying it for 50 million dollars was equivalent to a 50% discount, which was considered very cost effective. After all, the undead subway, itself, was only a supportive scene, used to enhance the efficiency of the city's operation, relying on Wang Zheng City to survive. Unlike the Midnight Hotel, Dark Knight High School, this scene, itself a self-contained, is a behemoth, even after leaving Wang Zheng City can also shock the party. What Chen Mu was looking at was not a short line now, but the future role of the subway. This 50 million dollars, equal to buy a whole set of seeds, perfect supporting equipment, skilled staff, mature procurement channels. Subsequently, with the development of Wang Zheng City, the undead subway would definitely need to be expanded. At that time, Chen Mu would not need to start from scratch, just use the existing system directly. Hearing that Chen Mu was willing to buy the undead metro, Suit Creepy was instantly filled with joy. The price of 50 million dollars was acceptable to him, just in time to get rid of this hot potato. Alright, alright, Boss Chen, we'll sign the contract now. Suit Creepy hurriedly took out the contract and signed his name. When Chen Mu also signed the contract, it signified that the entire undead subway, including all the employees, came under Chen Mu's command. At this moment, the entire staff of the undead subway, all gathered at the subway terminal and stood in front of Chen Mu, curiously sizing up their new boss. Have you heard? Boss Chen seems to be particularly generous and treats his employees exceptionally well. Of course I've heard about it, I have a friend who works at Midnight Hotel, and I heard from them that the salary that Boss Chen gives is more than three times that of other bosses. That's not even counting the extra vacations, bonuses and benefits. That fear hospital that's been on fire lately, I've heard that the boss behind it, is also Boss Chen. And it won't be long before Boss Chen arranges health insurance for all his employees. Wouldn't it mean that we won't have to pay for medical treatment in the future? Finally, I'm going to be out of my misery. I want to work for Boss Chen so quickly. Woohoo! In the entire Wang Zhang city, there are more than enough bizarre people who want to work for Boss Chen. It's our luck that we just happened to run into Boss Chen's acquisition of the subway. As long as Boss Chen doesn't fire me, 
I'll definitely give Boston a good job. The subway employees whispered and discussed their future work and life. The words were filled with anticipation. As for those passengers next to them, some of the passengers were employees of other bazaar scenes. These passengers looked at the subway employees with envy, thinking in their hearts when Boss Chen would also be able to acquire his own creepy scene. Chen Mu looked at his new employees and after pondering for a moment, he asked towards the suit creepy. By the way, do you have any recommendations for candidates? Help me manage the entire subway. Because Chen Mu had many industries, it was impossible for him to do everything himself, and he definitely had to find an agent. The undead subway wasn't considered a core industry, at best, it was an auxiliary industry, and it was impossible for Chen Mu to invest too much energy into managing it. The suited weirdo thought for a moment and pointed at a male weirdo and said, he is our station manager here, he was the one who was solely responsible for the subway operation before. Chen Mu looked at this male creep, coincidentally. This was the creep who had crazily knelt down to Chen Mu and was close to directly reporting Chen Mu's ID number when the rules were read out before the mission started. Being able to serve as the creep who read out the rules, itself represented a certain level. Just like the rules read out by Li Xiao Xiao at the beginning of the Midnight Cafeteria, she was the second in command of the Midnight Cafeteria. After thinking about it, Chen Mu nodded, okay, then let you manage the undead subway. From now on, you will continue to be the station manager of the subway station. As long as you follow me and do a good job, in the future, when the undead metro expands more and more, your status will naturally rise. Eating the big pie drawn by Chen Mu, the male creepy station manager was filled with excitement and immediately expressed his loyalty to Chen Mu. Don't worry, boss Chen, I will definitely do my best. I won't fail your expectations. Chen Mu said to the other employees, starting today, Undead Metro is officially merged into Chen Group. All employees, enjoy the salary and treatment within the group. I don't have any other hobbies, I just like handing out money. All employees' wages, double. Enjoy four hours of extra long vacation every day. There are also annual bonuses, performance bonuses, and various other benefits. On top of that, the group is considering customized health insurance for employees at the Fear Hospital. It won't be long before all the group's employees will be able to enjoy medical insurance. From now on, the difficulty of seeing a doctor will become a thing of the past. As long as you work well for the group, the group won't let any of its employees, because of accidents and illnesses, lose all their money. Shen Mu didn't like to say some impassioned nonsense, he liked to be a little more straightforward, to say all the benefits, and to make the benefits of it all clear. Whoever wins the hearts of the people wins the world. People's hearts, is the benefit. As expected, the subway employees present, without exception, erupted in loud cheers. Boss Chen's bravado was true to his name, and being able to work in Chen Mu's group was a luxury that many shenanigans could only dream of. Oh my god, did I hear it right, Boss Chen is actually really this generous. I didn't think that one day, I would actually be able to work for Boss Chen. Hurry. I can't wait to work properly. The bizarre employees of the subway were all excited and shouting. In their eyes, Chen Mu was the only conscientious boss in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world. Wouldn't one's conscience hurt if one worked for this kind of conscientious boss and didn't ruthlessly self-press? What's more, right now, Chen Mu's industry was still in its infancy. In the future, there would be a period of rapid expansion. Rapid expansion meant the need for manpower which meant a lot of opportunities for promotions and pay raises. As long as these shenanigans did their job properly, the future would be bright. Chen Mu had arranged for the undead subway and was about to return to the landscape courtyard to rest when suddenly his phone rang. Above the caller ID was the name of the driver. Why is he calling me? Chen Mu was a bit puzzled. The cell phone in Chen Mu's hand was given to him by the driver at that time. The driver had said at the time that Chen Mu could contact him at any time as long as it was through this cell phone. As long as Chen Mu contacted him, in less than 5 minutes, the driver would be able to arrive wherever Chen Mu was in Wangzhong City. In these 10 days, it had always been Chen Mu who had contacted the driver, and the phone did work well. The driver had never taken the initiative to contact Chen Mu, because the driver knew very well that it was part of the subordinate's courtesy not to take the initiative to disturb the boss without an emergency. What was the situation now? The driver took the initiative to call himself? If Chen Mu guessed correctly, there must be an unexpected situation and it was a big deal. Otherwise, the driver would not have contacted himself. Hello? Chen Mu picked up the phone. As expected, on the other end of the phone, the driver's voice was urgent, Boss, the security guard of the landscape courtyard contacted me just now, saying that a lot of bizarre things have suddenly appeared at the entrance of the landscape courtyard. Those weirdos are all very strong, most of them are at the level of Gui Chang. They are now blocking the entrance of Mountain Water Courtyard and want to see you. Chen Mu frowned slightly, Alright, wait for me at the exit of the undead subway. I'll be right over. After hanging up the phone, Chen Mu gave a few words to the subway station manager and quickly headed towards the ground. 
At the subway exit, the driver had already opened the door and was waiting for Chen Mu. The situation was urgent, the two of them didn't say a word, and after waiting for Chen Mu to get into the car, the driver stepped on the gas and sped towards the landscape courtyard. Along the way, Chen Mu's mind raced, why would so many shenanigans find their way to his door? Could it be that the medical insurance thing? He did something wrong. Poo poo, he did something good, but accidentally pitched a group of bazaar, and his family is looking for him to seek revenge. That's not right ah, the ones who came to look for themselves were all trickster chief level creeps. This kind of level of weirdness was the boss of many small weird scenes, and they were very lifethirsty, it was unlikely that they would go to buy health insurance. Could it be that it was because, their own industry was growing at a rapid pace, cutting off their financial path? It wasn't right, one's own industry was almost monopolized, and the ones in the same industry had all been rolled to their deaths a long time ago. Other industries, their own influence cannot ah. The reason is very simple, even if the midnight hotel opened again, cannot affect the business of the swimming pool. The two do not constitute a competitive relationship. Chen Mu thought for a long time, he shook his head. Forget it, don't think about it, wait until we get to the place. The driver's speed was so fast that the gas pedal was almost being stepped on and smoking. In less than three minutes, with a squeak dash sound of the brakes, the cab steadily stopped at the landscape courtyard. Chen Mu opened the door and got out of the car, just as the security guard said, the doorway was crowded with a large number of bazaar. Judging from the number, there were at least a hundred of them. So many? Hundreds of creeps, almost the entire elite creeps of Wangjiang City had gathered here. A weirdo with sharp eyes saw Chen Mu getting down from the car and immediately shouted, Boss Chen is here. Everyone rush. With his shout, hundreds of creeps came back to their senses and immediately looked at Chen Mu in unison. Boss Chen. Boss Chen don't go. A whole bunch of creeps, wailing, rushed towards Chen Mu. Chen Mu, on the other hand, was dumbfounded, what was this situation? The driver and the security guards beside him, their looks were filled with nervousness, building a human wall in front of Chen Mu. After those creeps rushed over, Chen Mu realized that in their hands, they were all holding several pieces of white paper. Only to see the creeps turn towards Chen Mu, frantically waving the white papers in their hands and shouting, Boss Chen, take a look at my creepy scene. My creepy scene is about to go out of business, I can sell it at a low price. Boss Chen save me. I'll sell mine at 30% off. Only ask for the plutonium to be paid in person. Listening to the cries of the creeps, Chen Mu finally understood and knew what these creeps were here for. Obviously, they were not here to find Chen Mu in trouble. If Chen Mu hadn't guessed correctly, these creeps were all the bosses of various large and small creepy scenes in Wangjiang City. They had gathered here in a swarm and were begging Chen Mu to acquire their bazaar scenes. Why were there suddenly so many bazaar bosses eager to sell their bazaar scenes? Combining his experience from his previous life, Chen Mu pondered a little before figuring out the doorway behind it. If Chen Mu hadn't guessed wrongly, this current time period had actually erupted into the economic crisis of the bazaar end times. Where there were medieval coins, there was economic activity, and where there was economic activity, there would inevitably be an economic crisis. At the beginning of the bazaar end times, the number of plutonium coins was scarce. Not only were humans short of plutonium, but there wasn't much plutonium in the hands of the bazaar. For ordinary weirdos, it was fine. If they didn't have medieval currency, they would at most work a little harder, do hard work, get a meager salary, and could barely survive. But for those weird bosses, the situation was much worse. To maintain a spooky scene, spending money was essential. Every minute and every second, you have to pour money into it. If you can't maintain it and the bizarre scene closes down, these bizarre bosses will be executed by the rules. In order to prevent the bizarre scene from closing down, the bizarre bosses frantically searched for medieval coins, but the number of medieval coins was scarce. This caused an economic crisis to erupt in the bizarre world due to the lack of metals. With the economic crisis coming, people were even more afraid to spend their medallions, causing the number of medallions to be even lower. Those bizarre bosses who were about to go bankrupt, in order to survive, one by one, they were all in a hurry to sell off their bizarre scenes at low prices as a way to get rid of their burdens. It just so happened that Chen Mu had recently made many acquisitions and implemented the money-burning health insurance, and at first glance, he was not a bad moneymaker. Those desperate bazaar bosses, upon learning the news, naturally gathered in droves, crying and begging Chen Mu to buy their properties. Chen Mu looked at the contracts waving in front of him, and he realized that the opportunity to make a fortune was coming. Don't look at these properties being sold at a discount, it was because the owner was short of money and had to lower the price. Once the economic crisis was over, these industries were good businesses that made money. Chen Mu bought at this time at a low price, a large number of control Wangjiang City's industry can be said to buy is to earn. The weirdos also knew in their hearts that buying these industries now was indeed buying is earning. But the problem is, how to buy without money? Everyone didn't have plutonium in their hands, only Chen Mu had a huge amount of plutonium in his hands. Therefore, such a heavenly bargain, 
only Chen Mu could eat it in his stomach. Once the economic crisis was over, Chen Mu would change and own a large number of properties in Wangjiang City, then he would have complete control over Wangjiang City. Thinking clearly about what was at stake, Chen Mu revealed a delighted expression as he shouted at the weirdos waving their contracts. Don't be in a hurry, line up one by one. I'm a kind-hearted person, and I can't see others liking money. As long as the industry is good and the price is right, I'll take them all. I'm going to start buying in bulk. As Chen Mu shouted, the bazaar bosses present all erupted in cheers. Boss Chen is truly a great villain. Yes, 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 there are really fewer and fewer people as hateful as Boss Chen. They all say that Boss Chen is the king of living hell, and when I saw him today, he really lives up to his name. Chen Mu listened to these bizarre cheers, although he knew that the other party was praising himself, but why did it sound so awkward? Well, from a human's perspective, there was nothing wrong with calling Chen Mu big evil. Robbing while the fire is burning. Taking advantage of everyone's lack of money, we purchased high-quality industries at low prices and made a huge profit. The bosses are thanking us for that. The weird bosses lined up and begged Chen Mu to sign with their contracts. Boss Chen, look at my industry, it's a high-quality kiosk. I won't say anything false, I'll sell it to you directly at 70% off. This is the most affordable price. If I were to put it aside before, I wouldn't sell it even if it was twice the price, a kiosk owner said with conviction. Before Chen Mu could say anything, the owner of another retail store next to him grabbed the conversation and hurriedly said, Only giving Boss Chen a 70% discount? Who are you looking down on? Boss Chen, come by my grocery store and I'll give you a direct 50% discount. Another creepy shouted, Only 50% off? There's no sincerity. Boss Chen look at me, I'll give you 40% off. I'll give you 3.5% off. I'll give you 30% off. Without even needing Chen Mu to speak, the weird bosses directly imploded. One by one, they cut up their own prices, and it was so unrelenting that Chen Mu's heart ached as he watched. The reason was simple, the more than a hundred bazaar present all wanted to sell their bazaar scenes, and the buyer was only Chen Mu. Naturally, everyone was frantically bidding low, and whoever had a lower price was more likely to sell. Compared to the end of going bankrupt and being executed, a little loss was a little loss. Boss Chen is kind-hearted and can't see people bickering, how hurtful it is. So Boss Chen directly shouted, Everyone doesn't need to grab. The price I acquire, the highest discount is 30%. That is to say, those with 40% or 50% discounts can take the contract and leave, I'm not acquiring it. Those who want me to acquire them, the price will be up to 30% off, of course, those who take 20% or 10% off, I will also come. The bosses present all cried. In terms of slashing prices, it was still Boss Chen who was ruthless. Well, everyone didn't need to argue back and forth. It was because everyone had been cut hard by Boss Chen, cutting and fracturing their bones and a fucking comminuted fracture. The price of 30% off is sold. Chen boss directly earns hemp. Even if the price was so low, the bazaar bosses present, one by one, all rush to sell. Or that sentence, sell out at most lose some money, sell out bankruptcy, then wait for their own death. As long as the weird brains were normal, they could tell the difference. Next, Chen Mu was a bit of a problem. In the bazaar post-apocalyptic world, it wasn't like you could just sign a contract and acquire the bazaar scene. For example, if Chen Mu wanted to buy a creepy store, then before signing the contract, Chen Mu had to make a trip to the creepy store and complete a creepy quest. Then only then could he sign the contract and complete the transaction. As for why this was the case, Chen Mu guessed that it was to prevent violent mergers. If there was a powerful creepy that wanted to annex other small creepy stores, if it was just a matter of signing a contract directly, then the big bazaar could completely rely on violence and directly tie the small bazaar over and force the small bazaar to sign the contract. In this way, the speed of mergers and the creepy end times would fly. That would be the real weak and strong, and strength would be honored. In the creepy end times, rules were greater than violence. Even if a creepy was more powerful, it still had to follow the rules. Rules override strength. That was why there was such a protective measure, to acquire a small bazaar store, a big bazaar had to make a personal trip and complete the bazaar task set by the small bazaar. In this way, even if little creepy was weak, in little creepy's creepy scene, it could restrain Big Creepy by virtue of its rulemaking advantage. As long as the small spooky didn't want to sell, then just come up with some tricky rules so that the big spooky couldn't complete the spooky mission. This ensures that rules override violence. Unfortunately, the transcendent existence that made this unspoken rule probably couldn't have imagined that one day, the little weirdos would beg Chen Mu to acquire them. In the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, many times, plutonium was much better than violence. Bosses, it suddenly occurred to me that I'm afraid I won't be able to make it to so many bazaar scenes. Chen Mu revealed a difficult look. Completing a single bazaar quest is all time and brain power consuming. With over a hundred of your bazaar scenes, I wouldn't necessarily be able to finish them in half a year. Hearing Chen Mu say that, the creepy bosses were anxious. Half a year? 
my store wouldn't even last half a month. Half a year is waiting to collect my corpse, right? Boss Chen, don't worry, you definitely don't have to worry about the bazaar mission. As long as you come to the weird scene, we guarantee you, a few minutes to let you quickly pass. And the whole process, don't use your brain. You'll just come and walk through the scene. The bazaar bosses present all swore their assurances to Chen Mu. Alright then, in one day's time, I'm going to go through a hundred bazaar scenes. Chen Mu said. One hundred bazaar scenes in one day. This could already apply for a record in the bazaar end times. Don't look at the fact that these creepy bosses were all small bosses, and the creepy scenes couldn't compare to behemoths like the Midnight Hotel or the Dark Knight High School. But even so, passing a hundred of them a day was enough to make one's jaw drop. In Chen Mu's memories, no one had ever reached this achievement. As long as Chen Mu succeeded in his challenge, then Chen Mu would be able to become, in the entire creepy endgame, the only man to pass 100 creepy scenes in a day. As far as Chen Mu knew, in the strange end world, if you reached some achievements, you would receive a Medal of Honor reward. This Medal of Honor was very rare and the conditions were harsh. In his last life, Chen Mu had never obtained one, and had only heard of people getting them. Chen Mu thought to himself that if he cleared 100 weird scenes in a day, such an awesome achievement should be enough to receive a Medal of Honor. Of course, whether or not Chen Mu could succeed in the challenge depended not on Chen Mu's efforts, but on how hard these bazaar bosses worked. In order to be able to achieve this accomplishment for himself, Chen Mu decided to stimulate the potential of the creepy bosses. Let me make it clear beforehand, ah, uh, I only have enough for the bazaar scenes that I passed today. If you have a spooky scene that I didn't clear today, or it's too late to clear it, then I'm sorry, even if the price is lower, I won't acquire it. The moment these words came out, the bazaar bosses present exploded on the spot. At once, the creepy bosses became even more anxious than Chen Mu, urging Chen Mu to move quickly. The creepy bosses present, one by one, shouted. Boss Chen, hurry up and move. Go to my store first. Mine is a grocery store, it's the fastest. Don't go to his, Boss Chen go to mine first, you're guaranteed to feel right at home without having to use a bit of brain power. Three minutes will give you an extremely fast clearance. Mine is even faster, 30 seconds for an extremely fast clearance. The creepy bosses rolled up once again, each one arguing with a red face. Chen Mu clapped his hands, alright, alright, line up one by one. Harmony breeds wealth. As long as Chen Mu spoke, no shenanigans dared to refute Chen Mu's face. Right, right, it's still Boss Chen who has a point. Everyone line up properly, don't refute Boss Chen's face. I agree, what Boss Chen says is what he says. Chen Mu couldn't help but sigh with emotion, as long as one had enough money, everywhere one went was a call to arms. Even inside the creepy, one could get a large chorus of concurring shouts of approval. Following the order of the queue, Chen Mu went to a bookstore first. When Chen Mu's line arrived at the bookstore, in front of the bookstore, there were three humans waiting there nervously. By the looks of it, these three humans were the unlucky ones who drew the weird quest from the bookstore. However, when these three humans apprehensively arrived at the bookstore, they were surprised to find that the bookstore was closed. Yes, they came to do the spooky quest and the spooky scene was closed. This was the first time they had encountered such a rare thing. As a matter of fact, Creepy worked 24 hours a day and never rested. No matter when they came, the Creepy scene would always be open to ensure the highest efficiency in killing humans. However, the bookstore was a small business with no employees and only one small boss. The boss was in a hurry to go sign a contract with Chen Mu, so naturally the bookstore was temporarily closed. After waiting for more than an hour, the three of them finally saw that the bookstore boss was coming back this way. Wait a minute. The situation seemed a bit off. In addition to the bookstore owner, there was a large number of crows of weirdness. Judging from the number, there were at least hundreds of bizarre. It was also all at the fucking creepy chief level. When the three of them saw this, they almost didn't explode in place. Crap, we are only participating in a small bizarre scene ah, do we need such a big battle? Hundreds of eerie serving the three of us, we don't deserve this blessing. Three people are almost crying, said their own today is certain to account for this. However, such as a huge group of bazaar to the front, the three rubbed their eyes, fixed eyes. Then, they were shocked to find that these hundreds of bazaar, actually clustered around a human. This human seems a little familiar, as if it is. Chan Mu? Only to hear the bookstore owner fawningly say, Boss Chen, look, this is my bazaar scene. Guarantee that you can't lose money or be fooled if you buy it. Chen Mu, on the other hand, acted like a big boss, with his hands behind his back, nodding his head from time to time like a leader inspecting. Beside Chen Mu, there was a large group of bazaar bosses clustered around him. These bazaar bosses, all curtly surrounded Chen Mu. Boss Chen. My bazaar mission here is very simple, don't worry, I guarantee that you won't have to use your brain a bit. The bookstore boss said. For this bazaar quest, there is an only one rule. If you can answer 1 plus 1, then you will pass the weird quest. The three human players next to him thought they had heard wrong. What the hell? 1 plus 1? 
Isn't this a kindergarten question? A weird quest would have such retarded questions? No, there was definitely a conspiracy in this. There were a few wittier creepy bosses that had already started to cluck on the side. Aya, ah, one plus one this kind of problem. It's said that in today's world, only a few people can answer it. Yes, I heard that a genius of the world spent a day to figure out the result of one plus one. To actually come up with such a difficult question for Boss Chen, this bookstore owner looks like he has a bad heart. A large group of creepy bosses chimed in, everyone knew in their hearts that one plus one was a kindergarten problem. But could such words be said? Whoever said that this question was so simple that kindergartners could answer it, what did that mean? Mocking Boss Chen for not being intellectually capable and only being able to do kindergarten questions? Therefore, the only way to set off Boss Chen's intelligence was to blow the question out of proportion and blow it into an extremely difficult topic. The bizarre bosses present were all human beings, plus the pressure of going bankrupt if they couldn't sell, so one by one, they patted their asses and didn't even bother with their faces. Chen Mu said quietly, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. When these words came out, they immediately ushered in a full house of applause. Heavens, such a difficult topic, Boss Chen actually mentally calculated it in an instant. Boss Chen is truly a genius of the world. It's impossible not to be convinced. I admit, Boss Chen is the smartest human I've ever seen. The bookstore owner, on the other hand, excitedly stated, for so many years, Boss Chen is the first to answer this puzzle. I have great admiration for Boss Chen. I declare that Boss Chen has successfully passed the level. Listening to a bunch of bizarre boasts, plus the bookstore owner's successful pass, the three humans beside them looked at each other, their jaws about to drop in surprise. Crap. What is this? Is this even possible? The three of them immediately felt that their worldview had been turned upside down. Could it be that the shenanigans had all been downgraded in intelligence and had all turned into fools? Put it this way, wouldn't it be simple to pass the bizarre quests in the future? Of the three, one of them instantly became excited and said to the creepy boss, Boss, I can answer it too, the result is two. Have I passed the level two? Upon hearing this, the bookstore boss frowned, Where did that come from? Go wait on the side. This is a special rule for Boss Chen, and you deserve it? There are other rules for you guys. I'm busy over here, so you three take your time and wait. Hearing the bookstore owner's words, one of them's mind directly collapsed. Originally thought that Creepy had turned out to be a fool, but I didn't realize that the fool was actually myself. How is this answering a question? This is all about the human condition. The same are all humans. Why are some people being kneeled by Creepy and some people have to kneel to Creepy? This gap is also too big. In the midst of a crowd of bizarre bosses boasting, Chen Mu was flanked to the next bizarre scene. As a result, the entire Wangjiang city exploded. As the news spread wider and wider, countless people curiously opened their windows and looked outside on the streets, where Chen Mu was being flanked by the bazaar to participate in the bazaar mission. Every now and then, a cheer erupted from the clustered shenanigans. Boss Chen is too good to be able to recognize such a difficult rule. It's really out of my expectation. If only Boss Chen was my father. As time passed by, Chen Mu was greeted by various bazaar bosses and frantically swiped bazaar quests at an average speed of 5 minutes apiece. If there was an anti-cheating check in the weird post-apocalyptic world, Chen Mu would have to be labeled as hung up. As time reached noon, Chen Mu's stomach got a little hungry. Who's in the next weird scene? Chen Mu asked. Boss Chen, it's my turn, creepy kiosk. A creepy came up with a smiling face, and in this creepy's hand, he was actually carrying a takeout bag. Only to see this creepy say, Boss Chen, the rules of my creepy mission are simple. You need to finish eating this steaming hot beef noodle within two hours, even if the mission is completed. Don't worry, I've heard that you like noodles, and I packed this beef noodle from a human store. If you don't want to eat beef noodles, you tell me and I'll change the rules here and replace it with what you want to eat. The other bizarre bosses beside him, seeing this, slapped their heads loudly in remorse. Right, Boss Chen is hungry, this time should let Boss Chen eat. This kiosk boss, who had directly bought Boss Chen all his meals, had also specially designed the rules so that Boss Chen would be able to complete a bizarre task while eating. Damn it, why didn't we think of such a good opportunity to kneel down? It's really cheap for this kiosk owner. Chen Mu was a little embarrassed. People had licked to this point, he was embarrassed if he didn't buy the kiosk himself. At this time around the kiosk, has long been surrounded by a circle of people watching the novelty. They were surprised to find that as long as Creepy stayed next to Chen Mu, he would go from fierce and vicious to exceptionally good-tempered. Perhaps this was the effect of the bank notability. After finishing his lunch, Chen Mu continued to do his quests. Time passed by minute by minute, and by the time it was more than 6 o'clock in the evening, Chen Mu had already finished 137 bizarre quests, 137 clearances in one day. Not to mention the bizarre end of the world, even opening a plug-in inside an online game wouldn't be able to brush so fast. By the time it was past 10 p.m., Chen Mu was already very tired after a long day of labor. 
It didn't look like Chen Mu didn't have to do anything and could easily pass the level. But Chen Mu needed to walk back and forth. During the daytime today, Chen Mu had almost finished walking half of Wanjiang City. If it was an ordinary person, he would have collapsed on the ground from exhaustion. Moreover, every time he entered a weird scene, he would be eroded by some weird chi. That was why, after some players completed their quests and left the bazaar scene, they would have a sense of exhaustion after the robbery and wanted to have a good night's sleep. Chen Mu, being a guile chief advanced, was able to resist some of the guile chi. In addition, after each signing of the contract, Chen Mu's strength would increase a bit, counteracting some of the erosion of the guile chi. This was what led to the fact that Chen Mu was able to hold out for more than a hundred guile scenes. Chen Mu weighed his strength, now that he was there, his strength had already broken through the guile long advanced level, and further up would be the guile long peak. More than a hundred bizarre scenes, although it wasn't comparable to a behemoth like the Dark Knight Colleges, it could still provide quite a bit of strength growth. Chen Mu had a feeling that after acquiring a few more creepy scenes, he would be able to complete his breakthrough and arrive at peak creepy chief strength. He wondered if his ability to distribute weird little notes would increase after the upgrade. Why don't we rest for a while? It's been almost a day of running around, and I'm a bit tired. Chen Mu said to the bosses behind him. The moment they heard Chen Mu say that, the big guys were instantly anxious. Rest? What a joke. It's already 10 o'clock at night, and there are still two hours left before the day is over. If Boss Chen rests, won't there be no one to buy our creepy scenes? A weird boss hurriedly said, Boss Chen, you've been tired all day, you really should rest. How about this, we'll prepare a sedan chair for you. You can sleep and rest inside the sedan chair while we carry you into the bazaar scene. You don't need to do anything, just sleep well and leave the rest to us, guaranteeing that you'll be able to pass the level without having to bother. The words had been said to this point, Chen Mu couldn't afford to push back any further. Who let Boss Chen have a kind heart and couldn't see others in trouble? Very quickly, there were two bazaar bosses that brought a sedan chair from a bazaar scene. Please go up, Boss Chen, we'll just carry you. A large group of bazaars shouted at Chen Mu. In the bazaar post-apocalyptic world, those who could enjoy this kind of treatment could not be found other than Chen Mu. In the middle of the night, a shocking scene appeared on the streets of Wangjiang City. A large group of bazaar carried a sedan chair, and Chen Mu was sleeping peacefully in the sedan chair. Next to it were drivers and security guards, protecting Chen Mu's safety. Countless people gathered on both sides of the street, looking at this picture-perfect scene. All the onlookers couldn't help but, in their hearts, ask themselves, is this still the bazaar end times? Is our bazaar end times, and Chen Mu's bazaar end times, really the same thing? Although they were in the same time and space, the experience seemed so cut off. The sedan chair was clean, and it was obvious that it had been cleaned in advance. Chen Mu laid down in it and comfortably took a nap for a moment. In his sleep, Chen Mu heard a cry from outside the sedan chair, every now and then. Congratulations to Boss Chen for passing. The words and blood in front of Chen Mu's eyes were also constantly refreshing. Congratulations on passing the silent amusement park. Congratulations on passing the hot springs resort. Congratulations on passing the dead drowning swimming pool. As one by one, the words and blood floated by, Chen Mu's number of passes, was increasing crazily. Chen Mu couldn't help but sigh, it was great to be rich. This was truly a genuine fully automated hang-up pass. The major forces in the entire Wangjiang city, with the exception of the Fallen Mall, had all been acquired by Chen Mu. With this large-scale acquisition, most of the bizarre scenes in Wangjiang city were all in his pocket again. Buying all of the bizarre scenes in Wangjiang city was also equivalent to buying Wangjiang city. Less than a month after returning from rebirth, he had bought a city. Midnight. Chen Mu suddenly felt that the outside of the sedan chair was quiet. After resting for two hours, Chen Mu regained his spirit as he lifted the sedan chair to take a look. Good lord, all those weird bosses were quietly waiting for themselves outside the sedan chair. It's over? Chen Mu asked. Yes, boss Chen. You have cleared all of the bizarre scenes in Wangjiang City. Creepy said. Good then, bring the contract over, I'll sign it. Chen Mu always did what he said he would do, not to mention this kind of lucrative business. It was really hard on these creepy to stroll through and pass all the creepy scenes in Wangjiang City in a day's time. With the signing of one contract after another, Chen Mu felt that the power in his body was accumulating more and more. He was showing signs of a breakthrough. Those bizarre bosses, one by one, were also overjoyed. After signing the contract, the bankruptcy of the creepy scene had nothing to do with them anymore. The sword of death hanging over their heads was finally removed. And there was still a sum of money to be taken. As for the amount of money and the amount of money. Now in this world, where is there any plutonium? Just steal the money if you can get it. Finally, half an hour later, Chen Mu signed the entire contract. After signing the entire contract, Chen Mu felt that the body was filled with a huge power. This massive power was composed of over a hundred tiny strands of power. Each small bazaar scene, although it was not comparable to a huge power like the Dark Knight Colleges, had contributed a small share of power. 
Accumulation of small amounts made many, and water dripping over a stone. Even if each strand of power was small, it couldn't hold up to a large number. If the undead metro was included, in just one day, Chen Mu had acquired a total of 188 bizarre scenes. So many large and small forces converged and began to fuel Chen Mu's breakthrough. Spooky levels were similar to online game levels, both were easy first and then difficult. Upgrading in the early stages was easy, a little bit of experience value could skyrocket a level. The later it got, the more experience value it took to upgrade a level, the more it became. Crossing over from the middle stage of trickster length to the peak of trickster length required a power that was equivalent to 5 to 10 times that of the initial to middle stage. According to Chen Mu's experience, the more power needed to upgrade, the more benefits it represented after the upgrade. Such a huge energy requirement proved that the peak level of trickster length would bring about different magical skills. The 188 bizarre scenes provided just enough power. Chen Mu clearly felt a massive power filling his heart. He closed his eyes and began to sit in the sedan chair, patiently waiting for the breakthrough. Time passed bit by bit. Ten minutes later, Chen Mu finally felt that the time had come. He closed his eyes tightly and channeled the majestic power in his body, patiently searching for the opportunity to make a breakthrough. Suddenly, Chen Mu felt that his body was rapidly cooling down. Chen Mu's limbs began to become cold, his blood flow slowed down, and his skin became pale and eerie. This series of changes caused Chen Mu to be a little panicked. In the five years of his previous life, he had never seen such strange changes. Chen Mu could feel that his heart was slowly stopping beating. Not only that, his breathing had also gone from warm to cold, and even in the end, his breathing began to gradually stop. All these changes were indicating one thing, Chen Mu was dying. No, it was inaccurate to say that, one should say, Chen Mu was becoming dead. Chen Mu was still alive, he was still able to control his breathing, his movements, and if he wanted to raise his arms, he could do so easily. But Chen Mu's vital signs were gradually decreasing and even disappearing. His appearance was gradually turning into a bizarre appearance. At the same time, lines of bloody characters appeared in front of Chen Mu. New skill, Creepify. Skill description, due to your level skyrocketing and reaching the peak of Trickster Chief within half a month, you have triggered a hidden reward to obtain a new skilled Tricksterization. After using this skill, you will switch from the human camp to the bizarre camp in a short period of time. Possess all the characteristics of the creepy. For the duration of the skill, you will briefly become creepy. Skill duration is 3 to 10 minutes. This skill has a cooldown, and after using this skill, there will be a 7-day cooldown. It can be used again after the cooldown ends. Tip, the Scarlet Note is dispensed to humans, which means that the Scarlet Note cannot be dispensed to creepy. During the 3 to 10 minutes of your creepiness, the Scarlet Note cannot be assigned to you, and you can avoid the creepy quest. If you are unfortunate enough to be in a creepy quest and want to terminate the creepy quest immediately, then you can use this skill. When you become creepy, the creepy quest on you will automatically be terminated, and you can leave the creepy scene at any time. If Chen Mu remembered correctly, this was the first creepy skill he had gotten. Not only was it the first one after being reborn, but it was also the first one in his last life. In the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, what was even more scarce than medieval coins and bizarre props were bizarre skills. When a person possessed a bizarre skill, it could be said that they possessed certain bizarre abilities that completely remodeled the person, becoming an ability that the person themselves tangibly possessed, following you until death. However, the difficulty of obtaining a weird skill was not normal. In his last life, Chen Mu had meticulously lived in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world for five years without obtaining a single bizarre skill. It was enough to see how difficult it was to obtain. One of the main reasons was that tricky skills could not be snatched from others. Even if it was a rare bizarre item, after killing the other person, if the bizarre item wasn't bound, it could be snatched from the other person's corpse. In the case of tricky skills, after killing the opponent, the tricky skill would dissipate along with the opponent and would not be dropped. It could be said that if you wanted to get a tricky skill, you had to rely on your own true talent. One truly had to rely on oneself to obtain it. Chen Mu surveyed his entire body. The current version of himself, whether in appearance or demeanor, was already indistinguishable from creepy. What were the benefits of turning a person into creepy for a short period of time? In fact, there were many benefits. The first and most direct one was that one wouldn't be attacked by a lone soul wild creep. Orphan souls and wild spirits would only attack humans, not their own kind. Even relying on the identity of a creepy, one could blend into the creepy and gain a lot of convenience and intelligence. Then, just as obvious, was the increase in strength. Although humans were also able to obtain trickster chi and get a trickster strength level. But creepy chi wasn't designed for humans after all. Humans obtaining guile chi had the flavor of going against the grain. Quite naturally, humans had bodies that couldn't utilize the full power of guile chi. For humans and guile under the same rank, the true strength of a human was about 30% worse than that of a guile. 
Part of the reason why the owner of the landscape courtyard had dared to trap Chen Mu after he had been promoted to the rank of Guile Leader was because Chen Mu's strength was more than 30% lower than his. This was what gave him the courage to blackmail Chen Mu. With the skill of tricksterization, in the future, if he encountered a violent solution to a situation, Chen Mu could activate tricksterization and instantly boost his strength. Lastly, and most importantly, were the two points within the small tips. The first point, the ability to turn bizarre and be immune to the distribution of the small bloody note in advance. This point seemed to be very ribald, after all, the allocation of the little bloody notes was completely random. No one knew when one would receive a blood-colored little note. And the skill of tricksterization only lasted for a few short minutes. Who could guarantee that one's tricksterization would coincide with the distribution of the scarlet slips, and thus be immune to the scarlet slips? Coincidence! Chen Mu could. This was the advantage of Chen Mu's rebirth. Before being reborn, Chen Mu had received many blood-colored little notes. So far, the blood-colored little notes after rebirth were the same as the time before rebirth. For example, the last time at the Dark Knight High School, Chen Mu remembered the time before he was reborn, and after he was reborn, he received the little blood-colored note at the same time. Then when the next time the little bloody note was about to be distributed, Chen Mu, based on his experience in his previous life, would be able to spookify in advance and avoid going on certain spooky quests again. In addition to that, there was a second point. When halfway through a bizarre mission, Chen Mu could use the ability of bizarroization to become bizarre, thus forcing him to leave the bizarre mission. The importance of this point was no less than that of the general grade item, the heavy armor of death. If, at a later stage, Chen Mu really encountered some weird scenarios, and was unable to successfully complete the weird mission even after violating the rules once, then he could use this skill. Then he could use this skill to forcefully exit. It was equivalent to having one more chance to save his life. A single bizarroization skill brought so many benefits. Chen Mu couldn't help but sigh with emotion, no wonder bizarre skills were extraordinarily scarce. After inventorying the trickster skills, Chen Mu had a few more lines of small, blood-colored characters in front of him. Level up. The number of small blood-colored notes has increased. For each creepy scene you have, the number of scarlet small notes has increased from 2 to 5. And the scarlet slips have increased the recovery function. Each time you use a consumed scarlet slip, it will be restored again after 7 days. Chen Mu did some calculations, and now the bizarre scenes in his hand were fast approaching 200. Among them, there were 5 big scenes like Midnight Hotel and Dark Knight College, and 188 small and medium-sized bizarre scenes. It could be said that the majority of the remaining bizarre scenes in the entire Wanjiang city, except for the Fallen Mall and the Misty Museum, had all been pocketed by Chen Mu. Chen Mu had 193 bizarre scenes, each of which could hand out 5 small bloody notes, so in total, he could hand out nearly a thousand small bloody notes. As long as Chen Mu wanted to, every 7 days, he could send nearly a thousand people into the bizarre scenes. With this kind of volume, in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, one would have to be considered a mid-level behind-the-scenes boss at a high or low level. Don't forget, Chen Mu had only passed half a month since he was reborn. The trillions of plutonium in Chen Mu's hand, in more than half a month of spending, not only did it not become less, but on the contrary, it also became more and more spent. If fixed assets like the bizarre scenes were also counted, then Chen Mu's worth had already exceeded a trillion dollars. For what he had achieved, Chen Mu was still quite satisfied. Just. Chen Mu waited for half a day and didn't realize that he had received an achievement medal. It shouldn't be ah. Having cleared 188 bizarre missions by himself, dare I ask the entire bizarre post-apocalyptic world, who could achieve this kind of achievement? Not to mention that it was still within one day, it would be even more unprecedented. After waiting for another 10 minutes, just when Chen Mu was ready to give up, in front of him, a line of golden fonts suddenly appeared. Congratulations! You have successfully cleared 189 bizarre quests within 24 hours. Achievement, Task Master. 189 bizarre quests, including the undead subway, and 188 small and medium-sized bizarre quests. Along with the line of golden fonts, in Chen Mu's hand, a golden badge appeared. On the front of the badge, there were four large, dark golden characters carved into it. Task Master. The entire badge was surrounded by a dense, eerie aura. Simply holding the badge in his hand made Chen Mu feel extraordinarily comfortable. Obviously, the weird chi entwined around the badge had a subtle effect on the enhancement of strength. At the same time, a line of blood characters appeared before the eyes of all humans in the entire Wangjung city. Chen Mu has successfully challenged 189 consecutive bizarre tasks within 24 consecutive days, unlocking the new achievement Taskmaster, becoming the first person to challenge bizarre tasks. When they saw this line of blood, the majority of people's first reaction was that they had misread it. The first thing that comes to mind is that you've misread it. 24 hours. 189. Weird mission. Challenge successful. I recognize every word, I understand every word. 
But why is it that when combined together, I can't see what it means? 189 consecutive challenge successes for 189 spooky quests in 24 hours. Can anyone really do that? The first reaction of the vast majority of people is that it's impossible. One must know that many of them, having experienced bizarre quests, knew how difficult and terrifying they were. To successfully challenge one of them would be a blessing. To successfully challenge 189? This was a goal that the vast majority of people would never dare to imagine in their entire lives. Not only did Chen Mu do it, but he also achieved it within 24 hours? What kind of heaven-defying talent was this? For a moment, Chen Mu was in the limelight in Wang Zheng City. On the streets and alleys, the focus of people's attention changed from whether or not they had received the small blood-colored note today to whether or not they had heard that Chen Mu had become a taskmaster. Have you heard? Our Wang Zheng City's Chen Mu finished 189 weird quests ah. You saw this news too? Is this true or not? Is this something a person can do? I am thinking my head off and can't even figure out how he did it. So you're not Chen Mu ah. This is the news announced by Bloodletter, can it still be false? I want to hug Chen Mu's thighs tightly now. Chen Mu had not only acquired all of the bizarre scenes and was the toast of the bazaar, but he had also become the topic of conversation in the top stream in the human society of Wangjiang City. Chen Mu had long been mentally prepared for this situation. In his previous life, he knew that after obtaining the achievement badge, there would be a publicity effect similar to the service-wide broadcast. In his previous life, Chen Mu had once seen someone else's service-wide broadcast and realized that there was such a thing as an achievement badge. At that time, Chen Mu was greedy to death, thinking that he was still struggling to survive in the weird post-apocalyptic world, but someone had already unlocked the achievement badge. How could the gap between people be so big? Now after being reborn, what Chen Mu thought in his heart at that time became what others thought in their hearts. Regarding being famous in human society, Chen Mu was not repulsed. He was still in the starting stage, and when the subsequent industries became bigger and bigger, he would definitely need the help of humans in addition to the help of the bazaar. This was quite normal. Although the bazaar was stronger than humans, in certain aspects, it was still quite inferior to humans. For example, the internet, bazaar was not as skillful as humans. In the future, if Chen Mu wanted to harvest a large area quickly, using the internet was a good way to do it. Creepy's internet was so poorly done that it was no match for human programmers. Chen Mu didn't mind finding a few top programmers to help him develop some web applications. Like the Midnight Hotel, if you can make an app and directly carry out takeaway business, the harvesting ability. Cough cough, the sales ability will definitely be improved a lot. Of course, this was all subsequent planning. After getting the achievement badge, Chen Mu felt a little tired. After spending a day today and reaching such an amazing achievement, Chen Mu was already satisfied. It just so happened that it was already midnight, so Chen Mu was prepared to go back to the landscape courtyard first and have a good night's rest. Master driver, take me back to the landscape courtyard, Chen Mu said to the driver. The driver waiting at the side nodded and respectfully helped Chen Mu open the car door. The ghostly cab began to start, traveling on the highway at night. Behind them, was a large group of creepy bosses at the creepy chief level, bowing in Chen Mu's departing direction, respectfully sending boss Chen off. The spooky taxi was traveling on the road. Chen Mu laid down on the back seat and began to think about his next plans. The potential of Wang Zhang City had been completely drained. After acquiring the entire guile scene of Wang Zhang City, Chen Mu's rank increased to the peak of guile leader. Further up, it was a half-step guile general. The principal of the Dark Knight High School was at this level. Chen Mu's upgrading strategy was different from other creeps and humans. The common upgrading method used by guile was to accumulate guile chi. As long as there was enough guile, it could be upgraded. Ways of accumulating guile chi included, but were not limited to. Absorbing creepy chi, this includes the creepy chi that exists in nature, as well as the creepy chi emitted by plutonic coins, props, etc. This is one of the reasons why plutonic coins are extraordinarily popular with creepy, killing humans, extracting creepy chi from human deaths, and props to assist. Humans are unable to directly absorb eerie chi, so most of the ways to level up are to perform eerie quests. By completing the bizarre tasks, one obtains the bizarre chi that can be absorbed, or gets props that can raise their level. Apart from these conventional methods, the world is a big place. There were also many unconventional methods that could also lead to a heavenly path on the road to leveling up. Take Chen Mu for example. Chen Mu's way of upgrading could be said to be unique. He relied on scattering coins to upgrade. Erm. It might be a bit indecent to say so. To be more precise, Chen Mu relied on spending money to acquire bizarre scenarios to upgrade. In the weird post-apocalyptic world, spending money to acquire other people's weird scenes was something that could bring one's own weird chi. This was indeed a way of upgrading. However, before Chen Mu, this type of upgrade was only feasible in theory. The reason was simple, who the hell had trillions of plutonium that could be used to buy and buy? 
Spending a few million plutonium to acquire a bazaar scene would allow one to upgrade by a small level. But to obtain a few million plutonium, an ordinary person would need to participate in countless bazaar quests, obtain countless bazaar chi, and upgrade to a bazaar elder. At that time, buying another creepy scene would have a limited effect of upgrading. In essence, it was still that everyone was poor. But Chen Mu was different, he had a unique advantage. Therefore, in the bazaar end times, he used the acquisition of bazaar scenes to walk out of a heavenly path. The value that Wang Zhang City could give ended there. After Chen Mu had drained the entire Wang Zhang City and acquired all the bazaar scenes, he had risen to the peak of the bazaar long. Wanting to go further, Chen Mu must acquire more bazaar scenes. Then Chen Mu's gaze would inevitably be placed on other cities. Acquiring more cities, and even acquiring the entire bazaar end world, this was Chen Mu's upgrade route. Which city should be put on next? Chen Mu began to ponder. When Chen Mu was thinking, he liked to look out the window. The scenery outside the car window could give him some inspiration while relaxing his anxious mood. It was at this moment that Chen Mu suddenly realized that by the intersection ahead, there were two people dressed in black who were waving at the phantom taxi. Don't bother with them, keep driving. Chen Mu said to the driver. In fact, there was no need for Chen Mu to remind the driver to stop. This phantom taxi, which was originally chartered by Chen Mu, how could it be possible to take someone else to use it again? Chen Mu thought, shouldn't the matter of getting a new car for himself be on the agenda? Although the spectral taxi was very good, it always looked like a cab from the outside. It was not compelling enough. Nowadays, Chen Mu had a lot of family money. Going out in a cab always felt a little less interesting and not in line with Chen Mu's status. Previously, he had been busy buying and acquiring various industries. Chen Mu didn't even have time to buy himself a new car. No, it's time to take a day or two to buy a luxury car. The phantom taxi drove forward, not stopping to pay attention to the two people on the side of the road in the slightest. Suddenly, when the spectral taxi passed by the two people, one of them violently unloaded the backpack on his body, pulled out a black object from it, and threw it towards the spectral taxi. Dang! Accompanied by a dull thud, the black block stuck hard to the trunk of the cab. Chen Mu and the driver both realized that something was wrong. Chen Mu immediately changed to a serious look and said to the driver, something's not right. Speed up and leave. The spectral taxi had just driven out for a dozen seconds when the black block on the trunk suddenly let out a violent explosion. Flames shot up to the sky. The huge impact from the explosion formed a circle of white shockwaves that spread out in all directions from the trunk. The fierce flames immediately engulfed the entire underworld taxi, into which it was engulfed. The shockwave that spread out, shattered all the glass on both sides of the road into smithereens. Such a violent explosion, if it were an ordinary vehicle, it would have been blown to powder, and the passengers inside would have been blown to ashes. The two people wearing black clothes to throw the bomb, at this time has long escaped the scene, is an alleyway speeding wildly. Upon hearing the violent explosions on the street, the faces of the two men burst into laughter. Ha ha ha, mission accomplished. I didn't expect Chen Mu's security to actually be so poor, letting us get our hands on him so easily. It's also his fault for being too arrogant and cocky. Young people are all like this, teenagers who think they're number one in the world. If Chen Mu goes to his death, we'll both be clothed and fed for the rest of our lives. Inside the underworld taxi, Chen Mu was still sitting firmly in the back seat. The driver was still sitting in the front row. The gas pedal under his foot was on the verge of going up in smoke. It was clear that the explosion had occurred right on the trunk, separated from Chen Mu by only a thin layer of glass. But Chen Mu was not affected in the slightest, as if the explosion had occurred in another time and space. This was one of the great unearthly characteristics of the spectral taxi. Invincible time. When the spectral taxi was traveling with passengers, it would enter a period of invincible time. During this period of time, no attack from the outside world would be able to harm the passengers inside the vehicle. Not to mention a bomb, even if the trickster king came, he would not be able to break through the invincible time of the underworld taxi. This was the power of the rules, the supreme rules of the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, granting the phantom taxi an unbelievable protective ability. Chan Mu's reason for chartering the underworld taxi in the first place was also because of this. Unexpectedly, today, it happened to use this characteristic. However, then again, Chen Mu now had quite a few means to save his life. Even without the spectral taxi, Chen Mu was protected by the death-heavy armor and would not suffer too much damage. Taking a step back, even without the death-heavy armor, Chen Mu still had the ability to transform into creepy. After transforming into a trickster, the trickster chief level of trickster would ignore normal physical attacks. Even without taking any damage, Chen Mu's eyes turned icy cold. It was obvious that the other party was coming at him. When had he offended someone? Chen Mu began to ponder. He had always avenged himself. Since the other party took the initiative to provoke, in Chen Mu's eyes, the other party was trying to come and seek death, then Chen Mu did not mind fulfilling the other party. 
No matter what the identity of the other party was, even if it was the Guile King who had messed with Chen Mu, then Chen Mu would still have to kill the Guile King. Stop the car, Chen Mu said to the driver. The spectral taxi stopped, with flames still burning on its body. On the other side, in the dark alley, the two black-clothed men who had finished dropping the bombs were laughing maniacally in triumph while running quickly. The car that had rushed to receive them was already waiting at the other end of the alley. As long as they got into the car, the two of them could quickly leave Wang Jiang city and escape. Quickly, open the door and go up. The two pulled open the door of the car one by one and sat on the back seat. Hurry up and drive. Don't let Chen Mu's men catch up. The two men probed uneasily towards the back of the car while urging the driver in the front row. However, after waiting for a few seconds, the driver still didn't step on the gas. Why aren't you leaving yet? It'll be too late if you don't leave. Do you have a fucking death wish? One of them cursed. However, after he finished cursing, the driver in the front row still didn't make any movement, just a black shadow sitting steadily on the driver's seat. Finally, the two black clothed men in the back seat sensed that something was wrong. Hey, brothers, hurry up and drive. The man who had broken into curses, his tone softened a bit, and he couldn't help but reach out and push the driver. The driver finally turned back. There were no lights on in the car, and through the moonlight outside the car window, the two black clothed men were surprised to find that. The driver was not their brother. At this time sitting in the driver's seat driver, wearing a security uniform, the skin presents a dead man's pale and cold. Tendrils of bright red blood were flowing out of his eye sockets. Creepy ah. A black clothed man yelled out in shock. Hee hee, if you don't do anything wrong, you're not afraid of ghosts knocking on your door. You two are in such a hurry, have you done something wrong? The creepy security guard said coldly. At the same time, the door of the car was pulled open from the outside, and outside the car stood a few creepy wearing security uniforms. As for the driver who was supposed to receive it, at this moment, he was being tied up by the bizarre security guards and thrown to the side, being so scared that he had already pissed his pants. These bizarre security guards were no one else but the security team raised by Chen Mu. When the explosion occurred, the bizarre security guards immediately came out in full force. They were already responsible for protecting Chen Mu and following him around, so they were all near the intersection when the incident occurred. When they saw the phantom taxi explode, all of the creepy security guards were scared out of their wits. The boss had been blown up. Chen Mu had treated them well on weekdays, and the brothers were worried that they had nowhere to repay Boss Chen, but as a result, before they could do so, Boss Chen was blown up in a spiral to the heavens right in front of their eyes. If this happened, they would not be able to forgive themselves. There are also those employees in the Chen Mu industry, if they learned of this news, they would definitely be furious. Fortunately, Boss Chen was blessed with a great life and did not ascend to heaven on the spot. Seeing that the spectral taxi was fine, a few security guards immediately came back to their senses and hurriedly chased after the fugitives. These spooky security guards were all Chen Mu's elite soldiers, and each of them was at the peak level of a spooky chief. The two black-clothed men, who were nothing more than ordinary humans, did not have the slightest power to fight back. Thus, the security guards came to the other side of the alley ahead of time, controlling the receiving car and driver, just waiting for the two people to throw themselves into the net. Boss, all three are captured. The creepy security guard said to the lead security chief. Good, take them to Boss Chen. The security captain said. Looking at the creepy that escorted them, each one of them at the peak of creepy chief, the three men were scared shitless. Didn't they say that Chen Mu is just a bit rich? Just a rich businessman ah. Uh. Yeah, how come Chen Mu has so many trickster long henchmen? I fucking regret coming to Wang Jiang City. The three men wanted to cry, they could already think of the consequences that would greet them. Soon, the three men were escorted back to the intersection. The spectral taxi did not go far, and after Chen Mu ordered it to stop, it stopped near the intersection. At this moment, the three humans were shocked to realize that the Psy taxi was actually still intact. Obviously, they didn't know the concept of invincible time, they only knew that Chen Mu's means had surpassed their knowledge. It was intact under the violent explosion. What kind of heavenly means was this? The outside of the body of the underworld taxi was still burning with the blazing fire left over from the explosion. Chen Mu's driver got out of the car and came outside the back seat, respectfully opening the door for Chen Mu. Amidst the blazing flames, Creepy respectfully bent over as Chen Mu slowly stepped out of the car. Under the dark night sky, burning red fire, at this moment, Chen Mu seemed to have become the creepy king who walked out from hell. The bizarre security guards beside him also bowed down to Chen Mu. Chen Mu walked through the blazing fire and slowly walked up to these three people. I heard that you guys want to kill me? Chen Mu revealed a disdainful smile, I'm standing here right now, right in front of you all, come on, don't you want to kill me? I'll see who dares to do it. Wildness. Confident. The three were trembling in fear, they were shocked to realize that when they faced Chen Mu, let alone killing him, they didn't even have the courage to look straight at him. Speak up, who asked you guys to come? 
If there was no one who instructed you, there is no way you guys would have the guts to assassinate me. Who is the mastermind behind you all? Chen Mu's words were not angry. On the one hand, it was the addition of strength. Chen Mu, who was the peak of the Guile Chief, faced ordinary humans, and there was a natural crushing of strength. The crushing of strength naturally created a powerful aura. On the other hand, it was Chen Mu's temperament that had been sharpened by five years of killing out of a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood. Don't look at Chen Mu's usual smile and everyone's harmony. But once someone wants to kill himself, Chen Mu if he is still smiling, that is not a city, that is stupid. It's, is the marshal of the hidden capital next door? Who told us to find an opportunity to assassinate you? One of the black clothed men said with a shiver. At those words, Chen Mu could not help but frown. Hidden capital, Chen Mu had heard of its hefty reputation in his previous life. The so-called hidden capital was also a city, and it was not far from Wangzhong City. Geographically speaking, hidden capital was right next door to Wangzhong City. However, unlike Wangzhong City, hidden capital was not the original name of the city. Before the start of the strange end times, the place where the hidden capital was located was called Linchue City, a city that was bigger than Wangzhong City. After the bizarre end times began, a large number of places turned into bizarre scenes one after another. Terrifyingly, the entire city of Linchue City suddenly turned into a bizarre scene without any warning on the night more than a month after the bizarre end of the world. Yes, the entire city had turned into a huge bizarre scene overnight, and it lost contact with the outside world. After that, the name of Linchue City changed. People no longer saw it as a human city, but as the first one, completely taken over by the bazaar. And so, people gave it a new name. People called it, Hidden Capital. Meaning, the city that was completely hidden in darkness. There were even speculations that it had become the capital city of Creepy. The reason why Chen Mu knew all of this relied on his memories from his previous life. When Chen Mu returned from his rebirth, Linchue City was still a normal city and had not yet turned into a hidden capital. During these days of Chen Mu's acquisition spree, the bizarre end times had quietly invaded, and the world was undergoing radical changes. It was also during these days that Linchue City had turned into the hidden capital overnight. This was the first citywide scale bazaar scene in the bazaar end world. A city had turned into a bazaar scene, something that would have been unimaginable a month ago. If this kind of thing had happened a month ago, the entire human society would have been greatly shaken, with all kinds of news reports flying all over the place. Unfortunately, a month and a half after the bazaar end times, the normal order had begun to collapse. In Wangjiang City, because of Chen Mu's presence, the normal order was still preserved. The entire city of Wangjiang could still maintain the quietness of the mountains and the rain. In other cities, order had long since begun to collapse. When people realized that the order could not provide them with shelter, and they still had to participate in weird missions, relying on the rules to survive, the collapse of the order was inevitable. The rules would replace the order and become another supreme existence. After the order collapsed, the city turned into a primitive jungle, where the weak were the strongest. Fires, robberies, and killings. All cities were plunged into riots. In this situation, the sudden change in Linchue City became less obvious. Because of all the cities, they had been paralyzed and lost contact with the outside world. Even in Wangjiang City, which was next to Linchue City, Chen Mu did not even notice the change in Linchue City. It was only after another month or so had passed, after the initial riots of the collapse of order had ended, and people had gradually adapted to the bizarre post-apocalyptic world, that some people were surprised to discover that. Crap! What about that big Linchue City? As some people received small blood-colored notes and entered the fallen Linchue City to carry out bizarre missions. It was only then that the title of Hidden Capital slowly replaced Linchue City and spread in the bizarre post-apocalyptic world. Until later, before Chen Mu was reborn, Hidden Capital was a mysterious and powerful existence. Chen Mu was not a fool, for this kind of horrible existence of Hidden Capital, he definitely would not be fine to go in and explore or something, that was a classic death-defying routine in horror movies. Fortunately, Chen Mu did not receive any weird mission from Hidden Capital, so he had never been to Hidden Capital. It was later speculated that the boss behind the hidden capital might even be a creepy king level existence. The hidden capital might be the creepy capital. Of course, these were just speculations and there was no way to know. The marshal in the three people's mouths, if Chen Mu was right, should be the boss behind the bizarre scene of the hidden capital, and might even be a trickster king. A city has turned into a bizarre scene, the bizarre end of the world is finally starting to get brutal. Chen Mu could not help but sigh. However, what should be more worthy of Chen Mu's attention right now was the boss behind the hidden capital. This big boss behind the scenes, wanted to kill Chen Mu. Obviously, these three people, were sent by him. The big boss of the hidden capital, definitely knew about the underworld taxi, but these three people were minions, and to put it politely, they were expendable, and the three of them did not know about the underworld taxi. So they thought of blowing up Chen Mu and using the bomb to blow up the spectral taxi. 
The three people failed in their mission, and there was no loss to the hidden capital Big Boss Marshal. After all, it was just three cannon fodder, and even the marshal didn't know the names of the three people. However, for Chen Mu, it was an important warning. There was Creepy trying to kill himself. Chen Mu thought carefully for half a day, and he admitted that he didn't have half a relationship with the marshal of the hidden capital. He certainly hadn't offended it himself. Then why did it want to kill itself? After thinking for half a day, Chen Mu thought of the reason. Interest. Chen Mu had acquired the entire Wang Zheng city's bizarre scene, becoming the first human to take control of a city. It could be said that the entire Wang Zheng city had become Chen Mu's personal asset. At this moment, Chen Mu, in the eyes of certain bizarre powerhouses, was simply a big piece of greasy fat meat. Kill Chen Mu, snatch Wang Zheng city. Chen Mu was certain that there were definitely bizarre powerhouses who had thought this way. The marshal of the hidden capital next door was definitely for this purpose. Although it was said that Chen Mu was protected by the rules, and after killing Chen Mu, the ownership of Wang Zheng city was a problem. But Chen Mu knew very well that there were many hidden rules in the weird end times. The so-called hidden rules were rules that existed in the weird post-apocalyptic world, but they were not explicitly written out, and one had to rely on oneself to guess and grope for them. Chen Mu was underpowered in his previous life, and while he certainly knew the rules of the bizarre quests by heart, Chen Mu was still unclear about many of the high-level hidden rules. Is there a hidden rule that can directly take over the opponent's industry after killing the boss? Chen Mu does not dare to guarantee that there is no such hidden rule. If the marshal of the hidden capital was really the trickster king, then what it knew must be much more than Chen Mu. This was a major threat. For Chen Mu, the best thing to do was to kill that hidden capital marshal. Even if the other party was the Guile King, then he himself would still have to go against the heavens and wield his sword to kill a god. It's really true that the trees want to be quiet but the wind won't stop. Chen Mu could not help but sigh once again. His industry was getting bigger and bigger, even if he didn't want to mess with his enemies, there would be people who would take the initiative to mess with Chen Mu. A big tree attracted the wind. For this kind of situation, there was no use in hiding, the only way was to keep moving forward. Chen Mu gradually realized that the gears of his destiny had begun to turn the night he returned from rebirth and acquired the midnight canteen. From that night onwards, his life had only a way forward, not a way back. He walked on a heavenly avenue against the sky, and God looked down on him from the end of the avenue. Either he leapt up and wielded his sword to kill God, becoming the new God in the bizarre end times. Either he was beheaded by the God and died on the thoroughfare to heaven. Other than that, there was no third ending. The marshal of the hidden capital wants to kill me right. Chen Mu muttered. This was a crisis and a great challenge for him. If he could kill the other party, if he could take over this bizarre scene of hidden capital, then Chen Mu couldn't imagine how much of a boost it would give to his industry, to his strength. This was an entire city turned into a bizarre scene. The hidden capital that was even bigger than Wang Zhang City. Chen Mu's strength had hit a bottleneck and was stuck at the peak of Guile Leader. At this level, the enhancement effect that ordinary bizarre scenes could bring to Chen Mu was already extremely limited. Only a super weird scene like the hidden capital could bring Chen Mu a huge boost. Moreover, it was unknown whether there were any heaven-defying props hidden inside the hidden capital, or even whether there were any King of Tricksters level props. Under the temptation of huge benefits, for Chen Mu, regicide was not impossible. Those high and mighty gods in the weird post-apocalyptic world, I'm going to chop off their heads one by one. Chen Mu walked up to the three black-clothed men and asked, You three, why are you working for the marshal of the hidden capital? How many others like you are there? This was one of Chen Mu's biggest concerns. The marshal of the hidden capital had humans working for it. Humans working for it were much more stealthy than creepy, and were a greater danger to Chen Mu. If it was a creepy that entered Wang Zheng city, in line with the principle that creepy had its own turf, an alien creepy that entered Wang Zheng city would be detected as unfamiliar. But humans were different, the bazaar couldn't distinguish between human sense. In other words, if the hidden capital marshal sent humans into Wang Zheng city, just like these three men in black, then Chen Mu's bizarre henchman would not be able to detect the alien humans in time. This was a huge jeopardy for Chen Mu. The best solution was to strike first and get rid of all of Marshal Hidden Capital's human henchmen. This would at least ensure the safety of Wang Zhang City, and as long as Chen Mu stayed in Wang Zhang City, he would not encounter this human assassination situation again. The three black clothed men were trembling, they knew that if they didn't tell the truth today, they were afraid that they would die a miserable death. There are probably around three to four hundred people. One of them replied carefully, lowering his head and not daring to look at Chen Mu. How come there are so many people? Chen Mu could not help but frown slightly. What had happened in the past few days when Hidden Capital had disappeared? Why were there so many people willing to work for the Hidden Capital boss? A series of questions filled Chen Mu's mind. In fact, this was also Chen Mu's question in his previous life. It was even the question of the vast majority of people in the previous life. No one knew what exactly happened to Hidden Capital. 
No one knew what horrible things would happen when a city, overnight, turned into a bizarre scene. In the previous life, not only did Hidden Capital have an all-city bizarre scene, but other cities were pretty much in the same situation after they turned into bizarre scenes again. First, they lost contact with the outside world for one to seven days, and when someone from the outside world received a bizarre quest and entered the bizarre scene, all of them were horrified to find that the entire city had turned into a ruin. Broken tall buildings, burning streets, deserted homes, the air filled with blood, and corpses everywhere. The death toll, counted in the hundreds of thousands. This was what made the bizarre scenes across the city so terrifying. If Chen Mu hadn't guessed wrongly, the current hidden capital, or Linchue City, was already in such a tragic state. So how did this city, how did it become such a miserable state? Why were there survivors like the men in black? What triggering conditions did they achieve to survive? And why were they working for Marshall Hidden Capital? A series of questions that Chen Mu needed to answer. This was also why, Chen Mu did not directly shark the three of them. Under Chen Mu's questioning, the three black-clothed men looked at each other, their eyes filled with scorn. They were in fear. They did not dare to tell the truth. Under such intimidation from Chen Mu, all three of them were unwilling to tell the truth. This aroused Chen Mu's interest even more. Something extremely horrifying must have happened during the few days that Hidden Dew had disappeared. Nothing happened either. It was. Just that I did some weird quests and then survived after completing them. One of them stammered and replied. Chen Mu saw at a glance that he was lying. For this kind of unwillingness to tell the truth, Chen Mu was too lazy to continue to pursue, continuing to ask would only result in a series of lies. Chen Mu felt around in his spatial ring and quickly found what he needed. Hallucinogenic mist. This was a prop that Chen Mu had gotten from repeatedly wool gathering when he was doing the Fright Hospital quest at the time. Now it came in handy. According to the prop's description, it would have a hallucinogenic effect on any creepy below the creepy general level. In the creepy endgame, there was a hidden rule that Chen Mu knew about, human resistance was lower than creepy, and what worked for creepy was probable to work for humans. Therefore, the three black-clothed men in front of them, who did not even have the strength of a creepy man, would definitely not be able to resist the hallucinogenic mist. The three black-clothed men were puzzled to see that Chen Mu fumbled through his fingers and pulled out something like a spray can, then sprayed the surrounding area like disinfectant water. At a certain instant, the air around them seemed to have turned into a seven-colored psychedelic color. A fragrance, if any, echoed in the air. At the same time, as the user, Chen Mu began to weave illusions in his consciousness. Tell me what you're hiding from me, and you'll be forgiven and given a new life. After Chen Mu whispered these words, the same words resounded in the minds of the three men in black. Echoing. Echoed. Like a whisper filled with temptation. Say it. Tell us all the things you are hiding. The forgiving Chen Mu will forgive you. You will get a new life. The three men in black felt that their heads suddenly became confused, as if they were sinking into a nightmare. Falling. Immersed. Before the three of them completely hallucinogenic, only to hear around the sides, suddenly came a plop 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 sound. Chen Mu looked around suspiciously, only to see the bizarre security guards around himself, one by one, flopping and flopping on their knees. Boss I deserve to die. Yesterday on the bus, I didn't give my seat to an old granny, I deserve to die. Boss Chun I'm sorry for you ah, yesterday I secretly worked overtime for half an hour, I did it knowingly. Li Xiaoxiao helped me hide it, I'm guilty. Li Xiaoxiao is guilty too. Boss Chen, I'm ashamed of your trust. My family is really short of money, and I sold the shopping cards you gave me at a 20% discount. I failed your cultivation ah. The bizarre security guards cried out in pain one by one, slapping themselves in the face as they spoke. Snap. Snap. Slap. Chen Mu? Seeing this, Chen Mu's entire being was bad. I can't believe I didn't consider this, the hallucinogenic mist has a hallucinogenic effect on any weirdness within 10 meters. Good guy, the enemy has not yet confessed, their own side of the security guards, first kneeled down to whip their own ears. And what the hell are you all confessing to? Not giving up your seat for granny? Oh, shit. You're being weird. They wouldn't dare sit down if you let them. Malicious overtime, right? Is Li Xiaoxiao an accomplice? As a manager, she should be punished for harboring an employee who works overtime. Selling my shopping cards? Why are you telling me this? I don't care how the cards are spent. What kind of trivial matter is this? Because of this little thing, the weird security guards were crying in pain, and those who didn't know thought they had lost their father. Seeing this scene in front of him, Chen Mu felt ashamed. Shame on him. The effect of this hallucinogenic mist is not a little too good? The three men in black were also shocked when they saw this situation. However, before they could be shocked for long, they had already sunk into the dream. Say it. Tell me all about the hidden capital. Obviously, the hallucinogenic mist was ultimately designed for the bazaar, and its effect on humans was a little slower. After half a minute had passed, the three men in black finally couldn't hold out any longer. In the dream world woven by the hallucinogenic mist, 
they began to spill the truth to Chen Mu. In the midst of the trio's narration, a horrifying picture began to unravel in front of Chen Mu. Seven days ago, Lin Shue City. This was originally a calm day, at least in the weird post-apocalyptic world, it was considered a calm and peaceful day. In the evening, after the end of the day's work, the people of Lin Shue City began to return home one by one. The pedestrians on the road were still discussing the recent situation. Oops, the situation is not good lately. I heard that in Wang Jiang City next door, there are more and more bizarre scenes. Yeah, the world is getting worse and worse. Luckily for us in Lin Shue City, I don't know if we have the blessing of the gods or not, no bizarre scenes have appeared until now. It is indeed very strange. I heard them say that almost all cities have weird scenes appearing, our Lin Shue City is really lucky. It's also possible that there might be bizarre scenes, but the news has been suppressed. Who can say about this kind of thing? Just live your own life. I hope those little bloody notes don't appear around me. Whether on the bus or on the subway, after acquaintances meet, most of them have these few lines of chat. It was nothing more than lamenting that the world was in a bad way, and being slightly glad that Lin Shue City hadn't been affected yet. The quiet days ended at 12 midnight. At midnight, most people had already sunk into sleep, and the busy city fell into a quiet. In the midst of the quiet, killing opportunities emerged. Those who were still staying up late, some were looking at their computers on the table by the window, when they suddenly realized that the sky outside the window, at some point, had become dark. Starlight, moonlight, all disappeared. Even light pollution, also disappeared. The whole sky became as black as ink. It was like a several thousand meter deep sea was upside down in the sky, so deep that it couldn't see the bottom. In the dark night sky, it was as if there was a scarlet eye silently watching the entire city. Immediately after that, there was a whistling gale. The wind whistled, the trees on the green belt were blown to the left and right, and countless leaves turned from green to yellow. The fallen leaves were flying. Bean-sized raindrops smashed down, hitting the windows with a crackling sound. The temperature of the whole city began to fall rapidly. Obviously still in the middle of summer, the water in the park lake, but already condensed out of the ice slag. Those who had originally fallen asleep were violently awakened by the cold, and were frozen to the bone in the cold night. What kind of strange weather is this? The TV didn't say it was going to cool down tonight either. The weather is getting more and more elusive now. The lights in the building came on one after another, and the people who had been awakened by the cold yawned and went to the cupboards to rummage for thick quilts. When they had changed into new quilts, they realized that the sky outside was already pouring with rain. Extreme cold, torrential rain, gale force winds. Soon, with the deafening sound of thunder, the network of Lin Shue City was paralyzed, electric sparks rose from the high voltage lines, and the lights in the tall buildings went out in turn. Disconnecting the network, disconnecting the electricity. In just half an hour's time, the entire Lin Shue City turned into a scene of impending doom. Something even more terrifying happened. Before the eyes of everyone in Lin Shue City, lines of bloody characters appeared at the same time. Weird Mission, City Battle Royale. Mission Description, the original quiet and peaceful city has turned into a jungle of the weak and the strong overnight. Welcome to, Hell. Sincerity and kindness will become a thing of the past, hypocrisy and meanness is the magic weapon to survive. To survive in the Battle Royale game, you need to follow these three rules. Rule 1, if you want to survive, you must have no less than 20 lives on your hands. Rule 2, only a maximum of 300 people can survive in the entire city, and if there are more than 300 people at the end of the game, they will be ranked according to the number of sharks. Rule 3, the game lasts for 5 days. You are not allowed to leave Lin Shue City during the game, or you will be executed. Battle Royale game, start now. Warm tip, why don't you take a look at your friends around you? They may be the easiest for you to get the most out of the battle. When Chen Mu heard the content of the bizarre mission, a chill arose in his heart. The truly terrifying rules had appeared. Carefully analyzing the rules of this bizarre mission, it could be clearly seen that the path to life had been written plainly. Then whoever had more human lives in their hands, whoever was more cruel would survive. The three rules didn't have any twists and turns, instead they were very clear and intuitive. It was precisely this kind of rule that was the most terrifying. It does not leave you any loopholes, there is no means to pass without injury, there is only the naked flesh and blood. It looks like there are rules, but in reality there are no rules, only the complete collapse of order. Those who survived these rules were both pitiful and terrifying. Chen Mu could already imagine what horrifying results this bizarre mission would bring. In the narrations of the three black-clothed men, when they saw the contents and rules of the bizarre mission, almost everyone's first reaction was to be dumbfounded. The vast majority of them had never done a bizarre mission before and had only heard about it from others on the internet. The fact that it was a hellish bizarre mission right off the bat was completely unprepared for them. It could be said that this was where the cruelty of the weird end world lay. The bizarre end world would not take care of the weak, would not take care of the newbies just because they were weak. 
In the strange end world, there was no sympathy or compassion. In the beginning, order was maintained in the city. The entire city was pouring with rain, and families were waking up from their sleep. People began the first stage of coping. Everyone was basically an ordinary person, asking them to shark people? It was impossible. As the rainstorm poured down on hidden capital, families began to barricade their doors and windows, blocking the doors with closets and refrigerators to prevent people from breaking into their homes. A very small portion of the population, however, had begun to take action. With a city with a population of hundreds of thousands, there were sure to be those willing to pick up a knife first. It was just over an hour later that the first explosion occurred in the storm-tossed city. The riot that opened. Cries and screams mingled with the fire rushing through the sky. No one was left to maintain order, and blood began to fill the city's roads. A paradise for outlaws, a hell for ordinary people. As soon as the mouth of the riot opened, everything was already inevitable. The riots in the hidden capital were more violent than any other city. There was a group of thugs that began to organize themselves and systematically attack other citizens. These three black-clothed men, who were originally street punks, also joined this organization during the riots. After only two days had passed, the first person to reach the kill count appeared. As the first person to reach the kill count appeared, it didn't take long for the second and third to appear in turn. These people even summarized the rules and came up with the order of the easiest kills, children, the elderly, the sick. Facts proved that the collapse of morality and order was far quicker than people had imagined. After only three days, the large Linchue city had lost half of its population. The number of people who had reached the number of kills had exceeded 500. The rules said that only a maximum of 300 people could survive. If the final number of people exceeded 300, then they would be ranked according to the number of kills, from top to bottom. In order not to be overtaken by others, those who had reached the number of kills would instead intensify their efforts and had already killed their eyes red. Just like the one tips in the rules, many people began to target their own relatives and friends.